Australia, and there's actually places that it was illegal to touch a koala oh, okay. bear because, because they all the, got the chlamydia. The, all right. That's uh, okay. Mm, mm, mm. Thomas only the only train on poop? the Project Pinball Charity stream will you get information Gamma such goat, as that. Um, does Thomas the Train poop? <laughs> what is wrong with you, dude? Well, why would you ask that he question? Does have a, he does have a coal car. He's got a coal car. Uh, JP is good. Spider-Man was great uh, when it was still in production. <laughs> right. His exhaust is Wizard of Oz was uh, my first machine, and it will never leave my house. I get that. A lot of collectors have like this affinity of keeping that first pin. And for me, it was my Earth Shaker, and I kept it for a long time. And I thought I will never, I will never get rid of that Earth Shaker until the new shiny that I thought I could acquire came out. And I was like, get that thing out of here. Yep, I'm upgrading. And I never lost a minute of sleep. Not, not at one point in my pinball career did I think to myself. Man, I should I should have just hung on to that yep. that first pin. I just never did. But I can totally understand where some would like to do that. Um, it's just for whatever reason for me, I don't get attached to these things. Um, yeah, mine are long gone. Don't fall in love. Yeah, there long there was a gone. period of time where it was about a year and a half ago. I went through like maybe I still got my first thirty five pins in about thirteen months. There Rod, we go. Rodin with the with the with the Spanish eyes. Rodin is interesting because he loves the EMs. He's like a big EM fan. Um, yeah. And uh, Spanish. Yeah, Monster Bash would work well. You want tables where it's fairly easy to accomplish stuff. Sure. Star Wars the pin does Probably. have that going for it. If we don't know what it is, I agree. Uh, yeah, Monster Bash would be a um, a pretty good choice actually. Hey, Roy, yeah, did, Bash. did you find that formula? Attack from Mars. Attack from Mars is pretty scary, Steve. It, it, Brr, Mars. Attack. I've had alien abduction dreams for uh, months after acquiring my Attack from Mars. Really? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> I remember like playing Tetris and like closing your eyes at night and like you could see the bricks moving around. You know what oh, used yeah. to happen is like I used to play I used to play a lot of pool, right? So like there would be days where like I'd go out and I'd see objects kind of shaped in it and I'd be like this is how I'd clear that table or I'd watch like friends and there'd be a pool table in the background I'm like this is how I'd clear that table like I was my mind was always working You're and sick, now to a, You're sick. I know to a certain extent <laughs> that happens with pinball now too I find I, uh, something and I'm like oh that'd be kind of a unique ramp I boxed for uh, a few years and I stopped because it got to the point where when I was walking around I could see the the, the spot on the mitts Oh yeah, that's pretty I was, nuts. Like man. everybody that was walking around had a target. Yeah, it got really weird. <laughs> so I had to chill out. Yeah, that is. But uh, yeah, it's uh, for the best of society. Drake, are you blowing it up? Hi. What are you doing over there, you maniac? Hey, jump jiving. Yeah, jump jive any whale. I do agree though. Monster Bash will be a good pin. Oh, that was not fair. That's yeah, not I have fair. to. I, I I am actually reformed I Monster Bash liker. I, I used to hate the game, and I realized it's I because all the games I ever played were garbage. And once I got to play the remake, it was like, wow, this game is great. I never liked my yeah. I never liked Monster never Bash because I never played a good example. Yeah, they were of one. all junk, and, they, and they would they looked the, like like they were just somebody smoked cigarettes in them for like twenty years well, too. Because that's, that's what everybody did. But like my biggest turnoff, like on a pinball machine from that era, is just like the old incandescent bulbs. I hate them. Oh yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. stand them. Yeah. Uh, Gamma Goat Hold on, I drink. says uh, <laughs> I have a really hard time <laughs> selling. Drain uh, ball. I've only sold four currently at plus. Three. I know what you meant by drain there. I was like, hey, hey, hey. plus three meaning. Hey, fan. Excuse me. You have room. That's a big fan. For enough, and oh, now yeah. you're three over your limit. <laughs> I like that. I, at least I think that's where we're going with that, Ian. Nice ball, man. Wait, what's your score over there? I can't see. Man, we've got a really... Uh, we're not really paying attention to scores tonight as far as the stream is concerned because we're just kind of driving the uh, fundraiser. Oh! Yeah. Hey, yo! I still have my first machine. Right. Oh, do you? What is it? I bought a Guns N' Roses in 1998, and I still have it. No kidding. Wow, gorgeous. that's pretty impressive. It's an early production nice one? with some uh, different different markings on it. It was interesting when uh, to find out, like, I guess early in my pinball career, but later after I was collecting that, the the data East Guns and Roses, the ramps are shaped in a G and and an R. It's amazing, isn't it? It is pretty amazing. Never would have figured that out on my own, I don't think. I got a uh, Christmas present for myself. Uh, got the mirrored backlash for it this year. That's awesome, man. CPR. Oh, you did get that? Yeah. yeah. Did it show up yet? Yeah, it showed up. I had to unwrap it because I, guess I needed have to it. Go over the drink. Who, who does that? CPR or somebody else? Hey. Uh, yeah, I think it's CPR. CPR. Yeah, it's pretty cool looking. So, what are you gonna do with the original? Just 
wrap it up for uh, save it for a rainy day. I'll probably like uh, break it and recycle it. <laughs> the garbage gonna, bag. Yeah, just just have the, the kids break it up with a awesome. hammer. Just smash it. You maniac. <laughs> You. Okay, final. They would kill me oh, if I did that. Oh, I'll probably break it for a second. I can't, bro. Oh, I'm, doing the, I'm doing the no carb. Oh, that was the best. So, um, what are you gonna do with that uh, Guns N' Roses backlash? Like oh, I'll probably like just break it and recycle. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But well, there was an old Saturday Night Live where they had the uh, bag yeah, of glass as a toy. No carbs. Hey, fight the good fight. Good for you guys. You gotta do what you gotta do. See, that can never yes. happen. I that cannot not happen. In a, in, a, in a game. <laughs> and I was like, hang on. Oh, you can't we got a long a time to go here. I better slow it eject down. Direct into an out lane without a ball safe. So this is me slowing that's it down. So I, I, hope, I hope that that's addressed at some point. Vivid, six in the that is frustrating. And that's one to grow on. Yeah. You can do it. <laughs> There's yeah, a bunch of lost the camera. I think it's interesting. There's yeah, a bunch of change face. down here. So those are. Wow. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Ken, two wires. Uh, two wires. Or... Wow. <laughs> no, it's still up and running. Yeah, that's uh. <laughs> is that your power? I'm very impressed with like yeah. the camera Google setup. Google Maps, here. Right here. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I'm very impressed with this this wireless. You can cancel you your here. NORAD. With all the wires on He's yeah. in St. Charles. <laughs> All right, so uh, I like, had a good ball, so now I don't want to. So if you open the mess garage door, it's gone. <sighs> he can't open his garage door. Oh, it's not hooked down to the garage door. Yeah, I think I think he can. Hmm. Pretty yeah, sure. It's like I, thought it, was, I thought it was bolted on there. Until I found it. No, yeah, that's that's its own thing. I mean, you can slide it to the next game, right? You know, it's nice. Move it around. Very nice. It's all very nice. So what's going on oh, here? Star Wars group. Comic Edition. Is that the question? Back up. I can see that. Oh, I'm back up. Star Wars Comic Edition is pretty neat. That's beautiful. Uh, it's funny because the play field is pretty much the exact You're same You're layout as far as the the guy just did it as a, in comic book. Sure. Yeah, I've, yeah, got, yeah. I've got a Star Wars play field. I've got a Star Wars I know you got the pro, well, yeah, I've got a pro, but I, I would like the comic version I think over the pro. Somebody regular. will tell you that. There are plenty of people I'd trade. There. There's a guy that comes by here every once in a while. They could probably hook you up. Yeah, my like kids, I actually... Right now, he's, right now, he's transferring some TNA in the hotel apartment. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> I'd do an even trade with somebody if anybody wants to trade their... Uh... <laughs> no, why would they want to do that? They would have just bought comic. Oh, come on! Woo! So I had a, a good day when I was in Texas. Like, Gomez is my favorite designer. Yeah. Which, uh... All, all, all the friends have Richie as a favorite designer, but I like right. Gomez. And, uh, one day at uh, TPF, I played all the Gomez machines because you could find them all in the hall. It was oh, pretty cool. good. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had Gomez on uh, pretty recently, actually, on, yeah. on a Monday. Yeah, that was a good one. Good time. He's a good dude. Yeah, he signed a. I uh, got a. 90s color. Oh, that signature, man. <laughs> yeah. That signature is crazy. Yeah, so you got that. It's like, hang on. Give me a minute. <laughs> yeah. That's the top around my NBA fast break now. Oh, sweet. That's a fun game. Yeah. It's a fun game. Uh, I got a uh, friend, uh, Mike, over at uh, Gap, who's going to let me we pro uh, another NBA fast break the, so we can do the, the link. Network. Yeah, do the link. So I've never done the link uh, fast break. Yeah. We'll give that a shot. Oh. oh, yeah. You got a little screen right there. Have you ever done the uh, the link of the uh, medieval madness royal editions? Any good guests coming today? Yeah. What, what you ever link those? Liver? Are you going to get two of those coming in? I think so. Come on, chop liver. Link <laughs> For head-to-head -head play. Well, it's chomp, easy to chomp, get them in the garage. Chomp, chomp. Absolutely. That's <laughs> exactly right. Stairs, stairs are terrible. Yes. I was thinking about getting a. Come on. Everybody hates my house because I got a bend in the stairway. I have two landings. Yeah. Two bends. I don't, I don't have the landings. I just have like a 30 Scott's degree bend. Scott's got this weird oh. little triangular landing well that is worse than a landing. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what you're talking about. That's where you have to like build the the board, extend the staircase to make it a square. It's kind where of. you literally have to pick up the game and do this corner. Yeah, and yeah. It's lift and cuss, really. Oh, That's the, we got it down <laughs> to 645. Yeah. Lift, cuss, twist. So we, won't see, we won't see 
when do we get the first sliver? Yeah, left drain mask. Probably 6 30. Yeah, so you get that nice sunrise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a good guests are probably coming later. You don't get good guests I between actually, five and yeah, six, man. What's that? Cosmic Kart Race. There we go. Remote, yeah, All right, I Texas. What's that? Played a little bit of Cosmic Kart Racing at We Texas. did play Cosmic Kart Race. I thought I was kicking ass on it, and uh, next thing I knew, I was like, got lapped like 15 times. I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, yeah I was, was getting that deep. at uh, Expo? Yeah. yeah. No, it yeah. was at uh, TPF. TPF. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. I, I like we were playing. With, it, it wasn't was like, at Expo though, right? They didn't have multimorphic there. No, I don't I think, think it was so. there at all. But I was playing. You know, I like, never got. Yeah! And they're like, dude, you lost by like a. <laughs> I was like, oh wow. Sorry. Yeah, I remember seeing those, and there was just always a, a, a big line. And yeah. I didn't. I didn't Texas care for the lines. Was really... It was busy, but good for them. You know, that's that's, that's awesome. The idea. So no, in Texas is a great time, and. If Milwaukee wasn't an hour and a half drive, and uh, yeah, right, the, a week after, I would definitely be in Texas again. Um, yeah, I gotta figure that one out. I'd yeah. like to do Texas. I, you never know; I may end up down there. But last year, kind of the whole uh, the whole deep root issue kind of soured it up. Yeah, I was a little bit bummed about that, to be honest. I was a lot that bummed. Was, that was, was one of the reasons. Bummed. That was I the whole reason. That was yeah. the whole reason why I talked to you guys into coming down was to go. Come on, guys! It's gonna be five days of deep root. We gotta do it. And then I was like, Oh no, it's not. Wow. You know, but I got my sliders photo signed. That was cool. He got his sliders photo signed by uh, John Rice Davies. That's right, John Rice Davies. So, going back to games with regrets, the only game I've ever sold that I had to get back was Fishtails. Ah, my, here we go. My good friend oh, no. to the right of me has uh, has decided to sell that. It's not gone yet, but you know, it's going if a you block. The boat it's going shot, let me two go. blocks down the road right, to exactly. my buddy yes. who hosts pinball. So I can still play. Staying in the fish family. As as you know, they pop up. up here and there. I could, I could do some things to get one back. Fishtails is just because I've chased it. Man, there's either not. none or there's three. Yeah, I chased mine too. That was my first game where I was like, I want this title. I'm gonna go pay. Right. That's the first game you know. I paid real, real stupid, like same here. stupid money in my head for. Yeah, like, same I, here. I put paid, a want to buy ad out. Exactly, and I, I paid full and retail I had, for yeah, that. Yeah. Um, I, my first DMD Great was game. Judge Dredd. I got a good deal on that. It wasn't a streamer. That's funny, dude. Your your uh, your your collecting sounds like mine. Like I had a Dread. Yeah. And then a Fishtails. Yep. I bought Fishtails. I had. Once I had Dread, I was like, I need Fishtails. Yeah. And then I got Fishtails, and then I was like, Well, this Dread is way too slow. Like, Dread's still a good game. It's though. A, I haven't you know played what? on it in a long I'm, time. I, I, I would like to get another one eventually. Uh, it's a fun game. It's got a lot going on. But when you're playing Fishtails and then you go over to that Dread, it's like walking. I just love the music. It's just and it's an it's a it's a it's a nasty game. That's that's cool, it's man. I had the gold. color DMD in there. Yeah, that's sweet. Grandma it's, rolling off the rocking chair with the the shotgun. Yeah. Good stuff. You know. What about hard body? So, yeah, no. I I had uh, a, a fully populated play field. I Wait, had a hard body. And maybe a back glass. I got. It was a, like I had like parts for it, and I sold it for like three hundred bucks. That'd wow. be a good re theme game. That game's fun to play. Yeah. I was. I bought that. I bought yeah, a hard that's what body I hear. and a galaxy. Great art. And uh, torpedo. Torpedo Alley, Alley, good art. Torpedo Alley is fantastic. Actually, that's you a can really rip on that game. back glass, the translate all you want. That I game, think, okay, I think that's what makes it. That game, it, it's got that whole just like uh, Laser Laser War has the same thing. Yeah. Oh. And Secret Service. Yeah, JRD. Just letting it rock down. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good. Uh, good question. <laughs> You're right. About JRD. We're both like. I think you got him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Stern Indian Hobbit. Right, about that time to. <laughs> you know what was cool was when I, JRD came up. If you ever watched the Twitchy, uh, the Twitchy, <laughs> Twitchy, yeah. the Twippy yeah. video, the Twitchy video is what's going to be happening in about forty-five minutes here. The Twippy video, um, he did a presentation <laughs> and came up and was and was basically showing what he had to do um, when he was doing the voiceover. I am Frodo. 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 I
I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm talking about Sala from uh, Indiana Jones. Okay. He did the presentation. He presented with Whitney Houston. Yeah. He was the celebrity. From, uh, at, at right. Texas. It was, uh, I know who you're talking about. From like, uh, uh, it's, uh, hey, who's uh, Sala again? He was in Lord of the Rings, too. What? Who's Sala? The guy that signed your, your sliders thing. John Rice Davies. John Rice Davies. Davies. John Rice Davies. Davies. John Rice Davies. Uh, uh, yeah, Pinball is JRD. Because you know he. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's famous enough to get a. a yeah, that pin JRD pin. guy. I knew what he was talking about, but I just didn't. Chris the Pinter. Hey, hey, Chris the Pinter, Pinter. buddy. Five hundred bits become. Bam, bam, bam. A thousand oh, bits. Wizards of the Wild. How are we holding, holding up? Uh, in six more minutes, I will have been up for twenty-four hours. Congratulations. And I only have twelve more hours to go, so I just need to stay up for thirty-six straight hours. <laughs> Simple, easy enough. You can do it. Bill, Bill was here from uh, 1 to 5. He had the graveyard shift, which I was also part of. Yeah, same here. I'm trying to figure out I'm a, uh, what happened here. <laughs> oh, good times. Yeah. Oh, man. Nice camera. Oh, the picture's already taken. Huh? That was fast. That was fast. Kaz. Yeah. Kaz going to work? Yeah, buddy. Dude, so. Kaz, that was the longest I've ever been on the stream without hearing from you. I was beginning to wonder if you were okay. That's because we saw Kaz going to work today. Kaz, thank you for the 16 bits. Kaz. Yeah, bud. 16 bits become 32 bits. Only here on the 24-hour charity stream As we see the viewership slowly No, it's been, it's been fine. Yes. Oh, it's been, it's it's been, revitalizing it's been pretty steady. It's but now back. people are waking up. Good morning, Kaz, says Rorner. Get the coffee out. Kaz I'm, was just on a little while ago. I can't ago. drink coffee. I'm not a coffee. I used to drink coffee. You know, caffeine and, and like, I can drink, like, a large Diet Coke. But if I have, like, coffee with caffeine in it, I get really bad. I get, like, anxious. Oh, okay. I don't understand it. It's so weird. Hey, where's, uh, has David Dennis been on it all today? No, I haven't seen uh, David yeah, L. Dennis anywhere. Yeah, better David. I don't yeah. think so. We should ask, Sit uh... Down. Ask Ian ah. if he knows what's going on. What's up, Chris the Pin Turn? Asked Gamago, speculating if you're dressing uh, as Slash a TPF this year. Good morning, Good morning from Connecticut. Connecticut. Ron Dog. Yeah, we got 7 a.m. in Connecticut. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm talking about. Sun's yeah, been up for... Uh, we just moved the stream over there. Sun's been up for seven minutes off. already in Connecticut. <laughs> Connecticut, coffee's Woo. been made and people have already dropped their morning dues. Look at Kaz. Kaz supporting the stream with some more big ah. days. Nicely oh, done. Oh, God. wisdom. The wise. Wisdom the wise. A thousand bits. A thousand bits become 2,000 bits. With the Woo. Adam Schwartz match, Santa make it to that ten dollar donation becomes a twenty dollar donation to Project Pinball. Thank you, wisdom to the wise, and thank you, Cox, for supporting the stream. Oh, Woo! So uh, the combined one thousand and eighteen bits become two thousand and thirty six bits. Oh. That was piercing. You got me on that one a little bit. Oh, I did. Well, that's okay. I loved it. I, it's exactly what I needed to get back in. It's like you just put the paddles on. You're like clear. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I am back. Is it is it me again? Oh uh, no, it's it's uh, Steve. Oh, nobody sit down. I'll be really quick here. <laughs> nobody sit down. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, so, so Dwight games? Sullivan's coming in early tomorrow to, to bring me my replacement no. Elvira freaking I glass that I broke. Chris. Did you, you know ever look that back? Because I told you you were jinxing yourself when you said I never broke a glass. No, I know. I said don't it's say like, that. It's like taped in there. And it's all scratched up. I've never had a translate uh, glass break, and it was very startling. Yeah, Chris asked if I have beaten Stephen Ken. That's no. Uh, I, I lose. My hobby is coming in last place at tournaments. Well, we've only played this game about 900 times tonight, so. I got one in two thirds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Ron Dog, Adam Schwartz is the man. Uh, Chris and Pinter saying, uh, Scott, real talk. Have you beaten Steven? Oh, yeah, we just covered that. No, no, no but he's only had a couple games on here. He's getting loose. Chris the Pinter, why haven't you asked me that question? He's outside of his natural habitat right now, too. He's he's in the very uh, eclectic, energy-buzzed uh, Studio C. And I'm also uh, terrible. No, you're not terrible. Just I like playing. How many bits have been donated? Do you have a bit total? It must be huge. Uh, I don't. 
Well, I mean, if you look at the bits right now, mod couple pinball at 130,000 bits, that's $1,300. That's $1,300. Yeah, Replica X at 128,000 bits, that's $1,200, $1,280. 12, $1,280. 12, $1, $1, $1, uh, $1, uh, you got uh, Kyle Bassa oh. at 11,500 bits. Uh, wow. That's $115. So when you do the dollar for dollar match, the bits are it's, it's upwards. I think over right now, like around 4,000 or maybe more in bits tonight with the dollar for dollar match. Oh, Joe Whoa. Fox, Joe lighten Fox. it up. Good Joe morning, Fox. Big bad Joe, 4,700 bits. Psychedelic. Nice and done, Joe Fox. Joe Fox just likes. Joe He's Fox is it. like, Fox man, man. Fox there's always fire. energy Joe hey, following a Joe Fox. Steve Ritchie armor, right? He did. He did. That which is he really did. cool. Uh, yeah, and actually, Steve was was very happy that uh, Joe picked up that armor. I think 400 bucks yeah. that he's already donated uh, to the stream. And and he's, I mean, Joe's always been a supporter of uh, what we've been doing, and, and a lot of people that have been offering content and just whoever very, he feels is uh, helping out. Yeah, he's a very generous, very nice guy. So we appreciate it, Joe. Thank you, buddy. Here's you, Joe. Yeah. Thank you for supporting pinball. Yes. Hey, I'll do Morning, a toast Joe. to Joe Fox. We'll give you a toast from the Capitol. Toast. To Joe Fox. To Joe Fox, Joe. The man, the myth, the legend. Woo. Dun, 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 dun. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Dun. Nice. Ay, ay, ay. So I would like to also comment that you use sparkle to clean your, your, uh, your top glass. That's huh? controversial. I saw that. I don't like that. You don't like the, the sparkle? Oh, I th yeah. the sparkle's to do the, free. To do your glass? What do you use? I like the like the. I don't put can. it on my play field. Oh, you yeah. use this Costco oh. with the blue can. Oh, yeah. You can get that at, like the dollar <laughs> store. So the, the, foam, the foam spray. Actually, um, just a quick uh, bit of trivia. My dad used Sparkle. My dad raced cars for a long time, but right. he used Sparkle on his uh, visor, yeah, on his helmet because it wouldn't fog. Oh, Ooh. see. So there I've seen Sparkle since the seventies, and yeah, it's uh, it's good to see it. I actually have a couple bottles of Sparkle, and when my mom sees it, she goes. That's what your father used for his <laughs> visor. So it's good stuff. I think it's kind of a, a Midwest thing. I don't think sparkles of it. I don't know. I, it's a it's a pinball thing for me. It's um, a Menards thing, really. Chris the Pin turns asking, he's like, how much did Jewel that Rick and Morty uh, <laughs> back class go for? The Rick and Morty back class went, I think, for seven hundred and twenty five bucks. Seven twenty or seven fifty. Seven fifty maybe. Seven fifty. So right it, around there. With the match, yeah. it raised fifteen hundred dollars hey, for profit pinball. Uh, Amazing. To interject, but I'm going to tell you guys what the and I'm sure some people are going to be mad at me for pimping it, but the p thing to buy is that Monster Bash uh, black and white play field. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. Out of every... Beautiful. That's when I came in, I was looking at everything. That thing is just... You'll never see another neat. one like that. It is unique. That sample play field. You're never going to see... You'll never see that again. I mean, because there's only one. So this is Scott uh, Drager. Uh, people are asking, who is the good-looking guy to Falgren's left? <laughs> oh, that's, uh, Scott Falgren, Drager. Who, how, Joe Fox, how do you know who I am? <laughs> he's, 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 he's part of the, uh, the pinball yeah, maniac. That's the, uh, oh, man, that, I, that monster bash play field. Yeah, that's the official page here. Do I have it right there? Is, uh, oh, Project yeah. Pinball. Yeah, right, that's so. it, man. Project Pinball, yeah. There, there's, a, is, there's a PayPal me link if you're going to. That gonna is a black and right. white. Was it the black oh, and white proof? Seriously? We're going. Yeah. I think this really? Is full yeah. inserts. You're, you're bidding? How much did you bid? Hey, guys, I'm going to report this right now. How much did you just bid? This guy's a maniac. What did you just bid? And this guy just went ahead and he just made a donation to Project Pinball Charities right now of $500 Whoa! to Project Pinball Charities. Yes. Yeah. Scott Drager, that maniac. Schwartz is you maniac. Right. Adam Schwartz May matches Schwartz that. Be with you. And that becomes a $1,000 $1, donation to everybody. Project Amazing. Pinball. Nice. Wow. Another round of applause. You freaking maniac. Woo. Nicely done. I thought, he was, I, thought he was, I thought he was going to bid on that black and white play field. That's huge. What's it at? That black and white play field is like up like around seven or eight hundred bucks. Yeah, I think it's about yeah. so sweet. It's already That's up so there. Nice. I mean, really, not to bag on the Rick and Morty back glass, but I'd rather have that black and white play field. <laughs> I, mean, <that> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're both one of a kind. Field. Yeah, I know. You know, the you Rick and Morty, I mean, that was... It was cool. Don't get me wrong. And, you know, Denise, you signed it and everything. And See, now Mark's saying, hey, I'm awesome, huge, Scott. Hey, I'm a huge fan go. of hero the status show, in here. That, that, that's a huge donation, man. I that appreciate that. Play, that's, that's, it. Got the that's nice. And it's, it's nice. cool. Like you go no, hang that's that awesome. on your wall, and people are gonna be like, "What? What is that?" Yep. 
Let's remember in a game. while we're here this morning. Let's remember what we're all doing and what we're all uh, doing with this fundraiser and, and what we're collectively trying to accomplish, and that is putting these pinball machines in these children's hospitals. Project Pinball helps rehabilitation. For a kid that's in a hospital, you're playing a pinball machine, and for the time being, you don't have to really think about where you are or what you're doing. You're focused solely on playing pinball. You know, pinball, <laughs> pinball can be fun, but it can also be therapeutic because slamming that ball around when you're angry mm. sure does make you feel a little bit better. You know what, one thing I like about it, it makes them move. Laps around the wards is replaced to a lap down to the pinball machine and standing for an hour. They have to use both hands. You kind of find yourself when you're playing pinball moving into it to play. And uh, So the kids can come in here, number one, stand, the ones are having that issue, but they can still hold on, so they get that strengthening. And then they, they're using both hands and eye and watching. So, uh, so it's going to be a great non-therapy therapy. Exactly. And having a good time. Pinball's great because it's lights, it's sounds, and you're so focused on getting that ball and hitting that target and getting those points that you're really not thinking about why you're in the hospital. You're able to distract your time away a little bit. Pinball is a way to get your mind for the moment off of whatever is happening in your personal life. Even if it is a bad situation, having to be in a hospital, seeing a pinball machine can make it all better. I just want to give back any way that I can. And my passion for pinball, I think, was a great partner for, you know, this giving. So remember, Project Pinball, Daniel Gordon. Spoiler and team over there, Project Pinball. Now, now another significant thing just happened. Now, we just, we just had some huge donations coming in from Joe Ooh. Fox. Another huge one from Scott Ooh, Drager. Hot here. Steve, you know what just happened Ooh. about five minutes ago? What's that? We hit halftime. Yeah. Oh. Hey! 11 hours and 55 more that minutes my, on that the That was clock. my goal. That's huge. Now, um... We've been up for over 24 hours at this point because we had woken up at 6 o'clock yesterday morning to resume our work days. So can we can we stay up for 36 hours, Steve? I'm not doing it. Oh, damn it. I'm going to need a nap here. I guess I'm eventually. staying for 36. You think uh, you're going to make it? You, you're not, you're no, are you going to do a nap free? I, I have no idea. I don't know. Just you need to play the Rocky it. theme I mean, like every four We're, we're going to see, ima imagine, see where the day takes us. Now, now think when we started. Yeah. Do that all over again. <laughs> From right now, basically, where do you see yourself in twelve? Where do you point. see yourself in twelve? Yeah, hours? but there's the, it's like it's like oh, point. that's a good way to put it. What is that? Yeah, I can't do point? it. You got, you got any good news for me there? See, Steve? You're gonna you get know, the you hots. Know, you're gonna get the hots where you feel all hot because you haven't slept enough. Well, he's right. It's not. It's not just staying up for twenty four hours. I noticed on the last we were up for twelve hours before the stream started. <laughs> the last game you know? of Elvira that we played, there two things happened to me. One. There was something going on in the house with, with the 696 uh, address. The lighting was going back and forth, and it looked like the address on a physical stationary piece of plastic was floating left and right. That freaked me out for a second. And then I was getting, like, trails on Sleep some of the balls. Deprivation. <laughs> it, it, was like, it was like I was in the wrong frames per second. It was like, do, 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 do. And I, and I was just like, is that camera blurry? Do you or know how much me? people pay for that kind of action? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, right. That's getting in January for free here. This is good. Clean, oh, my goodness. Fun. It's called oh my sleep goodness. deprivation. Hey, yeah, <laughs> I got a question. This redeemed highlight my message thing. That just started. What What is the deal with that? So I guess the way that it works is when you spend some time in a stream, you're awarded, like, uh, some type of points that you can then redeem to highlight a message or other things in chat. So Kaz is asking, is there an updated total? Uh, Got to be over 30K. Uh, so the reason we're not updating the total is because all the money that's going through right now is going through Project Pinball. And it's seven o'clock in the morning in Florida where Project Pinball is residing. So, so we're waiting for uh, Dan Spoiler to, I would imagine around nine o'clock, 10 o'clock his time. He's going to send us the updated total, and then we'll update the uh, the bits and the donations and that whole goal. I would imagine that we are uh, pretty close to 30K. We've got some donations coming in later uh, today. Let's get people excited. We're trying to stay awake. And let's, let's consider this, guys. The auction items that are on Facebook right now are like around $4,000 total. That's, that's cool. another $8,000. Yeah. We're at thirty three with that. 
So I, I don't think forty thousand dollars raises out of the did question. Did that include all the the the? It's all the match. That, the that, match is all. Did that include in the bits? In that yes. number that he gave you? Yes, so I'm going in. Now, this is the thing, because uh, during the stream, I, hey, we got okay. some more bits, and it's Mark with 100 bits. You Thank you, Mark. <laughs> I appreciate it, buddy. Something else, too. Um, I've got friend. My, my friend runs the Logan Square Foosball um, League, and they wanted to do something for you guys on Sunday night, and I don't know if they can roll that through. I tagged you on Facebook. I put up a thing, and he said, hey, yeah, Logan Square foosball team. Um, I mean, they had, he does big events down there. That's awesome. And so he said he wanted to do something on Sunday to basically throw in for you guys as well. If they make the donation to Project Pinball and they just note that they'd like it applied to the Special Winlet Charity fundraiser, um, it'll go towards our goal. I, I, I know Adam is going to match everything dollar for dollar until 6 o'clock for tonight. tonight. Okay. But we can still get credit for the fundraiser still, for the you know, effort. Hey, it's still giving in. So. Mark again. He's making Hi, it rain oh, bits here. He's the Plainfield Rockefeller of bits. Oh, that's Rodcom 69. Rodcom 69. Whoa. Still, still wow, here, man. Rodcom's been here on. for a long time. Come I appreciate on, it. Let's see what you got. So let's let's put another game on uh, Elvira. Yep. Yeah, do it please. up. Please. <laughs> um, but we need to uh, we need to replace the music with the Elvira, the old country song. What? <laughs> they asked for pizza. Holy smokes. Kaz got to go to work. I'll try to get online later and continue to support the stream. Amazing work. Amazing work yourself, Kaz. For those of you who don't know Brian Kosner, he is our special winlet correspondent for American Pinball. Yeah. Um, now, American Pinball, they've got a play field. If you're looking for these auction items, let, let's take a minute and go through those real quick. You want to? Can I do that? Yeah. Just let me show you what I have here. Yeah, just doing an extra Twitter share to get people out there. Yeah, thanks, man. I know Bradley Dornick put out a demo. He's one of my friends. Awesome. Saw him show up uh, show up for 50, which was awesome. Oh, see, so that's huge. And I'll get all those totals. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. This is that. I don't know. This is the Whitewood. Uh, well, this is a sample. Not the Whitewood. Field. Sample, yeah. Monster Bash sample play field. You got to turn that around because there's some authentic uh, wear on it. This is the only one in existence that uses for registration before their screen process for colors. It's the only one that you'll ever see of this from the Monster Bash remakes. That's amazing. That's awesome. Complete with inserts. All right. You will be the only person on your block with this play field. So that's that. Secondly. Yeah, I was going to say, let them up there. Boom. This is from Deep Root Pinball. This is a Raza test print, clear coated on pinball playfield plywood, all signed by staff, signatures, all throughout this playfield. There are signatures from everybody at Deep Root. That is a cool piece. They're all over the play field. So this is Raza. <clears throat> what do we got next? This is Wonka. Oh, we got a Wonka. Wonka play field, Jersey Jack pinball. Signed by the whole team at Jersey Jack. Very cool. Jersey Jack signatures are pretty rare. Woo, what I miss. Woo! Woo! We're just going through some of the play fields that are up for auction. If you want to bid Man. on these play fields, we're taking bids in, uh, for the next 10 hours and 48 minutes. The Raza uh, was we're going to end that before the, an hour before the stream ends, and you can go to our Facebook page, Special When Lit Pinball Podcast. While you're there, like the Facebook page and uh, click on the links that are in the uh, the first post you'll see, and look at these items. I also I have the Houdini Playfield inside that was dropped out today by uh, Dan at American Pinball, and that American Pinball uh, Houdini Playfield is signed by Josh Kugler and Joe Balser, wow. which is pretty nice. So we got some nice uh, items earlier today. The Scott Denise's prototype Rick and Morty backlash went for like 750 bucks. That was awesome. 
Eric Manier's uh, Whitewood number two for uh, Pirates of Caribbean went for like 550 bucks. That was awesome. That was- and then uh, Steve Ritchie came in. He was hanging out and he had like his first laser cut Lannister armor side rails for uh, Game of Thrones. And he signed those and autographed those. And those went for like 400 bucks. That so it took him 100 hours. 100 hours to design those. That's yeah, it's funny because at one point I said, yeah, it took him hundreds of hours. He's like, no, 100. And then at another point, I'm like, yeah, it was like 99 and a half hours, right? He's like, no, it was 100. He was like, like, <laughs> he was like very <laughs> specific. It took 100 hours for him to do that. So it is. Uh, I'll donate 100 bits if Scott can score. Oh, here we go. Uh-oh. 20 what? plus 1,000. Oh, that's 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 cruel. 20,000. <laughs> I'm going to go up there. I'm just going to do a million? game right on, now. I think on the plunge you get 20,000. So you're going to play a solo Show game here. I'm going to go solo game for Chris to hey, I think on the plunge you get 20,000 I'll tell you points, what. So. Um, just for the kids, if we get, uh, <laughs> 20, let's say, 500 bits, I will tell the Kid Rock Basement New Year's oh, Eve story. Jeez. The world famous only heard once Uh-oh. Chris, on uh, Special you. Inlet. Uh-oh. Was that Special Inlet or was that flipping out? That was Special Inlet. What do I need? Is that 20 million or 20,000, man? The story of me spending New Year's Eve at Kid Rock's house with Pam Anderson. I think you told that uh, on Flippin' Out stream, actually. No, it's not going to happen this no, time. It was before. What's your score? No, my score is bad. It's 179,000. No, you just needed 20,000 points. I think you probably meant 20 million. Uh, oh. Oh. The best part is, it's only 6 Oh, o'clock. 20 million. All right, so Scott, you're going to play on that Elvira until you hit 20 million points. All right. This is going to take a few games. Uh, Gamma Goat says, I sometimes wish that... I sometimes wish everyone would just get Gomez to do their signatures for them. That man knows how to sign. The Gomez signature is... Gomez is the best designer in pinball. And it, his signature is the most architecturally... Appealing signature in it's all. It's because of Gomez. It's practices like a Frank signature. Lloyd Wright yes. style signature. Actually, Franchi's signature. Franchi has a nice is signature. Bad to the bone. But, it, his, he but even his signature it. is stylized. Yes, absolutely. You know what I mean? So. Was dirty. I'm trying to think like Dirty Donnie and. The other uh, guys. Yeah, Dirty Donnie. Like, or, you know, Yeti. I'm, but man, Franchi's signature. Franchi, are you still awake? Is he still out there? Um, let's let's see if Franchi's here. Hold on a second. Let's see. Is Franchi still on? Oh, you get to see everybody that's watching. There oh, he yeah. is. Yeah. Well, I don't he's know. If, I don't know if he's physically here. Christopher Franchi, wake up. Wake up, sweet. But yeah, we can sneak attack. We know who stops in. Barlow, wake up. Get your to work, daddy. Scott. <laughs> Barlow, who wants some treats? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's who exactly wants a I'm cookie, saying. Barlow? <laughs> Chris, I'm like, all right, Scott, now your job is to get these uh, 500 bits. I need you to stay there. You know, Russian fan, yeah. 1974. Dang a dang a ding dang. 50 you bits. Freaking maniac. Those 50 bits become 100 bits. Thanks, Russian Thanks, man. Bits. Thank you, bud. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you. I'm at three. So, just to talk about Gomez, uh, Mr. Scott over there is oh, a that's big not gonna Gomez help me fan. Keep a good score if I got if you got oh, like I'm sorry. We'll talk about it. Yeah, right. I guess he's like Bill, I can't say his name. Yeah. <laughs> guys, 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 when he's playing, don't talk. Like, no, cuz we want to get 20 mil- be like, we want to get 20 mil- no. million so he can get the uh You're whatever distracting him, Dave. How come nobody's wearing headphones? Did I forget to take mine off or do did you know you forget why to put I'm not yours wearing on? headphones cuz I can hear you just fine. <laughs> Yeah, I've always asked why you guys wear your headphones. Headphones make my head look small. <laughs> that's what, you know what? she said. No, actually, mine are cranked way loud. That's why I, I took them off. No. Yeah, no, it's, it's all good. I think you hit Steve Ritchie's headphones. Oh, that might be it. Yeah, no, it was like, it was piercing. And I had them like half off, and I was like, yeah, I didn't, oh, try, I don't try, now. Them. try now there, I'm good. Uh, Chemo Savvy. Good. It's so great. All right. I guess I'll be the only cool one with the headphones on. How many bits is this for, Chris? So uh, I think he said it was five hundred thousand bits. Uh, no, is I think he said five hundred bits. Twenty million. Now, does that mean is that just one game, or is that in, like he can do multiple games? Twenty million. 
Chris, Wookie I'm not Jeep sure how that works. His own. Wookie Jeep. Morning. Good morning, Wookie Jeep. Wookie Jeep, you sent me one of the most classic emails ever regarding sending a check. I appreciated the honesty. That was awesome. <laughs> I don't know. So, so, so some, somebody that we know says, hey, I'm going to send in a check to Project Pinball. And then a couple days go by, and he's like, hey, you're not going to believe this, but I made the bonehead mistake of addressing the check to myself, and I just received it in the mail today. <laughs> but I'm resending it out, so I'm not going to name any names, Classic but I thought movie. it was pretty awesome. I had a friend in college that always accidentally did that with his electric bill. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought of this? Would, th would this work? If you wanted to send a letter to somebody somewhere else, could you just use their address as the return address and, and just put it in the mail with no stamp and they would just return it to that address? It depends on how, how far, far it is yeah. and who, if the guy at the post office is paying attention. Because I really would like to take advantage of the like, 32 cent. It's uh, that 30, it's not, you know what? It's not the 32 cents. It's buying the freaking stamp. Yeah, that's <laughs> my, true. my landscaper gets... gets Screwed because he's the only person I have. He cuts my grass. I have a guy who cuts my grass, but he's not on auto pay. So yeah, it's like I've got to write him a check. Oh, that's like tough. writing a check. I'm a man. My uh, checkbook still has. I'm on like number an one old address yeah, on exactly. it, but it still works. Yeah. Doesn't oh, matter. I've got my parents' Schomburg address from yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually yeah, like my yeah. dad's address from yeah. like a long time ago. But it still, still works. I mean, and I still have the same checkbook yeah. from like. 20 years ago. I still Maybe not my, quite yeah, that long. But, my Cleveland you know. Indian checks that I bought because I liked uh, I liked Major League. Dude, that's <laughs> awesome. That's, those are the checks I still have. <laughs> the yeah. Pedro Serrano turn. Uh, I have uh, Medieval Madness Royal Edition coming soon, hopefully. You have, Medi you have Medieval Madness Royal Edition checks? Coming. No, the, oh, the, the pin. Oh, <laughs> that would well, be checks would be cool. Now we're talking. After he writes now that check, talking. they all become Medieval Madness Royal Edition checks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm feeling it this one. I believe that's called fraud. Ah, <laughs> uh, good morning, guys. Thanks everybody for sticking around or, yeah. or just Who's tuning here? in and Anybody? joining us. We maintain a nice little uh, group. Yeah, we need today. a roll call. We are just over the halfway point, so that's that's a good thing. Hot, well, yeah, now we're in the back nine, right? They so now, me in to get yeah, the energy. it's like you already made the road trip. You've picked up your pinball machine, and now you're on the way home. And the way home is always shorter than yeah, the way you could, there. You could tell so. one tire is getting a little flat, maybe, and you you know your your check engine lights going off, AC and ain't working <laughs> right. but is you're it, gonna get home no matter what. Chris, the pin turns like uh, I believe that's called postal fraud, Ken. So maybe you don't want to. <laughs> Like, oh. Yeah, that's that's fun. Guys, have you ever gone to, to get yourself out of being incarcerated? And, uh, Hurry, turn on some uh, right. some copyrighted music so this is not uh, recordable. Right. Right. <laughs> what I didn't it, know uh, if that was going to work. Scott, what were we talking about earlier? I don't what answer that, questions. Oak Ridge Boys? I don't answer boom questions. Ba, boom, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> oh, this water is amazing. This Woo! water is amazing, too. I've been hydrating with this. Oh, you got some White Claw? Hey, how many carbs? Chris. In the White Claw? Yeah. Two. Two and bond and Viv. I thought there was zero. One. Well, you got ripped Everything's off. Everything's got to have a carb. No. No, what even about, like, air has carbs? like a quarter of a carbon. Yeah, everything. Not everything has carbs. <laughs> like no, your oxygen has carbs. Mayonnaise doesn't have carbs. It's got a little carb. It's got a touch. It'll say. Well, a touch doesn't matter. Well, you're not, you're not does, counting up. Well, are you like scooping mayonnaise on keto you like you yeah, are, yeah, like I'm getting really, pudding? I'm like, like, I'm like grilling you, mayonnaise by itself, and it's buying, going through my grill grates, and I scrape it off when it's charred, and I just eat you're it. Like like, you're like brick. stirring it in your coffee. <laughs> oh, you that, can't that, have the that, sugar. That, that, Chris, no, no, no malort. He's on keto. Tonight, this morning, slash last night, whatever day it is or time it is. Yeah, well, I was trying to throw out the malort before I got here because I want to make sure it was empty before I got here because I won't drink it. Hey, Ron Dog Chair, Hunter Bates. Yeah, buddy. Nice job, Ron Dog. I had some scotch last night, though. What do you guys drink for scotch? Oh, there's some stuff uh, I'm drinking any. I don't Fa want to uh, Fowler brought over a, a, a bottle. I think you guys classy guy. You may have killed that stuff. bottle. It may you may have killed it. No, I don't know if we killed it, but all right. So Scott, I'm looking at it right now. Drager's got he's coming up on 12 million points here. That's a ball save. That's a ball save. What are you on ball oh, three? Save. Yeah, this is a, it's not. I this, gotta pull this, out a Cromwell ball three. Here. This is a ball three game oh. though. Oh, Scott. you got ripped off on that one. Yep. This is a ball three game. 
I'm in suspense. The suspense is killing me. So Bill Webb came in to work the graveyard shift. How? I love that it. That we both stayed up through. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you guys rolled through it. And we never I, took advantage of, of him never, working the graveyard no, shift. No. Like, what were we thinking? I don't we know. Could be like, that made I no sense. We could have been waking up nice and fresh, had a pot of coffee nice going. Oh, my Lord, shot. I, never so took, it, yeah. I never took my 30-minute shower. Sometimes it's nice just to close your eyes. Ken, and I just saw the trailers from the address. What's I, that? The, the numbers on the address. You're right. <laughs> oh, did they See move? The thing? Yeah, yeah. All right, good. So it wasn't just me. Crazy. I oh. thought I was having a stroke. Because Drager's well-rested. It looked like that was shifting back and forth. like nine. I tried to sleep, and then you guys kept talking about oh, cool Cri- stuff. Hey, Chris, cool listen. I oh, yeah, Keith Johnson had a, oh had a bunch God. of good stories. Keith Johnson. If you want to do a documentary, you should start it with Keith Johnson sitting at this bar. He's pretty at messed like up. At like 12.30, like just lighting people up. See, now this and is why you guys should be wearing your headphones, because not I'm picking up any of you. Can't hear any of it. Where's, uh, where's Chris the right. Bits, man? Okay. Right. Chris, Chris, Chris the Bits right is saying that in the closing hour, he's got bits for Malort shots. Yeah, we're, what? That's we're at, we're at not gonna. Hey, we're twenty-one at, uh, million uh, points. Closing Scott hour. Drager oh, hit the Chris the Pin Turn challenge. Chris the Pin Turn challenge. Scott, if hey he could up. get twenty million on Elvira, he would go ahead and throw five hundred bits into the Project Pinball charity pool. Pay up. Five hundred bits become one thousand bits, so that that five dollar donation becomes ten. So Chris, uh, Scott nailed it. It's time for you to open million. up your Willy Wonka jacket and pay the man. Chris the Pin Turn, who was. Uh, he accepted the award for homebrew pin on behalf of uh, Nightmare Before Christmas oh, at uh, last year's TPF during the Twippies. Um, and he's here tonight in chat, making a very rare uh, public appearance on the special one lit stream. Hey, nicely done, man. You took care of business. Great job. See, I'm, now, I'm so proud to know you. He got, yeah, he, you did. he got kind of like a mini pin quest because it was like, hey, if you can do this. We're going to, hey, look. Oh, Chris Bam. the Pinter with a thousand bits. Ooh, and you he know, doubled it up. Ken with the match. 2,000 bits, Dave. Wow. Nicely done. Hey. Hey. Chris. Multiplying things by two. That, yeah, was, that was almost a dollar for every million points scored there. Nicely done, Scott. Nicely you know, done, Chris the Pinter. It's always good to have Ken around when you need to figure out what you want to tip the waitress because he knows how to do the math. Right. I just, <laughs> I just, whatever the meal is, I double it. Double it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> You just move the decimal and double it. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Chris. It's magic. I don't even move the decimal. You don't. I've got an app on my phone. It's called Calculator. Wow. And you click it, and you can figure out stuff without having to think. Oh, I that. need one of those. That's, That's pretty like awesome. What's it called? Episode. I got a fancy Download phone, though. It. It's an Android. Wow. Uh, you guys want to play a little four-player, Elvira? Yeah, let's do it. What the heck? Do uh, you want me to start, or do you want to start down there, Steve? Whoa. I just want to keep I in think uh, Steve wants you to start because it looks like he's... Making he's looking at the Stranger the Things no, teaser video over there. No, I'm good. I'm talking. Rawr. I don't know. Oh, Rorden's Rorden hitting you? Oh, I feel like uh, hey, if anybody's hitting me, you might have an uh, issue my with phone is. Twitch or something, maybe. I don't know. What? I'm yeah. having an issue with Twitch. Rorden is? I don't know. Maybe not. What's his problem? I want to know what this total is. He can't talk? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what this total is, too. Fired up. You know, I think it's going to be really. As soon as Project Pinball checks in, we'll be able to update that total. That total hasn't moved in, uh, I want to say. It was like 1230. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. It yeah. might have been before that, like yeah. seven hours, maybe almost eight hours. What are you having for breakfast, Chris? What's Tennessee breakfast? Next Ooh, okay. just yakking. Oh, well, that's not the next stage. I hope there's okra involved, Chris, because whenever I think Tennessee, I think okra. I think other things too, but it's getting into the six thirty hour, and it's kind of a family show now. <laughs> right. Seven thirty. Seven thirty on the East Coast Chris already. Chris just hit it. Steve just hit the hell yeah. out of that. Oh, Steve. Well, we're taking. The advice oh, yeah. there. That was like a shake weight type dispensary of the. Uh, yeah. That was kind of weird. That was kind of weird. I guess I'm out. And then, and then there was a deposit that was made on your hand, which made it extremely <laughs> right. weird. Uh, that was midnight talk now. Go but on. oh yeah, now we're back. W K. We're back. In the morning. <laughs> Breakfast talk. You're back. It's all about the bacon. Clean it up before uh, oh, before anything That's bad happens. Something. So what time's like the you heavy hitter are. guest? I I Mike, now. nine o'clock. Uh, okay, I'd Joe Katz comes in Whoa, at this ten. Is hey, like, really, Joe. Joe's a lot of fun. Yeah, Joe's a good guy. Yeah. Dwight's coming in later. Jason Fowler's coming in. Rod Sharp. Dude, Rod, and so glad you're here. Uh, you don't hit the, uh, oh, the there you are, buddy. Oh, I don't do tournaments, man. I've never been to Pac-Man. It's fun. 
Never been there. First Tuesday. Don't do January because I'm going to miss nice. the worst. I'd like to do the selfie tournament. I'm making yeah. better progress. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm <laughs> the bottom half. It's half a salted hog, fried okra, grits, and greens. There we go. I only know what like half of those things oh. are. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay, Dave. I need that every like about every three and a half minutes. Yeah, I just uh, uh. <laughs> Turbo hey. Graphic Seven. Ryan Kuiper in the house. Fifteen hundred bits. Up, buddy? Now, Ryan Kuiper, your fifteen hundred bits. Thank you so much. Become three thousand bits with the dollar for dollar match. Oh, Ryan Kuiper, Dave Brennan, Roger Sharp, and Jason Fowler will be streaming live on this channel at eleven o'clock. And they'll be streaming all the hits. <laughs> all the hits. All the hits. Uh, as they come, well, as at least uh, David and uh, and Ryan come out of the uh, Milwaukee area. If you haven't followed TurboGrafx7 on Twitch already, we've been speaking of them all night long. You're going to want to follow Ryan and Dave on TurboGrafx7. Check them out. When is Dwight? Dwight's uh, excitement and passion for pinball is contagious. So this is what's going on. Um, we've got Joe Katz coming in. And he's the lead programmer on Willy Wonka from Jersey Jack Pinball. He's coming in at 10 o'clock Central Time. Okay, so right now it's uh, 6.30 Central Time. Uh, Dwight is going to come in and overlap with him a little bit. So I think Dwight will be here at 10.30. And he'll then overlap into the Roger Sharp, Ryan, uh, Dave, cool. and Jason stream. So we'll have a full house. If I am going to take a little break at some point, that's the time for me to do that. Because... I know Ryan knows how to, if there's a technical difficulty, he can take care of it. That being said, Ryan, you're going to be impressed. We're 12 hours, 51 minutes, 37 seconds into the stream. We've not had one failure, and we're running HDMI wireless um, on two of our cams tonight. So it's pretty awesome. I was really counting on some of this equipment failing so that we can end the stream early, and it's just too damn dependable. <laughs> <laughs> but it's and pretty we're awesome. 26,000. Oh, shut down. <laughs> Turbo Graphics is like, I'm already very impressed. I'm really looking So if it crashes, it's going to be on your watch, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I'm kidding, man. What'd you do? I'm, I'm really, kidding. I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing Roger. No, it's yeah. going to be awesome, Roger man. Roger Sharp, if you just let him sit back and eat, he yeah. will just yeah. unload uh, information on you and all of his interviews. It always seems like he runs out of time before he runs out of... Well, this product. is the thing. It, it's like you can you can consume all that Roger offers because he's not boring. He's just a wealth of knowledge. And we talked earlier. Yeah. He will forget more about pinball than all of his combined will ever probably know. He's already Absolutely. forgotten that. Um, just a good, outstanding individual, great ambassador for pinball. And this guy's working hard behind the scenes, getting all the license that we love on these games. He's the man that saved pinball. Exactly. I mean, how do you? Beat that. I don't know how you beat that. Now, and again, it was a great experience seeing seeing Roger Sharp, Ryan Kuiper, right. Dave Brennan, and Jason okay. Fowler streaming at Expo. My turn? Yeah. Okay, let's do this. You're up, talky man. Rodden. Uh, I got the... Rodden. You know what Steve Rich <coughs> told me buddy. tonight? We'll he, see goes, he goes, Ken, you've got the gift of gab. <laughs> I didn't know how to take it. Who said that? Richie, Steve Richie. Uh. <laughs> you've got the gift of gab. It's like, oh, sorry, man. And Steve doesn't even hear that I was well. gonna say, uh, So for him to say that I'm talking too much, looked at him and gone, I'm I was like, sorry, oh, snap, Steve, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> Rorden, thank you so much for stopping out and spending the night with us. Um, Rorden's been on for you the entire are, time. Yeah, Rorden has actually yelled at me and told me to go to sleep earlier. Hours. But it is like now 11.30 in Rorden's world. So, <laughs> hey, man, I hope uh, those fires don't get you and uh, you have a smile on your face when you wake up, brother. 13, 13 hours, hours. raw dog, man. Hey. That's the strangest things I've ever heard somebody say is, I hope those fires don't get you. No, they're having, like, yeah. fire issues in Australia right no, now. No, I know, but it was fire. just so odd to hear that. And koalas with chlamydia issues. Cool. <laughs> hope the STDs Cheers, and the brush fires don't get you. Good night. Yeah, that score thing on the bottom is like... What's your, what do you see? No, look. It's weird on the bottom. These guys look like... Something. It's funny because you guys don't see what we see because you're. Ah, uh, oh, right, yeah, see, yeah. See, there's yeah. this thing right there, and then you hit it, and it's like. Oh, nice one. So, like, one point, because I've been on. 
So I get to claim like points sure. for launching. Oh, I, that's it cool. Wasn't like yeah, that. Rondo. He's cool. on fire. Those interviews are amazing. The same Stern and Harry Williams ones. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh. We need more of those. Right? You Don't know, they have more in the can than just a? Uh, actually, Thanks. Scott's got yep, some yep, amazing video from the uh, pinball. <laughs> yeah. That's your video, the, those DVDs you got. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I donated to the uh, Pinball Hall of Fame, and they sent me the promo videos for, like, everything from the 90s. It's absolutely amazing, and uh, it's absolutely amazing. That's really all I can say. If you're a pinball fan, that that's really cool stuff. Yeah, usually if people come over... Uh, usually when I come over, yeah. you put on one of the... How many DVDs are there? I think there's three or four. Yeah. And they're right. DVDs, they're not even Blu-rays. Skip the house, Rams had boats. Yeah. <laughs> Driving it like it's a rental there. Oh. Steve. Am I up now? Yeah. All right, here we go, everybody. Dr. Dude. Hey, here we go. <sighs> Excellent X-ray. Sorry, what, what's the damage yeah. looking like on this game? Going into ball, ball two. All right, everybody. Uh, yeah, let's be ball two. Ooh, warning. warning! Right on oh, that. Man. Oh, During your ball to save too. Look at that. So do a roll call. Anybody who's up uh, and actively participating. I have some in the chat. Yeah. What, what's your favorite thing to uh, eat for breakfast? It's getting on breakfast time. It is breakfast time. Okay, kids. Time to take or is it pizza time round there. two? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always time for pizza. Yeah. My favorite thing for breakfast is a nice IPA. Ah, yes. Does sound tasty. At How did you guys get Saturday. here? Did you, uh, did you drive, Scott? Yeah, I drove. Cool. It's okay. I'm only one beer. I'm fine. Yeah, well, Scott's my handler for the day. Yeah, for sure. I got to drop off a uh, Black Knight to my father's house. It's the uh, oh, birthday oh. slash Christmas gift. Good morning. Um. Good morning. Good morning, Replica. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, oh, check this oh, out, guys. Prize time. Yeah, it could be yours. Are you checking that for pooling? There's some rippling. <laughs> rippling, no pooling. Oh, it's a class, a class two ripple. I'm surprised we haven't come up with a scoring system for ripples and dimples yet. We're all pretty terrible. Yeah, right. The whole, all this talk about like ripples and pools. I mean, come on. Arr. Replica X. Oh my gosh. Good geez. morning. The the giant Good has awoken. The giant replica has X. Well, I love it. Like, just the presence of a Replica X is here. Good morning, Replica X. Replica X has dominated the piss out of the stream for, for ever. Yeah. It was awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Replica X. Words cannot express our gratitude on, on what you've contributed to the stream and Project Pinball. So thank you so thank much. Thank you, Replica X, for all that you do. I love hearing about the industry pre-70s. The C2C series is awesome, coast to coast. Uh, so are a bunch of the uh, top cast interviews with people like uh, Kordak and, and Nyans. I We aired uh, a segment from um, Top Cast with um, Python Angelo, and it was classic stuff. I highly recommend uh, listening to Topcast. Uh, absolutely. And oh, I'll be making a replacement donation. What was that? What, what, what did I? I don't know. Hold on. We we got technical difficulties. Oh shit! TV HDMI. Oh, you know what? No, it's probably the remote. Can you grab me that remote? Oh, that's. Oh, you dropped it out of. That's good stuff. Beer trip. Sorry. I ruined Christmas. All right, we're back. Easy. Hey. Easy. That one beer. He drank one beer. That's my. He's my 
Fluffy Akita Dog says, is there some way that you could simulate different physics on a real pinball machine other than just changing the angle it's leaning? You can put uh, Vaseline magnets. on the play field. You can you can spin it around on a disc at Pinball Life. like Or magnets. They did that at... Uh, to make the physical pinball bounce around like uh, in Pinball Dreams, 1992, uh, for example. I, I don't know the reference, so I don't know that I can speak of that. Uh, it's an interesting question, though. If anybody in chat knows the answer or wants to offer an opinion or an option, that'd be pretty awesome. You good? Cool. You. Yeah, I'm good. No, I'm just... I'm, I, I was know. whistling to the 1992 Amiga reference. Does anybody here know what an Amiga is? Raise your hand. I mean, I do. That's a Commodore. Program. Commodore Amiga, yeah. It's Commodore Amiga was like right after 64. It was like 128 and an Amiga, but... Fluffy oh, Amiga okay. Dog. So, all right. So, from from where I'm standing, I didn't see the parenthesis behind Amiga, and I thought it said uh, Amigal, and I didn't know what an Amigal was. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. like, I don't understand the reference. Sleep Wisdom to the Wise says, Clay's top cast are awesome. Love the one with Pat Lawler with Twilight Zone. We drove it off the cliff. Absolutely. So, Mark, uh, do you I think it's possible? Because you're the only person that has played that game other than Fluffy Akita Dog. That we uh oh, my sound. Sound dead. Do we lose audio? Mark, can you hear me? There should be something coming out of the headphones for this time. Oh, there it is. Oh, I just said again. Hey, we're back. Yeah, that light well, I off. did no, jinx the uh, technical difficulties, but... Well, you got to keep it Yeah, on ever too. since then... Uh, it's not the stream, though. It's just... Well, uh, and the gear has been running for, like... The gear has been running for 13 hours. hours. Yeah, so that's... Elvira's been running for, like, 12 hours. And not a failure yet. <laughs> <laughs> Equipment wise. Oh, uh, we just had we just had a follow there. Uh Pinballer. Pinballer. 99. 99. Thanks for following. Thank uh, you. Special win Pinballer. Link. Pinballer. Welcome to the stream. Nice job. Good morning, Pinballer. Audio's good. Wookie Jeep's here. Wookie Jeep's keeping an eye on the deal. It's so weird. Like uh, some of these guys we've been talking to, like when we started the stream at six, they've since gone it. on, had dinner, hung out with their families, put their kids to bed, slept, woke up, took showers, vacuum, jumped back on. Done the dishes. We have not left the room. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're guys, still here. Same it's just clothes, it's so odd. Same like spot. we're listening, uh, we're, we're we're conversing with people that have now started a fresh new day, and we're still uh, finishing up our first efforts of the day prior. Uh, Studio C is much like a casino right now for you the know, kids. You know, sun's up. Have you seen the sun? No, I just keep pumping fresh air in here, so nobody gets tired. It is pretty. There's a big fan here, and I'm not talking about me. There, <laughs> that's right, man. It's uh, it's my poor man's version of big ass fan. Mm. I bet you that thing. It moves some air, but it's it's loud. It's like, like a turbine engine. It like, sounds like a big fan. It does. Audio's good. Uh, you guys are total beasts. Joel Reeves, you're a beast. Things that go bump. Check out Joel Reeves and Dana Reeves' documentary on Spooky Pinball. Things that go bump. You can find it on Vimeo. You can find it on uh, Amazon. You can find it on uh, iTunes. Absolutely, check it out. Who's bringing breakfast? Well, it really depends on what you consider breakfast. Uh, wisdom to the wise. Mm. I've been drinking breakfast since I got here at four thirty. Four? Yeah, you guys have been here for two hours already. Oh my God, we outshot the slot. Two hours. Gotta bring it up. It's all good. Man. So anybody, uh, did anybody else on the stream pick up a Rick and Morty? And what are your feelings about it? Because it's still pretty hot. Ken, Ken, I think it's uh, my turn. your ball there, buddy. It's becoming more <laughs> increasingly more difficult for me to get up, get out of the chair, walk to the pinball machine without disconnecting something. And it's because I'm tired, but not tired of pinball. There was like a study where they made that guy stay up for like a week and he lost his mind. Dude, what was that guy that just set the Guinness Book of World Records? He played uh, pinball for like 32 hours and he couldn't take his hand off the game. That's wild. But he got like 10 minutes or something for every 60 minutes. 
or five minutes for every yeah, 60 five minutes, minutes or something. I know uh, I'm sitting in a chair I'm like and I'm drinking and eating. Yeah. And it's yeah, it's and you get to pee. True. Like you get to you're you're free to roam about like what you're doing right now. That guy who broke the world record dreamed of. Look, like literally, he had to be here like the whole time. Yeah. yeah. And like he could turn around probably and yeah. take, a, take a quick break. And he probably peed in a bucket. Probably did. <laughs> no, I think you still get breaks. I We're gonna auction off that bucket tonight. <laughs> on come, the stream. Come on. Fully stream. loaded. Do it Ooh. for the kids. It's for the kids. <sighs> um, didn't you know? Oh. I think uh, I you. forgot who it was. Somebody, and I want to. I think I know who it is. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name, but I'm not positive. I don't want to say it. But he won the. He won a Metallica. He was in a contest where you had to keep your hand. on Yeah, the I hand. remember that. That was a couple, a few years was, ago. I think it was Andy Bagwell, and I'm not. A few Andy, years ago, if right? If it wasn't you, I apologize for saying your name. But yeah, like I talked so to him. So you about couldn't it. leave. You couldn't. You couldn't. You could take, like, basically they gave him breaks, but, like, you couldn't take your hand off of this Metallica pinball. And uh, he said it ruined his life. Like, it wrecked him for a long, long time. Like, I was like, that's awesome. Like, like man, physically I or like emotionally? Just everything. Like, he said it just screwed him up. Well, how hey, long did he have his hand on there? Scott, it was like, I think it was like 18 hours or something crazy. Like, they gave him like you a 10-minute Do you that. remember, hey, did was it Bagwell who did the... The guy the put his hand on a pinball machine for 18 hours and ruined his life? It was a contest because it was just, because he was stuck there for so long. It may have been long. I can't I hope remember it's that. longer. Like, there's like POWs, right, that go through torture and stuff. This guy's like, I had to touch a Metallica pinball machine for 18 hours. I had to stand in the <laughs> shade for 14 hours. Right. There's a guy in a tiger cage right now pulling bamboo out from under his nails No, like I know. The 70s. But that being said, like, that that is punishing for us because we, we we're not like into the like we're exposed old. elements. Yeah, we're um, weak. Yeah, no, I can see that. It just this other guy played pinball for thirty six hours or something like that for the Guinness. What game did he play? Yeah, I don't know. Um, Black Knight Sword of Rage. Really? Yes. That's like was a million least, games. Was that a premium? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, full How disclosure. Good. Mr. Drager here has a, uh, a Swords of Rage Pro. Pro. You like it? I love it. Well, be better. All right. I think the premium is too slow. I don't like that upper play feel. But it does. It does bring me one of my favorite things in pinball that I like to, to knock around. And the plastic play field should probably become the default instead of wood. They don't need to. Be oh, able, I see what you're saying. Uh, that that play field's wearing pretty well when you see the premiums or LEs out there. You um, know, you don't have dimpling with the. Uh, it's like, it, it's like a polycarbonate, like a is that like it's like a Lexan yeah. playfield, right? Top. Well, and then it's, when you look at like hard top, mm -hmm. that's incredible. That's a great product, right? It really is. Right. Um, I've got a Black Knight playfield that I wanted to do, and then I ended up selling it to somebody who sat next to me before I got it to playfield. Oh, in. but I've seen uh, those Point hard top of contention. No, not at all. I oh, sold okay. It to I, him. I had to get rid of it, and he was like, "I'll take it." And something. I was like, "Well, you want the playfield?" And no, so I've got a. If anybody wants a swords, uh, a black knight, ready when, uh, you, are. Ready when you are, top, Santa oh, or Steve. Is that me? Santa's Steve, you're up. Right? No, who's up? No, you're two, Dave. I have player two. Well, here I am. Yeah. Wait, yeah. who's player two? Dave, I am player two. Oh, we went reverse. reverse. Yeah. Okay, okay. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, I always, reverse. You walked right out. I got confused. I did. I know we were talking about what happened. Plastic play fields. I think yep, yep, it three, happens. It happens. Three, uh, three oh. layers of plastic would probably be about right. And oh, you can put paper world. or sticker graphics. What's in the, the middle difference between Wisconsin and Australia? Really, really. Really. Yeah. never wears. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. never wears. Yeah. And, and if it does have a problem, you can replace the top layer. Yeah. Huh? And you can yeah. have like depth. If you have like layers, you can have different stickers on at different levels. Give you like a three-dimensional uh, effect or, or depth. I can see that. And it doesn't have to be as thick as wood. Right. Some of the people say, no, no, it's really expensive to buy. And like, no, three thin layers is pretty cheap. One thick layer is expensive. And but you can stack that on wood. Yeah, if you need or yeah. carbon fiber. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. Carbon fiber, never huh. dimple, never. Like oh. your style, Scott. Ooh. I want to talk about those crazy rules, like where multi balls, your points go down. Oh yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Very nice. All right, no <laughs> till. Wisdom to the wise is asking who was bringing the breakfast. I know it's not Bill Webb. Because he just <laughs> left. Mm. I know it's not Zach Many, because he's literally snuggling with Jason Fowler 
and a king-size bed at the Fairfield Inn. While he's doing a TNA deal in the parking lot. For, tho for those of you that are... Uh, that, <laughs> that might want to talk to a Jason Fowler or a Zach Many, you can call the Fairfield Inn <laughs> in St. Charles, <laughs> and you can ask for the room of Jason Fowler, and you can let them know that uh, Special Winlet sent you. Um, <laughs> world record uh, pee bucket now up for <laughs> I don't know if, if, if he was from Australia. Oh, he, yeah, no, so the world record holder on Black Knight Sword of Rage or pinball playing in general is absolutely from Wisconsin. In fact, he was interviewed on the Poor Man's Pinball podcast. They, they had a little uh, a little thing, tidbit with him, kind of talking about how they did that. I, I believe uh, Ian, or no, I think Drew conducted that interview. Forget my ignorance, but who's in the studio right now? With you, Steve, and Ken. Well, Santa Claus. Steve Ritchie's Look here again. He came back. He looks what? different in the morning. <laughs> no, this, so this is Dave Falgren. And on the machine right now, Scott Drager. These are the, the pinball maniacs, local guys from uh, Plainfield, Illinois. We do and have some acting credits. You may have seen us in films such as Why Are You Buying So Many Pinball Machines? And I'm going to leave you if you buy another right, pinball machine. Right. <laughs> the, uh, and, and, and I'm sure you know these guys from social media. Um, Dave Falgren's in just about literally every pinball post that's on Facebook. Like, there's Not always anymore. a Dave Falgren no, I'm post. Busy. I'm, I'm, I'm on the, sh I'm on the uh, flipping out. I call. I'm, 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 I try to call in every show. Uh, no, yeah, he's I'm, always I'm on default, flipping out. I'm that's default true. 520 on the on the stream. We're not so. promoting that channel tonight, though. That no. No, well. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> We're only playing his games. Uh, like, Scott Drager, uh, he <laughs> yeah. he's, he offers the product Buzz Kills, which helps with those uh, faulty coil stops. Scott has also got uh, Pinball Chaos. Pinball he's Chaos. I keep a, forgting uh, about that blog page, which is very. Uh, he it's got some, some heavy hits. He takes actually. It's the least hit uh, webs. Uh, what, Scott, what's your thing for Pinball Chaos? The least looked at. It's the least visited website in pinball. In pinball. Well, that's great. There goes my credibility, guys. Thank you so much. Scott, uh, well, yeah, it's <laughs> it's six fifty a.m. and you've been up for a while, and you let us in your garage, so your credibility. So, uh, first of all, it's not a garage it's studio. What, I'm sorry. What did we do? <laughs> <laughs> it's there's a black. Let's get, let's get some terminology. Uh, there's a black straight curtain here. and some. Brick and some They're right. Barn Don't Burnwood. look behind the curtain. Hey. <laughs> Nothing to see there. I was at a Christmas party last weekend, and uh, they had these Polaroid pictures on a thing. And I'm sitting there looking at them, and uh, the hostess's husband came up to me and goes, Don't look behind the curtain. Don't look behind. And I was like, I'm looking at the picture. It's like, like Ren and Snippy. Don't, do Don't press the button. And I was like, oh. Don't press the button. It is I. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> um, Gamma Goat is asking for more information about the buzz kills, uh, Scott, while I go ahead and huh. pretend to play pinball. I love that. Oh, All hello right, there. Oh, hello. Thanks, uh, Pappy Swills, for following the channel. Like that. Appreciate Pappy that. Swills. Pappy Swills. This Swills. Swills for you, Pappy Swills. <clears throat> oh, the buzz kill. Uh, I was noticing I had a lot Speaking of flipper of buzz. Mic. I had a lot of flipper buzz on my uh, Metallica machine. So I would be playing, and anytime I'd do a trap, it was going bzzz. And right now, there's a lot of coil stop problems. Yeah. Um, so... I looked up and there was a somebody had a fix on on pin side. They went to AutoZone and bought some gasket material and just cut a uh, cut a washer the size of the coil with a hole the size of the coil stop, and that worked. I did it, but I, I'm, I'm really terrible at cutting things, so it looked uh, it, it looked like a kid's art refrigerator art yeah, project. Right. It was bad. Uh, so I went out and I got a couple hundred uh, neoprene washers cut the same. So I have. Uh, I always carry him with me. Just carry him with you. Nice, dude. Nice here. Well, I'll donate him to the cause. Sweet. <laughs> no, it's a great idea. So if you got a buzzing stern, just stick him between the coil and the coil stop. I usually put spring washer on the other side. So it keeps the tension, keeps the pressure. Yeah. It's a little more tension, a little more pressure. So you're not going to get the buzz. Very it's, cool. It's some interesting haters on that. That was pretty funny. Somebody's like, so this is what it come to, people trying to take noise out so they could hear the music. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. It's kind of like a, a, a real buzzing technique. Dirty yeah, pool. It's, that it's should there. be a dirty pool reward. Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, I got, I got some of those. I think they should put that in there. Maybe somebody on the stream can bug a Lyman on that. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Because it feels good to make that shot. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Have we auctioned off the Houdini Playfield yet? 
Uh, no, no, it's on Facebook. That is on Facebook. Go on Special One Lit Pinball Podcast on Facebook. All the bidding uh, for those play fields are going to be done through there. Which end? Those end tonight at 6, too, right? The final. It ends today at uh, 5 o'clock because the stream ends at 6. We're going to end those an hour early so we can uh, okay. account for the uh, donations well, and cool. credit those to the stream. So are they going to put so up at 5 o'clock Central Time? Is there going to be a Twippy category for best uh, pinball charity stream? That, I highly doubt. It seems like a good category, though. We'll talk to, uh, to Inter- Jeff, Be- Jeff Patterson. Best pinball charity stream in a garage in St. Charles? Yeah. Yeah, we, we could maybe make it a little bit more broad than that. In yeah. Illinois. Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois. Some guy in Effingham. Oh, like Kane taken. County. That's, yeah. that's broad enough. <laughs> yeah, they're going to stream from... With the- IP dress of... Uh, <laughs> Stream from the Kane County Food Market. Yeah. I went there the, the December one and picked up some uh, driving movie speakers. Oh my gosh, I haven't been there in so long, dude. Yeah. I haven't been there forever. What do we, we got yeah. here? Scott, you need a you need a twippy nomination there. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the buzzkill, eh? That's uh I like the name. They're coming for you, Barbara. They're coming for you, Barbara. So if Ken's like got another ball three blow up, what's the score up to? I can't see that. I, I can't see. Uh, is that like 32 maybe? 33? Multiple! Elvira is a fun shooter. But once, once Ken I love this game. I love this machine, man. What? I love El- Elvira. It's, it's a lot of fun. I wonder what the original ramp was like, though. You know... Because there was some talk about the original ramp being quite a bit yeah, different. Yeah, we were talking about it earlier, and, you know, would you want to do a mod with it? It is what it is. It's, yeah. That's the game. That's yep. it. Like, I wonder what the original Mona Lisa looked like. Ooh, looked like she, Leonardo she da Vinci. A, maybe she looked like an... A, yeah. <laughs> it had a... Maybe. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chirping. Ken's chirping. Pinballer 99. The temperature in the garage is a comfortable, I want to say, 69, 72 degrees. No, I wouldn't go that. i go like 67. Really? 66. Maybe. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling warm in my Santa suit. So, uh, yeah, you get the Santa suit, man. Happy Swills. Thanks, Thanks for the bits. Happy Swills. Happy Swills. Woo. And his own. Swills. Cheers, buddy. Hey, Pappy Swills, why do you call yourself Pappy Swills? Why am I doing that? It's always I, nice I, to know that story. Go make some Pappy and Diet Coke. You got a match. Who, was, Breakfast. Uh, who had 54 million on that game? That was, that was nice. Not I. Somebody did. That was the D-Man. That was that Scott was D. Nice in the job, place man. to be. How are you getting warmed up? Scott's tearing it up right now. That's the problem I have. because Happy you can't, I can't say Scott because I know like four pinball Scots. And I can't say Scott D because there's two pinball Scott Ds. Oh. Now I'm the least important one. Well, I just call you Drager. Yes, cause, and yeah. Drager sounds cool. My kid thinks you're a dragon. <laughs> Rock's like, oh. <laughs> that's, Drager? I'm like, Drager's coming over and he like hides under the couch. That's awesome. Think there's a dragon coming for him. Because Drager is a very dragon. It, it is pretty dragony. It got a little creepy in here. But before we uh, go further, <laughs> let's go ahead and recognize the charity in which we're trying to benefit tonight, and that is Project Pinball. Hey. Project Pinball helps rehabilitation. For a kid that's in a hospital, you're playing a pinball machine, and for the time being, you don't have to really think about where you are or what you're doing. You're focused solely on playing pinball. You know, pinball pinball can be fun, but it can also be therapeutic because slamming that ball around when you're angry mm. sure does make you feel a little bit better. You know what, one thing I like about it, it makes a move. Laps around the wards is replaced to a lap down to the pinball machine and standing for an hour. They have to use both hands. You kind of find yourself when you're playing pinball moving into it to play. And uh, so the kids can come in here, number one, stand, the ones are having that issue, but they can still hold on, so they get that strengthening. And then they, they're using both hands and eye and watching. So, uh, so it's going to be a great non-therapy therapy. Exactly. And having a good time. 
Pinball is great because it's lights, it sounds, and you're so focused on getting that ball and hitting that target and getting those points that you're really not thinking about why you're in the hospital. You're able to distract your time away a little bit. Pinball is a way to get your mind for the moment off of whatever is happening in your personal life. Even if it is a bad situation, having to be in a hospital, seeing a pinball machine can make it all better. I just want to give back any way that I can. And my passion for pinball, I think, was a great partner for, you know, this giving. So that's what it's all about, guys. Project Pinball. Daniel Spoler and crew. So as we look at the money raise, now the money raise right now, $25,760 surpassed our goal of $24,000. Now this is the kicker, right? Now this, this amount raise hasn't updated in like seven or eight hours. It's like, that's like yesterday money. And it's simply because Daniel Spoler, who is running Project Pinball and who has access to the PayPal account, the guy's got to sleep, right? He's a busy guy. So in Florida right now, the, uh, the they're an hour ahead of our time. So it's coming up on uh, 8 o'clock in the morning over there. So I would I would suspect that I would hear some type of an update as far as the amount that's been raised via PayPal by Daniel in the next hour or two. And then at that point, I can go in and I can, I can accumulate the bits, the PayPal money, the uh, private donations, and I can update that total. And I think we're going to be real close to that $30,000 mark. I really want to think that as we go through Saturday that week, I think it's I think it's possible for us to hit 40k. I really honestly think that we could raise forty thousand dollars. Now a lot of that is fifty percent of the help here is Adam Schwartz from New York City. He is Man, he is Schwartz matching everything dollar for dollar. So that twenty five thousand that you see that's up on the screen was about twelve and a half thousand that we had raised on our own efforts here and uh, an accumulative effort. And then Adam comes in and he, and he doubles down and he matches that. So now's a great time for you to donate to a great charity for a good cause um, and, and something that we all love, and that is pinball. So we're going to keep playing Elvira with the Maniacs. Now, Steve, Steve Beatty is getting ready to head out because um, evidently he requires sleep after 25 or 26 hours, which I think is personally. I remember somebody coming in from like. Where did you I could hang. I, mean, I could probably hang like, the whole time, but I'm, just, I'm totally, I just, I'm totally you busting. Get a little. Go to bed. I'm, get, I'm get getting boring. Sleep. Where I get my one answer responses. Yes, Steve Beatty. No, I'm getting boring. <laughs> that's like that's like Ken saying I'm feeling greedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> oh, that was, <laughs> nothing boring about that you. That was friend. awesome, buddy. Nothing ever. So we All can, right. we can say goodbye to Steve as let's play some Elvira. Do one oh, more, yeah. do, oh do one that's all it took to that's talk him into that. Hey, I, hey, I, I'll hey. make a deal with you, Steve, because I, I know you need some sleep. It's 7 o'clock now. There's 11 hours left in the stream. <sighs> and hear me out on this. I'm listening. Stream with us till 5 p.m. and then leave an hour early. Bam. <laughs> there we go. We just <laughs> figured love, it out. It. Hey, we're all set. I think if I would have <laughs> brought chicken gizzards, he probably could have oh, done it. Oh, gosh. The chicken gizzards oh, yeah, from dude. Expo. I you know, I got. I was busy, and I couldn't get to the Come chicken, on, chicken you, you guys were uh, eating There's a some, lot some of arts lot. there at the Expo that There's were a little bit shocking. A lot of arn in them gizzards. Yeah, now. So, Pappy Swills, what are you brewing right now? What's your beer? What are you making? Because uh, we kind of like beer around here. Right now, I'm actually drinking a short fuse, uh, more juicy... More Lucy, more juicy. Uh, hazy I'm an IPA, IPA guy myself. I like the hazies myself. Yeah, I like that official. Uh, that official is delicious. You were drinking officials last week. Those are good. It's a nice, affordable IPA. If anybody needs to know. So, Kenny's doing a little housekeeping. For the trash guy has for those of you that don't know, Ken. Ken Cromwell and I went to the same high school. Ken, where where were you? Where'd you grow up in Schaumburg? Mm -hmm. I grew up in Elk Grove Village. Oh, we were using Elk Grove. I was Meacham and uh, Meacham and. Uh, and on the backside, we're Taco Bellas. Meacham and Meacham Yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 yep, yep. So you grew up right in the shadow of pinball. So you grew up by like. Uh, oh, yeah, I I'm not gonna throw names out. Forest Fun Center is over there. Yeah, I know. You know Toyota Boy? Yeah. Well, he went to high school. Though. Did he really? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Actually, I bought, uh, I think I bought a game. Like, 
Actually, I think I bought my Black Knight 2000 in my high speed that I will never sell ever. Dude, you nice. Like pastel cans. What's that? You like pastel cans. No, I like I like hazy IPAs and they're always fancy. Well, they're all pastel colored cans. It's, it's like Easter beer. I like it. We'll have Easter candy. <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> <clears throat> Just kick it. Oh, a bourbon stout, huh? Yeah, it's the season for bourbon stouts, isn't it? Oof. So I do have a bourbon county in there right now. Yikes. Come on. I love bourbon county. It's good, but the problem I have with bourbon county is whenever I have a Christmas party or a gathering, somebody always brings like two of them, and they drink one. <laughs> so I have a fridge yeah. full of bourbon county, which is like, oh, my God, you got bourbon <laughs> county? But, uh, yeah, well, oh, I forgot <laughs> you were here. Beanie's been drinking Bur- a Bourbon counties are like, it's probably my favorite beer. They're delicious. I... Yeah, I there's uh, I'm an IPA. Oh, changing up the rotation here. No, yeah, I'm, heavy oh. IPA all day. Oh, never mind. Wise. I'm uh, I'm a big. I'm I a forgot big you were here, Huskies. standing in front of me playing uh, pinball. <laughs> there's a couple. Uh, actually, I brought. In, oh, hey, sorry, when you come this, back, this I've got some uh, unsessionables. I put some unsessionables. I'll put them in the fridge for you. Those are like twelve percent. Ooh, ten percent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's like if it's in a black can, just stay away from it. And then yeah, yeah there's Deet Star from sixteen. No, that's that weird Polish like beer that's like twelve, like it's like six bucks a bottle and you, it. No. You know what I'm talking about? It's the one with like the evil clock. Who's up? You're, You're up. Today. Well, I better shut up and go play some pinball. I was driving for uh, work. I was outside of Louisville on a Tuesday morning. Louisville. <laughs> and I st- I saw the sign on the side of the road that said Moonshine Distillery. So I went to this place called the Neely Family uh, Distillery, and they nice. had, I don't there know. There ain't no buzz like a moonshine buzz. Ten, ten kinds of moonshine. So I pick up a couple bottles. Yeah. It's apple pie. Oh, yeah. Classic apple pie moonshine. A little blueberry, maybe. Yeah. Love a oh, heavy my. IPA. Sorry. Radiator fluid. No, moonshines. Morning. You get a cleaner buzz on moonshine. Happy Saturday. The TNT twins, Tim, Tim and Tom Roth. Tim and Tom Roth. I can't even talk. Timothy Roth. Just, just Tim. Hog bog morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good night. Good, good morning. morning. Good night. Good evening. It's like it's still Friday here. Yeah, definitely should get. I hope it's not still Friday. That means we. Saying, that means we have a lot of. A lot of streaming left to do. Oh, Eric. What's up, man? Eric, Eric. Mr. Minier, you're missing Minier's out on in some the, in fine the house. beers. You know, you should have stuck around. Hey, there's my guy. What's up, Eric? I still have that uh, I still have that maple uh, sour that Bob got for you, Mr. Minier. Um, it's sitting in my refrigerator, so you should probably contact me to drop that off at some point in time somewhere. Where Eric, Eric just left like... I know. Seven I or eight him. hours ago. I, I watched <laughs> it was no, funny. No, he's up on stream already. Yeah, I, I, I love this guy. He, I, oh, Eric, I cow. hope you're riding shotgun and, and watching this while you're driving to Wisconsin. <laughs> right. Just just with his wife and kids when I listen to, like, all the way to Wisconsin. Uh, Tony good, Scooter. Good morning, guys. Happy Saturday. Yeah, awesome work. Thanks. Tony yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks. Good morning to you as well. Uh, wisdom to the wise. Recommend uh, my favorite from Australia. Brand is uh, Prancing Pony and their beer, Red India Ale. Huh. That sounds terrible. No, so no power naps here for anybody. In I this had a room. power. I had a two-hour. Drager went to bed in normal time. So Dave Falgren had a power nap. I actually woke up. Uh, I had the, I had the show on, and I woke up when uh, when I heard uh, Mr. Zach. I heard Zach say the word Popeye, and I literally shot up out of bed and was like, "Oh no, they're talking about it without yeah. me." But uh, yeah. no power nap here. No, these now, guys, we were talking earlier. I, so I got champions. up at 6 o'clock on champions. Friday morning. So I'm on 25 hours and 7 minutes of awakeness with only 10 hours and 53 minutes, <laughs> more minutes to go to stream. So I'm going for 36, 36 hours. Yeah, Eric, right now I'm drinking Woo. a short fuse, more Is juicy, more, yeah. more sorry, Lucy, more juicy. Because I know sorry. every time you're on, I ask you what you're drinking. So mm-hmm. right now I'm drinking a short fuse. And uh, what else did I have today? We yeah, had a... Uh, Ooh, look out, everybody. I had a hot butcher, which was pretty darn tasty. Jump the shadow. Um, mm. That was nice, too. But, yeah, I'll have that big old can of that maple uh, sour. It's uh, right. sitting there. 
Uh, Rorden was just on about 10 minutes ago, and that was probably the best face oh, I've ever party. seen. Was any time if you, you ever, if you ever get a chance, give an Australian a sour beer, because he looked at me like I like I, like he's like who put puke in a in a can? It was wonderful. I don't like sour beers. That's awesome. It was so funny. So we got late night people from Australia. We got people waking up. Yeah, having bacon and eggs here. Everybody Australia's in the house. gone to bed. Well, mm. come on by, Eric. I think I might have one more short fuse left, and if not, Vinny's is right down the street, so we can make it happen. For it's you. almost open. What's that? Vinny's will be <laughs> Vinny's, open soon. If it's not open, there's probably three people standing. Vinny's, for those of you that are not regional, is a big liquor store chain. Um, and I'll almost guarantee you there's probably three people standing in front of Vinny's right now waiting for it to open. I'll say this. If, there, if it's one thing I learned, two things I, I learned from Eric Minier tonight... The first one was the act of generosity, and the second thing was how to kick the hell out of a machine if you need it to save a ball. Thank you, Eric. You don't yeah. realize <laughs> how to play pinball until you watch Eric play, and then you realize that's how you should be playing Pirates, because you have to watch yeah. Eric play you Pirates. there's nothing that you can do that could be seemed offensive to a no. machine. Because Eric Scott actually has like outlane savers that involve you picking up the machine and throwing it. <laughs> Granted, he has the heaviest machine ever built by man. Right, right, right. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I learned a lot by watching Eric play pinball. Like, it's it's okay to throw it. Granted, the tilt bob is laying in, your, in the in the I was going to say, shockingly, like, uh, and the sterns are a little bit lighter, so they, they get tossed around a little yeah. easier. Oh, so absolutely. Um, and I can imagine Eric coming from JJP, manhandling his pirates and then going to something that's 40, 50 pounds lighter. Well, it always cracked me up at 257. He uh, says, you're welcome. The pi- <laughs> well, yeah. thanks. Bless you, Mr. Minya. That's awesome. What, what, what was the what was the rap line? Minya, Minya in ya? Oh. oh you got know. a little Minya in ya? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> All right? Um, but, uh, no, uh, uh, Fowler was talking about it earlier. Oh, uh, yeah. Fowler. Said, yeah, there was like some rap line they were doing involving pinball. But uh, no, the 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 pirates at 257. If you looked at the legs, there was literally yeah, yeah. black marks scored into the floor by from people throwing it Sliding around, around because it's yeah. got those outlane savers. Uh, Eric, you know what? My theory on pin bobs is they're only good for river fishing. Take them out and throw them and catch some catfish. <laughs> Yeah, but there's still some lead in there, so that makes us all a little dumber. That's all right. Every time you do. You know what? If the lead in my tilt bob, <laughs> if the lead in my tilt bob makes P- you Poor stupid. Tim Roth from TNT. He's like, listen, guys, I fell asleep to the stream, and I woke up to it. I'll be listening while I drive the TNT. I've got an hour and a half drive. This guy is. I'm sorry. Well, this will be the last time he ever listens to us on a stream. Well, because the, Are you the poor guys that, or is he celebrating this? No, I, I I, I'm apologizing for myself because what... How many times have you done something that you felt you should have been celebrating, only to find out later that it was a really bad mistake? And it was in your like me. Oh, yeah. Is it possible you like become me. allergic to a Twitch stream? Can you develop an allergic reaction? I, I have gotten some itchiness tonight. You got some, you, know, you look a little hivey. We went to, uh, well, Dave was talking about how koala bears had chlamydia. Chlamydia. And then right away, I started feeling a little, a little uncomfortable. He then realized that the, the koala bear that he acquired illegally that's living in his basement. Uh, yeah. And you like Minya. That, that might be why uh, he's having those issues. Yeah, we love you too, man. We love, we love everything you guys are doing over there, Tim. At TNT. And uh, personally, you're a good dude. Hey, I, I, hey I, hey, full and on, your brother. Full on props to TNT. I cannot say enough. Cheers. Um, Todd Tucky is a gem. He's. Frank, the Tim, and Tom. Why those, I bought those guys, yeah. 75% of my games. He is hey. a resource that Cheers. is unstoppable. And I told him that at Expo, and I just. An inexhaustible well. Cannot cannot talk enough. In fact, I got tired holding my I beer. would like to. Oh, no, put it down. Yeah, no, All right, let me know when we're done play. so I but can. But no, drink. I would really. And in fact, I'll talk to somebody else about it later, but I have, I have an idea. So Uh-oh. I have an idea. I'm going to go play some pinball. That's what I came here for. It's a great idea. Hey, and I want to give some props tonight to uh, Mr. Scott Drager, who live on stream donated five hundred dollars to Pinball Project Charities, and uh, that was matched. So essentially, a thousand dollar donation on top Thank of three hundred and thirty-three dollars to get in there. No, no, that's part of it. 
<laughs> Dave's, Dave's, like, Dave's up in it. Plus your parking fees. Plus the parking. And your, uh, your and hour gas. overage fees. Uh-oh. No. I did buy him coffee on the way, so I'm going to take yeah. credit for Dave, that. Dave's got, it was a dollar for dollar match. Did you get two coffees at least? Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen! Are you guys gonna uh, do some phone calls? I don't know. You know what? We I want to call Daniel Spoiler later today. I want him to talk about Project Pinball. And yeah, if there's a little lull, we can open uh, open up the phone lines six three zero two eight three two eight eight eight. We don't have them open now, but uh, I'll post that a little bit later. We have to fill some time today because we got Joe Katz coming in at ten, Dwight Sullivan coming in at ten thirty. The Dwight Sullivan. Roger Sharp, Jason Fowler, Ryan Kuyper, and Dave Brennan coming in at 11. Oh, sorry. St. Charles Pinball Crew coming in at 2. Auctions ending at 5. And uh, and we're good to go. And then we then we wrap this puppy up in 10 hours, 47 minutes, and 12 seconds. 10 hours, 47 minutes. So with what we, we think the totals are, that's like four machines, yeah. right? I know, but I was like, how do you, what's that? We're like four machines for some children's hospitals now. Well, we need $32,000 for four machines. We got to be there. I think with donations coming in tomorrow, it's just getting warmed up. Okay. with the auctions that are running currently, right. and with bits and donations that haven't been accounted for for the last six hours, I think at the end of the stream at six o'clock, we've got a very realistic chance of hitting forty thousand dollars in uh, donations for Project Pinball. Is it my turn, Scott? No, you're good. <laughs> well, apparently I've got family members watching me as well, for which I apologize, and I hope I'm not embarrassing you. No, <laughs> Dave. Dave's been quite the gentleman and the. I told you I was a professional. So we got four. Cromwell was like, uh, he's going to burn my place. They're like, what's going to happen? It's going to be crazy. <laughs> I didn't no, I say Dave was, was going to burn bring it down. the energy up a little bit. I said the Maniac Coalition could potentially uh, get rowdy. We're, we're Dave, when you, when you we're, were, we're coming over and, and you were still up at like 2.30 in the morning, I had some concerns. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, I told you. I, I took a nap. No, and you're, then good. I had, you're good. But I had the show on because I was kind of watching it, and I just wanted to kind of, so I could come in and be relevant. And then the Popeye discussion came up, which is a point that's very near and dear to my heart because I've had discussions with Mr. Zach many. Um, in fact, I think I started the fight because he was dogging on fish. Uh, I was dogging on Popeye, and then he started dogging on fishtails, and it was like, we just have to agree to disagree on this. So everybody's got a machine that they like that other people dislike. Yeah, I didn't know fishtails was going to be up there. Yeah, that, that's Zach. surprising. Very disappointed, Zach. He, like... Totally does not like fishtails, which whatever. We got enough for four machines as well. So yeah, so we got enough for four yeah. machines. This means like families who are working with some pretty rough spots. You know, maybe they get to go to the end of the hall and, and if, play a game, and kind of bond together. Yeah, right. You know, maybe distract themselves. Uh, you know, if you from guys want to situation, if you guys want to have Todd call in right now, I will give you my phone number and we will put it on speaker. Oh no, because there is no greater honor that could possibly be bestowed upon us than to have Mr. Todd Tucky call in after he's had his first cup of coffee. Because it's eight o'clock out there by right now, so he's he's kind of rough. Yeah, there's a lot of people who keep this uh, this hobby afloat, like doing some. Multiball! Oh, win multiball! You've been practicing! Ken's, Ken's got to pull the GC up before this thing's over on here. He's got it at 140. He already, well, he's 140 got million now, but you know, yeah. he's got to pull another one. That was before the stream started, right? Or was that oh, today? yeah. Well, that was sleep. Yeah, yeah, that, that, was, yeah. that wasn't tonight slash yesterday. Yeah. I can't even slash this morning. The By the way, it's like completely light out. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. yeah. It's like full, oh, it's like full on daytime. Gamma go, like, Gamma go dead like hard. Like yeah, you need like you need your sunglasses already. Somebody's walking. I agree that's, with you. you know, Gamma go, but that's right. still hard. Oh, sweet. What would go in front of best game with a giant boat? You got two pirates. You got uh, giant boat. Black Rose, do you call that? Is that like the plank? Would you call that a giant yeah, boat? Yeah, but listen. Pirates of the Caribbean is Eric's 
Pirates of the Caribbean is by far the best game with a boat. Well, Game of Goat's got the uh, Popeye can't even win best game with a giant boat. So what else has giant boats on it? You got oh. two pirates. You got Black Rose, I guess you could count. Uh, well, Fishtails fish actually has a boat, boat in it. Yeah. And I would take the boat shot in Fishtails over about 80% of everything else. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I... I love that shot. I will take the boat. Sh- I will. I will say the boat shot in fishtails is probably ninety-five percent better than any shot in pinball. It's very satisfying. It is so. When you get rock uh, the boat, when that rock the boat comes on and you start left, that right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. It's like Amigo oh, wants to see pinball mode. There's some buttons here. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I, I, if I knew which one it was, I'd go. Oh, it's off the... Yeah, that. we lost the pinball. Yeah, there's there's pinball live. You know what? There's pro, Ken's just like... His Ken's, heart races Ken's, because Ken's he's thinking really of going to hit playing right now. He's actually picking it up the game, and the glass is off. He just doesn't want people to know. Yeah, we're going to... Mm. It's late. He's kind of worn out. We're going to stress Ken out. But yeah, we're just going to randomly start hitting buttons right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Hey, Ken, should I hit this blue one that's glowing <laughs> to get the play field on the screen? There's no play field on the screen? No. 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 Don't drain, though. Hold on. Is that pinball live? What button should we put? No, you're Pinball not. live? Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Wow. There we go. Look at him. Look at oh, that. Oh, almost go. tripped over the camera wire. Ladies and gentlemen, we just nice. saw there was a professional pinball streamer. All others <laughs> should bow down. After 12 hours, Mr. Ken Cromwell ran over to the thing and pushed the button and made it all happen. 13 hours now. 13, 13 hours. Done. 13 and a quarter. Beatty, who's here every freaking show with him, did not even move an inch. Oh, dude. But he said it was 13 hours. God bless Yeah, you. if I knew which button it was. I'm sorry about that, guys. Probably shows. No, no. That's, oh, so Sergeant Jarhead drops F-bombs. Sergeant Jarhead. Did you know that? That's pretty cool. I don't know anything. Ken, Ken has my favorite sign-off in all other pinball podcasts. For Bill Webb, I'm Kim Cromwell. Have a good morning, good afternoon, good night. Don't forget to play more pinball. Oh, oh, well. Yikes. Ken just found a flipper code. Ken is about to go in the house and flip (laughs) another table over. I'm not kidding. It is a wasteland of flipped over tables. It's freaking, it's it's the Eric Minier effect. I don't know if you told your wife she's not allowed to flip the tables back after you flip them. Like it's a mark of something. But no, there, I, are, I there just, are. If the machine oh, is going to punish me, I feel that it's only necessary that I punish the it's machine. It's like dead horses I everywhere that in this your evening. house. I walked in, there's a flipped over table. I walked a little further, it's a flipped over table. Right. No no, no dead animals or anything. So no, that's... but it's just flipped over tables. No, this, this is not a... Uh, this is a sociopath. I'm not a mass murderer. This is a no-kill shelter. So what this do your is, neighbors right. think about this garage? They haven't seen this it garage has a lot of history. Oh, hey, thank you for the follow. Hey. Southwest Pennsylvania Pinhead is here. Hey, thanks all for following us over from uh, flipping right, out. All right, all right. Just coming back to uh, joining the extended drink family here. That's special one lit. You ready to drink? Good times. Yeah, yeah. I gotta stop it's saying that. Good times. It's like my go-to statement when I. I'm just uh, out of words. Ad- adequate. Yeah. Better than adequate. <laughs> it's very adequate. Marginally adequate. Close to nominal. What is that? What are those emojis? Oh, is that like is that like a s'more or something? Mm-hmm. Gamma go, what are those emojis? Are those ROMs? Can anybody hear yeah. me? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, You're looking at like chips there, Dave? <laughs> No, I'm looking at Pinball the Nerds screen. Podcast. Robert Oliver, what's up, nerds? Ooh, I'm off work, but I want to say hello and tell Santa not to be naughty. <laughs> yeah, Santa's being oh, naughty. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. What's up, Orby? Southwest Pennsylvania Pinhead said, had to quickly sign up to Facebook to bid on the Houdini Playfield. Outstanding. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Houdini, huh? Nice. What's that up to? Let's Sweet. Take a look at I have no idea what Houdini's up to. I'll tell you what, guys. I was. Uh, when we posted these items a few days ago, I was every time there was a post, I was in there like amazed, and it's just blown ah, up. So, sorry. Excellent pieces of collectability uh, are collectibles from pinball, pinball history, one of a kind items. If you're looking a bit on some of these things, a lot of them we have here in the studio, the play fields and the translites. Go to uh, Facebook, Special One Lit Pinball Podcast is our page. While you're there, if you don't mind, Southwest Pennsylvania Pinhead. Like the channel if you can, or or like the uh, the Facebook page. 
Because then when we post there, maybe we pop up in your feed. It's so uh, it's at $300 yeah. for the Houdini Playfield, right. which is a dollar for dollar match by Adam Schwartz in New York. So that $300 becomes $600. Which is huge. Actually, that's a steal at three hundred dollars. Yeah. That Houdini yeah. playfield, because you can't get a playfield for three hundred bucks. Interesting. That'll bring some. That'll bring some good wisdom. Pretty good money. to the wise is closing the eyes. He's gonna tune in before closure. Keep up the great work, guys. Thank, thank you, Woo! wisdom to the wise. Been here. Yeah. For a long time. <laughs> Southwest Pen Pennsylvania Pinhead says, "Hey, he needs to be Sweet. higher." Hey, you did your due diligence and uh, you did your your job there. You, you got that, that you're the leading go-getter at 300 bucks, right, on Houdini? It's outstanding. Sergeant Jarhead! Wow, he just said the S-word. Yeah, he, he drops an F-bomb, too. Everybody get ready. It's going to get a little dirty in the house. Until I drain. Oh. It's creepy when you got a pinball playing Santa telling you that while playing <laughs> Elvira. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Sergeant oh, no. Jarhead! Like really oh, I tilted. Like, am I, am I, am I dreaming? What's, what's hey. happening? Hey, you know what? I'm amazed at the uh, the consistent viewership of this stream since we started. That's for, well, I mean, we were up good. at like a hundred for a good part of the night, and, and even in the wee hours of the morning, we're you know in the 40s. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Pretty I appreciate good. all the support. Thanks everybody for uh, checking in. It's a different format tonight. Very laxed. When we hit that twenty-four thousand dollar goal, it was such a relief. I like how you're saying tonight still. <laughs> Tonight, yeah. What is it? It's tomorrow. It's, it's today. It's today. It's the morning for. Welcome to the today. Ninety-five percent of the people in here right now. Hey, what's Except going on, Pinball Jordan. Land? Welcome. Jordan's the only one who can you can to say the, tonight. Too. To the bonus episode of the Special Only Pinball Podcast. My name is Ken Cromwell. With me today, Scott Drager, not Bill Webb, Dave Falgren, <laughs> and Steve Beatty. Hooga. I've got like IPA on you're like a, bad, a, like an you're IV a bad drip. Band, dude. I know, just slowly. Oh. Keep it. Yes. <laughs> there's nothing uh, wrong with that. No, there's something completely Embrace wrong. Embrace the IPA. Why you do it like what? Once, twice, sixteen times a year for twenty four hours. <laughs> <laughs> for twenty four right. hours. My wife's like, "That's awesome that you're gonna be doing that pinball stream." You're, but you're not drinking for twenty four hours, right? I'm like, no, <laughs> no. Dave Brennan's here with TurboGrafx 7. So I can't believe you're still going strong. I'm sipping coffee and waiting for Ryan. See you soon this morning. Now, I can't wait. Dave Brennan's coming in with uh, Ryan Kuyper, TurboGrafx 7 on Twitch. Yep. To stream with uh, Roger Sharp and Jason Fowler of the Slap Safe Pinball Podcast. They'll be here around 11-ish Central Time. So feel free to join those guys uh, as they take over the stream. And they had a really good uh, Dream Team stream going at uh, Expo. So I'm looking forward to that. Say dream team stream. 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 He could drink some more IPAs. It's pretty good. Uh, Mr. Minier, thank you for the uh, time and temp. I don't. I don't know if it's uh, if this is going on by you, Eric, <laughs> but I just kind of looked outside last time I was inside, and we got dusted with like some snow. Really? Yeah. There's a snow dusting <laughs> outside. Good thing I'm At first, I thought suit. I was just having a stroke Well, <laughs> from being up too late. Is like, it a stroke or am yeah. I just seeing things? Like, uh, what is that? Like, I'm getting a shimmering effect. I call that Saturday. You know what's going to be nice is when that countdown timer gets says, down to like single digits in the hours. 28. That is torture. I mean, yeah. honestly, I think I, I've studied like prisons and stuff like that. And he's they got, say yeah, that that will that break a man's like will when he sees how much time he's school. actually got. That's like when you were a kid and, and like you'd look at the clock and you were waiting for 3.30 to hit so you could get out. Oh, yeah. And it was like 3.20. There was, I think there was a movie. That was in a movie. Like the guy's looking at the clock and it said 3.28, 3.28. And then it said 3.27. Like, <laughs> real, I think it was a Simpsons episode, but. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's just like, wow. We did Cyclops with Roger at Expo. Yeah, Cyclops is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Roger's a treasure. Like, Roger up, and, and, and Todd Tucky. Honestly, those are two guys that I would just, not together because my brain would probably explode, but yeah. like I could sit with them at a booth at like IHOP and just like all you could eat pancakes for like two days and just sit and listen to those guys talk about right? whatever. 
They're just both. And it's not just like what they know; it's the way they deliver it. Oh, They've yeah. got that great cadence and just the way they talk and very much. So. You know, it's it's. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this afternoon. Hopefully, I'm awake for it. And uh, if I'm not, hey, is this gonna is this gonna replay, Ken? This is gonna be on a like forever record. Uh, I don't think so. No, it's not gonna be a twenty. You know, so it's not gonna be something we can pull up later on. Because I honest, can download it and uh, upload it to YouTube for uh, just. I don't know, documentary type sake, I suppose. Well, because I can pull up your other episodes on Twitch. It, it disappears after uh, a few days, I think. Yeah. I think it only keeps two weeks. The last Cause couple of videos. This is long. Honestly, too. if you guys get a chance hours. to Woo. watch, uh, earlier today, it was Eric and Scott Denisi and Steve Ritchie just like hanging out, like shooting the shit. It was almost like watching, I don't know, if you're like a, a, a if you're like a music fan, like watching like some like cool it was almost like watching like keith richards hanging out with like two newer guys like talking about guitars and like the way that you got they were talking about design and steve was like yeah i just got my whitewood done the first one you know how that is and he's like hitting scott and scott's like yeah yeah i know and it was just like this is freaking cool and eric's just like sitting in the corner with his hat on being all cool and it was just it was neat watching it as a pinball fan and i'm like super pinball fan, but yeah, if you get a chance and you should try to upload at least that portion, I, I will, I will do my best. I, Cause that was, that was some, that was something that you'll never be able to recreate. I mean, those are three different guys from three different builders hanging out, just talking about, yeah, no, I just talking about totally rock and roll. It. You know yep. what I mean? It's like yep. Keith Richards and I don't know, two other guitar players talking about rock and roll. And, and, and it was just really, I took a picture of it and put it on Facebook. Uh-oh. Frozen. Really? I broke it. We might have hit the Look technical difficulty Look here. Look at my hands, though. At least can I'm people, Can people still hear us or no? Oh, Always in the middle. Hey, Gamma Goat, can you hear me? I'm going to go uh, take a couple hour nap, shower up. All right. Yeah. We hail you. Oof. Hope you didn't hear that. Mike's. Good times. All right, we can hear you. We got we got can, camera failure, but that's okay. So this is what I'm gonna do here. But look at that picture. Like I'm in it. I'm in great. it. Drager's like checking that's it awesome. out. I want actually I want that to be my new like. It's like, like your like your Christmas card or something. Uh, you yeah. know what? That's about yeah. all I got at this point. Take it easy, man. Take it easy. Get a little napping. Yeah, good luck. Maybe you guys will still be here. Rock and roll, bro. Hey Steve, yeah. so uh, yeah, buzz me. When uh, hey, I'm leaving those, I'm leaving those other beers. Yeah, I'll, I, I'm. And if you want to take that hop, that the, the hop stand looks for okay, you. but the other three are frozen, so it's not. So leave it or gonna... take it or whatever. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'll probably are... just leave it in here for. That's fine, a but I'm leaving that. Whatever. That's appreciate it, man. Thank you, Cam. I would love to be drinking beer right now. I would we too. We got like a oh, lot of tech support people here. That's like good to have audiences. You know what? At about noon, when I've got to do my laundry, I'm gonna come back. Oh, we're hot still. When I come back, that's when I. Oh yeah, no, we're still we're still good. I feel I'm not gonna be here, but. I'll, you know what? I'll be here. You got all bad. I'll be here. Rescue. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. All right, guys, I'm out. I'll see you in a few hours. Hey, Steve Beatty, everybody. Yeah, Steve Beatty. Really kind of Ken's the like, no, hero. He's don't do it. The, he's just house. the guy. He's just the, you know, he's he's always been the guy. Be back, buddy. So you got 10 o'clock. He's just here for the love of pinball. Oh, I should have started my car. Oh. oh. You could do it through the through the studio door. Don't say garage door. Yeah, um, I was just looking, Ian. I have, uh, I have the EQ settings all the way down on that uh, that pinball machine. So, no, no, we should all probably sound different while we're up there. Anyhow, good stuff. Uh, thanks, man. I will, I will catch you on the flip side. <laughs> no pun intended. As Ken now looks at yeah, us and he goes. You've now left me alone. With oh, the I'm not maniacs. worried about that, man. At least, now at least left I, me alone. So you're gonna Ordinarily, have the I'd be by myself. Stay or leave. Ken, or do you have you any butter in the fridge? <laughs> 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 at least he didn't ask for lotion. That would have gotten me. No, lotion's way too kind of crazy. Um, I'm into the natural stuff. What do you guys want to do? We're going to play another game? Yeah, I don't know. Just give him a vibe. I almost feel warm. I'm going to sit this game out if you guys want to rock a two player game. Are we going to do a Maniacs versus I'm just, Maniacs? I just, yeah, I just have like eye fatigue right now. It's like hard for you, me to kind of yeah, catch no, right you now need to, What you need to do is you just. You need a weekend of Bernie's even for like chill out. <laughs> <laughs> no, just. Hey, I'm Ken Crowd. Right. Give me my sunglasses. All right, I'll put up a two.
Put up a two. I'll then, I'll, uh, I'll run back and forth. <laughs> Deactivated, activated. Yeah, right. That's you, exactly you it. Add your uh, your daily dose of maniacs. We can leave at any time you. Yeah, want. anytime you want to throw us out, we'll leave. But no, no, you, you guys are good. Oh, we're good. Yeah, you, guys no, you guys got guys like an hour in here. Or everybody so, or? else is freaking yeah. sleeping. So yeah, that's why we're here, man. We're All here right. to bring the energy. I appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, the old uh, deactivate uh, activate uh, 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 is uh, 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 uh you can't you can't beat it. That's for sure. So many clips. In See, now, now earlier on in my streaming career, my illustrious streaming career that has encompassed like eight months, I would have literally just ended the stream and just rebooted my computer and then fired the stream back up. But now I'm starting to learn the subtle nuances of Streamlabs OBS, which is always fun. Well, that's a drain. And I hope to hear from Daniel Spola here soon. I'm actually going to ping him. They said they were... Uh, the twins said they were gonna get a hold of uh, Todd. Player two, you're up. Oh yeah? Yeah. So I told him, I mean, if they can call, if he can call in. Oh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not setting up call lines yet. Yeah. I'll set uh, that up later in the afternoon, but yeah, that'd be good to hear from those guys. You can call my phone if you want. Oh, well. Put him on speaker. It's 5.30 It's 7.34 in the morning. I don't know that I can handle a phone call right now. That's all you, buddy. I'll let you uh, run that show. That's all you. Yeah. Are you talking to me? Yeah. All right. I'm a professional, Ken Crumb. I know you are. All right, I'm let's professionally see. Professionally trained, you know. What was I doing? Oh. 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 Got so many clips in that Elvira. There are a lot of uh, clips in Elvira. Look out! I don't think Dave's gonna have any trouble beating. What is uh, o F OBS or XSplit? That's uh. Wow, I've never the, used XSplit. The, uh, yeah. OBS is where it's at. No, we're using OBS. I'm watching. We're we're, watching we're using it. Slob Streamlabs OBS. It's like a combined software interface. I think I heard XSplit is oh, use, oh, is a little oh. more user friendly, but I think o OBS kind of has a little bit more offered out of the gate as far as add-ons and whatnot. I could be wrong. That's blind. Hey, no, I'm not get, sure. Once you pick your first one, you just kind of usually stick with it. Well, that's the thing. Like, I've got so much time invested in Streamlabs OBS. For me to split, into, no pun intended, to anything else right now would uh, just not into it. Rip off. Oh, that's it. Of it's all or nothing. I, I will take an inferior software package that I have a lesser of a learning curve on. Southwest Pennsylvania Pinhead Cheers 700 bits! 700 bits here on a special one lit Project Pinball fundraiser. Now the 700 bits now become 1400 bits because of the dollar for dollar match. So Southwest Pennsylvania Pinhead, thank you so much so for how the much 700 is that bits. Out? It's $7 that goes to $14. That's awesome. It is awesome. It's, it's, it's incredible. The bits that have flown around tonight, I've not ever seen on a pinball stream ever. There's like colors that I've never. Mod couple recognize. pinball, 130,000 bits, which comes out to $1,300. That's, and they didn't get anything. And it, right, it wasn't a, it wasn't an auction. It he was a bit donation. He could have gone after that play field. For sure, he could have. The thing with that is that that $1,300 donation becomes $2,600 donation with the match from Adam Schwartz. That's then you go over, you go over to Replica X, 128,000 bits. Maniac. Oh. Which is $12,080. Or $1,280. $12,080 would be pretty impressive. No, $1,200. That's what I was saying. $12,080 would be impressive. Uh, but, but yeah, $1,280. Bucks, totally impressive. Uh, Kyle Boss. Kyle Bassa. $11,500. bits. That's $115. Bucks. Becomes $300 or $230 with the dollar for dollar match. So if you're thinking about donating, everything is matched dollar for dollar. So you. You really can't lose. And that's going to go with the bits, the subs tonight on the Twitch end, the uh, PayPal end where everything's going directly to Project Pinball. And if you want to write a check to the organization, you can too. Just write Special One Lit Fundraiser on there so we get credit for the dollar for dollar match. Uh, so your donation does and, and they know where it's going to go. And let us know that you did that so we can uh, on the stream announce that you made that, that donation via check. All donations going to Project Pinball, whether it be check or through PayPal, are fully tax deductible. So if you'd like to get a... Uh, yeah, they're matched and they're tax deductible. 
anything that's donated via stream uh, with Twitch bits or with the uh, subs, we we are not a charity, so we can't offer you a tax deduction. But it's it's appreciated and it's matched and it's going to a good cause. So, and Wookie Jeep, I think you should Google what is the record for a stream, and we should try to beat it today. I, now I'm I'm confident that that this is not a bit record for like a stream because I'm sure there are streamers out there that that do some crazy stuff. But like for a pinball stream. I'd be shocked if there was something else that uh, raised as much money as we did tonight. So that's, or today now, I suppose. Yeah, and just, just to remember what this is for, is like we're going to get some pinball machines in some children's hospitals. So some families having some rough time, they can go to the end of the hall, maybe the recreation area, have a couple of games. Maybe, they, maybe the kid can't get out of the place for a while. And this brings a diversion in there. Family can get together, bond, and not just sit in the room the whole time. Even the staff that's yeah. that's comforting the family and, and the patients there. It's huge. Rodcom 69. One, two, three, 401 bits. What's that? Nicely done. Rodcom 69, 401 bits. Nice. Becomes 802 bits. Very nicely done. I really appreciate it. Rodcom's been uh, rocking it out all night with us tonight, so... Totally appreciate that. In the video, they had some pretty cool machines at some of the hospitals. They had a stock of Guardians in there. We yeah. talked about a Waz at some of them. Yeah. Yeah, so when I was talking to Daniel Spoiler, there's there's a selection process that takes place between Project Pinball Charities and the hospital. They want to make sure that they're putting a theme in the hospital that's going to be well received by the patients and staff so they don't want anything that's too intense or scary obviously it's a children's hospital or anything that may, might be considered too adult so they're presented with options and uh the hospital kind of gets to select and then uh that pinball machine is that they select is Rats. is placed in the hospital by project pinball charity when can they get a uh, cherry atomic <laughs> yeah i don't know I, i'm waiting to know that myself cherry atomic uh, oh yeah, I, that was the uh, the tilt, the tilt of that. Those tilt bobs. Yeah, I know, man. It is what it is. It's yeah. I don't tilt. I'm, I'm an only child, so I grew up in a place where if I broke something, it was pretty much me. So I'm like, yeah, no, tilting I hear you. and nudging. Bill right. Winterberg says that we are fantastic. Bill, you are fantastic, bud. Thank you. We thank salute you, thank you, thank you, you, Bill Winterberg. See if we get a ball. Dave's got me pretty good here. As we approach uh, 8 o'clock here in Chicago, 8 a.m., we're at 7.40 a.m. 10 hours, 20 minutes left in the stream. The stream uh, launched 14 hours, 1 minute and 59 seconds ago with our uh, countdown screen. So we've been 14 straight hours of streaming. Hey, nice little live catch there, Scott. That's totally intended there, Ken. Yeah. All right, this is my only shot to catch Dave on this one. Guessing Rick and Morty not heading to any hospital. <laughs> They're probably safe assumption. They're, but there's supposedly a family mode, which is interesting because there's not an adult mode for Rick and Morty. There's a family mode, so it comes stock as adult mode, which I kind of enjoy. Uh, if you've ever played Rob Zombie in adult mode, it's pretty intense. It's a little much. I mean, I, I'm... I'm I'm me. It's coming from a couple of sailors. <laughs> yeah, this, is, right. this come from Maniac number one. Yeah, right. And I'm like, I played <laughs> the like, I, first time I ever played it in adult mode was in Texas, and I was like, whoa, hey, y'all need to chill out. Like, I yeah, saw like, around, these kids like, walk by me, I'm like, whoa. <coughs> I didn't know I was going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Pay, pay no attention to that cabinet artwork. Yeah, it was me. Uh, I didn't mean to do that, kids. You don't have a lot of work I guess to do I'm What do I got? Oh, my goodness. Mr. Drager. Oh, so uh, one million. Ian's hanging his uh, cherry atomic back box this afternoon. That's awesome, man. Oh, cool. I forgot that you uh, you were one of the first people to get in on cherry atomic, man. I totally appreciate that. How is cherry atomic doing, Ken? It's it's. We're waiting for playfield art to be done at this point. Are you guys doing the direct print to cabinet or direct print playfield thing or? No, nah, well, I'm gonna stencil the cabinet artwork. Yeah. It's all the handmade, artisanal. Oh. Well, I mean, it lends itself well to having like four colors or four to six colors on there. I mean, we can do that. Meteor had four colors. Cherry Atomic can have four colors on the cabinet, but there's going to be more colors on the play field. You might go to like six to eight colors somewhere in there. Yeah. Guessing Rick and Morty. Yeah, I covered that. That was my fault. Brainstorming of all the themes not heading to hospitals. 
<laughs> Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, Elvira, Iron Maiden. Speaking of play fields, if I can just take a moment. Yeah, so this is the uh, this is donated by Ryan White at CGC. This is the Monster Bash sample playfield. Now the sample playfields, you notice it's black and white with colored inserts. These playfields are made and manufactured for them to line up their color screening process. Now what happens is when the color screening process is figured out, that playfield is is now obsolete. It's always it's normally the only one in existence when they start up that screening process, and we have the only one that's in existence for Monster Bash remake here in our presence tonight. If you want to bid on that, you can go to our Facebook page, Special Win Lit Pinball Podcast, and uh, jump into the first post. Click the link for the Monster Bash Playfield uh, donated by CGC, and you'll get that. Uh, you can bid on that, and that bidding is going to end at 5 o'clock Central Time. The other thing that you're getting as a bonus is you're getting the production Monster Bash Translite included in that. So you're not only getting the Playfield, but you're getting the production Translite. So that's, that's, a, that's a pretty cool... Uh, Pretty cool little package. Thank you, Vanna. About as cool as it gets, kid. Oh, there it is. Good times. Yeah, that's... This guy yeah. Oktoberfest for a theme that should not go into a chill. Well, you got barbed wire, probably not the best uh, theme. Baywatch might not be the best. Coincidentally, two Pamela Anderson uh, pins. I am a big uh, fan of the Baywatch, though. Baywatch is a great game. I like Baywatch. Baywatch just got a broad deal on it. Welcome you know what? You're good? Hey, hey we got some bits. We're going to do a quick night show. Yeah, Eaton Ford, 67 with another 1,000 bits. Ryan, thanks, buddy. His 1,000 bits become 2,000 bits as he's been uh, donating heavy tonight. Totally appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, 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 thank you, Eaton Ford. That's awesome. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> Straight down the middle, Greg is in the house. He wants a barbed wire. Now, what you're looking at right now is the Willy Wonka Jack Standard Playfield donated by uh, Jersey ball. Jack Pinball. This has signatures of all the staff that's on the bottom. Everyone involved from Joe Katz to Pat Lawler and team. This can also be bid on Special Willy Pinball Podcast, the Facebook page. Go ahead, jump into that. Uh, the first post that's sticky to the top of our Facebook page has links to all the auctions. Now, the auctions are going to end again at 5 o'clock Central Time today. The winning bidder will not only get the play field, but it'll be a dollar for dollar match. For instance, if this play field went for $500, you would donate your $500. Adam Schwartz from New York will match your $500 to make that $1,000 donation to Project Pinball, which is outstanding. Zonrit's back in chat. Pre Premier has much better offer than barbed wire. I don't fall for it. <laughs> Oh, he's back. The foreshadowing yeah, here is back. unbelievable. Right. We're at yes, 75% capacity right now. So I have now been up for 25 hours and 45 minutes. Ken needs to sleep. I don't think it's going to happen. You get another play field? Uh, you get another play field? No, don't do that. Take it over. My name is Santa Claus. So you're having an issue logging in to see the walk and the Houdini on Facebook. Interesting. I, I'm going to go in. I'll check those links again. And uh, when I go back in, uh, I'll check that out. Rodcom 69, other than uh, Best for Hospital, Monster Bash, Spider-Man, Batman, Guardians, Jurassic Park, Wonka, Star Wars, Star Trek, Beatles, Monsters. I agree. For me, Jurassic Park is timely, and it's an appropriate theme for a children's hospital. So I, I totally am on board with the Jurassic Park Pro. It was a nice... A nice addition to any children's hospital. The Houdini's still sitting at 300. What's they, that 300? I, the Houdini one. That's really? Not, that's, that's not going to last for long. No, because you can actually... It's more expensive to buy it at that price. No, it's crazy. Well, I've heard from one or two people that they're having an issue getting into the Houdini playfield or the uh, Wonka playfield for some reason. But you were able to get in there no problem. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, those are amazing. It's an amazing piece of the history there. It's pretty incredible. Uh, We've got a couple uh, translites there donated by Stern Pinball. Elvira's House of Horrors, signed by total staff there. It's got like eight or nine signatures on it. And then you've got the uh, Jurassic Park translite that's also there from Stern Pinball, signed by staff. Those are up for auction. What do you got there now, Dave? What? Is that the uh, the Raza Playfield? 
donated by Deep Root Pinball. Now, the Raza Playfield, this is almost like a, it's a print sample. Now, the way that this works, this is a pinball, ply, our pinball Playfield plywood has not been CNC cut for inserts, but it does have the whole ink process on there, and it's clear coated. So you essentially have a full Raza hanging art piece with signatures from Jersey Jack staff. Or from, uh, not, not for, it'd be weird if it was Jersey Jack staff, it's from Deep Root Pinball staff. So as you can see in the back. And if you bid on that one and take it, cut. you can hit it with a hammer yourself. You see. cannot hit this one with a hammer. This this is a test print. Yeah, you've got everybody on there, uh, including uh, John Papaduke, J Pop, on that play field. Raza is going to be the first offering from Deep Root Pinball, and we're expecting to see a full reveal of Raza at Texas Pinball Festival or the few days prior, the Wednesday prior. Rodcom69 says, hey, I agree right now. Jurassic Park is the best. Uh, stall for a couple months, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles can be added to the list. Interesting. Interesting. Pennsylvania Design Guy says, hey, good morning. How are you holding up, Ken? I'm holding up well, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for asking. So far, so good. Toy Story, uh, yeah, Toy Story would be just killer uh, theme for a children's hospital. So I'm trying to see if I can get into this. Uh, oh. Yeah, I saw I was able to just get in the thread. Just had to click on the more. One of the issues was uh, make sure your comments are set to newest because the newest one will have the highest bid. One, so I am clicking on Special Inlet Pinball Podcast. What's the, Kenny, what's the, the, uh, the guy who does the, I forgot what it's called, it's like not, the guy that's, when he rips on it, he like yells that, that word. It's like outlaying or like when he's like calling out garbage on him. When he's what? There's that podcast guy, when he calls out garbage on people, he's like, there's like a word he uses. I want to say it's the guys from Dominic. And he would call into your show and do it. I have no idea what you're talking about, man. I don't even have a call. Oh, they call into our stream? Yeah, but he does that one thing where he's like, he like calls people out. Oh, brick shot. Brick shot. <laughs> yeah. There it is. I've got a brick shot, Kenny. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Chrome Candy Pinball saying I was trying to bid on some of the items, but Facebook says I don't have sufficient permission. Any idea on how to do this? I, that, I don't know. That That's interesting. I have no clue why you would be getting that. Uh, if you go to our Facebook page, two things you can do. You can either click on the first post and try to click the links that are within that post to take you to the auction items. Or you could just go ahead and scroll down and find your auction item because they're all on the top. But you should have access. Uh, there's not anything that you need. To, nothing that I can do that would permit you to have some access. Um, so Dennis says, I went to, uh, to test on the Facebook sticky thread. I had the same problem. Houdini and Waka gave me insufficient permissions. I'll go in there and I'll see if I can update the links here in a second. Uh, Gamma Goat says, I also get uh, insufficient permissions. Maybe we're just trying to keep those... Uh, Play fields for ourselves. That's right. Hey, oh. That's right, Ken, because it's time to be greedy because you've been up That's for 16 right. hours. Straight. That's right. <laughs> Take I'd like I to get. throw a quick brick shot while I'm standing in front of this game. Go ahead, and then after you do your brick shot, I'm going to go in and see if I can update Texas the Texas uh, Pinball brick. Festival, your glass. Where is it? Is it what? No, hold on. It's got the uh, thanks for cleaning under the plastic. I'll put that up there. Brick shot. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, no, you're calling off the glass. Shot. Oh. I saw that this morning. I pulled it out of my dishwasher and I went, Brick shot! <laughs> That's like, Brick shot? Oh, yeah. And I couldn't remember what it was because it's. I, I don't know what to tell you. God bless you. You guys run this thing for a couple minutes? Hey, you know what? We can do whatever you need us to do. All right, all right. We got to step up? It's got a really a funny message on, the, on that uh, Raza play field. There's the uh, thanks for cleaning under the plastic. Thanks for cleaning under there. the plastic. Yeah, oh, yeah, on the Raza play field? Yeah, I got a detailed picture Absolutely. Oh, it's like those tiny awards, like uh, Apollo 13 has a little alien. Oh, yeah, right. Notice if you clean the plastics. 
That's how we know the teardowns from the, yeah, just shopped on uh, eBay. Thanks for cleaning under Dennis? the plastics. Come on. All right, TPS give me one second. Good stuff. All right. We have fun. TPS. We got to do Ken proud. Dennis, I need you to come up to Milwaukee this year. Multi-ball. So Here comes the jackpot, boys and girls. Dave's got jackpots all over the place. All he has to do... He's already got me beat really bad, so... That just makes it hurt a little bit worse all the time. So we got some good, uh... Shaffin okay. since 87. With the 300 bits, thanks. We got a follow. Jackpot! From Balky from my Jackpot! Balky from my pants. Put a washer on you your mug and protect the heart from washing. That is the. That makes sense. Has everybody on here been playing Elvira? I love it! Oh. He still beat me pretty bad, though. What's the wheel say, Dave? I don't know. It's like a butt or something. If you How bad you beat me this time? On your mug, it will protect the art when washing. Hey, guess what? I've got like 25 to 30 pint glasses. And only two of them have had the thing come off. One of them was actually for my company, too, so whatever. But I was a little disappointed, that's all. Zonrith, he's only played Elvira a couple times. Zonrith is, uh, that's Dennis Kreisel. Hey, what's up, Dennis? Hail the Kreisel. Uh, I've only played Elvira a couple times. I do like that going through the mode is the way to point. Yeah. I Incredible. just think it's a fun game, Dennis. Um, it's just a good shooter. It's fun. So would I pay the, you know, that's up to you. But I, I, I will definitely drop a dollar in it if I get a chance. Or I will play it in Ken's studio. So TW Rex stuff. Pinball. We gotta follow. What's that? Right, we got fire up another one. Fire up another hey, two player. Uh, TW Rex. What's up in the hills with the Ricks? So Dennis Creasel, I usually am reading and listening to your stuff. Dennis, really thank you so much for your uh, educated uh, views on pinball on those podcasts. It's always good to listen to you. A lot of times you uh, respond the way I would respond, so we're on the same page. And uh, always appreciate your uh, your contributions to pinball, Mr. Creasel. So, Mr. We Creasel, salute you. What do you think is the most underrated machine? Uh, it's going to be a Gottlieb. Uh oh, with facts. Uh oh. Uh, pinball fake news. What's the uh, most underrated pinball machine? Winner gets a chance to donate to charity. Help some Here we go, Jackpot! Come on, Brad. Most underrated. Yeah. I think the most underrated segment is uh, market trends, though. Oh, come on. <laughs> Traeger. I'm just trying to rile up Dave I think, so I, I have think a Martin chance of winning this one. Uh, <laughs> it worked. It worked. Uh, it it's almost like it, I'm putting it in Dave's head. I got it in Dave's head. I got, uh -huh. a, I got a cheat to win. Now. Yeah. It's cheat to you win time. I like the uh, the animations and like the shadows in the house. I think it's a pretty cool effect. No, I, I, Sometimes the coolest. Effects. I mean, honestly, in, in, in knowing who's, you know, when you've got Lyman coding, it's the sky's the limit. It's so this game's going places, but so everybody on uh, on here has probably seen the video for uh, oh jeez, for Stranger Things. So so what do you guys think? Because there's nobody like. I'm not going to Stern. I'm not going to be interviewing anybody anytime soon. So what do you guys think about uh, about what uh, what that video had? And are you excited about it? Or are you kind of... How do you feel about it versus uh, Rick and Morty? And uh, I'm going to go play a, a quick uh, 
quick game, quick game and uh, look forward to hearing back. I think if uh, Dave plays Stranger Things and has a bad ball, he might flip the machine upside down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 200 like bits from... It's kind of like, like Solo yeah, said, don't piss don't off know, the uh, Wookiee. Oh, look at that cheer. I've only Steam flipped net. one game, and it was really... Pennsylvania design guy, themed not grabbing them. That's okay. There's plenty of themes, plenty of machines out there. I'm interested in seeing how that projector looks. We had a little bit of a discussion of if it's going to work well in well-lit areas or needs a dark area. Um, came up with a new idea for a pin curtain that's a shower curtain to go around your uh, pinball machines to keep extra light from going in. I don't think anybody's going to buy a pin curtain. No pin curtains? Pin curtain. Player two. Scott also designed pinball. What was it? Pin, pinball pants, Scott? Pants Stadium. Pants Stadium. That's right. Pants Stadium. Most underrated is probably some DM game. If you're thinking DMD, I'd probably like Sharky Shootout. Maybe Maverick. Thomas, oh, you're cracking me up. Maybe Maverick. Huh? Seems like you can get around too fast. That's terrible. The fact that Maverick is at 2K right now is amazing because last year I remember arguing about Last Action Hero being at 2000. I think I sold mine for like 32.50. So, yeah, the market's still there. Uh, paid sign guy, magic magnetic ball catch is, is interesting. It is interesting. Um, I'm just a little concerned about the uh, about the over magnification of the balls and there being issues with that but whatever it's not you know get a good carbon uh steel ball i know pinball life sells them um i'd probably replace them right away get a good carbon steel ball immediately for those games and i think you're going to be in better shape that's just my personal thing from dealing with dracula and some other ones um dennis yeah last action hero i had two of them man i love that game it's totally underrated. I wish I wouldn't have sold mine. Um, people are scooping them up, and they're better than you think. I mean, I'd actually have rather have a Last Action Hero than a Demolition Man, and right now I'm stuck with a Demolition Man that I'll be selling shortly. So, you know. Um, it's my turn. Yeah, I got a beat down in progress right now. Oh. I'm getting beat. Uh, oh, I'm getting. I'm beating you. Yeah, yeah, you're beating me back. Wow, you're so. That's sad. That's sad. Yeah, this is a pretty come on, bad come score. Come on, Scotty. Come on. What do you need? Some iron? Come on. Yeah, we gotta wake it up. Have a beer. That's what you need. Yeah. You gotta prime the pump. The Sharky is right, one of my on, first let's games. Get Let's get it going here. Yeah, make sure you do that. Uh, You've that been don't practicing. Need Everything's up. Oh, and the links are working. I, oh, thank oh, you. Oh, during the ball save. Thank I thought you, I was going to get a help you, there. Uh, Doc Brown 85, uh, the amount raised. We're going to get an official retally on that once uh, once Florida comes back online. Where, uh, there are like 26,000, but that was like 1230 money. So it's, it's uh, at least 32. Which is four machines. Which is uh, actually four machines. Actually, that's wrong. It's actually a twenty thousand. So you guys need to put more money in the in the kitty. <laughs> but there's still plenty of room to donate. Flowing. Plenty of room to donate. Donate. Uh, so we got. Dennis says, "Stranger Things. If the if the projector is only premium, will the pro, pro feel too basic? Oh, Initial concern. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, overall, better pick than Rick and Morty from a ratings perspective. Hello, Santa." Yeah, so it's a good theme choice. Yeah, the, the different manufacturers have like different strategies. Because with, uh, yeah, I, I agree on that one. I think Rick and Morty's a great pick for spooky. Thank you. Knocking out 750 is pretty reasonable, but wouldn't want to give a theme like Harry Potter or somebody something to a company that can only knock out 500 machines a year. That would be rough. Dude, there's a there's a. Sm there's hey, a is this definitive a, uh, smell of hey. IPA beer in this garage, in this hey, garage studio. Yeah. Is this a is this a Stern Easter egg? What what you got? They're playing Christmas. 
No, it's Santa vs. Aliens. It's one of the uh, oh, one yes. of the modes in there. I it's like it one, of the, one of the B time. movies. It, well, actually, it's got facial recognition and uniform uh, yeah, recognition. So me. if you're in a Santa suit... Because, you know, I, I saved Cassandra from... Uh, hey, Oscar Keeper! Yeah, Oscar Keeper! 300 bits! Thank you, Oscar Keeper. Yeah, we got a couple couple donations. Uh, talking a little bit Stranger Things. Uh, Rick and Morty with uh, Dennis Creeple. Dennis is here. Dennis is here. Dennis, are you streaming at all today? Double. Let's see. Yeah, same day. Viewer. What's go, what's going on in Twitch land? Rick and Morty uh, isn't bad. Yeah. Uh, it's go uh, two two to two point four million same day viewers. The smallest I could come up with is The Walking Dead, which is about double that today. Walking Dead was a stronger back then when they made it though, so it's not apples to apples. Yeah, Gamma Goat, I definitely agree with that one. Links work on Facebook for the uh, so if you if you were having a hard time getting some action in the uh, Houdini oh. sign playfield or the uh, Wonka oh. sign playfield, those links have been corrected. Thanks for the help on that, guys. I appreciate that. I was wondering why those why those uh, were not bidding as well as the others. So Spooky's locked in uh, 18 month of steady revenue, perfect for small business. I agree. Then it's gonna start streaming and personally take away enjoyment from children, right? <laughs> no, that is, who leaves this stream is making uh, life worse for people. It is, <laughs> it is not competition of the stream. <clears throat> oh, getting a oh. call here. Hold on. Yeah, I'll agree with you, Dennis. Hello, Fomo. Fomo Clinic. What's up? What's that? Spooky ran a clinic. Okay, how are you? Fomo with Rick and Morty. They got a deposit off of me. Hey. Player two, you're up. <laughs> I don't know. I, we're, these guys are uh, on, on beer delivery, so I, I think we're all right. I can. Uh, I'm doing terrible. I'm just kidding. Yeah, we've been lightly uh, hydrated throughout the uh, evening and into the morning here, so it's what's it's what keeping us going. Right. That's exactly. It's like it's a um, IPA IV drip that we're on right Did you hear now. Something? So, what's going on with you, man? Yeah, bring him in, man. That sounds awesome. It, no, no, yeah, for sure, man. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. That's huge. What time are you coming in? <laughs> I like it. We'll see him here shortly. Yeah, that works. Uh, we've got Joe Katz coming in at 10 o'clock, and I think Dwight's coming in at 10 30. So, yeah. <clears throat> Joe Katz from Jersey Jack. So. If, if, you, if you can come in like before 10, that works out perfect because then every, everybody's in, uh, in a line here. So that, that works out well. Awesome. Okay, just give me a buzz when you're uh, close. I appreciate it, man. Thanks. All right. Bye. Who's on the way? Uh, a buddy of ours, Sean, is on the way. <clears throat> He's going to be here around 9, 9.15. He's bringing his son, who is donating money out of his piggy bank, because he's watching the stream. So that being said, let's make sure that we keep the stream on the up and up with, <laughs> with the language. Thank you for the piggy bank. Absolutely. That's really, really cool. Um, yes. No, Sean's a, Sean's a great guy. He's making a, a donation uh, also. So uh, it's good to have these guys in. I've known Sean for years. He's been part of our St. Charles Pinball uh, club, so it's it's fun. It's good to have everybody involved. Can't can't ask for a better thing. And let's take a quick time out and remember what we're doing and who we're doing it for. Project Pinball helps rehabilitation. For a kid that's in a hospital, you're playing a pinball machine, and for the time being, you don't have to really think about where you are or what you're doing. You're focused solely on playing pinball. You know, pinball <laughs> pinball can be fun, but it can also be therapeutic because slamming that ball around when you're angry mm. sure does make you feel a little bit better. You know what, one thing I like about it, it makes a move. Laps around the wards is replaced to a lap down to the pinball machine and standing for an hour. They have to use both hands. You kind of find yourself when you're playing pinball moving into it to play. And uh, so the kids can come in here, number one, stand, the ones are having that issue, but they can still hold on, so they get that strengthening. And then they, they're using both hands and eye and watching. 
So, uh, so it's going to be a great non-therapy therapy. Exactly. And having a good time. Pinball's great because it's lights, it's sounds, and you're so focused on getting that ball and hitting that target and getting those points that you're really not thinking about why you're in the hospital. You're able to distract your time away a little bit. Pinball is a way to get your mind for the moment off of whatever is happening in your personal life. Even if it is a bad situation, having to be in a hospital, seeing a pinball machine can make it all better. I just want to give back any way that I can. And my passion for pinball, I think, was a great partner for, you know, this giving. Project Pinball, hey, whoa, who's that guy? Yeah, I'd just like to give a quick shout out. Um, <laughs> Juicy, Juicy Melon. Juicy Melon and so. That's just right. Just donated 100 bits from Juicy Melon and That's, so. <laughs> That's right. I Nothing but the best. My Whoa Nelly Big Juicy Melons uh, hand soap. Big Juicy Melon hand soap. Is what's good. See? Good smelling hands. We know who's washing their hands around here. Yeah, cinnamon fingers, right? C cinnamon hands, right? Cinnamon, cinnamon hands. hands. <clears throat> so again, for those of you that are uh, that might just be joining us here as we get into the morning, the the uh, the mid morning hours at eight oh nine a.m. in the uh, Chicagoland area, our uh, twenty four thousand dollar goal for Project Pinball has been reached, and that was reached uh, last evening at twenty five thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars. We've we've surpassed that goal now. <coughs> excuse me, I'm a little hoarse. I've been been talking probably too much tonight, but. We, I'm waiting for Daniel, Daniel Spoiler, who runs Project Pinball Charity, to uh, get a hold of me. Uh, and that's simply to kind of figure out where, where we're at dollar-wise. And then I'm going to update the amount of money that's been raised. Because everything that's coming in, whether it be bits on stream or subs on stream or direct donations to the PayPal Me uh, link that's up there on the screen, is being matched dollar for dollar by Adam Schwartz in uh, New York City. So... I, I think by the time we update this, we should be somewhere in the $30,000 range. And then as we get into the heart of Saturday, we've got uh, Dwight Sullivan coming in. We have uh, Roger Sharp coming in. We have uh, Ryan Kuyper and uh, Dave Brennan from TurboGrafx-7 Twitch channel coming in. We have Joe Katz who will be coming in to stream. Uh, I just got a call. Uh, our buddy Sean Rosensteel is coming in uh, with his son, Ollie. They're going to come in and say hello and make a donation. So... Uh, we, we've got more funds coming in, and we've got a uh, visitation from, from some friends. So the uh, sky's the limit as far as where we can go with the actual fundraising efforts. Again, dollar for dollar match. So it's, there's really not a better time to make a donation to benefit Project Pinball Charity because you're getting that 100% dollar for dollar match. Now, if you are looking to, uh, you know, you, every, everything that's being donated via that PayPal link or a direct check made out to Project Pinball, in which you would send in, uh, you're eligible for a full tax deduction. We're, we are not a, a, a charity organization, meaning special when lit in this Twitch channel. So anything that comes in via bits um, or subs, we're not able to offer that as, as that tax deduction. But anything through Project Pinball uh, does qualify. Now, we will forward all money that we receive here during the stream over to Project Pinball, again, for the dollar-for-dollar dollar match. So it's, it's been a wild night as we are at... Uh, we've been live for 14 hours uh, plus... We've got about nine hours, just under 10 hours left. Nine hours, 49 minutes, 45 seconds. The auctions that are on Facebook, you can go to Facebook, type in Special Willie Pitball Podcast. The post that's sticky to the top of the page will give you links to all the silent auctions that are going live until 5 p.m. tonight. We're going to take the high bidder at 5 p.m. Don't try to snipe people at the last minute because there's no definitive 5 to 501 to 459. It's, I'm just going to look at 5 o'clock. Whatever the high bid is, that is it. Um, yeah, it might roll a little bit. And then, uh, no, we don't have time because we got to end the stream at six. What and happens I'll, if you go past six? You can they're gonna charge you. No, well, I you know what? I'm ending the he's stream gonna, at six. Gonna, <laughs> <laughs> That's not going past have a heart six. Attack. I'm, t I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> if it goes past <laughs> six, yeah. The, the, I've been up for 26 hours and 12 minutes, um, and, uh, and I have nine hours and 49 more minutes to still go. So, um, we're no, you guys are doing a great job. I appreciate you guys coming in. We've got Dave Falgren and Scott Drager in from Pinball Maniacs. Uh, Local guys here came in and, and really revitalized some energy in the street, man. Because I was I was hanging for a little bit and I was like, man, Whoa, this is getting a little tough. So kudos to those up, guys. Bring it up, bring it up. Gotta add some, uh, add and some Gamma Goat, to answer your question, um, 
yeah, you are the only one that wonders if uh, eating a cup of ground cin- cinnamon can defeat cinnamon hand Cinnamon, stuff. yeah, I have no what idea the how that wrong works. With you? So what, you're going like to eat the, the cinnamon, cinnamon and then it's going to get on your hand? What? Dude, seriously, just wash your freaking hands. Zonrath has cheered 10 bits. Thank you, Zonrath. Yeah, yeah. Because those 10 bits become 20 bits. Dennis and I do appreciate it. knows now. the math. If Absolutely, he knows does. the math, it's, it's Dennis. For those that are not keeping up on the math, I'm doing the best that I can. Uh, Scott Drager tonight. Uh, live on stream, made a nice five hundred dollar donation to Project Pinball Charity, and which was huge. And three thirty three to get in. No, no, no. That's that's part of the three thirty. Oh, it was. Yeah, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, 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 it's like Dave's like. There's like a ticket involved here. Um. So and then that's matched dollar for dollar. So Scott's five hundred dollar contribution becomes a thousand dollars towards uh you know putting pinball machines in children's hospitals. It doesn't get any better than that. Good times. So, are you guys still on Elvira here, or what are yeah, we doing? Yeah, we got to get another Elvira. Hey, I wanted to ask a question about the twenty four k. Uh, donation goal and why that number was chosen and what that means. Sure, for us. that's a great question. So, when I had reached out to Daniel Spoiler asking more information about the charity, because when we decided we wanted to do like this 24 hour fundraiser, JDRF was something that I considered uh, just because I, I've had good uh, experiences with donating to that charity in the past. Pinball is something that obviously we're all heavily involved in. So, when Project Pinball Charities was suggested, I reached out to Daniel, I asked him straight out, I said, about how much does it cost to acquire a machine, place it into a hospital? And he, and he said, rough estimate is $8,000. That's buying the machine, uh, paying to have a place, having it insured, uh, maintained, uh, everything. So I was like, okay. So I was like, let's go ahead. Let's, let's try to fundraise for $8,000. Let's, let's get a, a machine in a Chicago-based hospital. Um, quickly became evident to me that $8,000 was absolutely going to happen, and potentially we could get $16,000. And when I upped that to sixteen k, right around the time we were getting close to that, Adam Schwartz from New York City reached out and said, hey, I really like what you guys are doing. You're talking about it on the podcast. I love what Project Pinball is doing. I, I want to contribute. I've seen the benefits of a dollar-for-dollar match to drive a fundraising efforts, and, and I want to I, I offer that to your, to your fundraiser. So when Adam came in, that's when we adjusted that goal to 24,000. 24,000 would be three machines at 8,000 apiece. One in Chicago, one in the New York City area, right? Because uh, Chris Kalouris, who donated $3,500 to this uh, charity fundraising effort because he sold this big Lebowski, took the profits and rolled them into this charity fundraiser, his $3,500 became $7,000. That practically paid for a pin, yes. right? So Thank that you, was Chris. awesome. So at $24,000, we thought it was attainable. Uh, here we are. Uh, we hit $25,760 about... 10 hours ago 12 hours ago so that was, at, that was at like the five to six hour mark so yeah yeah we are waiting uh to get an update from project pinball to see what funds have come in to paypal since the last time uh we spoke with them before they went to sleep last night uh we're going to update the uh, bits that have been donated here in in stream and i know for a fact we've got some donations coming in this afternoon and into early this evening we've got the charity uh fundraising auction items which I think if you tabulate those, are, are in the like three to four thousand dollar range. You double that up, you bought another machine. So I, I don't think that forty thousand dollars by the end of this fundraiser is uh, is out of question. I, I really really don't. And if you would have asked me that a month ago, I would have said that you were crazy. But it's the uh, collective of pinballers, you know, people that are looking to do something good. It's the holidays. It's a great cause. It's it's a great organization. It's it's run by a great guy and, and his staff. So it's it's good times. Now, Dave is these grabbing are, play fields. Saying, huh? It, it says a lot. And this is why I, I I really enjoy this hobby is pinball people are awesome. As much as people complain about, you know, the pin side guys that are trolling and all the crap. Look at what you guys have done. I mean, you got twenty six thousand dollars because you love pinball. So seriously, anybody that wants to cast a negative light and saying, Oh, you know, the pin, you know, the, 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 the pin side guys and all this complaining, whatever, there's $26,000 going to the kids. And it's yeah. probably going to end up being more than that. That's that was 26,000 at like midnight. So it's been seven hour, eight hours since. So I honestly think that we awesome. could hit 40 grand today. Yeah. I think I, you haven't even had the cool people in yet mm. and you haven't even hit like, you haven't even hit. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Cool people are here right now, Dave. Yeah. I, I don't know what you're don't thinking. Don't get any cooler, baby. Kind but of shot the load here, bud. I'm just saying. This uh, is it. You know, you still got some great stuff. I just want to throw a quick night show up. This is the Houdini Playfield. It's up for auction. So the Houdini Playfield was donated by American Pinball. Give to the kids. 
If you uh, at the bottom of this play field, you've got signatures by Joe Balser. Joe Balser is the designer and Josh Kugler, who uh, wrote code on Houdini. Uh, it's a Mirko play field. It's obviously been clear coded and uh, no pooling. <laughs> no pooling on that one. <coughs> you may just need this for your game. And if you want to bid on that again, you can go to Facebook and you can go to Special Win Lit Pinball Podcast. And the very first post that we have that's sticky, click on it. It tells you all the information. And there are links to all the items that are available for the silent auction. And that's going to end at 5 o'clock tonight. We have 9 hours, 43 minutes to go with the conclusion of the stream, but only 8 hours and 43 minutes to go. We got some tilt forums versus pin side trash talking. Oh, no. Oh, tilt yeah. versus what we got? If you're a, a tilt forums person, how about you put up uh, 10 bits? And if you're a pin side person, all right. put up who, who, who's going to outbid themselves, right? 40K would be awesome. It shows what the community can do together. Couldn't agree more. Wookie Jeep. Uh, Pink Quest Pinball. Neil, what's up, man? Ha ha. Till forums for the win. Uh, Eaton Ford 67, is this going to be a yearly thing? It only gets better every year. I, I, <laughs> you're asking me now. I don't, I don't see me doing this again next year, but what I would really like to do is, as we look at the, uh, the Raza play field donated by um, Deep Root Pinball, signed by Deep Root staff. What I would like to do is kind of set an annual fundraising effort in which the torch can be passed on to somebody else, right? So we ran it this year at Special Win Lit with Project Pinball. Next year, uh, I'd like to pass the torch on to somebody else that can fundraise and, and see where they can take it. And hopefully, by trying to improve on the prior year's efforts and numbers, uh, you've got something that's a consistent force in donation for the pinball uh, from the pinball hobbyists and uh, and donating to uh, Project Pinball. <clears throat> Sorry if you've discussed this already, but what do you think, man? Stranger Things. <laughs> yeah, Stranger Things. I'm I'm excited about Stranger Things, guys. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Like, you haven't seen Stranger Things? I saw it on Netflix. Yeah, I watch it. It's like every Labor Day. No, I'm talking about like the pinball machine. Have you guys seen it yet? Go on Facebook. I don't know if you're just. Yeah, I don't know if he's just messing with me. All right, Dave cannot confirm or deny if he's having this conversation with me right now. You know, there's no mic there, right? So you're just kind of read his lips until freaking me out. All right, there you go. Go ahead, Ken. Uh, commit. Streamathon. Tw- I'm not committing. Hey, weird day, but you yeah. can donate now at paypal.me slash Project Pinball. Yeah, ju- jump on some Elvira, Dave. If you guys come up with $1,000, I will go away. Until then, I'm going to sit here. And- oh, jeez. Hey, check out the... Uh, the you're, you're like Max Hedrum of pinball streaming right now. That's not $1,000 with the match. That's $1,000. So $2,000. All right. <laughs> and I will go until then. Ian says, uh, good luck with the uh, next 9.41. Need to go walk the dog, cook some cookies. Cook some cookies. That sounds outstanding. Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip. Uh, I'll try to join back later in the day. Yeah, please do. Please do. Come in and check in. You never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. Hey, thanks, Gamago. You got, you've been with us for a Love while, that. and we appreciate it. Like, seriously, you helped kind of drive this thing when it was a little bit Scott quiet Denise around, is now so following. Thank you. Scott, Scott. D in the place to be. Now, I don't know if that's Scott or Sarah Rose, because Sarah Rose was running the Scott Denisi Twitch account earlier. So if it's Scott or or if it's Sarah, good times. Thanks for, for coming aboard. What you got there? You're ho- you're holding yeah, something. Check out, the, check out how the, uh, the, the Facebook goes all the way to the bottom on this one. That is pretty neat. Face for the apron. Yeah, well, it's like a test print. Right. So There's no insert holes. That is a like a piece of maple. With some it, so it's kind of interesting <laughs> that it has a full art even going under the Scott's pushing. Did you put this expensive? Draker's watched the knife shows. He knows the QVC. He is. I'm waiting for the rotation and show him how the manicure good it'll look on their walls. Scott. It looks pretty impressive. It will look like this on your wall. Wow. And even if you got the uh, the nice decal for thanks for cleaning your. But there is no oh microphone God. there. It's magic. I can hear him. Okay. I don't know if anybody else can hear him. He's basically saying it's really nice, and you should. Well, bid Scott Denise is saying it is in fact me, unless Sarah Rose is saying that it is in fact me. Uh, Pink West Pinball says, Ken, can you please spin that Fanta can? They don't deserve the publicity. Scott Denisi is, if turn, it is turn in that fact Fanta you, can in. They denied, is, they denied what, sponsorship what company, of Bill Webb. What, what company? Where, where am I from? Who am I? Give that man a mic, Come on, says uh, Pink West Neil. 
Oh my. Wolfen uh, 359, is, is that, that a hammerproof play field? Now, ironic that you said that, because the first thing I thought when I got that play field is I was going to see if I could lightly smack it with a hammer, but Robert specifically said, hey, this is not a production play field. This is something that we tested our our, our, our printing process on. So it's it's pinball play field plywood, but it has not been CNC routed for inserts. But it's a full print and it's clear coated and it's an and it's totally signed and it's an awesome uh, wall hanger. It's still absolutely super neat. Yeah, it doesn't have any holes cut, so it won't collect dust. It's very nice to hang on your. It's home. clean. So Denise was here. It seems like forever ago, but it was just last night. And his Rick and he so he comes in. He brings in a Rick and Morty <laughs> prototype back glass. Literally a glass, a back glass with unapproved art from uh, Cartoon Network or Adult Swim. And he's saying that this might be the only one that's ever gets printed. It, it's a one of one. He brings it in and it went for auction live on stream and it was it went for like 700 or 750 bucks. Yeah, yeah 750 which which went for $1,500 Project Pinball. So, Scott, that was awesome that you did that and awesome coming in. And 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 had the authentic Great scratch job, on the back of the uh, of the back glass from Spooky uh, Employee, which only adds to the value and the character and the story behind the back glass. Leave it to Dennis to point out that the scratches were made by Spooky Employees. Well, Thank in you, all Dennis. fairness, he's absolutely correct. Uh, he did enjoy how Jason Fowler didn't win it. <laughs> he was <laughs> he was one beer away from uh, taking that. To, you're right. He was he was on the verge of bringing that to a thousand dollars for was that back glass. All twitchy. I think he figured out the math, like with his gas and all. Like he's like, well, I had to pay for gas. In the I, right. I, I think he figured oh, out like, oh, it's Christmas time. The, the good intentions were uh, <laughs> sometimes they're yeah. they're they're a little bit too good with the intentions. And uh, he's like, hey, he's like, listen, I I still have to go home and explain how I spent money out here because yeah. this is probably not supposed to be an expensive trip. You did what? Right. Yeah, some I like to sure you spent a thousand dollars on a prototype Rick and Morty back glass that that nobody will ever see your head, exactly. right? You gotta you gotta make the money in order to deduct right. it too. So right. it's like oh, it is what my. it is. Eight twenty four, guys. We have nine hours. My good, thirty six minutes left. You're right looking, now, I'd what be time leaving? are you guys hanging until? Are, are you guys good to like ten o'clock? Or so you throw me out? I gotta be. I got. Or know. or no, you don't have to go ten. I mean. Yeah, I gotta. I probably got to leave in a, in, a, in a little bit. Like 9 o'clock? 9 o'clock. He's my uh, right. my handler. has got to, you know, that's why he's here. He's All right. Here. That's, well, hey. At least com- one of you is Completely fine, understandable. You guys came in at like a quarter to five in the morning. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got picked up at, uh, I picked up, I got picked up at 10 to 4. Yeah, we're and, way out there. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. And we, uh, f- un- you know, fortunately, the traffic wasn't what I'm used to. Oh, there's no there's no the, traffic. Yeah, we were hauling right. here, and we stopped and got some gum. And some That's coffee. the one thing in Chicago. If, if you're traveling around a quarter to five, a quarter to four in the morning, there's usually not a lot of traffic. So. No, you just got to slalom around the drunks, so it's all good. <laughs> that, that's true, too. Um, actually, to answer your question, Dennis, yes, uh, Mr. Scott here is in on a... Uh, yeah. Rick and Morty. On Rick and Morty. You yeah, got a Bloodsuckers, yeah. or what do you got there, uh, Scott? Yeah, just like everyone else, Bloodsuckers. Yeah, 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 no. It seems like... The yeah. standard has become the limited yeah, now, like, because uh, Bill, everybody's Bill, got the Bill Bloodsuckers. Yeah, that was my whole thing. I was like, uh, nope. I think the non-Bloodsuckers is going to be the LE. Like, even like Wizard of Oz, like those standard editions are the least amount of... Uh, lo- well, the Pirates. Yeah, but the Rare's pirates. not always valuable. Yeah. People jump in on the yeah. uh, LEs and the Super LEs, and then that standard edition of Wizard of Oz ends up being the least produced version of the game yeah I have a, uh, it's avengers, just it is what it is i got an avengers le over at home and the premium is the lowest production model on that yeah, machine right scott why don't you tell them what you got in your house why don't you oh. go through your lineup real quick i got not enough gomez pinball machines he has a lot of gomez what's going on at the sleepy nut tavern these days scott the sleepy nut is that the, who's got the sleepy nut tavern scott's got the sleepy nut tavern scott d yeah Denise or Drager? Denise. Oh, Denise. Denise's got the sleepy Hey, by the tavern. way, thank He's you for acknowledging my presence, Scott. Mr. 520 Dave. Yes, hello. Would you hand him a lighter? Uh, oh. I think, you know, there's a thing. I, they've all gotten T-shirts, except for Scott, because his size is too small, and I don't go to any. You know what's horrible right much. now? I've got a really bad cramp in my hamstring. Stretch it out, brother. You need to and drink some water. Right, that right now, I feel like I'm giving birth Uh-oh. from out of the back of my leg. Well, you need That's to That's not down. good. Drink some water. It's go, like a Rick and Morty Go, hey, go drink some water. Hey, Scotty, give him some water. Is, is yeah. water I don't care what you think, Jerry. 
And I'm giving birth in the back of my leg, Jerry. Jerry. Uh, <laughs> Scott's got 520 lighters. He's probably got some 520 pens. Oh, yeah. 520. There's like a rule if I walk into Pinball Life and somebody is wearing a 520 shirt, which I've tried to outfit most of those guys there with them, um, they get a lighter or a pen. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Scott, he needs a banana. He needs an avocado. He needs some water. You haven't drank enough water, Kenny. No. Kenny, you got you to be careful with the bananas. You, you eat too many of the bananas. Now you've got other issues. Well, here's the dinger. I'm which, allergic which to bananas. It's the lesser of two evils. Either you're you're fighting the uh, the Charlie horse. Or you got the poop stuck. In. Or, or you're, or you're a little bit bound up there. So Yeah, I, I became allergic to bananas like six years ago. Ow, and, uh, that hurts, guys. I'm not going to lie. I'm oh, in some pain right now. locked up. If, if, if you see me rubbing... No, you won't see anybody rubbing yeah, anything. I'm Santa Claus. I can do whatever I want. No, you're not Santa Claus. I am right now. No, you're not Santa Claus, if the Rick. the kids came in, in the studio right now and saw no, Santa Claus No, there are Claus kids watching. Let's, let's keep it. This Where is, are the that, kids? This is not Santa, but, I am, but this is somebody that enjoys am, Santa, so he likes to commemorate Santa by I'm dressing like Santa. Somebody Santa. And right now, if it's 9.30 on the East Coast and you're watching this with your children, right. you should be doing something. He beat up Santa and took up his coat. Guys, I'm I'm dying right now on my leg. Like go I walk around. legit Dude, have like a go, really bad like, cramp. Go stretch it we out. We need to touch. call an Uber. I, Drink I'm, some water. <laughs> can Drink you Uber water. me to inside of the house? Um, can we pick you up and carry you over? I mean, I can kind of run a board. We'll like pick you up like Rudy style. Yeah. You're the guy. What are we going to do? Uh-oh. Jump so on my... Oh, cameras Lord are frozen. Helmet. Uh -oh. oh, no. So Dennis had a question about the Avengers Black Widow shot. Design too hard, or do people just whine? Uh, I don't think it's too difficult. You can make that but from either flipper. Working. You can Look, back in that if it's set working. up well. The, the camera's shooting on the, on the, on the LED. No, we're, we're, we're good. So we're hot. We're just. It's like not. a sitcom style freeze, you know. It's like an intro for. Do, 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 it's do. like it's like Twitch was trying to do me a favor, so I didn't embarrass myself it's by. It's like uh, we're about to by wincing there, like, Char like Charlie's episode. Ow! Do, 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 do. Yeah, walk it off. Seriously, Kenny, go drink some water or something. I am drinking water. Get some coke. No, that's not water. That's it, that is not water. water. That is bullshit. That is bologna sauce. No, it's fine. No, that's Pellegrino. That will actually dehydrate you more. You no, know. it's a natural yeah. spring. Yeah, it's it's so I, I can't drink things that aren't there carbonated. Rub some dirt on can't it. Can't take go. it from a guy that knows Herb. about dehydration. You need to drink real water, not the Pellegrino. No, this is good. <sighs> I just poured a little out directly onto my leg, and it actually Whoa. worked pretty good. Scott, BRB, what is that? Scott's going to be right back. Uh, Dave was rubbing um, Ken's leg when the camera froze. Yeah, I was. Well, you got a problem with that? It's Christmas. <laughs> It's Christmas. Nothing says Christmas like rubbing uh, I rub uh, rubbing a cramp out of your buddy's leg I rub on, on, a, on a pinball stream that that's been going on for 14 hours, 51 minutes, and 48 seconds. Hey, hey if that I can't Saint go Patrick. down a chimney, I'm going to rub the leg. I All the right. So here we go. It's all about people. So thanks happy. for coming in, Dave. <laughs> God bless you. He's taking the, right, uh, taking the stream another thing. Wow. All right. So let's, let's get back to chat here. I watched the uh, Tesla Cybertruck reveal. Reminded me of Deep Root. They took a hammer to the truck and uh, broke their shatterproof glass. <laughs> Hope the Deep Root Playfield reveal goes better. That's awesome. Wow. I did not see that. Uh, I, I did see that. And um, we were talking about that on the way here, actually. And uh, the Tesla Cybertruck is bogus. Oh. The angles on that truck would never get accepted through. Uh, I'm, I happen to be have to, a lot to do with manufacturing cars and stuff like that. Buzz kills? You'll never. Uh, did you give him some buzz kills? Yeah, I just left him around. Wow. See that? He just accidentally just dropped Just kind of dropped a couple of buzz kills. I dropped a couple candy canes and then I ate them. But no. Actually, uh, this looks a little peculiar on stream. You want to explain <laughs> what this is? <laughs> because now as I hold up this little bag that looks like there could be like a little contraception. It's a, I it's picked a that up at a, there's a bedside table at Ken's house. I we call it the low nut. It's love donut. That's a buzz kill. It's yes. a uh, neoprene washer that eliminates flipper buzz. Uh, I had it on a Metallica machine, so it's a neoprene washer, 164th inch thick, uh, 132. I changed it. Uh, you put it between the coil and the coil stop, stop some of the buzz. No, I, I wasn't even going with a bag of drugs, Neil, but... Neil, so so the charity think, stream is if you think that's a bag of rocker. drugs, you have obviously have not been in pinball long enough. Um, so actually, one of my favorite uh, uh, Facebook, I, I, I took a picture of my garage and uh, there were those bags all over the place. And some girl said, oh, you, what's with all the crack bags on your floor? And I said, honey, I'm in pinball. It'd be cheaper if I was into crack. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, those are that's so we got that's uh, how they come. 
<laughs> so we got <laughs> pin quest. Pin quest. We so need. We need a. Uh, you, you got called out for not knowing BRB is. Be right back. Be, Be right, right back. back. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Is that what? Okay. I pronounce yeah. it all the time to make my kid. My kids are on TikTok all the time, so I always pronounce everything incorrectly all the time. Yeah. Get, Tick TikTok. Yeah. TikTok. They're huge on that. Not us. Huh? That's yeah. a, that's a remiss. So we shouldn't be streaming. We should just be posting on TikTok. Funny. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Because not nothing says TikTok like a couple of forty year old guys like streaming pinball charity streams. With, so with Santa suits, I'm actually sweating in this thing. This, this I pretty warm in here. You don't have to you sell me on that. Do I, can you smell it, Kenny? Can you smell what the Santa's cooking over here? What you got? Christmas is taking on a whole new meaning for me right now. It's <laughs> it's gotten a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't say weird. uncomfortable, but it, actually the, the the ambience of the room has shifted. I'm it's not a, not gonna lie to you, you know, Dave. It's, it's kind of like when uh, when 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 uh, it started with pigs. a bad cramp pain in my leg, and then you got to turn into creepy Santa all at the same <laughs> time. Know, so domestic- my classic conditioning is that like pain in the leg and now creepy Santa. So when anytime domestic- I get a cramp, last- I'm gonna think of like a like a strange Christmas. There comes a point when a domestic pig will shift into a peril a feral pig if he's left loose for too long. And I think it's gotten to that point, Kenny. I think that that cramp in the back of your leg, you just want to let's, jump. Let's remember run. what we're doing here You're tonight, playing guys. Through you want to run, here you want to hide. Project Pinball helps rehabilitation. For a kid that's in a hospital, you're playing a pinball machine, and for the time being, you don't have to really think about where you are or what you're doing. You're focused solely on playing pinball. You know, pinball pinball can be fun, but it can also be therapeutic because slamming that ball around when you're angry mm. sure does make you feel a little bit better. You know what, one thing I like about it, it makes a move. Laps around the wards is replaced to a lap down to the pinball machine and standing for an hour. They have to use both hands. You kind of find yourself when you're playing pinball moving into it to play. And uh, so the kids can come in here, number one, stand, the ones are having that issue, but they can still hold on, so they get that strengthening. And then they, they're using both hands and eye and watching. So, uh, so it's going to be a great non-therapy therapy. Exactly. And having a good time. Pinball's great because it's lights, it's sounds, and you're so focused on getting that ball and hitting that target and getting those points that you're really not thinking about why you're in the hospital. You're able to distract your time away a little bit. Pinball is a way to get your mind for the moment off of whatever is happening in your personal life. Even if it is a bad situation, having to be in a hospital, seeing a pinball machine can make it all better. I just want to give back any way that I can. And my passion for pinball, I think, was a great partner for, you know, this giving. All about Project Pinball Charities. Ooh. Daniel Spoiler and the game. Good time. Oh, we, but we, before we say goodbye to uh, Uh-oh. to our friends here. Hey, good morning. Hey, what's up, Zach Many? What's going on? Hey, Zach. Have oh, you s- nothing much. You having fun streaming this morning here? Have you slept yet? Terrible time. Yeah, I get a two and a half hour nap. Huh, not bad. Is Rusty Ronnie Love nearby? Is, uh, is, is Fowler's limp body next to you or <laughs> Where's Jason? No, I, I haven't seen the old Fowler. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, no eggs and bakey for him. Uh-oh. Oh. Was he doing a TNA deal in the Fairfield parking lot? Oh, hey yo. Hi, oh. Anyways. Denise is uh, saying we can't leave. Yeah, I don't know. Denise is claiming he can't leave. Morning Falgren. I think we've hit, the, uh, we've hit the limit. What happened with what? With the Morning Falgren? There's nothing quite like it. I'm like, I'm like, do. I want to hear some Rusty Ronnie. The what? Rusty Ronnie. I want Zach's Rusty Ronnie voice. Oh, that's how my voice sounds naturally right now after last night. Wow. Yeah, I, I am. Uh, I have <laughs> Scott and Dave. They have to cruise out, so yeah. I'm going to say goodbye to these guys, and then uh, okay, Scott, hey, God bless. What I was going to ask you is, I'm going to come by and drop off that Beatles. Um, is there any? Uh, how do we get that Star Wars out of your basement? I I have it in the basement. We just got a bundle. What time are you coming over here? Because it looks we, like we picked the right time to leave. I can help you bring it up. Heading over in a half hour. So. Oh, I I don't have anybody here. 
other than myself until uh, Joe Katz gets here at 10. Okay. I can uh, help you move it at 10 if that works. Yeah, then I'll figure something out. And then I was just going to leave that Elvira room with you. <gasps> you, can, wow. you can figure out how to sell it or something. I wow. can figure out maybe a good home for it, like, instantly. Hmm. Yeah. So. Oh, sweet. So, I love it. Okay. I want to stick with that, but I need that Star Wars. That way I can... Uh, did you want to auction Thank off you. the Star Wars? Well, well three fifty nine is asking if you could auction off the Star Wars. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just keep a trip. Yeah, no, that's fine. It's uh, it, the path is clear. We just gotta lower the head, wrap it, and bring it up. It's it's not a big deal. I'll help okay. you do that for sure. All right. In the meantime, I might. Uh, you said you can take an American pinball game over there this week, possibly. Uh, yeah, this call is getting worse. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, that's wow. fine. If you wanna, yeah. if you wanna. <laughs> If you want to leave a game here, we can uh, leave like, a game here, and I can like I can drop Vader. it off. Pray to, pray well, I'll call them and see if we got a little time before Joe Cats get there. I'll call them and see if they want me to just drop it off right now. But. You let me know what you need, man. I got your back. All right, brother. See you. All right, thanks. Bye. Bye. So you got two new Gomez machines I could hear a waffle in cooking in the background. I showed up the wrong time. You got two Gomez. You got a Beatles and a Star Wars a pin coming in. Star Wars is here. I, yeah. It's in the basement. It's in the basement. So PA Beatles design. is coming. Elvira's staying. Star Wars is leaving. Whoa. Hey, Dead Flip's Dead hosting Flip's with a viewer. Well, we Thanks, Dead right Flip. So yeah, we'll we'll see where that goes. With uh, Here comes oh my, Flip. I'm like I'm like thinking to myself, it'd be nice to kind of at ten o'clock when Joe Katz gets in here. You just want to fall down. Might want to just like just you know take what? a little thirty minute break. But guess what I'll be doing? Kenny, Moving I'll, a pinball machine I'll out of the basement. I'll let Scott <laughs> go home. Why don't you go lay down and I'll just run the show? Yeah, no, I'm oh. scared of that I'll actually, Dave. Go. I appreciate that. No, no we're good. We're good. Minutes was a uh, we're good. By Tim Burton. I got my buddy Sean coming in with his uh, son. Anyways, they're gonna do a uh, a donation here live, and then uh, we'll take it from there. But the no, design we're good. guy. The problem oh, yeah. with the uh, Escalera in, uh, in in our friend um, Kenny's basement is his stairs aren't really. That conducive to an escalator. Get, getting a Star Wars the pin up the stairs is going to be no problem. And Star Wars the pin, like, ways, yeah, no, know. it's 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 a pleasure to move. If you're going to move a pinball machine, like these home editions are are not bad at all. Okay. Yeah, no, it's good. I it's good. It In fact, they're going to strap it on my back, and I'm going to be like, uh, Dead Flip says, keep up the grind. Ba -na -ba -ba. Hey, there we thank go. you. We've already had a, a sports injury. Hey, are you are you having a stern cramp? for real today, Mister Dead Flip, oh, know, or like, was oh. that just uh, some bologna sausage you at the you at the deli? Are you really heading to Stern this morning, or was that just a, a, a silly post? Mr. Danger. We'll find out. Come on. I'm waiting for the delay. We got Pennsylvania design guys like, hey, Zach doesn't need the help. He's got, got an Escalera. And I said, hey, yeah. No, yeah. It's, not all that it's only that easy. I think sometimes the Escalera can complicate things based on your configuration for relocating pins. Oh, that was yesterday. Should we just get escalators <laughs> in our house? I, you know just what? get a house with a walkout basement or put your pins on the main floor. I mean, that's yeah. the easiest for, way to do it. For it? ten grand, you can actually get a lift um, elevator that's pretty sweet, and it's like an escalator. Uh, 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 uh. There's nice little elevators. For, for 10000 For ten grand. Ten thousand dollars. How much is an escalator? Yeah, I don't know. I've door, never priced an escalator. Three and a half. It's only two thirds of the. And super you can write it off, and then you can sell it to the empty nesters that want to move to a ranch. No clue. Oh, you got an elevator in your house. <laughs> I can't even put a shed in my backyard. I'm pretty sure I'm not getting a service elevator installed inside of my house for pinball machines. That'd be Can't sweet, make it happen. Uh, no, I don't need to. That's why. That's why I moved up to the main floor. I love the garage. No, no more, uh, no more, up and down the stairs. I've done that probably sixty times each way. Yeah, you've done it more than I. I'm. I'm done with it. I've got levels like you always dropped in the basement. Yeah, no, it's just I'm gonna take a take a hard pass on yeah. doing the basement thing ever again. It was office, garage. Basement Dining pinballs. room, basement. Oh, drain it or save it's, it. It's drain it or save it. Going up the stairs with a pinball it. machine. I know, man. It's horrible. Who it's do not you good. talk in? Like, I know you got Billy. Who do who do you have? To, who do you talk into bringing those games up? Because you got some big bastards too. Oh, you know games. what? We've got a pretty good collective of just on this block of pinball guys. So, so they just they're like, okay, yeah, I'll, everybody I'll, pitches in. They, like, I'll help them move. They'll help me move. Free. They probably help me move a lot more. But who brought the the Hobbit up? Who brought the Hobbit? So the Hobbit, that's I swore I was not going to bring that up. So uh, we had two guys that came out from uh, like Rockton or something. And I remember when they got to the first landing and then they got to the second landing and one of the guys got pinned between the wall <laughs> and the machine while he was like on his on his butt. Sure. He and I couldn't help at the time. And, and I explained this because I had pulled something 
and I, I, I had I had my phone out. I'm like, I'm gonna have to call nine one one. I don't know how they got him out. Um, it was amazing, but this other guy just turned into Hercules. Was able to pull the machine up enough for him to get on his bearings and get it out. I will never. That's why I never had another uh, Hobbit or like a Wizard of Oz down there ever again. Like a dialed in, at least it's it's a not a wide body. No. So you've got a little bit of a, of a weight fluctuation yeah. there where you can get it in and out. So I was able to get dialed in in and out. But uh, Hobbit never again, never again. That's heavy. Twilight Zone was pretty heavy too to get out of the yes. basement. See, I'm getting but. older, so I'm, I'm taking the heads off instead of just folding them. Well, that's what Bill does. Two now. Trips, Bill takes easier. the heads off. Yeah. On the newer stuff, yeah, I guess you could do that. It's not that it's hard. Yeah, I'm kind of lazy. It's still harder than it should be. Uh, Dennis says, yeah, I have got games where there are no stairs. Saves you uh, needing an Escalera. That, that's perfect. That's another game, really. It's eating 467 59 times. Too many. Uh, and then Joe Fox 22 says it's actually Zach that complicates things. Yeah, Zach. Zach's a good guy, man. I'll try to back him up, but threw me for a little uh, hey, curveball on that. And Joe yeah. Fox, with the money that you've invested in today's show, you yeah. are absolutely yeah. right. Zach is a complicated person. Joe Fox is the proud Joe. winner of the Steve Ritchie Lannister uh, rails that he Joe brought Fox in. Joe Fox pretty that much awesome. won Friday night. I would just say. Yeah, it, than, was, it was a clean sweep there. Other than the Schwartz. Yeah. Like Joe Fox and the Schwartz. Right. Those two, really. Joe Fox, we salute you. Lord Helmet, where you been? Oh, he's back. He had to hire movers to get Pirates of the Caribbean upstairs. I totally see that, actually. That's, yeah. That is uh, an intimidating pin no, to move. Uh, I got a phone move. call to move a Pirates of the Caribbean up with my Ultra Lift. So, yeah, that's that, that that's there's some weight on that sucker. Wolf 359 is excited to see more Beatles. Uh, that's the one I'd like to have one day. So, yeah, we, Zach's dropping off Beatles here what as we move Star Wars the pin what? out of here. Thanks, Dirty Bro. Dirty Bro. STR for following the channel. What's STR? I don't know. Uh, St. R, maybe. So we are in the uh, wee hours of the morning. We've been uh, rocking the stream for uh, 15 plus hours. We've got nine hours, 16 minutes, and 40 seconds now remaining. Coming in, we're going to say goodbye to these guys. Coming in, we've got Joe Katz, who will be here at 10 o'clock. He will be streaming. Uh, Roger Sharp will be in at 11 o'clock with Ryan Kuyper and Dave Brennan from TurboGrafx-7 and Jason Fowler from Slap State Pinball Podcast. Uh, and then I got a personal friend of mine, uh, Sean Rosenseal, will be in at about 9.15 with his son, Ali. Oh. Uh, Ali had saved some money. He's been watching the stream. He wants to donate something out of his personal savings, piggy bank, wow. which is cool. And Sean wanted to make a donation, too. So we'll do that live. And then uh, we'll see where the day goes from there. And we'll just get through it, guys. If you want to donate, it's a dollar for dollar match right now. You go to paypal.me slash project pinball. All donations there are matched dollar for dollar. Any bits or subs that have come in tonight, if you look at the bits, it's pretty crazy. 130,000 bits from Mod Couple Pinball, 128,000 bits from Replica X, uh, Flippin' Fargo, uh, $11,550. If you're wondering about the translation to money, for instance, 130,000 bits is $1,300 with the dollar for dollar match. The mod couple with in combination of uh, Adam Schwartz, twenty six hundred dollars to Project Pinball. Uh, one hundred twenty eight thousand uh, bits goes to twelve hundred eighty dollars times two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's been a successful night. The money that we see raised on stream has not been updated since Project Pinball shut it down for the day yesterday. So we're waiting to hear back from Project Pinball this morning so that I can update that number. I would guess that we're probably in that thirty thousand dollar area. Uh, I can't say for certain. I think the goal, a respectable and attainable goal at this point, is to close this night out with forty thousand dollars for uh, Project Pinball, which would be five machines, roughly, in uh, Children's Hospital. So let's try to do that. That'll be let's good go, time. Guys. Let's go. Did you guys say Turbo and Dave are coming out? Yeah, Turbo and Dave will be here. They're going to be streaming with Roger Sharp and Jason Fowler from Slap Save from eleven o'clock to two o'clock. That's going to be Central Time. So Honestly, I want to I want to thank Scott hey, Scott who two came hours in for Roger Sharp. Thanks, yeah. Made a nice uh, contribution tonight, not only on the stream from the both of you guys, but financially with a $500 donation goes huge. Uh, uh -oh. Matches with $1,000. Hey, we got a little bit of Chuck some Wirtz. more stuff. Hey, Wirtz. Chuck Words here. 2,700 bits. So his $27 donation now becomes $54. Thank you so much, Chuck Word, for coming in. We always like what you do with your streaming, especially with Straight Down the Middle, a pinball show, and uh, the the creator that he he runs Pin So Chuck Word, always wow. good to always good to have uh, Eric Wurtenberger in here. And catch um, it. Yeah, and Dave. Is there, hey, is there any way you can like see if you can get into the Florida guys and get the real number now? What? Get the real. The, go like, the go bother the I I've already I've already messaged. Yeah. Said no. All yeah. Right. Well, no, I just haven't heard back. So, right. uh, it's nine forty-seven hey, in the morning like, there with I'd those like guys. Everybody, so. uh, wherever you're at, like 
just take a quick moment to raise a glass or a coffee mug or just your hand and let's salute Ken Cromwell. Cause this oh crazy. no 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 no! You know oh, what it is, man? No, 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 it's no. the whole. It's it's all of no, no, it's no. freaking pinball guys He's just in coming pain together right now, guys. You're His leg now, is man. cramped up. <laughs> I cramped up, but that's if okay. If he was a racehorse, I might pull a bullet behind his ear. <laughs> well, that's he is working that's, his butt that's off. That's a little concerning. He's working his butt off, and he's done something. I mean, seriously, guys, we we've, we've all done this. Twenty five. You guys are here no, streaming no, no, with no, me, no. but you set it up and you made it happen. I we can all talk about whatever. You made this happen. Awesome, so, man. I, well, that's hey, nice of you to say. Be proud, and I salute you. I, mean, I we salute you. I Everybody in proudly pinball salute you back. Salute you, thank guys, you, guys. Thank you, guys. We're not just a bunch of whatever. We no, that was very nice of you to put say. Put your money together, and I just would like to salute you for a moment as I walk out in my Santa costume. <laughs> <and> <laughs> Take it easy, guys. Uh, Eaton uh, Ford six seven my, with another thousand is, bits. My Ryan is leaving. Ryan's been on fire tight with the bits. God bless you. I thank you so much. I know. I want to say Dave Falger and Scott Drager. Uh, pinball maniacs. Glad I had a chance to get in. Yeah, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Ah, hey, you rat. Come here, man. Ah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Get more. Hey, more Hold money, on. more money. Keep those donations. Keep them coming. Thank you, man. Thank you. Really good time, guys. Honestly, and Scott Denisi, awesome job just dropping that stuff off and that the content you dropped when you were here earlier it was super cool man it was not, sick because that rick and morty overly, uh, rick and morty prototype backlash and i just like to say seven hundred and fifty dollars tonight i i know scott i mean i see scott probably other every other week i'm a big rick and morty fan and the fact that he never spilled the beans and said hey i'm doing rick and morty that's he's like government clearance. Like I would, I would let him. Uh, you notice there was, there's never really been. Uh, you don't really know about the spooky games until they're ready to announce those eh, spooky games. You kind of heard about some other stuff, but this, this one was under wraps. Was completely blindside. Complete yeah. blindside. Yeah, it was exciting. Complete blindside. It's a good reveal. I always like that when you don't know what's coming. Oh, awesome! Hey guys, thank you so much. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I look forward to bothering you guys along the way, and thanks for listening to my. Stuff. Your, so. <laughs> thanks for listening to your stuff. Dave Scott, thank you guys. Have thank a safe you. drive home. Thanks for coming in. Be good. Be careful. Uh I know Scott's it's Scott's good up. to go. And what's that? It's, it's light up, by the Scott's way. my driver. I know yeah, it is light out. up. Yeah, Scott it, Scott is Dave's driver. Yeah. Eight forty nine. Everybody needs a handler in life. It, that's this is absolutely true. I'm gonna run this uh <laughs> this project uh pinball promo Outside, again real look quick. At, look at the sun. And I'm going to collect myself as I get ready to fly the stream solo here on the Special One Lit Pinball Podcast oh. Streaming Network. Well, Dave, okay. Scott, thank you. Thanks, Ken. Thank you, Kenny. Again, let's remember what this is for, and that's for Project Pinball. Project Pinball helps rehabilitation. For a kid that's in a hospital, you're playing a pinball machine, and for the time being, you don't have to really think about where you are or what you're doing. You're focused solely on playing pinball. You know, pinball, pinball can be fun, but it can also be therapeutic because slamming that ball around when you're angry mm. sure does make you feel a little bit better. You know what, one thing I like about it, it makes them move. Laps around the wards is replaced to a lap down to the pinball machine and standing for an hour. They have to use both hands. You kind of find yourself when you're playing pinball moving into it to play. And uh, so the kids can come in here, number one, stand, the ones are having that issue, but they can still hold on, so they get that strengthening. And then they, they're using both hands and I am watching. So, uh, so it's going to be a great non-therapy therapy. It's exactly. I'm having a good time. Pinball's great because it's lights, it's sounds, and you're so focused on getting that ball and hitting that target and getting those points that you're really not thinking about why you're in the hospital. You're able to distract your time away a little bit. Pinball is a way to get your mind for the moment off of whatever is happening in your personal life. Even if it is a bad situation, having to be in a hospital, seeing a pinball machine can make it all better. I just want to give back any way that I can. And my passion for pinball, I think, was a great partner for, you know, this giving. So always great to see what's going on with Project Pinball, Daniel Spoiler. Uh, commendable organization. 
We're going to have Daniel on. Uh, we're going to call him later this afternoon and just kind of get him on to uh, talk a little bit about Project Pinball Charities, answer any questions that anybody might have in chat. Uh, very good guy. And to, for somebody to be so passionate about pinball to kind of make a choice to put so much effort into what he's doing and, and, and to actually have this the fulfillment and satisfaction of knowing that the passion in pinball um, will extend and carry on to others that, that can benefit from that is awesome. You can donate now, paypal.me slash project pinball. We've got Elvira's House of Horrors that I got to hand it to this game, guys. So check this out. We have been, and I apologize as I look uh, at my phone, um, got my buddy Sean and his son stopping in for uh, a couple minutes around uh, in about 10 minutes. So we fired up the stream uh, 15 hours ago. Elvira ran strong all night long. We never had a stuck ball. We never had one issue uh, with that game. And that game has been played for pretty consistently for almost 14 hours. So uh, pretty, pretty impressive. Now we've got other games here. We've got Attack from Mars remake that we can switch the uh, stream over to. We've got Lord of the Rings. We've got a Beatles that's coming in. So I don't know exactly what we're going to do. I know uh, when Joe Katz comes in, he's going to, I guess, pick what he wants to stream and then we can move the rig if we need to. But I appreciate everybody that's just kind of hanging out with us this morning and uh, taking part. And what we are doing, I think I'm going to jump on Elvira here. For No, I'm not going to jump on Elvira. I just shut down a couple of the mics. It was getting a little bit of a uh, echo effect. But uh, Beatles says, <laughs> Siggy Sour, what's up, brother? How are you, man? I'm excited about getting a Beatles here. So uh, Zach is from flipping out pinball right so he is uh he's gonna drop that off and i guess we're gonna be able to keep it for a little while so i, I plan on streaming that a couple times until we get a an official release that can be streamed scott denise says you should up the, open up the hotline and take a couple calls yeah we could probably do that real quick um if somebody wants to call in the number is area code 630 Actually, <laughs> I think it's 283-2888. It's been a while. Let me double check that real quick. Six three zero two eight three two eight eight eight. I will type that into chat. Don't that I miss miss type that one. There we go. Hey, guys, it's, it's been a long. I woke up at six o'clock in the morning yesterday, so I'm going on 25 hours. So my mistake for the uh, the mistype. So if anybody wants to call in and uh, keep me awake for a couple minutes before we can get some fresh blood into this stream, 630-283-2888. Uh, we are in the United States of America or outside of Chicago, um, and we can get you right on there. Scott Denise is still here in chat. Now, Scott was just here last night, so it's 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 always fun to see Scott here. And then he goes home, and he's still kind of contributing to the uh, to the action here as we get ready to take our first call. Hey, thanks for joining us on the Special One Lit Charity Stream for Project Pinball. You're on with Ken. What's going on? Yo, it's Why Snow. Why Snow, what's up, dude? How are you, man? I'm doing great. You? <laughs> doing well. I, I appreciate you asking. What's uh What's keeping you up on a... Well, actually... Nine o'clock in the morning, getting ready to talk some pinball. What's going on? Uh, yeah, man, gonna work on some medieval madness that I'm fixing up to put on route. Oh, a little medieval mad, uh, original or uh, remake? Original. Yes, yes. Do you find yourself when you put an original medieval madness on on location? Does that is that worrisome to you because of the value of the dollar amount and the rarity of the machine, or is it you just expect these things to be kind of enjoyed by the no. general public? Nope. Yeah, not at all. Pinball is meant for sharing, enjoying, and playing with everyone. I get it. It seems like there's there's like a line in the sand where some of the collectors or would prefer not to see these things be weathered or, or exposed to the elements. And then there's, you know, your take where it's like, hey, you know what? These things are made to be played. Let's get them out there. I can appreciate both sides. Sorry, you're super echoey right now. Hey, am I echoey, man? I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you on that. Let me hold on one second. 
I don't know if that's any better. Hello? Well, that was a heck of a first call. I appreciate Wise Snow giving us a call. So maybe we're having technical phone difficulties. It's hard to really say because I could hear him clearly. Anyhow, it is what it is. If somebody else wants to try or why snow, if you want to give us a call back, we'll we'll try that call again and, and see how that works. Um let me check my settings here. And you know what? Normally I would cringe doing this on the fly. But on a 24 hour charity stream, there's not much that I'm uh, concerned about doing. As we look at our let's see if we can take that again. Hey, you're on with Special Win Late. This is Ken. Hey, it's Dennis Creasel. Hey, what's up, Dennis? How are you, man? Oh, not much. You're you're looking a little fatigued, a little peckish there. A little, so little bit? I'd... I'm on like my third and a half wind. Uh, am I coming in okay or are you getting an echo? Uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of see what he's saying. It's not like a really bad reverb, but you sound far away. Like oh, okay. I'm hearing you through a tunnel. I, you know what I bet is happening here? I bet you, let me adjust my, uh, you got a second here, Dennis, to keep you on the line for a second? What All is, right, I'll stand by. What, what's going on with you, man? Anything good? No, I just, well, I got up and I saw you were actually still going, even though you, you've met your goal, you could, you could be at peace now. Is this any better, by the way? You could rest. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things nope, where it's. I don't, you, if you still hear me, I, I do not, I do not hear you anymore at all. You don't hear me anymore? This is awesome. I just changed nope. my... Uh, still don't hear you, though. It looks like our connection's still in place. Dennis, do me a favor. Call me back, because I just changed to uh, my USB input for the mixer, and I think I need to restart the uh, software. So I am going to restart our call software here. Nothing like some live growing pains on the stream. So I'm going to open that up again. Sorry about that, guys. 630-283-2888. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can give Dennis a call back. This is a voicemail for Dennis Creasel. Can we it's the voicemail for Dennis Creasel. Hopefully he's still not talking to me. We'll see if we can get Dennis to give us a call back. Anyhow. Yeah, still, still go. Yeah, sorry, I lost you too, Weiss. No, what was happening is you were hearing my audio from the webcam, literally way across the uh, the studio here. So let's see if this works. Hey, man, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so much closer. Is that... Almost like it's not a webcam from uh, across the room. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Like, uh, it's... Hey, that's a pretty good webcam mic to be able to that, that off. That webcam mic is uh, about I don't know. 20 feet away that's just kind of sitting uh on the rig for the score cam so anyways my mm -hmm. apologies but thanks for hanging in there i had to no, restart no. after i switched uh inputs what's going on man no, not not much so i you've met your goal you're yes here you are you're, you're trying to entertain these people all alone you're trying not to have a leg cramp and fall asleep but you know life has seemed somewhat somewhat hard for you <laughs> have you so ever figured... had like that cramp that it just comes at the most inopportune time, like in the hamstring or the calf or something. That was pretty bad. No, my body always works exactly as I want it to. <laughs> That's right. You've never once had to struggle with anything like that. I, I totally I've you. never experienced pain. Oh, that, well, that would be, uh, strangely, I don't question you saying that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> what so, you... I, I figured we should probably talk about something pinball to keep you both awake and yeah. your, your viewer, your viewers engaged with the hobby that they, that they love and are donating for. So Absolutely. Don't know if you have any topics in mind or I can throw you out something that you would prefer. Uh, you know what, as far as my creativity goes for coming up with topics, uh, I would take a, a pass on that. And if you have anything you'd like to bring up, I'd, I'd love to discuss it. I'm, I'm a little bit spent as far as the, uh, the thought process goes. So hopefully I don't mumble my okay. way through this. We'll see how it goes. Well, uh, then let's let's do some manufacturing speculation. Oh, and okay, so here here we are. We just uh, this week saw the whole fear of missing out chain going on with Scott Nisi's Rick and Morty pinball out of Spooky. Right, exactly. And obviously, we know from the the drips uh, of the, <laughs> and it's a little more than drips at this point about the leaks on Stranger Things that we were all 
pretty certain about that. Right, right. Being the, the upcoming title there. So here's the thing, Deep Root. Yes, Deep uh, Root. It seems like everything initially, and granted, there's still a lot we don't know, but it seems like everything initially is hinged entirely revolving around for their first games, really selling off of the cachet of the designers. So it's like Raza, it's, it's, not, li- it's not a licensed theme. We're selling it because it's J-pop and people want to see the return of the J-pop. But with these really popular licenses coming into play, Rick and Morty selling out in four hours, right. I'm sure Stranger Things will do very well. It's the return of Brian Eddy. And the other licensing that we know is going to be happening in it, what appears to be a very busy 2020. Right. I would like to know what you think this is. This now is Deep Root going to be in a poor position to try and launch their company now that they didn't get the chance to actually release games at TPF this year? And they're basically a year behind schedule. Do you feel that the competition is now so fierce that they will have difficulty? actually being successful and moving very much. Yeah, it, it's a real legitimate question. I, I think we can all kind of agree, including Robert Mueller from Deep Root, that the launch schedule did not go as planned. And uh, what happens, obviously, that can work to your advantage or your disadvantage. I think at this point, it's worked to the disadvantage of Deep Root. And that's simply because when, when a product is being revealed for the first time or hinted on, as we see with these new releases that get leaked, it's, it's like, and even releases that officially get revealed, the longer it gets before it, it or the longer the time that it takes before it gets into the, the hands of the consumer it seems like the uh the interest wanes and wanes and wanes and i think that's where deep root had to come into the marketplace with this raza machine and really blow people out of the water now have they done that that's open for debate uh there hasn't been a large collective that's been able to play the game uh i know that the tpf reviews seem to be mixed but then in deep roots defense they said that well this isn't the entire package this is just kind of what we are allowing you to see before we officially launch uh, so that being said, I, it's it's too close or too early to call to see if if I in in my opinion if it's going to be a success or a failure. But I absolutely think at this point they're more in an uphill battle than they are you know treading water or or even on top of their game. What do you think, Dennis? Junk in the trunk. I, I'm in a I, yeah. I, I essentially agree with you. The the area that I I'm leaning into right now though is the deci- we know Raza is original. And right. we've not been seeing a tremendous amount of success for highly original IP concepts right. that generated and sold at this point. And even when we look at this year where I'd say that the competition was less fierce. All right, so Black Knight isn't an original IP, but it's a pinball-only IP. Right. Uh, so leaning into that would have possibly been a good period in terms of when to, what would you have your game up against. We know Monsters had a lot of initial right. kind of fear of missing out hype, but it's really declined rapidly after people started getting the game and not just n- not preferring how it played. So it felt like, I mean, you have, you had the, the two biggest juggernauts this year were Wonka and Jurassic Park. Right, correct. Uh, with Jurassic Park overall having the most, I guess, overall acceptance by the community. Right, the, the biggest so, impact on the community too, I would assume, right? I mean, with the right, number right. of units that are out there, sure. But, I mean, you, you were having Alice Coopers were just still get, getting churned out. Uh, so it wasn't it didn't feel as newish, you, uh, less popular than Rick and Morty for Spooky. So Spooky's going in with a better license in 2020 than 2019. Right. Uh, Stranger Things is a more timely license than even Jurassic Park is. So it just to me on that on that angle alone, I worry that this, hey, we're selling just off the names of designers. That's like that feels so 2017. I just don't know if Deep Root can lean into that and say, "Oh, well, we've got J-pop." Because beyond pinball people, who cares? No, and I agree with you. And I think what we've seen in the past with machines that ultimately didn't make it out, including this this Raza and Magic Girl, these games were highly sought after because of the designer, because of the rarity of the pins. So, to your point, can you really take the designer and and carry this the uh, the drive and the success of a pinball release just based on the designer's name? Um, I don't well, know I that you can do that. No. Right. No, but, I, I would agree with that. I don't think you at, can either. Look at the sales numbers on dial, dialed in. And what's, what's, what was the discussion that was in your own chat last night? It yeah. was, hey, will, will Jersey Jack be willing to re-theme dialed in as something desirable? Let me ask and you the, this. The engineer said no. But uh, Yeah, go ahead. Wait, I mean, do you think, I mean, for instance, because... I, 
I don't I don't know how much time you have on dialed in, but I think dialed in is one of the better shooting pins that I've played over the last five or ten years. I just I like the flow. Now the theme didn't call to me, and I think ultimately that's why I didn't keep it in the collection is just because it wasn't something that was recognizable to people that would come over and play, and it wasn't something that I kind of could uh, could bond with theme wise. But could you see that game getting rethemed and maybe getting a tweak or two? And have a successful relaunch and maybe get that out there uh, even more so than it already is? Or do you think that dialed in is just, it, it is what it is at this point? And uh, there is no other option for retheming that uh, that game. Uh, I would I would describe it as, and I, I will note, I think dialed in is Pat Waller's greatest design. In my opinion, it is his best game Interesting. that he's worked on for layout, for layout purposes. Okay. Uh, and I have played it a lot. The but I the question to me is moot because I don't think Jer- I don't think Jersey Jack will ever go back and retheme it. I don't. If they can't even bring themselves to make more pirates without retheming it. I okay. just don't see in their corporate mantra where they want to go back and revisit the well and not challenge their engineers to come up with something new right. and just reskin something. Yeah, I, just yeah, don't I get see it. it. Even though it would work, it would work. It would sell better. Yes, if they did it, but they won't do it. I wonder if dialed in was Toy Story. With the exact same design layout from Bat Lawler, how exponentially better that game would have performed for sales. Right, right. I mean, we can only I, we could, I, I would say at least double just based off. Of I would the agree. Alone. I would agree. But but we don't know what the Toy Story layout will look like because ultimately it might be a better game than Dialed In. Right. I don't want to ever fixate, even if I think something's the best to say well it will and it will never change uh, you know it, i'm not one of those that says oh attack from mars is the greatest game ever and i won't consider there ever to be a game that can beat it because t- things change well it's funny because now you have another designer that is uh not being resurrected but making a reappearance in pinball and that is brian eddy and you know there's the video of stranger things now that's that's kind of hit the the internet uh, over the last 12 hours i would assume um do you think that Stern benefits from having Brian Eddy on board selling a pinball machine based on a designer name? Do you think it's the theme that carries that, or do you think it's like an ultimate one-two punch with a highly sought-after designer and a highly sought-after theme? I think it's both, uh, but most of those sales will come from the fact that it's Stranger Things. Stranger Things. There's just too many. There's just too many people at this point in the hobby that are buying for game rooms and they are buying off of theme. And that's well. I mean, look at look at the and in a lot of ways they had to because there was such a short turnaround. But this whole situation with Rick and Morty, most of that was oh, it's Rick and Morty. I love Rick and Morty. Yeah, right, right. There right. was a size a sizable but smaller percentage that were oh, it's Scott Denisi, and I love what Scott Denisi did on TNA. So it's going to be the same thing here. It was the same thing with we saw that with what happened with Pat Lawler. Yeah. Like, dialed in only could ride on the fact that it was a Pat Lawler game. It sold, but it could have sold better. And so that's why I think for Jersey Jack's perspective, it's like, well, look at how much better Wonka is doing. Well, of course it is. It's a better theme, the theme. Yep. and you still have Pat Waller to sell on. So you're, you get, you get a double dip. You get both, you get both things. I wonder so, what would have happened if, so for instance, if Stern, they're like, all right, Brian Eddie's coming aboard, but he's doing uh, medieval madness two or uh, attack from Mars three. I mean, cause he had revenge uh, from Mars. I wonder how that would have been accepted. Cause again, now you're looking at something that I guess is, it's not really an original IP anymore because they're relicensing a theme that they've already had success on. Um, but you saw that with Steve Ritchie too. Like you had, you had Black Knight Sword of Rage that had come out and uh, the designer just didn't seem to carry that pinball machine as successfully as I probably thought they, they probably would have hoped it would have performed sales-wise. Yeah, no. it's that, that, that market who's after 90s nostalgia pinball theme licenses is going to be smaller than any pop culture. Right. Right. Any pop culture license, and I think I think everyone knows that. Uh, so some of that, you know, in the case of Stern with Black Knight, I my theory, and this is not confirmed, this is my personal theory, was that with the frustrations that Steve Ritchie had, because he had some very tough licensors to deal with with Star Wars and then Game of Thrones before that, that I think really cramped his style. I think he insisted on something that would give him more freedom and. I believe the company was like, we want to keep him happy. He is one of our greatest designers in the stable. Right. Let's give him this and let him have this. He's he's done enough for us. He's earned it. So, so for those gave him a yeah gave yeah. him a license that was relatively free, free to and since he based he was the original creator of the original license, he knew what he could do that would still be within compliance. 
For those of you just joining us in chat, we're talking uh, live with Dennis Creasel of the Eclectic Gamers podcast and co-host of This Week in Pinball podcast. Dennis, uh, thanks for calling in today. So do you think that the original theme concept is dead, uh, not only for a, a company that's trying to make a uh, an impact on coming in to market with a new pinball machine, but in general, is the original theme just something that it, at this point just has to go by the wayside? It's just not a successful uh, business model when launching a pinball machine. Uh, at volume, it is. I think there will always be a place for boutique in, uh, in uh, excuse me, unlicensed in boutique runs. Right. Or uh, yeah, possibly if a company is able to come up with a, an economical model where going unlicensed gets you full-fledged pinball machines, but you're getting a significant savings. Essentially, the savings of not using the license is being passed, either passed on to the consumer or I think less successfully, but upping the BOM and, and selling them at the same price that you see significantly more game for your dollar. Those would be exceptions to it, but fundamentally, I think there's, it's just at this point, too many people are buying for their home. Right. So it's like, oh, I love the show Stranger Things. That's what they want. They're yeah, not actually yeah. after a good pinball game. I'm, I'm, well, you I'm want, guilty you of... Want those, but. Yeah. Right. I'm guilty of the theme. Like It's desirable for me. So like at some point... I want to be able to, to to experience it. I hope that it plays well and it's not a dud. Uh, but it's like we talked about this earlier. It seems like themes that you're invested in emotionally or from the heart, you tend to be more critical on because you've got expectations going in where it's almost easier to enjoy a game in which you don't have a, an emotional tie to the theme because you could be a little bit more forgiving of its potential shortcomings. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a factor. But and there's not a wrong answer here. If your your home if you're a home collector, you need to decide what you want in your yeah, own home. Right, a right. lot of people c care about either, and that's where I think Stern in particular uh, leans into the nostalgia so hard. And that's uh, what and what is the success of Stranger? I've never seen Stranger Things, but my understanding is one, it's a well-written show, but two, it leans into that '80s nostalgia, right. hardcore, and people just lap that up. Just like I'll still. Uh, smile if I see a, a G1 Transformer and remember watching that show as a kid. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now, it's not enough to get me to buy the Stern uh, Transformers pen, but had that one been designed off of the cartoon and not off of the Michael Bay movies, who knows what would have happened. Could Probably you see, not with me. Could you see, dead what about a retheme? Or what about like a reskin like we saw with Star Wars? Uh, we've got the comic book art edition. Oh, what, if, sure. what if you get Transformers well, with, that com with that cartoon uh, package? Oh, well, I mean, it would move units. I don't know if it would move enough to be worth the effort. It's right. the same thing as, oh, let's vault, let's vault Tron, but do the original movie art for Tron. That's the same idea. Right. I don't know. It's interesting. There's a lot of different ways companies can approach these things. I, I think what really kind of piques my curiosity is with Deep Root coming in with so many different, what they are essentially original themes, how that's going to tie into the success of, of their initial launches. And if they don't have something that's licensed, that's going to kind of catch everybody's eye and match that with a halfway decent product. I just don't know if, if they stay viable in the marketplace um, as being a new a new company. Yeah, I, I, I would be, if I were them, I would be concerned. If, if only because I don't get the, obviously, they're not trying to launch at the size of a Spooky or an American Pinball. Right. They clearly were trying to position them. Look, I mean, look at how many designers they have on staff. They've put themselves in a position to try and be a stern killer. Yes, yes. I don't know how you'd be a stern killer without having top licenses, at least at your launch, in order to seduce people who at least, you know, at least buy, one. buy off of theme. Right. Right. I mean, right. I think you need at least that one that you need to dangle that carrot that gets everybody kind of in. And, and you brought it up earlier. It can't necessarily be on the uh, the reputation and merits of the designer anymore. It's like we're past that at this point. Yeah, it's just I mean, there's too few people who don't who don't know it about any of that stuff. I go right. and I, I play competitively and I have top tier players in my local scene who are obviously excellent pinball players they do not know the designers of the game in fact some of them i think steve uh steve uh B bowen or bowen, bowen? bowen yeah Ugh, it's early for me too uh <laughs> i think steve on, bowen himself has admitted that when he looks at a game he does not see oh this is a richie oh this is a lawler he sees oh this is a this is a rock this is a sheet this is a kefir that's what he sees, he sees gotcha. the coder when gotcha. he looks at it that's because interesting. the rules are what matter to him okay but so it's just it's different for different people in that regard. And the issue is when we look at what Deep Roots announced titles are, we have Magic Girl unthemed. Right. We have Raza unthemed. Unthemed. We have uh, right or uh, no IP. We have Fire and Brimstone unthemed. Right. Uh, Roberts confirmed that the two Dennis Nordman games being made are unlicensed. Original as themes. Well. And then so Alice in Wonderland is the only one I know of. 
Right. That well, and that's the right. That's like it. A, but right. even does We're Alice in Wonderland? Gonna... I mean, I, I think again, we're basing the interest on what we perceive Alice in Wonderland to, to be because we've seen the original concept art. We've seen like the foam core of that pin. Um, but how does that translate to actually making a, a flippable pin? Does Alice in Wonderland as like their kind of IP or, or license pin, is, is that enough to keep people invested? I, I don't know. I, this company fascinates me from so many different uh, aspects. Uh, but it's also kind of puzzling and frustrating at the same time. Beznik's Pinball, thanks for the sub. I appreciate it, bud. Sorry, Dennis. I got uh, so I got my buddy Sean Rosensteel in here and his yeah. son Ollie. You don't need me anymore. They're, no, I, Dennis. I cannot thank you enough for uh, for calling in and keeping me uh, my sanity here as we uh, <laughs> as we get into the, uh, the 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 home stretch here. If you're around later, man, and you still want to talk some pinball, I would I would love to keep chatting. Um, Siggy Sour, thanks for the sub. But, All right, I'm going to let you go and work work with your new guests. Uh, bro, I appreciate it, Dennis. As always, uh, Dennis Creasel, thanks for joining us from Eclectic Gamers Podcast, co-host uh, there and co-host of This Week in Pinball. Always good talking to you, brother. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming in and supporting the stream, man. Really means a lot. No problem. Take care. Thanks, Dennis. Yep, bye. All right, see you later. So that's Dennis. What is up, Ollie? Let me turn your mic on, bud. What's up, Mr. Sean? All right, man. Good. good Let's you? get you some this space. Is so awesome. This is my mic. Yeah, let's see. Can you talk into that thing? Can you get it or what? Yeah, it sounds like it's my mic. Let's see. Talking there again. Hello. There you go. Yeah. It uh, smells like the morning after at a friend house in here. It does, man. It's 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 got a, it's got a funky smell in here for sure. <laughs> uh, grab that one. This one. Yeah. If you don't mind. Oh, this is amazing. Are you uh, are you still married? I am still married. You are? That's fantastic. We've, we've That's turned good. this... Uh, I did not want to hear that. Oh, you don't want to hear that we're married? I, yep. I, I totally get you. <laughs> so, uh, so Sean, I met Sean years ago. He's part of our St. Charles Pinball crew. Uh, a good friend of mine, his son Ali, is here with him today. Uh, he's, a, he's a dad. He's a pinballer. He's a collector. Uh, welcome to the stream. Thanks for thanks, filling in some time over here today. Yeah, this is awesome. This is yeah, amazing, thanks, man. Look what they did with the wall. So, Ali, you've here. got pinball machines at your house. Yes. Absolutely, you do. And uh, so, so Sean's got one of the most uh, interesting furnace rooms in any house that I've ever been into, right? I think you've got me beat Because, no, because house. you go in there and it's just, you got, what, what do you have down there? Five, six, seven pins now uh, at that I point? I just sold two, so we're down to five. Five pins. Yeah. It's uh, unbelievable. You want to get closer to that mic? Oops, or? Sorry, yeah. No, you're good. You want to close to it? Yeah, need. just like that. All right. There you go. So talk right into there. Sweet. <laughs> so what's been going on, man? Well, welcome to uh, <laughs> when did you do 24 this? Hours. Uh, I started doing this at the end of the summer. Okay. It's not done. It's just kind of in the middle. Got so it. we're, we're trying awesome. to... We made this a studio so that we can do the streaming, the podcast, and then it's just easier to get pins in and out of here awesome. yep, at, uh, at ground level. So on, it is what it is. Um, as long as you guys don't talk about that gross adult stuff. Yeah. All right, Kaz. Thanks, buddy. Cooties, Streamlabs, donate this is now. So awesome that you're doing this. Yeah, it's fun. So we were at home earlier having breakfast with the fam, and we put this stream on, and you flipped over. Let me get you this one. Just bring that right up to you. Yeah. You flipped over to the there we go. Uh, Project Pinball. Yeah. Uh, clip. Yeah. And my wife and I are like, Blue God. Yeah. A great commercial. It's awesome. So that was a Moto Harney of a Moto Arcade. Uh, she uh, produced that. That bit, uh, that that promo video for Project Pinball and Project Pinball, they've been around for years. They, I think it's forty four pins and forty two hospitals right that's now. Amazing that they've that's done. Amazing. Yeah. So with the fundraising efforts, again, everything that's going in tonight's dollar for dollar match, and we're trying to raise originally twenty four thousand dollar goal for three pins and three hospitals. We've hit that. We've eclipsed that. I'm waiting to get an update from uh, Dan Spoiler or Project Pinball to see where we're at with the PayPal donations. I'm going to try to ping him again right now so that we can update these totals. <laughs> Uh, probably around 10. Actually, awesome. Dan's here right here. Well, I know my sister Tracy from New York City is watching right now. Awesome. And uh, she's a real heavy hitter, so I'm hoping to get a big donation from her. Oh, well, hey, there, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and we brought a few things for you. You brought some this things for us. Something private there. Oh, for you. thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then 
Ollie this morning decided to crack his piggy bank open and he wanted to give you this. No way, Ollie. Because he knew that there was a match. Isn't there a match? Right, going there's on? a dollar for dollar match. So I'm going to yeah. unfold this, which is a hard earned $10 bill yeah. from Ollie. Ollie, thank you very much because this is going to go to help putting uh, pinball machines in children's hospitals, kids that are dealing <laughs> with issues that try to get healthy and try to make themselves a little bit better. And your $10 I is. Watch that yeah, it's 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 pretty interesting. The cool thing with this too, bud, is there's a guy named Adam Schwartz. He's in New York. Every time somebody gives money, he's gonna match the money. So your ten dollars becomes like twenty bucks. He's gonna match a two ten dollar bills. So your donation That's is awesome. is twenty dollars for Project Pinball Man. So congratulations. That's awesome. awesome. You're helping out the kids. And uh, it's nice of you to, to, to do that. I really do appreciate hey, that. Ollie, That's, what, that is really cool. What's Ken helping us to all learn today? The secret, secret to living, to living is giving. Is Isn't giving. That awesome? That's awesome. I got to get that on a shirt for my wife. There you that's go. Per <laughs> that's perfect. That's a, that's a, that's great advice. Thank you, Ollie. Thank so, you, Sean. This is a little donation from my company here. Oh, we've got a donation from uh, the com Wow. From Savvy Pro Project Lab. Pinball Charity. We've got another donation. It's a 100. Oh, I'm not going to show the routing and transit numbers there, but it's a $100 <laughs> check. For Project Pinball Charities, Sean, thank you so much because that, yeah. that becomes $200 with the match. Yeah. So right now, these guys, 220 bucks that you guys came in. And, and you didn't have to do that, but I appreciate the efforts. It's all about giving. It's all about the charities, and it, and it means a lot, man. That's right. That's I really awesome. do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Another check. I'm on the board of directors for something in town here called the Renaissance Foundation. Wow. So we what? have a very similar mission. It's to essentially help underprivileged children here in the Chicagoland area. Okay. And I made a call. It's my parents' charity. It's their foundation. They started it back in 97. So I made the call to them about a week ago, and they wanted to donate this uh, to Project Pinball. Oh, my. man. This is incredible. Are you serious? Yeah. So Renaissance Foundation has donated a um, sizable donation of, of $1,000 to Project Pinball Charity, which becomes $2,000, uh, which is unbelievable. W with the total match here, you've, you've got $2,220 that you guys came in here and you helped with Project Pinball, man. Yeah, buddy. That is outstanding. That Thanks is for doing that this. Is, this is no, awesome. thank you for doing this. This is this is it means a lot to me, but it means even more to to those that are you know going to really benefit from having these in the yeah. uh, in the yeah, hospitals. I can't thank you enough, man. Absolutely. I mean, sincerely, well, thanks that's to Project Pinball. It's for unexpected. That they do. Thanks for you for pulling an all nighter and. Uh, oh, for sure, man. Um, Daniel Spoiler. So hopefully you're watching another just a generous donation. It's man, it's thank awesome. you. Well, I, I can't believe you've uh, well surpassed your goal of what was it, 24? Tw yeah, 20, so tw $24,000 was that's the awesome. uh, was the initial goal here with this, the streamathon. Now, that's amazing. We've had donations come in overnight with your donation and the match. Um, I'm hoping when I tabulate this, I'm going to tabulate this probably in an hour that we're closer to 30, but I, I want to do a push for 40K that's awesome. um, here. Ali, go ahead and you want to play some uh, Elvira House of Horrors there? <laughs> It's, it's, it is what it is. Have fun with that one. <laughs> yeah, that. See, you're there. You're you're live on stream. Isn't that cool, bud? What do you guys have going on today? Uh, we have a fun little day lined up. So, Ali and I are going to get, you know, Sport Clips has opened up on the east side of town here, and we've got yeah. all these coupons. So he and I are going to go get this MVP treatment thing. I've never with the hot towel and everything. Yeah, there you go. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So, uh, what? My bag's in the car. Yeah, sorry, bud. I know. <laughs> he's, Play a he's few more games, okay? Because we're not going to stay for too much longer, bud. So we're going to go get some MVP treatments. Whatever yeah, it looks yeah. Like hot towels. That'll be fun. And then uh, I think we may go to IKEA. Outstanding. Together, yeah. We'll see about that. I'm looking to. Nothing um, says a holiday weekend like <laughs> sp right. sports clips well, and IKEA. Oh, oh, you know what? Now that you say that, maybe <laughs> right. we'll take a pass. I forgot about the timing. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be. Uh, good luck with the parking. Yeah, right. At exactly. an IKEA on. Uh, the weekend before Christmas. Is this the weekend before Christmas? It is, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is Jeez. Next week. Yeah. I don't even know what day it is. And we're going to see Santa this afternoon. Nice. Where is Santa, Ollie? Where is he at these Downtown days? Downtown St. Charles, right? He is there? Ed? I just yep. this You did? Yeah. Well, it may not be plugged in, buddy. I think yeah, I don't just, think we plug that one in. It's just Elvira today, kiddo. It's uh, That one's for show today. Yeah, we were at... Uh, we went to see, you know, we've seen Santa quite a bit this season. And yeah. we went to see, I think it was last week, we saw Santa at the Norris Center. 
Okay. And then we came home, and when we got home, there was another Santa walking around our neighborhood. He could be so in that multiple places. A little bit of confusion. Absolutely. Yeah. And what was neat was Santa's got friends too, so which is pretty awesome. Yeah. What was neat was my youngest son Henry pulled Santa's beard in our neighborhood, and it was not a fake beard. So, so, <laughs> so then so Ollie said, "That is actually the real." Santa. That's the way to find it out. And the, here's what's a little beer. interesting, maybe a little creepy. Yeah, yeah. No one knows who that man was. <laughs> oh, seriously? Yeah, like it wasn't a neighbor. It wasn't. No one recognized him. He was just kind of walking around. And did uh, he just kind of disappear with like a the wink of a nose? Or, or? I, I, I think it was really Santa. Oh, be careful, bud. I think. Oops. Where where did that come from? No, you're good. It's that's oh, the. That's uh, been there? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. No, that's good. <laughs> Sorry. So you so you've got. What's what's the hot gift this year? Like, what are you asking for for Christmas? Ollie, how old are you right now? So what does a six-year-old want? Hey, let me ask you this. If you could pick, if you could pick one pinball machine, and it could be and it could be any type of a pinball machine, it could be any any movie or any toy, what would you want one pinball machine to be based off of or, or to, for, for you to have forever? It's a great question. And a hard one. It is a hard one. I ask myself this several times a week. Hmm. The dream theme of a six-year-old pinball can be anything. Look at those wheels spinning in there. I like that he's giving it thought. I want um, the rings one. The, the ring, Lord of the Rings? Yeah. We just played Lord that for the, the first ring. time, didn't we? Yeah, Last I week. love it. Well, it's going to be an expensive what Christmas. We have those diamonds. Oh, so that, those are bits. So we've got uh, New Ovad. Thank you so much for 500 bits because the 500 bits, great charitable donation. It becomes 1,000 bits with the match. Nice. Wow. Cool. New Ovad. And I, I have a feeling I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Thank you so much for the donation. That's awesome. As it goes towards Project Pinball. That's cool. So you, the most favorite thing that you would want to see on a pinball machine is Lord of the Rings or... Is there something that you've never seen on a pinball machine that you think you would like to see? I think I would like to see like a pinball machine where um, there's like that that um that house that tiny house where the skeleton heads come and uh, when you shoot the ball into it and um the, there's actually a little layer on top of the house and then um you could like move the and, He's um, designing mechs on the fly. So it's amazing. Right. It's so the right. ball comes up on top of the house, and then there's like little obstacles on top of it, like. Oh, like the Indiana Jones, the upper play field. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would like that. That's a great. He's idea. going into like Path of the Dead and stuff over here right now. Yeah. On the Lord yeah. of the Rings, kind of has something like that. Yeah. So you want a house, and the ball goes on top of the house. It's got a little path with the obstacles coming back down. Yeah. It's unbelievable. What would you call that pin? <laughs> and um, the ball, there could also be um, little places where um, you don't want your ball to go because then that's where the, um, the volcanoes will go. I mean, the um, meteors will go. Man, Ollie, I got to tell you, I, I kind of put you on the spot a little bit there and you just pretty much knocked it out of the park, buddy. That's unbelievable. I want to say thanks for the, uh, the bits here for uh, Benzik's Pinball. 400 bits. Uh, and that's a match. Of thank you, thank you, thank you. That's awesome. So, Ali, what's your favorite sport? Do you have a favorite sport? Anything that you like to watch on TV? Or, uh, like, what are you doing for your... Uh... Listen, we watch football on TV. You're watching some football? Uh-huh. I love Sean Rosenstiel's playing now. Is your dad good at pinball? Yeah. I think he's really good. Your dad's really good at pinball. It's Dad, is there anything you need you need for him to relay over the microphone for you? Oh. Wait. Good question, buddy. What do you think? Whatever you want to say, kiddo. How about you say something? Yeah, well, we can see who's going to say what. Do you have a favorite football team? Um, well, we both for the Bears. Yeah, the Bears. Let's play a game. Let's play a game called Football Player or Pinball Designer. And I'm going to I'm going to tell you a name. And you tell me if you think that that is a football player 
or if you think it's a pinball designer. You want to play it? All right. So the, the first the first one we're going to do here is... Uh, I would rather play hide-and-seek. You would rather play hide-and-seek? Yeah. <laughs> it's a, well, it's, it's a small area to play a little hide-and-seek, but we'll just, we'll just do two or three names and see if you can guess them. All right? First, first name is going to be... Uh, how about this one? John Papaduke. Pinball designer or football player? It sounds like a football player. It does sound like a football player. It does sound like it's actually it's a pinball designer. How crazy is that, right? How about this one? Steve Ritchie. Football player or pinball designer? Steve Ritchie. Football player? Yeah. He he acts like a football player because he's a big, strong, kind of powerful dude, but is actually also a pinball designer. Let, let's try something else. How about this one? Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> Mitch Trubisky probably should be a pinball designer, but he's actually a football player. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, John Papaduke. You got a John Papaduke game over there. How about this one? Mark Ritchie. Pinball designer or football player? Mark Ritchie. Yes, Indiana Jones was designed by Mark Ritchie. Hey, look, Dad's got the wild people. That's right. The wild, <laughs> the wild people. So wait, let me let me get your review of Elvira's House of Horrors. Now you, you've got an extensive uh, two or three balls on this pinball machine. What do you like about this game, and what would you change if you had the opportunity to do so? I like the um, house with the skeleton. I think that's a really fun thing. Yeah, the crypt. Yeah. It is pretty cool. But what I would want to change, I would want to change where the uh, ball goes if you hit it inside i would like to change that so where we're, okay so I you, would you like don't to change it to go on um those little bars where it goes into that big box and then um there could be like a little like ball potion thing where um after the box it drops into like a little potion bottle wow yeah and um and then you could get multi-ball so you want it to go along a habit trail, jump into a, a, a potion yeah. bottle that would then give you a multi-ball. So can I um, go over and show you what I would like? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and point that out? I'll, I'll watch it here on the, uh, on the camera okay. if you want, and, the, and then we'll uh, make sure that uh, chat knows what you're directing because okay. you, you obviously want to make a couple play field tweaks to Elvira and make it a little bit better shooting game for uh, Ollie Rose and Steel here. This is not distracting at all for Sean to be playing. <laughs> yeah. I can tell Sean's done this before where he's played pinball. With it. Uh oh. We <laughs> Hold on, let me let me reposition the uh the streaming gear here. Hold on. Yeah, Ali, that was pretty good, bud. Nicely done. Take over my game? No, I think it's nice here. Hey, skeleton, stop rocking You're, re you're relaxed now a little bit? One, so, look. I don't we, we, we're falling apart here in the studio. My fault. It's, it's, it was a lot cleaner and organized. Unraveling. It's actually not that bad. About 16 hours time. ago. <laughs> so what has been the highlight thus far? <laughs> You've been doing this since when? Six o'clock last night? Yeah, six last night. The uh, I think the highlight was just initially seeing how this stream immediately uh, gained Mona, legs and it hasn't Mona, really slowed down. Mona. So awesome. I think what I was most concerned about was uh, was hitting that goal and then when we finally hit that 24K. Man, you should be doing sound effects for pinball machines, actually. <laughs> you could do some call outs. A little bit, maybe. What's the name of the dog that you're holding tonight, today? Kai? Kai. Mm -hmm. You could do like a Kai pinball machine. Mm. You could do call outs and you could design it. You could do the house with the potion and you could do the uh, the obstacles coming off the roof. That'd be cool, okay. bud. Yeah, that could be really cool. 
That would be pretty cool. So who else is coming? What else you got up today? What's the agenda? So we yeah, have today. Joe Katz, who should be here shortly. And Joe Katz, he's a programmer at Jersey Jack Pinball, so he programmed uh, Willy cool. Wonka. Wow, He'll be cool. coming in. Um, at 11 o'clock, we have Roger Sharp coming in. You know Roger yeah. Sharp. Awesome. We have uh, Ryan Kuyper and Dave Brennan. They're from Graphic 7. That's a, a Twitch streaming channel. Jason Fowler will also join them from uh, Slab State Pinball Podcast. That's when I think I'm going to try to get a break in. It's going to be at uh, like right around 10, Let uh, maybe 10 or 11 o'clock and see if I can. I just want to take a shower, man. You're right. Like when you walk in here, it smells like it's a frat house. It smells like stale beer in a movie theater. <laughs> it's just really weird. And it like smells of men that have been it's, playing it's, pinball. It's a little bit of the morning after vibe. It There's is no a little bit. About it, right. Right. Yeah, it's it's not like bad. It's like walking into a like into a Chili's or something first thing in the morning without anybody that has mopped yet. <laughs> it's just right. like there's just like this general thing going on. And you're like, what is that? Uh, but when you're here that long, you don't really notice it. Yeah, I, so. call, I called Ken about an hour before I came, and he was gracious enough to pick up, and I was asking if he wanted to, for us to deliver some Starbucks. Some Starbucks, that's right. Oh, my gosh. He's like, no, we just have a steady stream of uh, the IPA through the IV yeah. here. The IPAs have been uh, flowing here. <laughs> hey, Dad, look. Yeah, buddy. My favorite drink, you know. Which one? Oh, the Ar Arnie Palmer? Oh, the half yeah. and half? Oh, yeah. One. You want one? Yeah. Go grab one. Yeah. Oh. That drink takes oh. on a whole new meaning as you get older. Yeah. No, so <laughs> the little half and halves aren't a Palmer's. A little half. Good times. Go ahead, bud. When you get older, you start drinking the John Daly's, and then that's that's there, like a whole other thing, too. Perfect. So do you still have any pins or machines in your basement? Uh, Right now in the basement, I've got Star Wars Home Edition. I've got a Meteor that I'm retheming. Yeah. When we did the studio here, uh, I sold off my collection. So at this point, I put money back okay. into this, and I'm going to slowly rebuild. This Elvira, I, I may buy this Elvira, but I'm waiting for Stranger Things because it's, it's kind of unofficially launched. Yep. And that's a dream theme for me, man. Have you, have you watched Stranger Things? Is that like a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah I watched the first season, uh, and I don't even know if I left the couch. Yeah, I know, right? First season for me was the yeah, best. And I just haven't found like a day to watch season two yet. Because I need a day. See, uh, yeah, Wait right. You're gonna do the whole thing in a sick, day, right? Yeah. The thing with uh, with season two for me, and, and there's no spoilers here. It, I don't think nothing matched the charm of season one for me. Season three, a lot of people it was their favorite. Okay. But for me, they're all good seasons. But it, it, if I had to pick one season that I would have dropped out of the series, it would have been season three. Oh, three. Oh, three. Okay. <coughs> Three kind of went into a different direction, but it was still it was Cheers, very uh, very entertaining. Hey, look at that! Nothing says pinball Cheers, charity stream. Thanks hey, for having us. Cheers! It looks like you guys are drinking IPAs. Well, don't tell mom you're drinking sugary, Arnold Palmer's okay. at uh, nine thirty okay. in the morning. So, considering what there is to drink in this establishment, I think that's going to go over. I've got waters fine. and stuff inside, <laughs> so it's like. You're, we we have other like the we other refreshments and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right? They were thirsty. Ollie, that was not all me. They were in th my defense. <laughs> there were several people here that left That's messes, right. so I yeah, have to pick up. They were thirsty today, buddy. A little bit. Do you want me to reset that so it's not? It doesn't matter, man. Um, Ollie's dad. You need to uh, to make a homebrew with Ollie. Uh, <laughs> kid is passionate. Says CJ Hand. Yeah, it's That's true. Awesome. He is passionate. Lord of the Ring Breath, Ken, did you get any sleep at all last night? I've I've not slept yet, so I'm on uh, 27 hours and 40 minutes so far. Too bad uh, Tiger Woods didn't come uh, with a drink. What would that be called? I don't know. Zachary's here. Hey, so so Zachary is actually Dwight Sullivan. Dwight Sullivan's in chat. Welcome, oh, cool. Dwight. Awesome. Dwight's, Dwight's on his way soon, too. We got Very Dwight cool. Sullivan coming in. Yeah, I haven't in. seen Dwight in a while. That's nice. No, that's right. Um, so I think Dwight's coming in between 10 and 11. So yeah, it's just it's it's we're gonna see where the stream takes us today. <laughs> I'm gonna tune in at like four PM and you're just gonna have your head down. There's gonna be this I know. eerie I, organ music. <laughs> you I must know. be going crazy for like, this music, yeah. Are you getting sick of it yet? A little bit, yeah. A little bit. There was there was a point tonight where uh, I just realized that, that was just playing on loop for ten yeah. minutes or so. Yeah. Like yeah. like right now? I, I think I'm immune to it at this point. Like, I've suppressed the aggravation of the memory, right. so that now it's like, yeah, it's okay. Got it. Uh, Dwight, the new Game of Thrones code is amazing, says Lord of the Ring Breath. Have you gotten any time on Lord of the, or uh, Game of Thrones, rather? No. Maybe a game or two. Yeah. Yeah. 
Game of Thrones is uh, a lot of people prefer that premium LE package with the upper play field. I, I kind of like the rampier uh, design of the pro. I know Dwight is in on, he prefers the, uh, I think Dwight, you prefer that premium LE. Good times. So this is, uh, how do you, you control everything from here then? Yeah, so I have like a little Amazing. stream deck here oh, yeah. and, and I can kind of like switch uh, screens on the fly. Wow. I can run the promo. We can go back That's to awesome. our, our countdown. Yeah, so it's like it's cool. it streamlines the process. So when when we're doing these streams, we kind of like try to produce on the fly. It keeps you on your toes. Yeah, it's so I'm deep. surprised 16 hours we haven't had like a massive tech uh, tech failure. Yeah. Yeah. We had a couple cameras freeze, but we were able to reboot, you know, reboot those pretty quick. Huh? Oh, yeah, I suppose so. We got a hard line in here. So That's good. Yeah. I don't know. Anyhow. So what do you got going on tomorrow? Are you guys hosting Christmas or? Uh, no, we uh, we go to my mom and dad's. Yep. About seven minutes away, so that's nice and convenient. That is nice. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, so they do a big cool. uh, Christmas Eve bash. Okay. Been doing that forever. So you do the gifts Christmas Eve night or the we gifts do, Christmas day? Yeah, we we well yeah a little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. Us we too. have quite a bit of people over Christmas Eve, so there's some gifts exchanged then. But then my immediate family typically wears our PJs all day, and we go yeah. over to my folks again the next morning. It smells a little better than this the next morning, I must say. Well, you know what? Open up about 30 cans of IPAs <laughs> and let them ferment <laughs> in this garage. <laughs> and let, poor uh, but <laughs> Lord of the Ring Breast, 589 bits, buddy. Thank you awesome. so much you. for that donation. That is awesome. Uh, that's going to be matched. I can't do the math in my head right now at the moment, but that's 589 times 2. Thank you so much. I know it's more than a thousand, less than thirteen hundred. So, what is bits then? Is bits the uh, yeah? Bits code like a virtual for... currency. Okay. So, Got like a, a bit is a penny uh, when you kind of cash those out. So, for instance, our top bit giver tonight is one hundred and thirty thousand bits, which is like thirteen hundred bucks. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, that's mod couple pinball replica X one hundred and twenty eight thousand bits. That's wow. twelve hundred eighty dollars. So yeah, and that's all these cool. are matched. So when uh, when Joe gets in here, Joe Katz and Dwight Sullivan. I will update the totals and just see where we're Joe's at. So they haven't been updated in several off. hours. And they do not update in real time. Gotcha. Okay. So, cool. So what does, are you doing for Christmas? I have uh I've got Christmas Eve over at uh my dad's. And then uh Santa's dropping off gifts uh that Christmas Eve night. So we open those awesome. Christmas Day here with the kids. Um I have not gotten a uh delivery request from any pinball companies. <laughs> for so I don't think I got a pinball machine from uh, Santa this year. Gotcha. But I've been waiting. Yeah, have you? You've been good. <laughs> I I've been. Oh, I don't know. Depends who you ask. He's been good. This I year? suppose. I I don't know. Oh, okay. And what happens when your uh, internet provider realizes your data usage and throttles you? Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Didn't think about that. <laughs> Thirty five cans of IPA. Sorry, I didn't clean up. No, that's okay. In all in your defense, Dave, you're only responsible for about twenty nine of those cans, so that's no problem. Hope you guys talk uh, some monsters later. Hmm. Yeah, when Dwight's in, I'm sure he'll talk some monsters. Uh, CJC Hand or CJ Chand, uh, tether your phone. The stream must continue. No, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. We're good. Eight hours and fifteen minutes. That's amazing. That's yeah. what we got left. That's yeah, what we got left. Definitely. Eight hours and fifteen minutes. Oh, you can do that. Oh yeah, we're gonna do it for That's sure. It's like a work day. For some people. I've said that twice already. Yeah, We've, I've did. gone through two work days here. Yeah, St I'm still true. here. I'm still in the microphone. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, that's like a third work day in a row. It is. That's it's like I'm working a triple. A little different. You're working a triple. I, I should be getting yeah. double time and a half here. That's right. But yeah. yeah, I'm. it's... Well, you got some good company. Yeah. Right? It's been probably Oh, yeah. Fun. No, it's... Yeah. I, I can't complain at all. That's awesome. So it's fun. For I appreciate you guys stopping in. For a good cause. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. And again, just a little reminder tonight, uh, or I keep saying tonight because I don't even know what... Is the sun up? Uh, barely. Ollie came in today, and that's uh, Sean's son. And this is from his piggy bank. It's a $10 bill that he's donating to Project Pinball Charity. Uh, so, Ollie, I want to thank you so much for doing that. It's very nice of you. And uh, what was what was the uh, the lesson of the day, or what's the, for the uh, what was you were talking about earlier? The secret to living is giving. The secret to living is giving. That's pretty awesome. Uh, and then Sean comes in. And he drops off a couple donations, uh, one from his company personally for $100, uh, 
uh, which is matched for $200, which is very generous. And then one from Renaissance Foundation, uh, which is a, a charity organization that's it's a family-run charity organization, yeah. right? Yeah, Family Foundation, yeah. It, it was a $1,000 donation, guys. Can you tell us a little bit about that uh, the charity organization? Yeah, you bet. How people can find out more about it and what exactly is the uh, initiative there? Yeah, thanks. So my parents started it back in, I believe it was 1997, and its sole mission is to help underprivileged children in the Chicagoland area. And we have one big event uh, every year that we do, our annual spirit gift drive. And it's usually at the beginning of December. Okay. And this year, what was really cool was we worked with um, a social worker through Kane County, and we were able to shop for, wrap, and deliver 750 gifts for 250 oh. children in Kane County. And wrap? Yeah. It's amazing. That that sounds grueling, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, for like, the who's volunteers, on, who's on it probably dude, was. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, my my mom and my oldest sister Amy do such a yeah. fantastic job in yeah. coordinating the entire event, all the volunteers, and. Can I go do something upstairs? Upstairs? <laughs> you don't want to go upstairs. <laughs> what would that be? Well, you know they have some toys. You know. I don't think so, bud. No, they really do have a couple. Do you mean upstairs, like right in the living room? Yeah, upstairs in the living room. Well, they have only a couple. Not too many toys. Well, let's hang out here. Why don't you get one more game on uh, with Elvira's, Elvira's House of Horrors? We'll okay. No, I want to play a little bit. You want to play a little bit? Yeah. There, there is a cat in there too. That's my concern. So yeah, you, and, there's some and the cat's not the friendliest cat. Toy. That might be my uh, five-minute warning there. Uh oh, well, he's to, to head out. He's seriously the, the cat will get him. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm, I'm hey, not Ollie, saying come that. Here, bud. Ollie. It's screen time on my phone. Come on back. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Reel them back in. There we go. Do you want some screen time? Okay, I'll play All right, go the get thimble. it. All right, go get we it. We got this it. rescue cat uh, almost a year ago, but it still has claws, and it goes from so nice to uh, the spawn of the exorcist. Uh, so my nice. all my kids have battle wounds. Like we're trying to do, uh, not do the declawing, uh, because I guess the state of Illinois considers that to be inhumane. Really? So yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how that's gonna go. <laughs> yeah, Ollie, not to be denied, it says in chat. Uh, Geekward Games, those wreaths are on point, Ken. Thanks. Thank you, buddy. Toys, <laughs> but not too many. <laughs> says Project Pinball Charity. What? I'm happy now that I introduced them. Oh, there, there you uh, go. Now, everybody. So now you can my call out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drop that on the way out. My unlock code. I know your PIN number now. So no, but keep on going on with the uh, with the charity if you don't mind. Uh, no. So, anyways, yeah, that's it. And uh, my family, uh, all the kids are on the in the board, yeah. which is kind of nice. That is and nice. Some of my aunts and uncles, and some of my mom's uh, and dad's closest friends are on there. So it's this amazing. Is a really nice initiative. They've been doing it forever. And I was uh, gonna say how like how long has the charity been running? Twenty three. Oh wow. Years, okay. So ninety seven. So it's so very what established. Twenty three years, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be twenty three years this year. Yeah. Well, yeah. I saw a sticker on a car the other day and it said something about 1990 and i was like oh that's not that long ago yeah i'm like wow people who it's were born long in 1990 ago. are already like 30 years old it's i graduated high school in 93 it's amazing. so yeah no it's Holy it's not i remember the first time like you would go in and you get carded for something and it was beginning in the 2000s yeah. you're like oh this is pretty disappointing yeah it's it's, amazing. it's just not good um, it's amazing so i like pinball like the crowd seems to be a little bit closer to my age yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it kind of is. I, I think I'm a little older than you are. So uh, one day when you get to reach 44, Sean, it's, it it's, creates a whole different dynamic for yourself. Yeah. That Elvira music's actually killing me. So I okay, am going... I'll, I'll shut it you off. You want to shut it off real quick? Just power cycle it. Shut it off. Shut it back on. <coughs> I might not play Elvira after the stream for at least six or seven hours. Mit yo kitten yo. Is BD passed out on the floor under Elvira? BD went home, actually. Nice. Oh, you can just fire it on. Ken is the hairline of a young legend. <laughs> the hairline of a young legend. Man, I'm, <laughs> I don't know what that means, but uh, I guess I'm grateful to have the hair. The, the hair that I have remaining is... Becoming gray, like the holiday, uh, like like a, a fresh fallen snow, so to speak. 
Uh, so, Ken, tell me a little bit about where this podcast has gone. It's been quite a journey so far, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we started the podcast in uh, July of 2018. So we're wow, running to like amazing. 18 months. It's yeah, amazing. we're uh, 83, 84 episodes. Awesome. We're doing it every week. We haven't missed a week. And is it is are, are Bill and Steve still involved? Because I know you and Bill initially were. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's myself and Bill. We, okay. We've been the, the core, but uh, Steve's coming and he's really helped on the streaming side of things. Awesome. He's guest hosted a couple times and uh, he tends to just kind of come with us. He went to Texas Pinball Festival what, last year with us. Yep. Now you're normally in Frisco around the time of TPF because yep. you, you go down there for the uh, the change of seasons. But we just missed you, I think, by a week yeah. or two last yeah. year. Are you going to be yeah. down there this year at TPF? I will, I will be. Uh, when is it? Uh, it's what when is tpf guys it's like second or third week in uh march yeah we'll be there you'll be down yeah, there awesome. when are you coming back awesome uh well this year's a little different i think we're leaving towards the third or fourth week of january and then we'll be back my guess is late march early april okay yeah so you'll be down there yeah. for sure well, yeah now that he's in kindergarten it's getting a little bit trickier yeah. than it used to be yeah but uh we've got a great he's got a great school and apparently when you unroll him when you unroll kids in other schools, it auto unenrolls them from their schools in other states. Oh, so okay. It's a little bit more tricky, and then there's no there's a wait list. So we worked it all. How much out, you have to weigh? Uh, about I don't know, fifty pounds. <laughs> kindergarten, right? Yeah. There's a wait list. Uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I got it, so like, I got it. That shirt would look nice with a hen weigh. What's a hen weigh? About six and a half pounds. Anyways, that's what I've resorted to tonight, ladies and gentlemen, to keep myself right. entertained. Yeah. So Fogger and saying uh, March twenty something. Is going to be uh, Texas Pinball yeah, Festival. Cool. Have you been playing Elvira only? Have you swapped up games? We literally just hammered out this Elvira's House of Horrors all night long. You've been hammering Elvira all night long. That came out really poorly. That's amazing. <laughs> and I'm here to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've been uh, we've been putting in our time on that pinball machine. It's performed really well. We haven't had any stuck balls or anything. Uh oh, someone's calling. Now you're in trouble. And now I'm in trouble. Yeah. All right. That's okay. Special Thanks, when bud. lit Just is on deck for a Twippy. That would be awesome. Hey now, CJC Han. Hank Kingsley star. Our Larry Sanders show. You ever watch Larry Sanders? The no. old, like Gary Shandling when he's like, oh, that's such a classic show. Oh, so, all right. Yeah, so Steve's been popping in, which is nice. Yeah, so Steve, yeah, Steve's been he's been doing a lot with Bill having like the baby. And he had some uh, he had some family stuff going on. Steve stepped up. Cool. So yeah, awesome. it was it was good. Can't nobody can do this kind of stuff uh, by themselves. So it's always good to you know, good core of friends is good. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, hold on one second. I'm just answering texts here. Hey, Ali. There we go. Can I see for a sec? Thanks, buddy. I'm just going to push pause for a minute, okay? <laughs> you should be watching uh, Twitch. Special on the podcast. Stern should have given you the Stranger Things and used uh, this as the launch. That would have been unbelievable to uh, reveal a Stranger Things pin. But they got the best man in the business that's doing that in Jack Danger to reveal that pinball machine. So that's, you know... A lot of props and respect for that guy. You ever watch uh, Dead Flip Pinball streaming? Occasionally. Yeah. 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 So it's good. Streaming is just kind of like never would have thought I, you know, would ever see myself like broadcasting anything on Twitch, but it's pretty fun with the pinball stuff. I mean, it's pretty, it's very laid back. It's it's a good time. Well, I'm sorry. This thing keeps jingling and I'm waiting for, uh, okay, Dwight's on his way. So when you stream, are you taking the audio Ripping that out, and you're using that as the pod podcast, correct? No, 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 no. It's no, no. completely so, different. Yeah, oh, the, the podcast okay. is just audio recording. Got it. Yep. Got the it. streaming is just usually we're just showcasing, you know, the newer games. We usually stream for Flipping Out Pinball. They're a distributor. Yeah, cool. Uh, but this uh, charity stream, we stream our, our podcast channel. It's just, it's another outlet. That's awesome. Oh, I'm coming. Run this, run the stream, Sean. So is it. this going to be uh, embedded and... Like yeah, archived, archived for later. Archived. Yeah, that's so awesome. I'll give you a link for that. That's awesome. Very cool. I've got this huge screen in front of me, so I'm just catching up on all the uh, shining lights and bells and whistles. This is pretty amazing.
All right, chat roll, give me something to talk about here, please. CJC Han, Geek War Games. Is Bright Dwight bringing donuts? He might be bringing donuts. We'll have to see. I didn't know Dwight was a was a donut was a donut guy. Is he? What's that, Dwight? Yeah, Dwight a donut guy. I didn't know that. Joe, Sean, Sean, Joe. How are you, Joe? How you doing? Nice to meet yeah, you. You too. Want to jump on here real quick? <laughs> sure. Just get you introduced into chat. Man, dude, there is just a, a like a bad beer funk in here. It's disgusting, actually. Mm. So this is about to get real technical. We might. No, we no, might no. This is good. Out. Uh, joining us on the stream here, Mr. Joe Katz, programmer, Jersey Jack Pinball. So, Joe, welcome to the stream. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good times. Uh, Joe just recently is the uh, the lead programmer on Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory from Jersey Jack Pinball, but he's got his uh, his DNA all over the JJP games. Um, so it's good to have you in. Wel yeah. Welcome aboard. Yeah. What's what's the good word? What's happening? Not much. Uh, excited to be here. I like the uh, the the donation uh, situation you got going on. Yeah. Here. Um, yeah, I'm sure it's been said uh, a bunch of times in the last 16 hours, but just want to give a shout out to Daniel and Sierra and everybody else at Project Pinball for what they do. Um, they do a pretty cool thing. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we were talking about that all stream long, the initiative there, the, mm -hmm. the drive, the passion to be able to get these pinball machines in, in these children's hospitals is uh, something that we all have a lot of respect for. That's why we wanted to work hard for the charity. I also wanted to thank you for your donation. I, I saw that you had made a donation, and uh, that's forwarded over to Project Pinball. That donation was uh, dollar matched as well. Mm, so that's there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, and I, dude, I appreciate you just donating your time coming in because I know you guys uh, are working hard, and you guys pull some all nighters. We had Keith Johnson here last night, and he was saying, you know, some nights I don't get to sleep till four o'clock in the morning just because of you know what's going on with work. So. Yeah. For you to take time out of your Saturday yeah. to come in, and uh, it's for a good cause. I, it's just it's appreciated. Yeah, no problem. So, definitely. so thank you. Yeah, definitely. Anything uh, fun and exciting going on over at uh, Jersey Jack that you can talk about? Nothing I could talk about. <laughs> <laughs> That's, well, Keith was here last night. He's like, he's like, I'm gonna tell you, like, I have this direction that everybody knows that I go with with my code. He's like, but on, on this one, like I decided I was going to go in a completely different direction. And he was just kind of shocking. He didn't get too detailed, but he said he was, you know, he, he was eager about trying to go from a more complex, deep code to something that was going to be more like basic. Uh, but then he said, you know, it started branching off from there. So I don't know what to expect from Keith on uh, on, on on whatever you guys are working on in this next release. I don't know what to expect from you and what's going on. I, I know you're still hard at work with Wonka. You're updating that. What version of Wonka are we on right now? Yeah, I think we're on one, three, two right now. Yeah, um, but yeah, I still like to dabble in that once in a while. Oh yeah, absolutely. So it's not something that you just put out there and it's lying dormant. It's it's still actively being updated, which is fun. Yeah, I'm waiting for them to actually show me the next game. I'm still waiting to see it. I, oh seriously? I don't get to see it. So I come on, I don't, it, know, I don't know anything about it. Yeah, I'm not going to ask you anything about it. Yep. <laughs> no, I I'm not. This is not what this is for. <laughs> Wait, we're, we're just relaxing and uh, playing some pinball. Have you played a Virus House of Horrors? I played it once at Expo. You feel like putting That's some that. games on it this, yeah, this sure. morning? I'll try it. Uh, Dwight Sullivan's on his way over. Okay. So he was going to piggyback with you for a little bit, if that's cool. all right. That's fine. And uh, at 11 o'clock, we've got Roger Sharp coming in mm. with uh, Ryan Kuyper and, uh, and Dave Brennan mm. from TurboGrafx-7. You remember them? They were streaming at Expo. Right. Um, and then Jason Fowler from Slap State Pinball Podcast. Remember Jason? Right. So the core group of guys that were all there in that uh, expo kind of media row, they were all coming in at 11. So if we have you for an hour, that's great. And you're obviously welcome to stay for as long as you'd like. Cool. Yeah, um, but that core hour is going to be awesome. Got some heavy hitters coming. Hold on, buddy. Let's see yeah, it's been, it's been a really fun, kind of interesting stream. If you don't mind, though, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk these guys out. Do you mind firing up and just getting yeah, a little sure. solo game game? Let, yeah. let me center the camera. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, without further ado, Mr. Joe Katz. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll play it. Well, that's half the fun, man. <clears throat> nice to meet you, Joe. Yeah, you too. Yeah, have a good one, huh? Merry Christmas. Yeah, you too. I'll come with you, Sharp. Okay. And your, uh, your mic's live over what there, buddy. Glad to see you. You got a little chat window open over there, too. Oh, that's handy. Howdy. 
play this? I wish I knew. I've never played this game before. I'd tell you if I knew. I see there's some sort of lock situation. That's what I'm going for. ball this time now that I know where it is supposed to start a mode first or no
Somebody tell me how to make a lot of points in this game. This bird tips the creep factor scale to about a 50 out of 10. Time to remove this experimental TV from my house. She's a little too talkative. You ain't tilting, you ain't trying. Rubber. Well, I want rubber on my flippers. Everybody should be making donations right now. Definitely. Some might say two heads are better than one, but this talk proves otherwise. Let's put our heads together and get this anatomical aberration back where he belongs on film. That's a good score in this game. the action button do in this game? Some might say two heads are better than one, but this talk proves otherwise. Let's put our heads together and get this anatomical aberration back where he belongs, on film.
super skill shot? Nope. How you liking the, uh, I almost said Swords of Rage. Like, what am I talking about? It's interesting. House of Horrors. Elvira's House of Horrors. I found a multi ball, but that's about it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Sean's back. What's going on? Oh, your sister sent in a donation? Yeah. I missed it on the stream. Where, 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 where did it? Let's see if we can find it. Oh, did she send it direct with PayPal? Because I won't get that until it gets updated. It doesn't yeah, show up I found on here. Multi ball. Where's another one? But I'll make sure that we do the shout out when we get the update from uh, from Project Pinball. Right. Yeah, sorry. Thanks, Sean. And thank you, Sean's sister, for making the donation for the Project Pinball charity. Again, uh, my buddy Sean and uh, his son stopped in. His son Ali came in and out of his own piggy bank made a ten dollar donation to Project Pinball, which was matched to make it $20, which I thought was a really classy move on his part. And then uh, Sean's company, uh, his own company made uh, a $100 donation, which was matched. And then his uh, his his family's charity, uh, Renaissance Foundation charity, made a $1,000 contribution to Project Pinball. So the, the total there with the match, $2,220 uh, by the Rosenstiel family and the uh, Renaissance Foundation. Uh, great news, love having him come in. I haven't seen him for a while and, and he came, uh, he didn't disappoint uh, just seeing him in general and then making generous uh, donations is pretty awesome. Woot Woot Ali says Lord Helmet. 362436 is the trunk, that is correct. So Joe Katz is playing the uh, pin right now. Now Joe, we all know him from Jersey Jack Pinball. Uh, one of the lead programmers there and, and recently, his uh, most recent body of work is lead programmer on Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. So he's he's found the Wild Women multi ball. For those of you that are in chat, Dwight Sullivan of Stern Pinball is going to be here in a few minutes. Uh, so we'll have uh, actually two lead programmers from two uh, different pinball companies, ironically that work just a couple miles apart from one another. Jersey Jack Pinball has an office in Bensonville. Excuse me one second. Hello? Uh, hello? Hey. Hey, what's going on? How are you? I don't know. Not doing well.
kick out seems awfully close to just throwing it out the outline. Tonight, tonight. an add a ball during this multi ball. game frozen. Oh, never mind. I'm sorry for uh, for bailing on the stream there. I had uh, I was talking to Daniel Spoiler. He gave me a call. We were touching base. Daniel's going to come on uh, the show a little bit later today to kind of discuss what's going on with Project Pinball Cherries. Uh, just walking in right now though from Stern Pinball. We got Mr. Dwight hey, Sullivan from Stern. What's going on, Dwight? Wow, this is pretty cool. This is my first time in this garage. Oh, you haven't been in here before? No. Well, I was in here when it was when it was not a, a studio. Oh, that's right. You haven't been in here, right. man. It's been a long time. It, I, Come sit down. Jump on right, a uh, right. jump on some headphones. Right. You know, you know Joe. Joe, is that Joe? Joe, Joe Katz. I I don't know Joe Katz. 
I will introduce you to Joe Katz. All right. Did not know that. Do I need my headphones? Is this, is this you me? can, sure. I want to hear what's going on. I don't I don't blame you. So Gamma goes here, so uh Ian Harrower is saying Dwight. Is is that Gamma Gamma Goat? That's Gamma Goat, yeah. All right. Hey, how's it going? He said, "What's going on?" <laughs> you just got back from Australia. I I did. I did. I'm still tired. I uh, like because I flew all the way back. You know, my arms are tired. You, you flew all the way in from Australia, and boy, your arms are tired. Right. How, right. Did Did you like it? Um. I mean, it's, it's different, right? It was a life experience. It was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was very, very cool. I loved it. It's uh, It's unbelievable. In some ways, you know. In some ways, you. If you told me I was in Georgia or something. I, I would have believed you. Uh, right. It's, it's very, very similar to what's to here. Okay. You know, they they have buildings and water and people and oh, I hope stores so. and right. But but, but kangaroos but, and koala bears and stuff, well, right? I, I actually didn't see any kangaroos or koala bears. Really? Right. Right. Is that like the United so States? Like you're not going to just go anywhere in the, in the United States and see a bear? Correct. Like you have to be correct. Okay, so some of it. some of the group I was with, they went out to a zoo and they did see some kangaroos and koalas at the zoo at nearby, right? Okay. Like, like a little petting zoo. And um, and that was pretty cool, but I was tired so I didn't go. Now, Dave Falgren is hoping that you stayed away from the the uh, koala bears cuz he says that they uh, they they carry disease. Oh, Zonrith shared 100 bits, Dennis Creasel. Hey Dennis. 100 bits. Thank you, Dennis. Dennis, I, Dennis called in a little so earlier. So I don't know how to donate. My wife and I want to give a hundred bucks. Oh, sweet! So, but I don't know how to do it. I don't know. I don't know what bits are. I don't know. No, 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 like, no, no. no. So we don't need PayPal to do the bits. Or something. You could write a check, or there's a PayPal link that you can put in your phone, and you can just oh. type in money. I, or, I, 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 no, I, I'll grab my phone. and, yeah. and Can you walk me through it? Yeah. You, or, yeah, or, you want to do it right now? We don't have to do it right this minute. You just walked in. Well, or, or before I leave. Yeah, before you leave. All right. I will. I will absolutely remember to tell you how to donate to Project Pinball because it's easy. Because if you have your phone or your computer. Yep. You can just type in the. Uh, well, I was thinking that maybe others don't know either. No. So, right. yeah. Okay. Well, we can do it. Because uh, I'm I'm pretty Twitch illiterate. We can all test out your credit card. Right. 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 Well, I was gonna do a PayPal on the phone. Yeah. No, that works. All right. All right. That works absolutely. That would be cool. So who do we got? Who do we got online or on the on the thing? So we have I don't know what is there 50, 60 people that are in chat right now and. Uh, Dennis had called in recently because I was uh, a little bit sleepy. So I've been up since 6 o'clock yesterday morning. You have? Yeah, so You're I'm on over 24 hours. 30 hours and Holy 25 crap. minutes. Wow, that's... Wait, is that right? Everyone give it up for Ken. No, 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 Ken. I'm not asking for props. I'm just, I, I'm trying, I'm like even fuzzy at the math. Yeah, so that's, no, it's, it's not 30 hours, it's, it's, no, it is. 28, it's 28 hours, hours and 25 and minutes. minutes. Okay, right, right. see, even I'm like, what's going on? Right. Now, Dwight... But, Thank you for bringing this because I I broke I shattered the other uh, backlash trans light. But I see uh, one over there. It's taped into the oh, pin. Oh, okay. And it's all scratched. Okay. I'll tell I'll tell you right now. And I'll show it to you. So we're gonna replace that. So okay. Thanks for uh, ordering this for me. This 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 we're paying for this. So thank right. you. Right. That was huge. Oh, no problem. Um. Ken, it's awesome that you're hanging tough for the full 24 hours. I didn't say that. I, I don't know that I'll be hanging tough for the full 24 hours, but... Uh, Have you slept at all? So no. You, I guess you just said you didn't, and I'm not listening. No, that's okay. No, right. No, so, I haven't right. slept yet. Right. I'm the one with like six or seven well, hours sleep, and, and I'm not... Are I, you jet lagged from coming back? Because you've only I'm, been back for, what, a few days? Correct. I've been back a few days. Um, I, so, it's... Because rorden has been in here tonight and yesterday. He was then... Is he, is he still here? I don't know if Rorden's still here. Okay. Um, I saw Warden. Yeah, I know. I was there, and so I went to, I went, so, let's see, um, two, I'm fuzzy now. I'm not even sure what day of the week it is. So it's Saturday. Two, so, so over a week ago, right. right, right. <laughs> That's all I know. It's like right, Saturday. Right. So over a week ago, I went to Australia, and I went, and just after I got there, Warden took me out to dinner, and, and, That's awesome. and I met some of his friends, and we hung out, and we, you know, we did what a bunch of old men do. We sat around and talked about women and the weather. Yeah. You know, and, right. And, and, <laughs> right. Right. The two, and, the two W's. Right. 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 And um, so he's, he's a pretty great guy. Yeah, um, he's a super nice guy. Yeah, yeah. And I met his friends, and his friends were all super nice. And um, and then I, I, I spent almost two weeks in Australia. So I guess, right. I guess you were, you were speaking. Weeks. You were invited to speak. Correct. At a conference, correct? Correct. I, I was asked to talk at a tech talk. At a, not a tech it's talk. amazing. A, a tech conference. Yeah. Right. I learned, it was eye-opening. I learned all kinds of things from the outside software world that I don't know much about. 
Right, I, li I live a pretty isolated life. I, sure. I, I make pinball machines, right? I, okay. I write software and I make games. and um, So I learned quite a bit about the, the outside soft world, software world, you know, and, and what's going on. And, and that was pretty great. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I spent, you know, so we, so we went to Sydney, we went to uh, Brisbane and then Melbourne. And, and we spent two, we spent, there was, the conference was two days in each city. Okay. You know, so, and then there's like a travel day between. So like in 12 days, I rode six planes and six buses and one catamaran cruise. And Oh my gosh. That's, and, and every yeah. day, every day of the conference was like 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. plus dinner, you know, but, you know, so there wasn't a whole lot of time to go see koala bears, but we did have some time here and there. I saw Roden, uh, Rowden, 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 I saw Rowden in, in Sydney, and I yeah. saw our friends um, Marty and, and Ryan okay. in Melbourne. Awesome. Um, they, they did this thing that was um, very, very humbling. They, they, they made it a, a tournament called like, called like the Dwight Sullivan Cup, right? And they made this, they made this, um, this, this, this trophy, and the trophy took 60 hours to 3D print. It was really, really cool. Sixty hours, correct. And it was it was little bits and pieces of, of many of the games I worked on. Like there was a oh no game kidding of, yeah there was like a Game of Thrones throne and and a, you know and a and a Ghostbusters and with a circle and and you know and a T two head. That's pretty and, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So and then it was all under plexiglass and on a piece of wood. And it was like the Dwight Sullivan Cup. It was very very surreal. It was. <laughs> did you yeah. you brought it back with you, right? I did not. No, no, no. The, the winner of the tournament oh. got his gets a, got his name on it. You know, and then that's every, pretty crazy. Every time I go back to Australia. They, they plan to do this again. And, That's pretty cool. And the man. new winner gets their name on the trophy. Yeah. Is it is it a place you can see yourself? Da Damon made it. Damon Damon from from Haggis Pinball. Haggis, he's, yeah. God, he's a great guy. Him and his wife. And That's his, awesome. And, and the other people that work at Haggis are 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 a shout out to those guys. They're awesome. That's it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Do you see yourself visiting uh, every couple years, or like what what kind of an Australian uh, I, schedule are you putting yourself on here? So it's. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I to can imagine. Go to Australia and come back. It's it's twenty hours of traveling, yeah. and if you don't sleep on the plane, then your your sleeping is off. And, and were you, were you able to sleep on the plane? I, I was not. I not can able never to sleep. sleep on planes. Right, right. So my plan was my plan was so we get there around eight a.m. My plan was to to you know to go to bed around midnight Australian time on the plane, and then try to sleep six or seven hours on the plane. And then wake up at eight and be like, "Well, it's morning yeah, now. Right, I'm, now right. I'm going to start being adjusted to Australian time." Yeah, that didn't work. That's yeah, that didn't, yeah. That that's tough. I, I got like three or four hours sleep scattered here and there, and waking up all throughout, and, and it wasn't great, you know. So yeah. And once you fall behind on sleep, it's so hard to catch up. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So you're just kind of and and I'm on U.S. time, so <laughs> right. So I'm like watching these these talks, and like every afternoon I would start to fall asleep during a talk because it was midnight Chicago time. Yeah, you're just jet lag. Well, and I'm at, like my body goes, hey, it's time for bed. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. So that's just, it, it, but, but I still had a blast. And you're st you're still like catching up right now, right? Correct. Now I'm back and I'm like adju adjusting in the other direction. Okay. I am. I'm just. I'm gonna send a uh, a quick text here, real quick. Uh, so Roger Sharp is gonna be here at eleven. Oh, awesome! And uh, Jason Fowler from Slap Save. Okay, I'm here to about noon. I think that's great. All right. Yeah. No, right. that's perfect. I, I, I wasn't sure what you what exactly the format is. Now I sort of understand it. I yeah, watched just, you a bunch last night. Yeah, and, we're just and relaxing, right? I can't repeat enough how awesome this is, guys. I appreciate it. That's that's. Yeah. I can't repeat everyone donate. enough how awesome everybody's been. Donate. Um, and it's for a great cause, Project Pinball Charities. Again, we're doing dollar for dollar matches on anything that you give, whether that's in the form of bits or subs on the Twitch side of things, right. or you can go to to uh, if you look at the the link there, PayPal.me slash Project Pinball. You can right. make a, a donation by clicking that link. All donations are being matched dollar for dollar. That's by ah. Adam Schwartz. He's a, a gentleman, a pinball enthusiast out of the New York City area. Uh, so there's never a better time than right now to have your donation have the most impact uh, for us trying to, to strive uh, towards our goals for Project Pinball. Every $8,000 that we raise, guys, is going to put a pinball machine uh, in a children's hospital. Right now, we're at twenty five thousand seven sixty. I'm going to do an update on that number around eleven o'clock. It, it has increased. We're doing the, the updates manually, so we've already fundraised for three pinball machines. If we can get to thirty two thousand dollars, that'll be four pinball machines. And if all the cards uh, fall into place by the end of the stream, and we can somehow hit forty thousand dollars, that will be five pinball machines that we place in a children's hospital. So remember, the cause is Project Pinball.
Project Pinball helps rehabilitation. For a kid that's in a hospital, you're playing a pinball machine, and for the time being, you don't have to really think about where you are or what you're doing. You're focused solely on playing pinball. You know, pinball, <laughs> pinball can be fun, but it can also be therapeutic because slamming that ball around when you're angry mm. sure does make you feel a little bit better. You know what, one thing I like about it, it makes them move. Laps around the wards is replaced to a lap down to the pinball machine and standing for an hour. They have to use both hands. You kind of find yourself when you're playing pinball moving into it to play. And uh, So the kids can come in here, number one, stand, the ones are having that issue, but they can still hold on, so they get that strengthening. And then they, they're using both hands and eye and watching. So, uh, so it's going to be a great non-therapy therapy. Exactly. And having a good time. Pinball's great because it's lights, it's sounds, and you're so focused on getting that ball and hitting that target and getting those points that you're really not thinking about why you're in the hospital. You're able to distract your time away a little bit. Pinball is a way to get your mind for the moment off of whatever is happening in your personal life. Even if it is a bad situation, having to be in a hospital, seeing a pinball machine can make it all better. I just want to get back any way that I can. And my passion for pinball I think was a great partner for, you know, this giving. Yeah, hey, we're live. Hey, You're going to go get some uh, pop you got in the car? Yeah. Be right yeah, back. Uh, be right back. Dwight will be right back. I'll say, hey, thanks for stopping in, Dwight. But he's coming back, so we're all good. So anyways, uh, Daniel Spoler and team at Project Pinball Charities, uh, let's support this organization as best as we can. We've got seven hours and 26 minutes left on the stream. The donations are coming in, and if you are looking to bid on the auction items, and you might be asking, what are those auction items that I can bid on, Ken? You can go to Facebook, our Facebook page, and that is Special Win Lit Pinball Podcast. And uh, you can jump on there. You can see all the silent auctions that are up there. Those auctions are going to end at 5 p.m. Central Time. So if you wanted to bid on something, we've got a lot of unique, one-of-a-kind items, a lot of play fields with signatures, translites, etc. Uh, jump in there. Earlier, we had Scott Denisi in, and that was actually yesterday. He had his prototype Rick and Morty back glass that went for uh, $700 or $750, which was incredible. Um, we had Eric Minier that had his Pirates of the Caribbean, Whitewood number 2 which was literally plucked off the wall from his office. Uh, that ended up going for uh, $500 or $550. Um, and again, these are matched dollar for dollar, so take that donation and double it. Hey, what's up? Come on in. What's up, Ryan? How are you, man? Ryan Kuyper, Tuber Graphics 7, is here. The man with the plan. What's up, Ryan? What's going on? Good seeing you. Ah, good seeing you, too, man. How are you? I'm doing great. Outstanding. Did you run into Dwight Sullivan outside? Uh, he was coming out. I was, I was coming in. As you as you're so. coming in? Is uh, did Dave drive with you, or did he drive? That a boy, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I get it, I get it. So Ryan is going to be streaming with Dave and uh, and Roger Sharp, and and I think Jason Fowler is coming in at like around eleven o'clock, and those guys will be uh, knocking it out of the park here for a couple hours. Anyhow, uh, but those auction items are there. And uh, you can bid on those. We'll be ending those at 5 p.m. because the stream ends at 6 uh, p.m. Central Time tonight. Somewhere else? You... Um, yeah, I was going to try to put it in the machine, but hey, Joe Fats is going to town speaking. over there on that, uh, on that Elvira. I got to charge my phone, too, at some point. You want me to just jump on? Yeah, please. Come on in. Ryan Kuyper joining the stream, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure we met. Uh, I'm Dwight. Ryan. A long time ago at Stern. Okay. Oh, yeah. You know what? So you you toured them through Stern with uh, Jason, Jason and... Uh, oh, right. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Okay. So that's where you guys would have met originally. I was just all starstruck with Jason, so I'm sorry <laughs> I... <laughs> that's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh-oh. I, I got to resync these cameras. I knocked the, my wire. So give us a second. We'll we will unfreeze here. What's going on with you, Ryan? Uh, are great. I got one more day of work, and then I'm off till like the second of the third of January. So I'm looking forward to that. 
Uh, that's pretty huge. Are we online right now? No, I, I'm going to okay. uh, reactivate us online here. All right. Hey, there we go. What's hey, Dave on? Brennan, what's going on? <laughs> Welcome in. What's happening, man? Not much. How are you, brother? Good. Come on in, Dave Brennan, ladies and gentlemen. So you know these guys. TurboGrafx7 channel on Twitch. I'm going to make a... Uh, what am I doing here? You got a nice fancy soda. Don't you play every day? <laughs> Joe, have you met Dwight Sullivan in I've the middle? Seen him around at Portillo's, but I don't think at Portillo's? Hi, Joe. How you doing? Joe Katz. Uh, right next to you is Dave Brennan. Hey, Joe Katz from Jersey Jack. Nice to meet and then, you. Joe, this is Ryan Kuiper. I've met Ryan before. Okay, so you, that's right. <laughs> Expo. Well, yeah, you guys should all remember each other from Expo. Um, I am going to make a quick adjustment here. Hey, Jason. <laughs> hey, Jason's was that, here. Was that an intense stare down, uh, Ian? <laughs> Jason, did you get any sleep? Great. Did you? How you doing, man? Good. How are you? It's great to see you. Good to see you. How's things going? It's going great. I just got here. I, the three of us all just got here. So. Nice. What's up, Ryan? What's going on, Jason? Good to see you. How was your rest, Jason? Uh, did you get any? It's okay. Good. You were great last night. Was I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you remember it? How late did you drink? I, I wasn't drinking. I wasn't drinking. I think you were drinking. I was here. Yeah, I had a little bit. I was here until about three or something. Yeah. You mind jumping on the mics for a few minutes? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a tally. It's like, hello, Jason. Welcome. Yeah. Go to work. I know. Get, yeah. Jump in the captain's yeah, get, get, chair. Get, get Nobody's your, happier to see you than me right now. Yeah, get, get your ass in the seat, man. Yeah. What? Are you just running on caffeine and Ken, go take a nap. <laughs> we got this, man, Ken. Ken, go take a nap. We got this. You look really good for being up this long. I gotta hand it to you. You got you, you got look, look you got some pep left in you, I think. If you want these, that, that oh. they help a bit. And then Ooh, good to see you. How you doing? Good. Oh, that's for the game. I'm nervous about having that under my nose. Right. Don't break that one, Ken. Dollar game? Does anyone? You want to play stall ball? I'll play stall ball for a dollar. I've never played stall ball. Stall ball is great. Is it like, I heard this. So I learned about it from, from Jeff Teolis, and then we played it in Australia. Hey, Kaz, how's it going? And it was great. So basically, you get in a, a line. Yeah, you, everyone, everyone puts up a dollar. Yeah. And then, you know, like, so 20 people play at once. You don't care about score or balls or players. And your whole goal is to put the ball in a hole. Yep. And as soon as you put the ball in the hole, you have to get out of line and get back to the back, back of the line. Okay. If you tilt or drain, you're out. And then the line the line then gets shorter. Uh, and then if you're the last person in line, you win. Yeah, we should play that. Awesome. Yeah, that, that we should play some softball. ball. But the cameras aren't over there, so I don't know. It's true. I think we're missing a set of headphones. Um, Has somebody got two down there? I don't think so. There was. I wonder if one of them went out. I have a pair in my car, you know, because like when you're in podcasting, you just carry stuff like that, which is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, I have some in my coat, so. <laughs> well, you got me busted. <laughs> I just want to say thanks to all of you guys for showing up and supporting a cause that all of us obviously hold dear mm -hmm. and it's, it's pretty, a great cause it's pretty cool to be sitting up here with like three of the I, best people that i've met in pinball and dave and dwight and ryan and uh yeah we're gonna keep trucking away what are we up to now he's telling right now he that hasn't been updated correct it's it's over thirty thousand. Wow. it's gotta be That's yeah awesome. yeah so thanks to all those people out there that are keep i just saw cause threw some bits in and that was a consistent thing last night. It was really cool. Right. So, right. yeah, it's been amazing. Hey, Kev, what's going on, man? And Dennis, you might as well have came. You've been in this chat more than anybody else. And Skip, hey, Skip's Skip been hanging with the raid. Too. Awesome. Nice. All right, so tell me what that's what is that? I, I, I'm I'm kind of a noob at Twitch. So. 
if someone else is streaming while you are, right? They're like, I'm done streaming. Right. They can take all their viewers and put them onto your channel. Oh, cool. So it's kind of like a, a it's more of a promotion thing. Like, hey, why don't you check this person out? Right. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So he brought 13 people that he were watching him over to his channel. Awesome. Well, so, thanks. Yeah, it's super cool. Well, and it's also nice that they can you can dump them onto something that they won't necessarily. They don't get exposed to or have Yeah, have they didn't know what was going on, maybe. Right, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, oh, something cool that It's a good way to introduce uh -oh. people to new uh Kevin new thinks stuff. my mic's off. I don't think you're talking into it. How do I, I sound? Go. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're there. You. You're just not. All right. there my fault, go. my fault. Yeah, you I almost got to eat, eat it. Yep, eat it. Right. I think the, the Buffalo guys... A rookie mistake, guys. You know me. Before, and it's kind of nice because they'll... We'll, Playing something, we'll be playing something else that they've never seen before, some rare game. Yeah. And, you know, it just, even if they watch for a few minutes or, or whatever, they get exposed to something that they don't necessarily, you know, they might be more into video games or something. Like that. Yep. Whoa, look at this guy. What's going on? Who's Zach that? Zach Oh, Zach Mini in the house. He is. Hey. Another guy with very little sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's he funny because... drove all here yesterday, and then... What, like, for those of you that obviously haven't been here... Yeah, Skip, when Joe you, Katz is playing right now. When you roll up outside, it is like a nondescript suburban neighborhood in Chicago, and there's just a ton of cars outside, and you have no idea why, but as you walk up the driveway, you can hear the clacking of flippers. Ah. And then I was actually standing outside the garage here, and I could hear all you guys talking, so I could tell who was in here already. And then people are just walking in and out of the house, like without knocking, without ringing the doorbell, which is what Ken wants. But it's funny because as I was walking, everybody was gone last night. I guess he sent his family away. But today, his wife was she like, yeah, she was she was like cleaning or something and, and it had her back to me. And I felt like she was going to turn around and like karate chop me or, or <laughs> like do the thing from Ferris Bueller where Joyce is here. Yeah, you got to be the, afraid of Joyce. The, the guy crane. gets startled right. and he gets kicked right in the, the privates. Crane, the crane kick? Yeah, the yeah. crane kick to the privates. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's been great. Uh, I, I wanted to tell you, Dwight, you might be happy to hear this, but you know what the biggest surprise of this weekend has been for me? Uh oh, what? So I played Elvira last night. And uh, I, it just goes to show you have to play games in a home setting to get a true feel of what they are and, yeah, and how they play. Yeah. Because I, I haven't been real vocal about it or anything, but it just kind of wasn't my thing. And I, when I played it at shows, I was a little underwhelmed. And I played it. I only played six games last night. Right. But I absolutely had a blast. It's it's a good game. It's it's it, it reminds good. me it's so interactive. much of. Right. A, like a Brian Eddy game, which ironically enough <laughs> is the next game coming out. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um, rumored to be. Right. Uh, but it, it's got like those same kind of feel of shots where it feels like Attack from Mars, Medieval Madness a little bit. And I, I like it. I like it awesome. a lot. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. yeah. And you know, it has that, that Lyman magic, right? Lyman's going to make it his own. He's going to make it a, a masterpiece like he does everything. Exactly. Right. It's, it's going to have, it's going to be great when it's all done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's already come a long way, I can tell. And, uh, whoa, Kid Crisso in the house. That is Chris down in St. Louis. How you doing, buddy? I'm a little bit afraid to fall in love with Elvira because I already have the other two. Yeah. So. Well, you need a set. Well, <laughs> it's true. It's I, I true. Know, I know, but there's, there's, uh, other games I like to throw uh, money at. And... We're being attacked. Yeah. We got another raid. Dave, 950. Awesome. Hey, two, we'll take it. Anything you got. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Dave, 950 does a lot of the uh, Zacharia digital streaming. Ah, very cool. Oh, that's awesome. So you were saying you have both the other Elvira's? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Scared Stiff and Party Monsters. Party Monsters. Yeah. Yep. And then, uh, you know, a bunch of, uh, I have quite a few other, um, like, monster type themed games. That uh, So I have Magic Castle, Zachariah that's in there, Dracula, uh, Alice Cooper. Uh, the Williams, the Bally, the Williams. Uh, Skip, Dracula. I could sure so, do that. Yep. You bet. So, you know, I like that kind of horror theme, so I have those. Um, I have. 
nine Zacharia games. Um, and then he just needs to be more. Um, I don't know. Oh. Uh, and then, like, so you need the complete set. You need the yeah, third Elvira. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I need to. I think I only played it maybe a couple times at right. Expo. It was, there's always a line on them. And. Um, that well, and Joe Katz is hogging this one. <laughs> it's like, you know, he doesn't let anybody play. <laughs> yeah, that was, there was, there's quite a few there, but um, it seemed that I need, every time we went in there, there was quite a line to, to get on them. I need to say hi to Joe. I, haven't, I don't know if I've met Joe or not. So um, I want to back up for a second. Dennis is saying I'm spitting on location play. It sounds bourgeois to me. I, I'm not... I love location play. In fact, I am here supporting a stream that benefits location play in Project Pinball, putting machines on location in children's hospitals. So I don't know how you could say that. I like location play. I think that when you play it in a home environment, though, it definitely gives you an opportunity to explore the game more. You know? Hear so. it, hear uh, it Citizen Mars, thank you for the bits. That is awesome. Yeah, 300. Wow. Thank you. So I know you as Turbo. I remember you because yes, um, when, when they got here, I'm like, well, I'm not sure how we've met. And then he's like, well, you gave me a tour and you were with Jason. I said I was all starstruck with Jason. <laughs> oh, know? whatever. Right, and I and I forgot you. But then, but you're Turbo, right? Yes. That's that's G7 or Turbo Turbo, Turbo Graphics. Graphics. Yeah, that's it. Right, yep. right. G7 yep. is somebody else. Is that other guy? Right. Uh, right. G. Never mind. They're probably we weren't is. supposed to tell that story online. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll just leave that alone. Uh, Ryan was at Expo too. They uh, Ryan and Dave both were uh, streaming. You guys streamed several different games, including uh, Robot. Yeah, Robot and Cyclops. Yeah. Um, so that was Ken asked us to do that, and um, so well, fortunately, Dave has a large eclectic collection of games that aren't seen very often. Right. And um, all in very good shape as Zacharias, well. Zacharias. Yeah. Yes. I would love to play it. Yeah, he's I, got like it's ten. rare we get to play. I get to play a, a Zechariah. Yeah, so I have about fifty-five games, um, ish. Uh, I just picked up an Order Order One last weekend and a Zachariah Clown the weekend before that. Wow. In uh, the Naperville area, but anyway, so what Ryan had the his stream of Turbo Graphic Seven for several years before I met him, and then we sort of. Joined forces and well, like Dave moved down the street, so it made it very easy to just go. Well, we'll just come to your house and stream all your games now. <laughs> right, right. And so, um, it's you know a lot of the games that I like weird stuff and things that people don't get to see very often. And I'm not biased to any like new anything new or old or like I have EMs, early solid state, new new games, and so um, this is a nice opportunity to kind of show some of these things that people have never really seen before haven't been captured. Citizen Mars, we are in central standard time zone. Yep. So and it's kind of fun. I, I'm just getting into the whole streaming thing. and Yeah, know, Kaz, it was great seeing you too, man. It was a blast. Expo was so much fun this year. And uh, interacting. Kaz is a great guy. Yep. yep. He is. Yeah, I think, Dave, uh, the longer all of us are in pinball, the more you start to... I guess kind of get outside of your box a little bit and start looking at games that are off the beaten path because you're searching for things that are different. And I, I thanks to you guys have kind of grown to love Zachary really quickly. And uh, I, yeah, I, I'm right there with you. Yeah. Uh, backing up for a second, I know Chris Haper was asking Dwight um, if there was, uh -oh. if, if you could just <laughs> tell us now, <laughs> Chris has a lot of your games and he's a big fan and he wanted to know if you could give us any of your thoughts on where the code is on Monsters and where you'd like to take it, if you had any plans to to do anything more with it, because le lately you've really been tearing things up with, you know, so Ghostbusters and everything else. There's currently no plans to update Monsters ever. Really? Correct. Okay, so it's where so it's going to be. That's, that's, yeah. I appreciate the frank answer. That, yeah. that doesn't get any clearer than well, that. Well, so... Ask me six months from now. Right. Right now, I'm up to my eyeballs on my current game. And even if I did something for Monsters, which I'm not going to and there's no plans for, right, it wouldn't happen and it wouldn't begin until the end of the current game. Sure. And then and then it would be months after that. Right. So, like, like nothing's happening tomorrow or next month or the month after that. Right. Right. It would be months and months and months and months away before anything came out. Understood. And it's not coming out. Okay. All right. Well, there's your answer. <laughs> 
Well, uh, I suppose they have to focus on new development, right? That's a priority. Well, there's yeah, there's only so many. I, uh, right. I, I can't work on our. Uh, it's hard. It would be hard to work on my current game and and a monsters update at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I would have to do it in between. You can't clone yourself. I, well, I, I succeeded at cloning myself with Ghostbusters and Game of Thrones. We did both of those at the same time, those, yeah. those updates, because so Tanya was the clone. So I, I <laughs> Tanya implemented all of Ghostbusters while I designed it and, and created it. But was the, this and, and then at the same time, I'm doing Game of Thrones, uh, yeah. getting those done between two games. So Gary, between is, Monsters and Gary is secretly building a Dwight Sullivan army. <laughs> I, I would build other armies if, I was, if, if you had that technology. Can I, can I update the number real quick? Absolutely. Awesome. Certainly. And we need, hey, Ken, we need yeah. another mic for our friend Turbo here. No. Uh, uh, I mean, not, not mic, not mic, uh, headset. Find the headset. You had another one, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not, don't, okay. don't kill yourself over it. It's not a big deal. I mean, I can hear everyone just fine. And if you're killing one. yourself, let's get it on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. That was kind of. <laughs> well, it's for charity. See, yeah, that's it's true. true. It's, 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 it's for charity. Right. You gotta have the right perspective. I mean, he is killing himself slowly today, for charity. All right. So anybody? So we have any questions? Um, we had questions I'm, going, I'm going through. Looking at chat right now to see if we can comment on something. Hey, Chris. Christopher Franchi, good morning. There's my buddy. Chris, I still haven't listened to episode two. My catcher doesn't pick up the super awesome podcast, Pinball Podcast. So I have to figure out a different way to. Once he gets on Apple, it's probably Yeah, I have to figure out a different way. To, like, So, Chris, just email me the link and so I can listen to this episode two. Episode one was great. Gonna lose chat there for a second, gentlemen. You can still talk though. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> all right, all right. We're still here. <laughs> well, but, but I'm not sure who's here right. if I can't see the screen. Well, Dwight, we were just talking about like, so new development. That's, it's more. It, there's got to be emphasis in any business. Well, well, it's about here, getting right. new product out the door, or yeah, versus. You already got Monsters out the door. And Monsters, Monsters was aimed at a particular demographic, and I think we we hit that. And Monsters sold well, and we're you know we're happy with Monsters. And so we, you know, other than people who want to see it different, you know, we don't have a whole lot of reason to go back yet. Makes and sense. Compared to getting new product out the door. Right. Right. So it's. I mean, if there's nothing really broken about it. It's just they want to see more right. to it. Right, right, right. Oh, we're back. Looks like we, we have cameras and everything. Dexy, thank you for the follow. And almost to 30,000. Oh, look at that. We're almost at 30,000. Is that the new goal at 28? Wow, that's pretty great. Yeah, that is awesome. Uh, I have to update it on this screen, too. Zonroth would like you to talk about the board game you developed. Zonroth, oh, and that's Dennis, right? It is. Hey, Dennis. Um, so I've I've developed a lot of board games. Only one has been published. The one that was published was Nobleman. And um, I like it quite a bit. <laughs> but, um, you know, I worked on it for about four or five years, and I made about $2,500 from it. You know, so there's no... At least for me, there was no real money in it. But um, that doesn't mean that wasn't why I was doing it. I wasn't doing it for the money. I was doing it because I love board games. I've been playing them since the '70s, and and um, I learned how to game design making that game. I, I hooked up with a group of guys here in Chicago that um, meet once a week to develop board games, mm -hmm. and every week one or more, one or two of us would put our games on the table. You know, and these are just prototype games hobbled together with foam core and stuff we've printed out and cut out with exacto knives and and you know and other other game bits that we've used to to help make a prototype board game. And every week we would get together and we would learn, um, we would play each other's games and we would 
critique each other's games, and it was it was it was it's really where I learned how to what game design is about, or at least it, you know it it moved me down the path of what game design is about, and um, also what game development is about. I think that's one thing that I've come to really appreciate getting more into pinball is my appreciation for overall how many people are involved in making a game from you know so many people are like oh the layout well that's just a part of the puzzle compared to what like someone like you has to do with thinking about okay how am I going to choreograph everything with rules to light shows to the sound to make right. it all be cohesive and work great they want to know if your game is still in production and you can buy it now no, the board game is out of print. But I actually, I think you can buy it now. I think it didn't completely sell out some places. Or So really? you can go to Amazon.com. Yeah, there it goes. Gaming Gamma Goat says you can order it from Amazon right now. And I think that's true. Awesome. Thanks, Ian. Oh, the Lannister rules are are my favorite. Lannister is who I play now when I, when I play Game of Thrones. So I, I agree. Um, Lord of the Rings breath. Um, but you, back to what you were saying, um, a lot goes into games, like of any genre, right? Mm -hmm. So video games, pinball machines, board games, and, and it takes a team. It's, you know, so especially, especially if it's a multimedia game like pinball or video, um, you know, I'm just a guy sort of coordinating and helping people stay on the vision, whosoever vision it might be. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, okay, no, no, we gotta, you know, we need, you know, the artwork to look like this, and we need, you know, this rule to be like that. And, this is falling, you know, we need to be cool if we got this clue in there and whatever, right? How, how much influence or um, oversight do the licensors have on, on some of the decisions that are made? Like, for example, when you did Ghostbusters or um, Game of Thrones, like, because they, they have that brand. What's, what's really kind of, well, like... What's different is what's what's interesting is that that every single game they seem to the licensor seems to care differently than the last licensor. More about the art. Or well, it depends from license from one licensor to the next. They you know they have different focus. Sometimes like Disney cares about every single thing you do. Like they want to they want to review every piece of art on the video and the game and every sound. Like part of the R two D two topper mm -hmm. was was he wasn't he wasn't making the right speech calls during the right situations when you know and he needed you know he like R2 wouldn't say that during this moment and we had to get all of that correct how much do they care about like what you're doing in the game that represents the the in general the, the licensors license. in general the licensors don't know about pinball mm -hmm. we have to teach them pinball in fact we start telling them we start telling them about a multi-ball or something, and they're like, they don't know what a multi-ball is, but, and I mean, they, you like, know, and we, or they don't know what slings the, are, right. right, and and or pop pumpers. So we have to, we give them a glossary of, of terms, and we have to bring them up to speed. So they, they have almost no concept of pinball rules, you know. So the, mainly, like, is it following the theme of the movie? So if it, do they need to approve like a? Yeah, we give them a game design doc. So we give them we give them lots of written documents about where what we want to do and what the toys are going to do and how it represents their product, and how you know and how and how we're going to make their product fun. And 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 I think I think they think some of it is you know they, they don't understand a lot of what we're talking about. That's why we have to bring them up to speed and educate them. But um, um, but they you know but then if they see something they don't like in our document then they correct that. Yeah. Yeah. But then it's it's up to you to make it fun, make it challenging. Yeah. Around those constraints of right. still keeping that the Like with Paramount and making Star Trek, um, it was extremely important that the Enterprise never ever shoot first. The Enterprise always tries for peace. Mm -hmm. Like so we couldn't just jump right into any battle. We had to always negotiate with the with the bad guys ah, before we had a battle in Star Trek Next Generation. Open up a hailing channel. Right. <laughs> they had always talk. Right. Yes. So that's why there was always a scene with somebody <laughs> trying to talk their way and, and you know through through some compromise before the actual battles began. And that's why those that's why battle simulation was born because it's a simulation. It's not fighting against anybody else. It's you know it's us shooting the Enterprise weapons you know in a simulation. Nice. Right. So every every licensor has rules and concerns that they have. Do you feel like? I mean, you've been in 
the industry for a while. Like, you've seen quite a few things. Do you feel like licensors now are more easy to deal with or more difficult than, like, back in, let's say, the 90s? Or does it kind of not matter? Licensors are more difficult than they were in the 90s. Okay. So Is it because during of, like, T2, video assets? During T2, um, like, Steve Ritchie and others went, went into James Cameron's, like, office. You okay. know, and he showed them he showed them the entire movie in storyboard form on his wall. Wow. And walked them through, walked them through every scene of the Terminator 2 movie. Like, we don't even get in close to that today. In Star Trek, Star Trek Next Generation, we had seven of the cast members do voice call-outs. Today, it's hard to get anybody to do voice call-outs, and they all want more money than, mm-hmm. than we can really afford. Interesting. Hey, there's um, a couple of ga- uh, questions on chat. Yeah, uh, Game and Goat. Yep, um, and then there's... R2D2 yeah, so so I am the peeping Tom <laughs> in Creature from the Black Lagoon. You know, it was a difficult role for me to play. I don't, I don't know anything about peeping Toms, honest. It's, it's, that's good. You know, that's good. Like you know, so so, um, and but it is me that you fight. You know, and 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 you can and I don't know. Mo- most people don't know it, but there's like a so Jeff Jeff Johnson who programmed um, Creature from the Black Lagoon. He was way into Mortal Kombat at the time. Okay. So there's there's a finish him move in that fight where it, you can knock I didn't know my that. yeah you huh. so it's a secret code I don't know what the code is but you can well while you're playing that video mode you can knock my head off and like blood spurts out the top of my what? yeah you can, <laughs> that's crazy that's, now you want, you want, a, you want a creature now I, yeah. no <laughs> <laughs> they're too too much for me I'll what, what, play what, because he hates Dwight because he, <laughs> no, no, he no, wants no. to knock my head off and <laughs> <laughs> um and then how interactive will the R2D2 to the Gameplay. So R two D two does. So is it? It's pretty interactive. So, I mean, All his head can do is move back. Normally move back. Right. Probably, I mean, it doesn't interact. Can... Right. It doesn't interact with the ball because you know because it can't. But he he he. So one one thing that's really cool about the R two D two topper is we put servo noises in every time he moves. So you you technically you hear the noise when you from the speakers, mm-hmm. right? But you see him move, and you hear the actual motor, you know, turning on, and then so you hear the motor, and you see the movement, and you hear the servo noises, and it really, really sounds like he's making the servo noises. And when he talks, because he moves and back and forth, and when he talks, it does, it looks like and sounds like he's talking on the top of the game, wow, which is cool. which is pretty cool. Um, and he and how interactive he is, I he's as interactive as he can get. Um, every R two D two scene in the in the game. You know he reacts to. Um, so like if you choose R two D two, he gets excited, and if you if you do a ball save during R two D two, he gets excited. And mystery is all R two D two. He's you know he he does his whole thing during mystery, um, and then every other and then like if you just sit there and don't flip, you know he'll look at you, he'll look at you and beep, you know, and then look back, you know. So he gets impatient when you're not playing. Very cool. Yeah. So um, it's 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 pretty interactive. But see, but at the same time, it's it doesn't you know because he's just moving back and forth. He's being R two D two. You know, we had to, you know, keep it like that. But that's the kind of stuff that I appreciate is the little nuanced things like you were just saying. Like, if you're not doing something, he's like, hey, hey do something. Yeah. What, like, like, a, what the hell? In yeah. R2-D2 speak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, and, I, and I appreciate the, the amount of detail that goes into something like that because you think, well, it's a topper. But right. when you're programming to do things like that, like, that's what makes it a little more, um, that's the word I'm looking for, um, interactive. interactive, I guess, for lack of yeah. a better term. But yeah. it. I appreciate the, the effort that goes into it. Right. I'm, right. In, I'm interested in uh, Kid Chris. Uh, he talked about uh, mechs that didn't end up making it in game or didn't, didn't quite work correctly. You right. Talk about any like we put a like so that? in Star Wars, Steve and I had a magnet in front of that three bank, and um, we couldn't make that work, and and so we ended up taking it out. That, that that's probably not what he's asking, but. Um, or just in general, maybe of like any in the history of that there's any games where there's something. always a mech that doesn't make it in uh, most games um, because it, we couldn't make it work or it just you know didn't fit or something right right or sometimes they're like cost reduced out you know and we have to make a choice. Um, yeah. Let me come back to that. Let me think okay. about it. That's all right. Lose some so. Siggy Sour, I don't know what you mean. Um, do we lose some original humor and art with licensing? Yeah. Um, 
might give I don't, like a well, funny. Well, I mean, if you're no. confined to the the license itself, you can't make it do something that it wouldn't be. Right. Oh, I see. Um, it wouldn't be original. It would be the humor and with the that goes with the license. That's what I'm thinking. Hmm. Yeah. If that's not what you mean, Siggy, then let us know. Trying to think of mechs we've lost. Um, well, I think I've heard of maybe not some of your games, but I've heard of some other games where they've, uh, like you said, kind of tossed it or like John, I don't know, John Papa do comes to mind with mechs that are kind of wacky or that were engineered where probably took some work to get it working right or, um, well, maybe. I don't know, on some of the years where that might be, be what he's talking about, or um, something that was too complicated that was hard to get working. Oh, right. So the difference between a licensed theme and an original theme, the, the original theme lets you be open-ended, you can do whatever you want. And and with the licensed theme, you're, you're sort of, you know, you've got your blinders on, you have to do whatever the license would allow you to do. Mm -hmm. And so, sure, you, you, you know, some stuff might get lost there. So, upkick to the warp was lost? That's correct. In, in, in next gen or, or, or would, no, you're talking about like in the stern, in the stern Star Trek. The current one? Yeah, in the stern Star Trek, there was a kicker on the left that would kick the ball up, I think. And, but that was before my time. I wasn't, I wasn't at stern at the time. So you've been at Stern twice now, though, correct? Correct. Since college, you know, for 30 years, I've worked at two companies in four different jobs. I worked at Williams and then Stern and then back at Williams making slot machines and then back at Stern making pinball. More than people wanted to know, but yeah. No, that's cool, though. Turbo Dave, what's up, guys? Hey, it's my buddy Josh Seeker. What's going on, man? Thanks for stopping by. Hey, Jeff. So this is like what you do. This is why you're so natural at this, you guys. Oh, well, this is. Are, you're I'm not a streamer. Nah, or you're we're weirdos, well, right? So you're, I'm, I'm the guy that knows um, a lot about fixing and restoring games, and I have a bunch of different games. And Brian, the streamer guy, and so I'm we're sort of teaching each other. So we lack in different areas. So I'm a our area. So I'm a little bit out of my element. With like, I don't know every game that you've done, but Ryan probably. Does. Oh. I know some of the games. I don't know every game I've done. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've, I've probably fixed quite a few of the games that you've done. So um, it's. What are you saying? You know, no, no, they're always no. broken? What are you. What are, what are you what are, <laughs> no. Get out of it, Dave. Abort, abort. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you painted yourself into a corner. No. Uh, so, like, shopping games or restoring games, that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm first in that. Um, right, right. Area. Yeah, Dave's an engineer by trade, so he uh, fixing games and restoring them is something that he takes very well to. Oh, awesome, awesome. What, what, what have you engineered? Well, so I'm actually a packaging engineer, so I do. Uh, don't, uh, don't belittle it. It's, <laughs> it sound, it's probably cool. It, it is. So if you think about it, um, uh, anything and everything you buy at the grocery store or wherever, it's packaged in some form or another. I mean, even pinball machines are packaged in some form or another you got to get it to people's house, not with a fork uh, lift, you know, bash through it or, or uh, so there's protection in there. Somebody uh, designed that, yep. in, you know, you, you do it in the way that you do it today because from probably experience, so it doesn't get damaged. It needs to make it all over the world. And that's, so that's what I do is I, there's dynamics testing, uh, lots of different ways that you can simulate truck rides and that kind of thing. Right. So that's what I do in my day job. And I've dabbled in some other things like reproduction parts. And, um, I did some reproduction, uh, you know, the aprons. Um, okay. For like Shirley Valley. And I did that Return of the BD. Thank you for the 300 bits. So, so what is 300 bits? So uh, bits are like the currency of Twitch. Okay. So instead of giving someone straight money, because that there's probably legal problems with that. Um, you can get around it by using other um, things like I think. Uh, or it lets you translate from all currencies into bits. Yes, but you can like earn bits by okay. watching ads. Okay. So Twitch 
which you know Amazon owns Twitch because Amazon's the overall overlord of this. Right. Um, you can earn bits by just watching ads, or you can buy them from Amazon with cash, and then um, and then donate them to channels. Correct. Do they use their bits anywhere else besides Twitch? No. Okay. Nope. And then just, how, how, Twitch thing. how much money is 300 bits? Um, about three dollars. Okay, that's awesome. So each bit's yeah. about a penny. Yeah. Okay. Um, did we miss anything in chat yet? Um, there was a question about the license for Popeye. Oh. Earlier on. Like Dennis asked about. Um, the man, the myth, the legend. Roger Sharp is here. Roger Sharp is here. Wow, I haven't seen Roger in a long time. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm a world traveler now. Hey, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Where are we going? Oh boy. Oh, we break stuff down. Uh oh, that's okay. We knocked down. Uh, um, well, just bottle a, opener for sure. Not bottle opener. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're okay. You're okay. Yeah, you guys were all streaming uh, Cyclops. Yep. 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 I didn't necessarily do really well when I was playing. <laughs> Roger Sharp is in the house. Uh, do you mind having a seat over there? We'll do you, do you want... We got chat over here. And, right. So you're going to move over one? I'm going to move over one. Are you going to sit next to Roger? You do. Awesome. I, everyone loves Roger. Right. I right, love Roger, Roger, why don't you sit here? I'm going to scoot over this way. I'm going right. to... And I will hand you this. <laughs> not, that, not that Roger's fat, you know, but... Roger, can I get you something to drink? I'm good. Roger's my favorite uh, Sharp. Huh? Good, good, got it. The Sharp, Roger's royalty, right? The Sharp family are royalty. Uh, no, I'm good. Um, I, I guess for the younger group it is. Well, no, well. How you doing, man? It's great to see you. It's good seeing you too. Hey, long time no see. Yeah. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Everything going well? I, I missed you. Thanks, John. Well, I miss you too. Right. I do, I do. So, so Roger, I'm going to ask right, right off the bat the very the question we all care about the most. Can you help us get Harry Potter? <laughs> <laughs> like the whole world wants Adrian Harry Potter. Adrian Pox, and thank we, you for the 1,000 bits. It's so, awesome. So, and as far as I know, Joe's just not getting it done. Probably not. Right. Well, well, Joe's capable. Like he got us Beatles. Right. I you know, but, but Just having some tea. So, sure, sure. So I have a question back. All right, all right. Because obviously that has been a point of discussion for a, a number of years. So my, my question back, am I good here? You, you, uh, maybe a little you need to be this close to it. I need to be closer? Yep. A little closer. Yep. All right. You guys are the professionals. You sound, you sound good, but you could sound way better, I think. <laughs> <laughs> if I was go. younger, I would sound no, better. No, no. You're great. Um, You're so great. The, the question I've had that I've asked is, what would you really do with a Harry Potter license oh my for God. a single game <laughs> featuring seven books? I could talk to you about for hours. Oh. And the question is, how much stuff can you actually weave in? I, Where I, you wouldn't leave people out saying, oh my God, I can't believe they didn't put that character in. I can't believe they didn't I, put that scene in. So it's going to be, right. You're, so that's a great point. Harry Potter would be like Star Wars. When I did Star Wars, no matter, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a founding member of the Church of Star Wars. Okay. I love Star Wars, right? I, I, so when I got, you know, when Star Wars came our way, I raised my hand. Right. I like, I'll work on it. And, and I want to make it epic. And I, and I tried to pour everything into it. And, but and you guys only everyone, focus on the everyone, first couple of movies. We, we, we focused on three movies. Right. Four, five, and six. Right, right, but but what no, no, about no, one, two, I, and three? Someday, okay. Like, well, like nine, so. like nine just came out. Did you see nine yet? No. no. So so Not yet. I could see Steve and I doing seven, eight, nine. And that would be awesome. That is the approach that I would say, which is Harry Potter is not a single game; it's a series. Of machines. We, well, we can talk about that. If and that's that's a marketing sales. That's a big talk with between lots of factions of. of yeah, but it's also a creative a, talk. No, 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 absolutely. Creative would be a huge part of to it. To say here, we're going to do. But the if first you told me, if you told me, I could only do one game. Yes. And and maybe more were coming. I would make it a game about a hunt for horcruxes. Okay. I would make it about about hunting down all the seven horcruxes, and I would touch on all the key scenes in the game. It would be epic. It, and I could fit the seven books in one game if I had to. But if you told me if you told me I was going to do seven games, I would kiss you, you know, right? Right? And and that would be even better. But I'm thinking probably it would be two or three machines. It'd be a Correct. Series. Correct. To really do it justice. It, let's do it. Okay. All right. Like, with, should I schedule a meeting with you tomorrow or Monday? With with Gary. With Gary. Right. Gary in the group. Right. right. 
saying hi. Roger may want to help us. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. Whatever you want. All right. So this is gonna open just for like a minute. We're gonna throw a pin in the corner and then we're gonna shut it right over. Okay. I think this could use up some fresh air anyway. Sounds good. He's saying I smell. <laughs> was, was it something I did when no. I came in? No. Right. right. Like Roger shows up and the place is stale. Already. That's right. Let's let's put in some air. Well, there's there's got to be there's got to be several games out there with so much content. You talked about Star Trek Next Generation. I mean, how many episodes of that that you? There'd be tons of people that say, "Well, why didn't you put in this, or why right. didn't you put in that?" Right. Is even if but, 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 at, but even at if we did time, Roger's concept about Harry Potter, there's still going to be people that aren't going to be happy. Of right. course, but I'm saying at the time when we had seven yeah. actors, all the main characters, yeah. Yeah. as well as Q, and bringing everybody into that to embrace what the storylines were, I think that we were effective in yeah. doing what we did. Oh my right. God, this is all opening. Well, he just said it was, yeah. I know. Because you smell. <laughs> I understand. He didn't say that. You're not shedding true, some true. light on the subject. <laughs> but I, I guess what I'm saying is, can you now do Picard? Can you now do some of the spinoffs? Sure. But I think for that time frame, right. Right. what was in place, yes. Right. It's the same thing with uh, Terminator right. 2. Yeah. Right? I mean, was there anything to really do from 1 to 2? Yeah, there was some linkage. Forgetting about all the other subsequent movies right. that have expanded the storyline, right. you have to look at it as being, all right, here it is, set in stone. If we were looking at Harry Potter and only the first two books had been released, right. oh, okay, we're, we're going to do that based on the two. The fact that it's already a legacy right. and it already is embedded within us. And huge. And huge. Yeah. Well, it, and, it's, and it's a snapshot in time. I, I think of an, another one... Um, People talk about South Park, and they've made that based on the first couple um, seasons, but then they've they've gone on and they've what are, how many seasons are that? Oh, I don't know, no 10, more than that. More twenty than something, I feel like. Right. I think it's twenty something. Or like because, Sim uh, Simpsons is another example too, where they just keep adding. There's more right. and more to it. It's like, how do you ever put that, you know, uh, that much into the games? You can't really. You just have to pick the biggest ones or. I think one of the best executions was uh, taking nothing away from the Stern version was uh, our version at Williams Valley of Indiana Jones, oh, where yeah. we were able to actually weave in the signature elements from three films. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that that really worked effectively, as well as having all the main. All right, so up. yes, but it's I think for my seat, it's harder today to get the signature people than it was than it was back in the day. I think the, the difficulty tends to be the rights that you need now that we have LCDs and you want footage. And it's not a question of using footage and yeah. making that footage work within a dot matrix display right. like Dracula. Right. Because those blurry dots, there. those blurry 32 dots, maybe looks like, you know, somebody. It, it maybe looks like Gary Oldman. But today, <laughs> right, but today, <laughs> but today, but today yeah. it, it's supposed to be Gary Oldman and it doesn't look like it and he's mad. Right. Right. But it's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. It's a question of how you pick and choose. Yeah. yeah. I, I, God, I love you, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question on the chat that I think is... Uh, oh, okay, uh, you guys are reading things? Uh, I didn't bring my glasses. Oh, we're sorry. Right. They, they, they got it covered. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so, <coughs> Siggy Sauer wants to know if uh, you would design a new original game. Are, Ooh. You, are you done with that? I never say never. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I would consider it. The last game that I actually worked on, which unfortunately never came to market in production, was a uh, novelty redemption machine, uh, and I guess I can reveal it because time has gone by. Uh, the license was uh, with Scooby-Doo. Mm. Oh, interesting. Um, I don't know, Cyclops is near perfection, so... Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it, it yes. really is amazing. And I, honestly, I would put that, for early solid states, it's right at the top. So, uh, and I, I'm a huge fan of early solid states. I have just about all the ones that everybody wants. And I mean I would put that above Fathom, honestly. As, oh as good, thank you. So would I. Personally. <laughs> Not saying I disliked Fathom, but uh, no, I thought it was a good game. But uh, it's interesting when you say it because one of the things that I was uh, very much surprised by because both of my sons have been asked at various points in time what their favorite game was, and they said Cyclops. And I was just like, really? And it's like, yeah, absolutely. And Josh, at one point in time, we were sitting down and noodling around, 
he came up with uh, how to upgrade and update Cyclops if we were ever get a chance where somebody said, uh, really? let's do Cyclops 2 or whatever else. And we had some ramps and some other things. Huh. And yeah. So. Oh. Hmm. so would that be... Um, you know, opportunity for like a Cyclops 2.0, or maybe you came at something different as a another original game if you had the opportunity. If I had the opportunity, and somebody was interested in going back into production and uh, work on a game which would have uh, all new dynamics, look, speech, obviously, yep. much more, uh, much better music, deeper rule set. Uh, multiple levels of play, if you will, in terms of ramps and what have you. So I think the depth was always there, but the limitations, admittedly, was based on, you know, what was available back before you guys were born in 1985. Right. And some of the, I mean, the I unique... The I was 20 in 85. Technically, <laughs> I was three. <laughs> and the I was 20 and three, yes, combined. <laughs> Thank you. The yes. thing that makes, that makes the game so good is... The, the geometry of it and the shots aren't easy to make not all of them are easy to make. the randomness and I just saw Scott Denisi did a sort of a homage thank you not, for the follow not, Bell's not Pinball as, PDX probably not as difficult as the, the pop bumper sling that you have where it's deadly to go um, on the left side yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's there the element is there um, you know having that unique layout and I don't think since then no one's ever done that no, and, and it's interesting because when I wound up seeing some of the first reveals and I saw the, the jet bumper down there, I was like, wow, yeah. borrowed from me. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, in talking to Joshua, he said, yeah, Scott, I guess, is paying an homage yeah. to me. Yeah. So that's great. That's kind of cool. So if a, if a question goes by and we don't catch it, um, just go oh. ahead and repost it. No, you we can really, do Cyclops we too get to all the and theme it Scooby-Doo. Scooby Doo, Cyclops Two. There you go. Rhymes. <laughs> well, <laughs> together again. No, for the no first one has time. done. It's never been a Scooby Doo. I, I think the Alice Cooper had uh, elements of a Scooby Doo. Um, when you when you hit the start button, they have the silhouettes of the Scooby Doo, Daphne, Fred, Daphne, Paul and Velma. Velma. Castle. Yep. Yep. Okay. I I just I kind of wonder if it was um, uh, supposed to be a Scooby Doo before Alice Cooper or or what, but. Um, Don't know. No, I, I think I think Scooby Doo would do well. I think the cartoons have kind of been untapped a little well, bit. Well, and there's new movies coming and uh, mm -hmm. all sorts of other things that are happening with the property. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. yeah. I was I was ahead of my time. Mm. It was a uh, project that uh, endured for about ten years to get mm. it to the point that it did. Yeah. It had the machine out on test. It did well, but uh, this is a redemption game. You said. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. I still think there's there's plenty of uh, I think that was talked about on some other podcasts um, where the, the the cartoon um, themes really haven't been tapped that much as far as uh, I think they did the Jetsons which was right that was that, I think for the pinball company right mm -hmm. right but other than that you know any other cartoon uh, Family Guy and then the, the Rick and Morty one. No. Well, Simpsons, you know. Simpsons. 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 I mean, there have been Simpsons. cartoons. Yeah. yeah. Bugs Bunny. Yep, Bugs Bunny. Yeah, Ill-fated. Yeah. People may or may not want to remember. But, uh, but yeah, I think there's there's still opportunity for several other... I mean, people talk about uh, Masters of the Universe, uh, He-Man. New uh, movie coming in 2021. Yeah. Live action. So clearly, Roger, you still have your finger on the pulse of what's coming and what's not. Yeah, you know, and, I'm, I'm still... Who's doing it? I'm still kind of active. Okay. That's, that's, <laughs> I'm, I'm that's, still working for a number that's, of companies. That's freaking awesome. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So do you find... I should speak in the microphone. Yes. Um, since you've been involved for as long as you have, you've seen many things which we were talking with Dwight about. Because I had asked him if he thought licensing was easier now or then. Do you find it's one way or the other with as much as you've seen? And, and, that's, and that's a generalized question, not maybe not just strictly for pinball, I suppose, but in general. Yeah, no, no, no. And admittedly, a lot of the work that I do is not just for pinball or for coin-operated amusement games. Um, I, you know, I'll answer for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, the relationships that I have and the people that I know 
and I've kind of worked with almost everybody, all the studios and what have you, it's not really any more difficult mm -hmm. for me to be able to get what my clients want okay. in terms of their asset needs. Um, having said that, and going back to, to Dwight's point earlier, yeah, I mean, it, it is a bit more cumbersome, I guess, is the way I would describe it, uh, because what you're looking for is totally different. You know, I'll, I'll share the story with uh, what happened with episode one. And, uh, you know, we were under uh, strict quarantine at the company. Yeah, they, and, they, uh, the game was developed in a, you know, in a secret part of the room, of, yes. of, the, of the floor, and I couldn't go back there because I wasn't part of the team. Right. Yeah, I, no, I, mean, I, was, I had no idea what they were working on. I mean, I knew they were working on episode one, but I didn't know. It, it was it was difficult it because it closed off the design team mm -hmm. from input from everybody else. But those of us, myself included, as well as the principal design team, had to sign our lives away that if anything were leaked. Hey, Blue Continental, else, good to see you, Crystal. Thanks for stopping by. We would uh, we would be sued. So not wanting any of that to happen. But the point I was going to make is that with Pinball 2000, when I was out at the ranch talking with the folks, um, and we had worked previously on Indiana Jones, but it was just like, I can't tell you why I need footage. I can't tell you why I need this, but it's a whole new platform. Mm -hmm. So a question of getting them up to speed and then revealing to them what we were able to do and, and why we needed the assets that we needed um, was somewhat of a, a turning point in regard to where I had been in regard to my wish list, if you will, versus where it was then. And I guess in some ways it kind of preempted or, or, or preceded where we are now with LCDs. Because I was looking for actual real stuff. Of course, to show Jason Fowler and Joe Katz are playing over so, right now. So anyway, right. Um, going back to hopefully answer the question a little less verbose. Um, it's a different challenge, mm -hmm. but uh, I have not encountered any difficulties, whether I'm working on slot machines, video games, pinball, or novelty redemption, or anything else. So it, it's just as, as enjoyable for you? Yeah. I, I, look, it's, it's uh, gratifying to know that uh, people still have a need for what I can do. Uh, I'm not ready to kind of call it a day yet, but if the phone stops ringing, then it stops ringing, and, and so be it. But I think that, uh, again, it's, it's exciting now because I get to delve into things on a totally different level than what I used to. Mm -hmm. and, and we're looking not only musically, we're not only looking at uh, whatever the voices, whatever footage there might be. You know, I have a range of, of product out with every the slot machine company that I had up licensing with. Um, and it's been exciting to work on a lot of those projects and to bring them to life and to be able to say, look, we're not doing it in 4K. It, it's that much better, that much more vibrant. Mm -hmm. You know, here's some new technologies to work on and to work with. So, uh, and the partnerships that I'm able to create there extend out. So it, it, it broadens, I guess, my, my ability to actually be able to go after content. Hey Roger, I got Make a question about. Um, yes. Uh, so there's talk about like you know one license is more expensive than another, or <laughs> or whatever the theme is. Can you talk just briefly on like what goes into that and how do they value it and how do they you know like they talk about like the Beatles license was really expensive or how do, how does that work? It wasn't and, going to be when we were going to do it at Williams. <laughs> years ago but uh, all right I guess the the secret it's not a secret necessarily is I go back to its relationships and it's a fact that you can still stay affordable if you're paying license content. now affordable for everybody is going to be a little bit different if I'm doing a production run of 200 machines Okay, that's a little bit different than if I could do a thousand. Do they, the numbers, they need to get a certain amount per game, or how does that, how does that work? Uh, it depends on, if we're looking strictly, and I'm assuming so with pinball, then yes, it's going to be a, a per unit world against a guarantee. And sometimes what winds up happening, depending on who you're working with, 
And if it is someone that you know, have worked with, but they've never worked in the category, the problem that they wind up having as business people, point people, is going back to their executives who say, well, if they're not going to give us a lot of money up front, are they really devaluing what our brand is? Will they really put a push behind it? Without getting into real number numbers, but I'm just saying that sometimes it becomes a, a challenge to justify. You're going to make it on the back end. Don't worry about it. And structuring agreements that are going to be mutually beneficial. And I, I think, look, I, if I look back at my long career doing licensing, which now is over 30 years and ongoing, I may be able to count on one hand the times where maybe the mark was missed for hitting a guarantee or reaching the kind of optimum output that had been envisioned originally with forecast. But having said that, there are situations, and I won't mention companies or people by name, that unnecessarily have overspent to get a license. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it so boggles my mind. The, then the next question I'll lead into, if one is more expensive, why why are all pinball machines, at least new ones, relatively the same price? Because you look at cars, there's, there's different tiers. So if a, if a license costs more, but you have to put less in it to, to, to get that bill of materials down, couldn't you say like, well, uh, Beatles or Star Wars is, is a bigger license, right. so in order to put everything in it that we want to put in it, we need to charge, you know, a X amount of dollars. Yeah, X amount right. of dollars more. So why why is it that you couldn't do something like that? It's like, funny when you say it because initially, and this goes back to 1988, first license that uh, we did at William Valley was Elvira, and it followed up. A very strong lineup of other games, and and I think that distribution at that point always thought that we were going to somehow roll in a price increase based on the license, instead of new technologies or, or other efficiencies that we were trying to do, where the price point for a pinball machine back then to distribution was an X amount, and suddenly it went up by a couple hundred dollars. And it wasn't necessarily tied into a specific license. It was just the cost of manufacturing, the cost of labor, and, and, and all the rest of it. And I think that to, to answer your question maybe a little bit more clearly, what is going to be your profit margin? And if you believe that you can sell X amount more games because it has a particular license, hence you're going to make more in the aggregate mm -hmm. versus, OK, not as expensive a license, my margins are higher, I don't know if I'm going to be able to replicate that level of success, then it, it kind of balances. You know, I used to joke, would you rather be a, a Cadillac salesman or a Volkswagen salesman? I'd rather sell Volkswagens because I can sell more per um, week or per, per month, right. and if I'm on commission, right. I'm going to make more than selling my one or two Cadillacs per week, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. But having said that, there are times where you wind up stretching the boundaries. And look, the battle right now, and, and I think that Stern has probably done it the best of everybody, is you come up with multiple versions or editions of games, whether they're limited editions or premiums or whatever else. Right. And you have, here's, here's this baseline price. Oh, and here's the next step up, and here's the next step up. Right. So, you know, there's a marketplace that you can feed into those different levels. I would not suggest, nor even wonder, if there's enough value added to those bumps. Was there a $1,000 more per game, or 1500 more, or 500 more? Right. That's all relative to everybody else's perception of right. that. Yep. But I think that by and large, what you have is a marketplace that understands that Pinball is not an inexpensive investment. No. And right now, the biggest challenge is how does it become more competitive in a, the commercial marketplace? Right. You know, right now you have 
500 to 1,000 collectors and enthusiasts worldwide. And everybody's taking pieces of that to some percentage. The pie is only so big. Right. You know, when, when that generation switches and there's another one, will that be replaced on a one-on-one -on -one basis? So, with that being said, you have to bring your price down for the location owner and operator. Yep. Well, and you, you need to get them on location, too, because how else are you going to expose people? There's there's tons of people that don't go to shows. Right. They, I mean, uh, the barcades are, are, are getting more popular, um, but you need to... The more people you expose to it, the more they're going to pick it up. But the average person in their 20s doesn't have enough money to buy a machine. I always, they used, will. To, I always used to position early on, this goes back to the NBA Jam days of the world and all the rest of it, is think of what I am offering you is an interactive billboard out in the real world that's on potentially 24-7. Mm -hmm. yep. What's that value worth to you in terms of eyeballs? And I forget, I think that uh, when we were getting some commercial placement in the original cruising game, uh, we came up with some numbers that were just phenomenal in terms of reach, frequency, and impressions. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was in the multiple tens of millions oh, of eyeballs for a game that would be out on, let's see if it's out in six months, 12 months, a year, ten and a half, two years. I can get you more over a longer period of time than what it's going to cost you to buy a Super Bowl later. Hi, how can we go wrong? And as a promotional vehicle, let's work with the studio, let's work with the property or the brand or the personality, and how can we tie in? So you can do things like that, to your point, where you can gain greater exposure for the commodity that you're hoping people will pay attention to. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Some questions went by. Yeah, I think quite a few questions went by. Yes. Okay. What one question was asking me what do you what what did you think about Rick and Morty, Roger? And have you have you heard of Rick and Morty? Have you Yeah, I mean this is a good question for you and you're you're the licensed guru, so I have heard of it and I know the folks at uh, Cartoon Network. Okay. And What's we have talked. Yeah. And I guess in some strange sort of way I know they have to do a pinball machine and told them who the companies were and I gather that Gary and Jody and whoever are part of cast on it there was this other company that stepped up uh, I like it I mean I think that it's a little bit edgier it's not going to be for every home mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to be for every commercial location but you know uh, I, I think that uh, it has a unique opportunity to tap into what is ultimately very current mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I would say it's. I'm appreciative of seeing newer current licenses come out, which Stern has done great with, um, like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, sure. um, Star Wars, just current right now, and now Rick and Morty. Deadpool. Right. Deadpool. Yeah. Right. That, thank you. Yep. Huge game. Um, Jurassic. Jurassic Park. Yep. Exactly. Um, I honestly, it seems to me. We're in a very great spot for pinball in general. All the companies making, whether it's a retro game that is nostalgic to people that they really want or current stuff coming out, like I think we're seeing so much great stuff being done right now. I think so as well. I think that one of the curiosities for me, which may sound somewhat counterintuitive based on what I do day to day, are we at a point where every game needs to be a license? And I've, I've never felt that that was ever the case. When I first started at Williams back in 1988 and, and came in with the desire to have the company consider doing licensing, uh, the first comment from uh, Neil McCastro was uh, because we had just purchased the amusement game division. Look what it got then. Mm -hmm. And I said, I understand in terms of Bally and you know where things had fallen on harder times. But there was a period of time where it did get them into a role of prominence. But I said, you know, I can see doing four licenses a year. It'd be a spring, summer, fall, and winter. And kind of do a mix and a match. And, you know, over those years, from 88 until 99, we were able to do mixes and matches of original games, original themes that did very nicely, as well as licensed games that equally did very nicely. And I think that now, you know, oh, 
now I think that uh, you know the challenge is will anybody step in and actually want to buy an original game versus a licensed game? Mm -hmm. And it's difficult for me to comprehend somebody buying something on name alone without seeing it, touching it, feeling it. Take nothing away from Spooky and, and the outcry for Rick and Morty, but I don't know. I mean, my wife shops sometimes online, gets things in the mail, tries them on, and says, yeah, we're going to return it. Mm -hmm. And I want to go into a store and actually try something on. I want to feel it and touch it. I want to see, is that what I really want? And I think for a pinball machine, especially for the type of investment that you're talking about, I find it incomprehensible. And again, I'm from a different era, but I find it incomprehensible for anybody to spend literally thousands of dollars on something just based on a theme, uh, taking nothing away, a designer, an artist, a programmer. Oh, I have to have every game that Doug's ever worked on, which would be great. I think that it would be. I'm not taking anything away from that. Right. But but I think that, you know, that I have to believe that there needs to be some nuance in regard to people evaluating what they want to invest in. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense at all? Or am I yeah. Yeah. Yeah, being so old-fashioned where it's no. like, oh, my God. I think you're right. What do you think that the answer to that is? That, I mean, location pinball obviously helps with getting games in, in people's hands early that they can then buy. But when you take, like, the LE program, if you want to wait to actually play a game before you commit to it, that's kind of a problem in that case, right? It's gone. Yeah. Right. And, and that's growing increasingly common in everything. You know, Toys R Us went out of business. And I have an 11-year-old boy, and he was crushed. And he doesn't understand, like, that's the way commerce is going. And even when it extends to, like you said, multi-thousand dollar pinball machines, there is no place to go actually put your hands on them in a brick and mortar and buy them anymore. Right. Even our distributors that we buy from are all online, kind of. And it's, it's unfortunate. It really is. But I don't know the answer to it. I don't either. I don't know if people are lined up for, you know, the 2021 version of Corvette saying here. Here's fifty thousand dollars down. I think it comes some do. Out. I think some do. I'm yeah. sure. Well, and, and I think that for the even the hundred thousand dollar, you know, Ford GTs or whatever, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. They, they sign up for it a year ahead of time. But mm -hmm. then, but then you're looking at a much smaller collection of individuals that are out there. Absolutely. And and I don't know if you can actually run an ongoing business depending on what your capacity and your expenses are. That's a good question. Resources and all we'll the make rest sure we of ask them that. Yeah. What, what um, I, miss? I don't want to interrupt. Um, well, real quick, yeah. let's do a quick roll call. For those that just joined us and you may not know, introduce yourselves, say who you are. I, it's important because people come in and out all day. So start at the end with Ryan. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Ryan Kuiper. Uh, I have the TurboGrafx-7 stream channel uh, with my buddy Dave Brennan, who's playing a wire right now. Um, just, just a guy in the hobby. Yep. Grateful and to be here. Thanks for joining us. And next we have Roger. Go ahead, Roger. Hi. I mean, for people who don't know me, I'm Zachary and uh, Joshua's dad. So. <laughs> the great Roger Sharp, folks. Yeah. Yes. Uh, a pleasure to have you here. My pleasure. Yep. And then next we have... Hi, my name is Dwight Sullivan. I'm um, a software lead at Stern Pinball. Lead Dwight Sullivan. The amazing, the amazing godlike, incredible <laughs> Dwight Sullivan. Absolutely. No. The wonderful. It's such a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you've got a great repertoire of games behind you. I, thank you. Thank you. you he do. does, and he still has a lot left in him. Yeah, he does. Oh, I have an amazing amount in me. Yes. You know, I'm, such I'm a gaining great. weight every day. <laughs> <laughs> such a great legacy. And I finally am Jason Fowler, and I'm just a schlub with a podcast. That's about it. I am on Slap Safe Pinball Podcast, for those of you that don't know. So... Yeah, go back to what you were saying. You're getting ready to ask Roger a really good question that I saw up there with had to deal with street level games. So, um, Dennis from the Eclectic Gamers podcast wanted to know if you think in the current time we're in, do you think the street level games that Gottlieb had would work right now? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, they're working now. Yeah. Let, let's not kid ourselves. Most of the barcades are picking up not only vintage, restored video games from the early '80s. Uh, but many of them are placing uh, older, used, refurbished, restored pinball machines because based on whatever the licensing and zoning restrictions are, if it, those games are on free play, 
and I'm getting $10 at the door or I'm getting it on a $15 glass of beer, mm-hmm. I'm not getting it in the cash box. So with that being said, I think that, yes, uh, I think a lot of the old Premier slash Gottlieb games have, uh, have remarkable endurance, the same way that, you know, older Williams and Bally games. Look, uh, Chicago Gaming has proven that there was a marketplace for a redone 20-plus-year-old game. Do you think if so- someone, a current manufacturer, tried marketing it that way again, that would work? Or do you think people are too... I think if their focus was, number one, on a reasonable price point, mm-hmm. understanding that the marketplace they're going to be going after was going to be through coin-operated music game distributors and not dealers, necessarily, that the home market would be, the 80-20 would be 80% for commercial, 20% for home, then yes. I, I, I sincerely believe that there is a unique opportunity out there, and the only barrier right now is price. I mean, and you guys encounter it. You go to the shows and whatever else, and I know that Dwight does too. You have many, many individuals who are are business people out there have a small bar or a convenience store or some other type of of venue who would love to have a a new pinball machine just because they know their audience. And the problem is we can't afford it. So what they look at is can I buy something that's restored that still has some play appeal to it? But I think that, uh, yes, you know, years ago, when all of us were uh, somewhat involved in more complex, multiple level games and what have you, um, Gottlieb came out with a game called Silver Slugger that took everybody by storm. It's a simple game, oh my God. We wound up doing Harley Davidson that Barry Osley designed. But, but everybody started looking at that and saying, well, we don't have to go to this extreme. Mm-hmm. In terms of just the complexity of components on a play field, we can go back to something that is pure pinball. Good, bad, or indifferent. Theme, good, bad, or indifferent. But I'm just saying that the psychology behind that was such that it opened up much more of a broader spectrum for design teams to say that we don't have to be locked into feeding all of this stuff in. We can be selective and hopefully economical, Mm -hmm. more reliable. Um, So I believe that, yes, look, the attempt with Beatles kind of updating Sea Witch, good, bad, or indifferently in terms of whatever people might think, uh, was a way to try to exploit that. Because over time, Sea Witch had attained this level of, oh my God, what an incredible game, and so few are still around, and I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, and mm-hmm. Joe and the team, I guess, you know, stepped up and said, let's do this, and we'll invigorate it with a, a, a theme that is timeless, that who doesn't know the Beatles? There's one right there. Yep. Yep. So, I think that, you know, uh, yes. And I, I guess I feel kind of to Stern's credit, they're trying that with the home pin, correct? Or the, the, the pin, am I not really calling it correctly, but the pin? It changes its name once okay. in a while. It was the pin, and now it's just pin or something. I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Star Wars <laughs> pin. Okay. Um, but we're trying to, to bring down the, you know, you know to, meet different, to meet different markets, to, <laughs> to get into the beginner, you know, collector. And, and, does that and, have a coin and, door? It, it does not. Uh-huh. And that's just okay. what I was getting ready to say it's, is it's like the to only Rogers. In it really is. It doesn't have a coin to okay. Rogers' point, he said that's what that's what pinball needs. But I think Rogers are referring to a game when you said your eighty twenty thing, where eighty percent location, twenty percent homes. I while I don't know that there's anything that could be done to change or to make that happen, that you're not going to get obviously the home pen version of Stern into locations but it does address the need for residential owners to get an, a lower priced entry point to be able to start a collection a gateway drug if you will you and, know but and it's a lower price point so you right that well of course you ever go to into you ever go someplace and you be and you're like well here's this low one here's a medium one here's the expensive one yeah and and you end up buying the medium one because because it makes you know because well I, I don't want that cheap one and I can't afford I, I can't explain the expensive one to my wife right so, so you buy the medium one so you always need different price points to help people so choose. in a way what you're saying is the the home pen actually builds the like the, the pro the pro up to yeah. be a more more special game yeah. instead of being the 
yeah. cheap but, one. Right. You know, and I right. use air quotes because right. obviously they're not cheap, but that's part of that's speaking. part of the psychology. Sure. It makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. And unfortunately, because of the business model, Stern is in a position where they don't want to undercut the pro with the home which means no coin door. And for those people who are adventurous enough who did it way back when with Captain Fantastic for the home and Bally did it, if they want to put a coin neck in and a cash drawer and whatever else, I guess they can. And if it means that they can buy a game, and I don't know what the price difference is, but if it's $500 or 1000 maybe that could potentially open up more locations to say, here's his pinball. Right. Yeah. But, again, it's a you don't want to cut off made. your nose to cut... Right. You know, to spike your face. Right. Well, we while we're on this yeah. subject, and I want to start with you, Dwight, um, what do you think needs to be done to ensure the longevity of pinball health? And I, I know that's a very vague question. You can basically take it where you'd like to. But, like, in your mind, what's the most important thing that needs to be worked towards or done? We, we need to keep growing the market. We need to keep getting new players in. We need to keep getting location lo- locations opened up. So so I keep telling everybody this, that um, in the 90s, right, um, we were selling 100,000 games a year. Right. That the industry was. There's floor space out there for 100,000 games a year. At least. Correct. And and, and we're, we're opening up new markets all over the place, so it's probably way more than 100,000. So, so all we need to do is just keep getting regaining back that floor space at one, you know, at one pinball machine at a time. Okay. And and that, I think that is what's going to make the difference over time. Westbury, thank Good you answer. for the bits. That is awesome. Yeah, thank, thank you, so, you much. so much, Roger. Would you like to answer that same question? So, what what do you think? What, in your opinion, any any direction you want to take it would ensure the longevity of pinball? Well, I mean, you're seeing it now with uh, what the IFPA is managed to do over the past 12 years I take my hat off to uh, to my sons and specifically more Josh he's done being a great job deeply involved with Zachary and the entire initiative of the Stern Army uh, having more leagues and God willing more leagues that are out in commercial locations and not just in somebody's basement or rec room right. taking nothing away from that Chicago Pinball League starts up in uh, another few weeks and we'll be at it <laughs> Hi, Joe. I know you're all ready. You're practicing now. (laughs) Uh, But I think that, uh, you know, more activities that are organized on-site, leagues, tournaments, those are the types of things that can enrich the experience, not only for the location owner and and business person to see that, all right, I can actually generate revenue on a square foot space based on this type of activity. Yeah. But I have something now that will have people come back more frequently and stay longer. Yeah. And depending on the type of business, eat more food, have more drinks. Yeah. I mean, it all adds it's to mutually the beneficial to business so, so, owners. Yeah. So to right. Dwight's Pinball doesn't point, earn any money. We need to get people in the bars. We need to bring right. people right. to the locations. Right. You know, we we put butts in seats. Right. That's that's what the pinball is all about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the the biggest challenge that we had years and years ago was the DUI laws. I mean, it knocked out west of the Mississippi, not so much, but east coast, and, and obviously here, every bar and every tavern where it's, it's salt had a pinball machine, it had a dart, maybe a pool table. Right. If they had room, maybe they had a single sit-down driver like a pole position. Mm-hmm. But, but the pinball was key. Yeah. And if you go to places now, they've kind of lost that. The biggest challenge. Yeah. We have to crawl. We have to... Scratch, scratch our way back into that four space. Yeah, but the biggest challenge, and it's unfortunately outside the hands of anybody, technical support. I was just going to say. If, if I get a pinball machine and I'm a bar owner, okay, who's going to fix it? Mm-hmm. Who's going to be there? Yeah. And, and the problem is most of those technical people have moved on. You know, I'm thinking of my, my dear friend Steve Epstein with the Broadway Arcade. You have four guys in there every single day working on the games cleaning the games and whatever else and you go to other locations and look you get one time to make a first impression that's mm-hmm. the old saying if i go into some location and there's a pinball machine of any era the lights aren't on the flippers aren't working right something is wrong all that i've heard all the excitement on the media both print broadcast and whatever else about pinball well, this is terrible. 
Yeah. And I've equated it with, because it's happened to, to Ellen, my wife and myself, where somebody suggests going to a restaurant. It's fantastic. Got to go. And you go, and it's not fantastic. What you find out later is, oh, no, the chef was sick that night. That was the line cook that took over. <laughs> you have to go back and try again. But our impression is, what are they talking about? This is not a great restaurant. You're already soured on it. I mean, yeah. there have been movie theaters that we've gone to where the sound system was bad or whatever else. And I'm never going to go back there. Right, right. What do you mean the air conditioning wasn't working when I was at a movie theater down in Florida and it was 95 degrees out? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. There was so, a- I mean, I, I think that those are some of the inexplicable obstacles that most of us don't take into consideration when we're looking at outside businesses embracing pinball. A video game? Sure. Just put it out, and maybe you'll do a little Windex once a month or something. Right. But a pinball machine is going to need some care, and I think that the education process for outside business owners who may not be totally enthralled with pinball but see it as a revenue opportunity for them, take care of it the way you take care of your car because that six or seven or $8,000 investment, $3,000 investment in two or three years may be double or triple that value. The same way that we try to take care of our car. I mean, I know I have to put gas in my car. Right. I, I did coming here. I know well, for sure get to that question. I, I, have to check, pinball. I know I have to check the oil. I mean, just routine maintenance of a pinball machine will keep it functioning, will keep it optimal for anybody walking in, and more importantly, maintains and protects the investment for that owner. Yeah. And that that's the challenge because we don't have the service schools like we used to. Yeah. If anything, younger people are now going into video graphics and video design, not necessarily mechanical engineering specifically for pinball. Right, right. That's let a great point. Doing, I hadn't considered that. Let alone being technicians, if yeah. you will. Yeah, and like you said, you know, if you have one machine at a location, it, it probably is not cost effective for that, that, that owner to either educate himself on how to repair and, and keep it up or bring in someone t- from time to time that is not going to be cost effective. And I don't know what the answer to that is. You know, it would be great if manufacturers would offer, you know, occasional like seminars where the basics were covered, because I think a lot of times people get good by learning the basics and getting some some confidence. I know like the first time I changed a coil, I was scared to death. But once I did that, I was like, you know what? I can probably do other things and and do some minor board repair. And once you do board repair, then you realize it's not rocket science. But the biggest, the bigger challenge to that, you have to understand, and Dwight will appreciate this because we've lived it. There are seminars and tech things that are done. They're done at distributors. Mm -hmm. Distributors have open houses. They have tech programs. They have whatever. Okay. But as a manufacturer, I'm not dealing with the location anymore dealing with the operator right yeah. and and the key is how do you get that location owner to actually go to a distributor for that afternoon session to understand oh this is how you maintain and take care of equipment right so it's really up to the operator right. and the operator by and large depending on how large a route it is has somebody going around making 48 stops taking out the money uh, I'll get to that later doesn't do any kind of repair doesn't do anything right and all they see is that, God, you know, the money was la- down. Last, the- la- last week we did $40. This mm-hmm. week we have $5. What's going on? Mm-hmm. Well, it's a bad game. Mm-hmm. It's whatever. Well, the flippers weren't working. Uh, mm-hmm. The cash box, uh, the coin slot was uh, plugged in, plugged up. Nobody could put money in. I mean, right. nobody takes that extra step to say, why were the earnings down when you have those peaks and valleys? Mm-hmm. And, and that, again, I, I go back to it. it. It is unfortunate. I've said often in, in times past where, you know, if you're a collector, if you're an enthusiast, if you have any kind of aptitude at all to fix games and you have places nearby, go in and tell them hi. I'll, for 20 bucks a week or whatever, or $5 an hour, let me come in and, and work your games for you. Yeah, yeah. And, and let me work with your operator, or, or if you bought these, let me work with you. Yeah. And you have some independent people that wind up doing that. And I think the net result is that those locations tend to thrive 
more than others. I mean, I'll, I'll use an example, and I'm not going to necessarily call them out, but I guess I am. Uh, game works here at Streets of Woodfield. Um, used to have like five pinball machines buried upstairs doing nothing in a number of years back. Kind of embraced the idea of maybe doing a tournament and worked very closely with them, as did the boys. Um, and it became a test location. Really? And it was great. And, and the manager there understood it and saw the value in bringing in more people. And it was exciting. And there was some media attached to it. And they had some signage to, to bring people in to make them aware of something happening. We started doing our leagues there and tournaments every month. And lo and behold, the manager left. Somebody else came in. The two technicians that not only my sons, but many of the other people who are more technically savvy who are playing in the league, some of them being stern guys, bringing in parts and fixing and doing whatever, uh, the two guys that had gotten more comfortable wound up getting uh, laid off. Mm -hmm. So the games just kind of resided there on their own, falling deeper and deeper into disrepair. Yeah. Um, there was a question that's been asked a few times. Oh. So I want to... Yeah, while, while I still have it memorized in my head, yeah. I want to get out of my mouth. No, no, and this no, was addressed no. to both you, Roger, and you, Dwight. Uh, this was asked by Flippin' Out Pinball. So the question was, do you think that hobbyist media, and to clarify that, streamers, podcasters, YouTube personalities, do they have any sort of influence on development in any way, or does it matter? Does it have any impact at all? No, absolutely. Okay. Um, so it's a different world we live in today than, mm -hmm. than the olden days, right? Today there's lots of feedback, and and if you don't listen to the feedback, you're just nuts, right? Mm -hmm. So we we have you know we put games out there, and, and we're going to do an update, and people are giving us all kinds of feedback from lots of different channels. I get lots of feedback from podcasters and from from social media, um, so it, it, and from beta testers, you know that that didn't exist, you know, back in the day. Okay, so that, that, that's what you're asking, right? Yeah, that's yeah. what the question kind of was. Right. Um, so I assume that's something you're currently grateful that is available to you. I, I love games. it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Right. And what do you think, Roger? I think there's good and bad to it. I think that sometimes you have to just take a look at the source of the people. Yeah, absolutely. Who are doing? We'll never listen to Zach. Right. <laughs> who, are, who are doing their reviews, if you will? Um, you know, I mean. Right now, the movie Cats is dead. Right, mm -hmm. and, it looks and it horrible. wasn't. And it wasn't because necessarily people had actually seen the movie. It was through critics and reviewers and people who got easy peak, early peaks at it, and said, so "This is terrible. It's it's kind of strange and bizarre to the eye." Um, so, that's that's dead on arrival. Without people, many of them making up their own minds and saying, "Oh, I'll go to a matinee." Or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's dead on arrival because of the feedback, because of the social media feedback. Right, right. Yep. As opposed to maybe there's some people that would have actually liked it, right. but now they're not going to go because oh my God, you went to see. Ki oh, are you kidding? I mean, suddenly you have your friends and neighbors and family members right. saying, you know, how could you have done that? And and I think that um, to Dwight's point, there's good with it, if, and, and you have to take it Ben's carefully. Ben's a great question. You have to take it carefully and, and use it to what is your advantage and best to maximize the, the ultimate success and receptivity to a particular thing that's being done. But everybody, you know, I think the most difficult part is how do you universalize your comments? It's yeah. one thing when you're commenting because I don't like red and that game is red, so forget it. Mm -hmm. I, I think if you can step back and, and universalize what it is that you are telling your audience, look, I mean, for 14 years I did game reviews for a major point out trade magazine. Those game reviews in Critics Corner were not based on, on my input alone. I talked to operators, I talked to distributors, I talked to players, location owners, to get a consensus and then provide it to ultimately the marketplace you know what the thought was with a particular rating for a specific game for their consideration if you have these kinds of players this kind of location this would be a great game and, and, and giving some justification some validation as to why that review was done the way that it was 
So yeah. I, I guess, you know, I'm, I can't call myself ambivalent mm -hmm. to it because I know that it exists. I know it's important. Uh, I feel very badly for people like Dwight and, and Steve Ritchie and, and Pat Lawler and John Borg and others where they wind up getting railed on because somebody has spouted something saying, oh my God, this is terrible. I can't believe it. There was no depth. There was only this. There was that. You can't, mean, let, you can't let it bother you. you. Huh? You can't let it bother you. You can't, but I know, yeah. look, every, everybody's human. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and this is your creative output. This is your expression of you. And if somebody is attacking that in some ways, and, I, and I've been on that side of the fence, you do take it to heart because it's kind of a personal attack, even though you know that it's not. Well, right. and I think so many hobbyists don't see the work that, like, Dwight and Joe put in, that you don't see the hours and lack of sleep that goes into making the games. Right. right. I this think is, it's an ordeal. I think that, you know, we've seen it now with, uh, you know, more people doing homebrews uh, who think that it's really easy. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it to design a pinball machine? I have these tools. I can get some wood. Roger, I can do Roger, this. I can Roger. Do this. Back in the day, pinball was easy, but today it's hard. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it was it was less difficult back then. No, no, it was hard then too. <laughs> I'm it glad you brought homebrews up because someone actually brought the homebrew scene up. What do you guys think really? of the home? Well, it kind of is oh, already okay. gone. What do you think of the homebrew scene where it is right now? Because it seems to me, and I'm ad libbing this, it got us Keith Owen. It did. <laughs> yeah, right. it certainly did. So, like, what's the world today like without Keith Owen? Yeah. Right. I mean, Absolutely. You know, right. So. It, it seems like there's such a bigger presence, and maybe that's because of social media also. Oh, and, and um, you know, Scott, right? It got us TNA. Yep. Like, you know, like, why would we not want that? Mm -hmm. right. How do you get the next generation of designers and programmers and artists and everything else? It has to come from somewhere. Yeah. You know, Jim Patla and Greg Kamik started at the, uh, at the, the, at the, the, their career, and I'm trying to think of a word which escapes me, but they, they started with uh, Ted Zale at the alley, a, a, a longtime designer. You know, Steve Kordak wound up schooling and mentoring many people. Yeah. And, and I think that, that that's going to be troublesome going forward because I don't know many 20 and 30 year olds who have this aspiration to become a pinball designer or a pinball programmer or a pinball artist. So, yes, getting it through podcasts and, and social media and everything else may alert them to the fact that, hey, this is a noble profession. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the fact that, that homebrew pinball has taken off so much is just an indicator of the hobby in general. Because when you have passionate people about something, they are going to do that. And, and it's blown up because pinball's blown up. Right. It, it, it really has. Thank you for the follow, Mooseweed, and thank you for the follow, Huckweed. Greatly appreciated. And going back to what you guys were saying about, like, if they valued the input of media, and I use air quotes on that, and I know, like, from my perspective, I think all I am is a, a slice of what the general consensus is of the public. And if you guys, I think most of you guys look at it that way, is we are things have changed obviously everyone now that has an opinion can get it out in front of a lot more people and that yep. doesn't matter if you're just an individual that types something on your keyboard on a forum or or if it's somebody like me who grabs a microphone and does it now it comes down to the responsibility of that person to 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 take that responsibility kind of seriously and and even if you're just posting on a forum you know making sure that it's a measured thing that you say is is gone it just that doesn't happen so i think dwight mentioned well you have to take that with a grain of salt yeah. but you always have yeah. you know you've been around a long time roger and i'm sure in one way or another whether it was at test locations when when games went into bars there was criticism oh sure and there was people probably that loved the game as well and i'm willing to bet that that was probably in the same proportion than what it is now it's just that now you've got a lot louder hey boys it's, it's so it's good upset to see you. side of things it's, it's more pervasive did. now because you have the ability to absolutely post something yeah whether it's on a facebook or instagram or, or whatever else oh, right which on? didn't exist before yeah oh, just let me know. Uh, and, and I've, I've been around enough folks where i know that uh, 
there have been times where they've really taken it to heart, and you have to say, absolutely, no, no, no don't. There's you're, you, you're still good. You're still a good person. You, you still have talent. This is just somebody out there who yeah. doesn't like this. So. <laughs> There's another part to the to hey, podcasters and, awesome. and pinball media is. Um, Usually, I'm at work with my head down, it's working on my ball. game, and I I almost know nothing about Dirty what's Broster, happening in the other the companies, bits. or if awesome. there are other companies. I learn from you guys, you know, what's happening at JJP, right? They yeah. work they work a mile down the street from me, and unless I see them at Portillo's, I don't even know they really exist. <laughs> right. And, well, yeah. And and, and <laughs> no, no. Just like thanks a lot. So I well because. No. But I, so I, I understand I, what I you're learned saying. From, I learned no from you and, and, and yeah. Ken and, and Zach, you know, what's going on out in the world of pinball that, that I don't know anything about? Well, and I think that's one benefit of it right. is there is a centralized location and spreading of the passion through, yeah. I, I'm not tooting my own horn, but that is one of the benefits of podcasters and media in general is the amount of information that's out there before right. was much more limited to what it is now, for better or worse. Sometimes that's for worse. But well, but we also used to have test locations that we would absolutely travel out to. Oh, my God, there's something at Gala. All right, let's go. Yeah. Oh, Galaxy Games has uh, the, the latest Premier game. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's, let's go. And that, that doesn't exist anymore. I distinctly remember I was a big video game fan when I was a kid, and I was so excited every time I would go to the mall because I, I didn't know what was coming out. And I would run into this store and look at the shelves, just scanning, trying to find something new. Well, now people know the release dates yeah. nine months ahead of time. And sure. it's the same thing with pinball. It's all that way. It, it just, it's a different way that, that things are done. And well, but every, everybody wants to have their moment in the sun, Yeah, they do. whether whether they uh, allow themselves to be revealed, uh, to, to speculate and uh, try to think of themselves as being on the inside, well, maybe they're not. Yeah. Just to get more of a presence. Right. And I understand it. You know, look, there's a lot of ego that goes into that. So you know, you like seeing yourself being, you know, quoted or referenced, right. whereas it now makes you feel like, okay, I am somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's not a knock on people. I understand that need sometimes for people to want to believe that they have a greater influence on the outside world than maybe what they have. Mm -hmm. And it's also a question of wherever they are in their own personal lives, professionally and otherwise. Yeah, where, and what, where, where, where do they need that stroking? Right. Well, and, and what are your motives? Are you well, Is that and, what you're after, or is it, a, is it just simply to promote the hobby and, and right. that you love? Or right. to promote yourself at the expense of, oh, I'm going to tear this guy down. There, I, I just don't like it. There is some that do you know, that, and it's unfortunately. Like, you know, damn, why? To yeah. so what purpose? You know, I've, I've, I've been in situations over the years, especially with Pinball Expo, where there was a period of time where everything was all negative. God, the games are, are terrible. They're this and it's like, do any of you have anything positive to say? Do you, what would you do if the hobby disappeared tomorrow? There's no more pinball. Is that what you want? I need mean, a job. Uh, yeah. But I'm just saying, is that what you want? Yeah. Because you're not being constructive. Right. All you're saying, I, I hate this, and this is terrible, and this is bad. Is there any redeeming quality to anything? And, right. and I think that, you know, unless you're able to to walk that fine line between being constructive and objective, not subjectively, to, to what end? Other, yeah. than, other than having everybody have this flurry of activity saying, oh, this is our leader, and, and this is the person that you have to listen to or the person you have to watch or whatever. And, and it's and uh, from my perspective, uh, I, I find that truly uh, unfortunate because I, I don't know if it does anything in a positive fashion. Yeah, it's more positive than not, though. Like, okay, it, it is. I mean, you're closer to it than I yeah. am. So I think I, it depends I'm just, I've on always the been very, These guys, I've always been very protective. What can I say? <laughs> no, and I know exactly what you're saying, Roger, and I agree with you. But I, I think it depends on the individual. It depends on on the podcast or or media or just the moral compass of the individual. Okay. A lot of times, that's what it is. You know, I know personally, uh, I, I love these guys. Like I, Dwight, I've only grown to have more respect since I've met him through all this and while I may I hope you see it as constructive criticism if I ever say that something doesn't 
float my boat, uh, it's never meant to cut anyone down. And it, 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 it's the, the grander scheme is promoting the hobby. And, and Absolutely, yeah. It really is. And, you know, so, some people don't subscribe to that, unfortunately. Uh, they just don't. So. Well, and uh, some people wind up putting themselves into a position of saying, well, if I could have done it, I would have done it like this. And it's like, well, There's that's a lot fine. of armchair quarterbacks out there. Yeah, that's a big ass. Yeah. <laughs> right. Tell me. Uh, I'm going to get out of the captain's seat here and let Joe Katz get on. Um, yeah. Mr. Do you want to kind of take point on questions? I can. Um, yeah. If there's questions that haven't been asked, you want to get it asked, just keep posting it until someone catches it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll pay closer attention yeah. to that. I'll take full responsibility. So I'll that, try to read. <laughs> Joe, that mic on the end, that sure, you got to talk in the end of it. Kind that's of like it. the only, yeah, the, that's the only one. Okay. Welcome, Mr. Katz. All right. Yeah, yeah. Life treatment good. Yeah. Good oh, for the holidays. Thanks, Everybody. boys. Yeah, I just got back from Australia. Mm-hmm. Did you really? It's my first time using a passport. I'm so disappointed that I didn't get a stamp. They don't stamp anymore. At least, right. at least you know. In the back in the day, you used to. Yeah. Be. Yeah. Right. I, I didn't even get to talk. I wanted to be grilled. Right. I wanted a guy sitting like five feet above me, right. looking down at me, going, you know, what are you bringing into this That's country? Right. right. I wanted that. Why are you coming here? Right. Right. You know, business or pleasure. Right. right. You know, I wanted all that. I, I got none of that. I got a machine. I got a kiosk that asked me, you know, am I bringing drugs into the country? No. Am I bringing weapons <laughs> into the country? No. <laughs> pass through. Know. Pass through. Right. Right. It, it gave me. Right. Right. Did you enjoy it? Where'd you go? I went to Sydney. Sydney Melbourne and 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 Brisbane. Oh, cool! It, I, I I was part of a, a tour, a tech talk tour, a tech conference. Really? Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was opened my eyes to a lot of things. It was a life experience. Okay. Yeah. I've oh. done the trip. We, we, we have cats. We have. Yeah, I want to take a chance. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. Joe Katz. Um, <clears throat> introduce the yourself, one and Joe. Only. I don't I don't know if you guys were talking about longevity earlier, um, and if it was mentioned. I think, um, you know, we all respect Dwight and Keith and Pat and Steve and everybody, but I think longevity also, you know, I think we just need some blood that's a little younger in pinball, making it and doing the things we do. Like you. Like me and Tim, Tim Sexton and Tim and Keith, Elwin, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I think, um, yeah, I think we need more of that. I mean, obviously, you know, back in the day, you know, Steve Kordak and Harry Williams was passing it along to everybody else. And now at this point, I think it's time to start grooming the future of people who make this game. Um, I think that's really important. I don't think, you know, everyone's going to be here forever. Yeah. Well, and those guys. I sure as hell am not. (laughs) (laughs) We hope you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I think that we need to always do that. You know, and and when those when Keith Elwin becomes a veteran, I would hope that he would take someone under his wing or multiple people under his wing, just like you guys have looked up to some of the veterans we have now. That that's always going to have to go on to ensure the longevity of pinball. Yeah, absolutely. The the amount of stuff I've learned from Keith and Ted and Bill and Duncan, it's it's immeasurable I, yeah. I couldn't even tell you i mean just i mean i've been playing pinball my whole life but the actual business of it and actually making it is just a whole nother thing so right it, it's it's been it's it's it just keeps it needs to keep happening basically is what it, is what it is yeah so uh any questions that you guys have i want to learn more about free to wonka. send them in. tell us more about wonka yeah what do we want to know about Wonka? Well, how did it begin? It's 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 such a killer theme. I wish I had it. I wish I would have done it. Yeah. I was, you know, that <clears> and 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 I and it's rumored you guys are working on Toy Story. I know you can't do that, but I would love to work on that. I'm right. so jealous. Right. Tell me about the making Wonka. Wonka's. Yeah, the, Wonka was is a great theme. It's a timeless license. It's sort of kind of Oz style. It's you know, it's a movie that most people our age has seen, grown up watching. Yep. Um, at least the 1971 version. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not the, not, yeah, not the Who remake of it. Right. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's a that's a fun one to work on. Um, and obviously Pat, you know, does his thing. So that's. Um, yeah, I know how Pat works. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so that's. It seems people seem to like it, which is cool. Um, and um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. okay. That was revealing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what to reveal about it. I mean, so, well, so, I can only say so. So much, let me help right? you. Let me help you. So, like, all right, so what, what's your favorite part of the game? 
my favorite part of the game is like what rule are you proud of? Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I find Kid Multi Ball to be my kind of pride and joy of that game. I find there you go. I find the super jackpot on that multi ball very challenging, and I like challenging things in pinball because pinball. And you begin as a, a as a tournament player. Yeah, I mean, I've been playing pinball since I was six years old. I mean, okay. I've been playing for a long time, and I, you know, I was an arcade nerd just right. hanging around in arcades growing up, and then, yeah, and then I started playing tournament um, in the tournament scene, in, I don't know, two thousand six or something, and saw Josh and Zach running this thing, and I'm like. I know you guys. I went to high school with you guys. Like I, you know, it's so. Uh, but anyways, kid multi ball. If you if you if you um, have the super lit and you have you know six balls on the play field, it's it's, it's a very difficult shot, but it's super satisfying once you actually do it. Um, so I, I really like that. Awesome. <clears throat> uh, loser kid, I saw your question aimed at Roger, and we've actually I know everybody's coming in and out, so you may miss it, but we mark your time. Up there in the upper left, and uh, watch the stream again because we talked about that pretty extensively about 20 minutes ago. Uh, so and I, Ronald Dahl did hate the movie. I actually worked on uh, Willy Wonka for a slot machine, actually a series of slot machines, and working with uh, Felicity Dahl. Um, How could you uh, hate the Willy Wonka what? film? How could you hate he Gene like Wilder? It. Well, because yeah, like he was, it was too married too, to it. It, it was too nice. Just a hair. Right. But it was, it was too nice. It wasn't d as dark as he wanted it to be. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean. It, it should be Brad, what's his toes. But, unfortunately, his estate didn't like that, even though the word Brad is used like five times in the book mm, to really? describe the kids. Right. right. But they didn't want to use movie, anything. Right. And in the movie as right. well. They just didn't want it to be a negative, you know connotation to it i guess but right. i mean you read the book he calls them brats all the time so but nice people to work with yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, and the studio yeah as well. wb and yeah yep. it's, you know so between you three guys I, i'll ask this to all of you do you find that that licensing uh presents challenges that at times make you wish that you hadn't done it or do you find that even when it's at its worst, even if you have the most restrictions and the most headaches, uh, quote unquote, through a licensor, is it still better than doing an original theme? I, I, I know that's not an easy question to answer because it probably depends on a lot of factors, but I don't want to get anyone in trouble. Well, so you don't have to use names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying in general. Uh, obviously, they have strict guidelines, they being whoever it might be, um, and it makes it challenging at times. But, you know, having that license helps someone recognize the game immediately right off the bat. And they see Willy Wonka and they're like, oh, it's Willy Wonka. I know what that is. Right. You know, I will say, though, I, I think pinball could use some original themes. I really do. I, I, I tell the story a bit, but I. So like dialed in. Yeah, exactly. Doing dialed in was probably one of the most satisfying professional things I've ever done because it was just so much fun to come up with a story and come up with a world and come up with this and that. And it's like, now we're like, oh, it's Willy Wonka. So everyone knows what it's all about and what's going to do. Right. But to be able to sit around a table and be like, hey, let's create a character and let's create a world. It's like, there's a lot more work on that end. But pinball, when I, when I grew up playing pinball, I didn't care what the theme was. If it was soccer or if it was shooting a castle, it didn't matter to me. And I didn't even care about theme. It just it just didn't it didn't even matter when i was in an arcade all i wanted to do was it was to play good and understand what it wanted me to do yeah like no offense to anyone out there who likes soccer but i think soccer is the worst sport in the world and i have a world cup soccer it's just because that game plays really good and it's sure. really well put together you know and i i would love to do more original themes Loser Kid, thank you so much for the donations. Guys, any bits, donations, Loser Kid just made 500. Any of those are going to go to Project Pinball and be matched. So whatever you give is being doubled. So keep that in mind. Thank you so much. Um, All right, Dwight. Go ahead. Your turn. <laughs> so I, I, I like both. I, so working on a non-licensed game, like, like back in the day, was Who Done It and Junkyard. We, we, we would spend lots of time early in the development working out the story of this. Well, what's the story of Who Done It? We, we sat in a room, the whole team sat in a room for like two days, and we worked out that whole story and we wrote it down. And like, well, everyone, you know, so there's going to be a bunch of suspects, 
and every suspect has to be, you know, has to have a reason for being the killer, right? And then you, you know, and you try to tr try to work it out within the game. Yep. And um, Junkyard was similar. Junkyard is like we're trapped in a junkyard and we have to escape and there's Crazy Bob is trying to, you know, trying to get, you know, break us out. Yeah. Or trying to, you know, stop us from getting out, yep. right? So mm -hmm. that's the story of Junkyard. Um, but licensed games have have magic too. Licensed games, you know, are like, well, but what's magical about this? Let's exploit that and bring that to life and bring it to the forefront. And how are we going to do that yeah. the best? Yeah. You know. Yep. So um, I agree with all that. Yeah. Dead flip with 500 bits. Thanks so much. Appreciate I, it. I'm, I'm Jack in the house. I have like a half an hour or so, and I want to donate. So I got to figure that out. Roger, you want to give your input on that? Uh, sure. <clears throat> uh, I, I am of the school that uh, a licensed theme at least gives you a plot line and various elements that you can weave into a game in some way, shape, or form. Um, in some respects, people who are not directly involved may see it as a crutch. It's already done for them. All they have to do is just put it all together, where an original theme, you have to really, to, to Dwight's point, you're really starting from scratch and creating your own opus. You know, what am I going to do with all of this mechanically and, and rules wise and characters and features and I think that in some ways it's liberating for yeah. many uh, and other aspects for other people it may be a bit more intimidating because there are no barriers if you will that may actually inhibit you wanting to do something mm -hmm. but the license is not available to allow you to do that um, so I think there's a mix and a match, and as I said before, and I've always believed this, I think that absolutely there is a, a way, and I, I wish it was easier, but it's not, being very blunt, yeah. for an original theme to be successful, for people to really gravitate to it, and, and again, not pointing fingers or knocking anybody, you know, total nuclear annihilation was from, in quotes, one of theirs, meaning Scott. Yeah. So. I joked with Jack when uh, he said Pat was working on an original theme, and I said, it's a license. And he said, no, 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 it's not. And I said, it's a Pat Waller license. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that. That's true. Black Knight is a Steve right. Ritchie license. Right. Mm -hmm. If it's a no-name person coming out from God only knows where, Keith Allen was known because of Archer and was part of that community. So when he had a chance to actually do something, it was like you're going to gravitate to see what's Keith going to do. But if you yeah. take, you know, Joe Smith, if hopefully there's no Joe Smith around, but any name. Hey, there's one now. Off, off, <laughs> right, off the street, and he has an idea for a pinball machine. Unless it just blows everybody's socks off, where did this guy come from? We talked about homebrews before, and we see things yeah. that are on display at various uh, events and shows. And it's like, okay, that's good. I mean, I played some stuff at Expo where somebody said, oh, would you play this and, and see what you think? I'm working on it, and I'd like your feedback. And it's like, okay. Yeah. And, and sometimes you wind up seeing things that are not financially worthwhile to mm -hmm. pursue. There's a bill of materials. Maybe yeah. there's too many switches, too much stuff. I don't, I don't know how this becomes cost-effective. Right. In other cases, it's like, really? Where, where's the angle to make that shot? Yeah. Yeah. The oh, physics well, issue, right? Right. So, I mean, so you start looking at all of that, and then you go a little bit deeper than just the overall geometry and flow as to what are the rules? Does it make sense, or are these all disjointed elements right. on a play field? So, without straying from, from the original question, I think that, yes, there is room for more unlicensed games, but I don't know if the marketplace right now will be inclined to consider those to the same degree that they do with licensed games. Unfortunately, I agree off, with that. Off the bat. Yeah, I it's agree. It's kind of like, you know, if there's a great movie, we all have an expectation that there's going to be a sequel. And the sequel better be really good because if it's not, then the trilogy one, forget it, we're going to walk away. Right. So right. You, want, you want the name recognition versus the movies that are coming out now that are coming out for the Academy Awards season. Mm -hmm. A lot of serious stuff that comes out in the last quarter of every year. That's, that's not, not an accident, to, right? Well, that's <laughs> not going to be the stuff that's going to be big box office generating revenue. Right. I mean, there's, there's different tastes that are out there in terms of any of our entertainment. I don't care if it's 
literature and the books that we read or the magazines that we look at, uh, the TV programming we watch, movies, games. Mm -hmm. Everything isn't for everybody, but you have to really kind of define who your audience is, and if it means that it has to be a license, then it has to be a license. But, you know, again, yes, I, I think that uh, I wish there was more. Yeah. I wish everybody was really willing to take the risk so that a licensed game would stand out as being something more special rather than just the next one. Yeah. And I think that that's what's happened. Mm. Yeah. That's another good point. All right, so there we go. Can that, I divide that, that? Is that all we got to do? Yes. Okay, cool. I mean, Can when I we did, it? when we interspersed sure. original games back in the day, right. you know, oh, what, what's the next license? Right. You know, oh, you just did, uh, you know, Roadshow. What, what's coming up next? And, oh, and then we have Dirty Harry. Oh, okay, that's kind of cool. And, I mean, whatever the, the linear progression was in terms of our releases, I think we always had kind of like a balance between original games that really allowed everybody to kind of really do what they wanted to do yeah. versus others where it was like, okay, let's see if we can do right by this license. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Roger. Um, Moose yes. Person just donated 1,500 bits. Ooh. Wow. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And also, we had Dwight, I just saw it, donated $100 awesome. to Project Pinball. Awesome. So thank you Thanks, so much Dwight. for doing that. Just uh, an incredible community. And uh, you can see proof of it up on the screen. Unfortunately, it's not updating in real time. That is going up every minute. So if there's anything that you can give, it doesn't matter how small it is, just being here and supporting us through this long, arduous process of 24 hours of streaming. Uh, what a crazy idea Ken had. I, it, you Ken, know what? He has and, knocked it out of the park. I yeah. know that's like a popular When doesn't term. he? Uh, he does are, everything he is, big. He does everything great. Zach yeah. and Ken are two of the hardest working people in pinball, and there's definitely others. Uh, you know, Jack Danger, everybody that has been hard workers in this hobby for a while, um, selfless hard workers. Right. And Ken, I've seen him just a little bit ago, and he is exhausted and spent, but he's poured everything he could into this, and uh, it it should be celebrated. And, and thank you, right. really. Right. Yeah. Right. Definitely. So. Go Ken. Cool. Yeah. So what else would you guys like to talk about? I mean, we can even dip outside of pinball. Roger, what it now that I've got you here, you know, and, and you are a legacy in pinball as yes. much as anybody, what give me one of your other interests besides pinball. I'd love to know a little bit wait, more. Wait, wait, you're allowed to have other interests? <laughs> yeah, there is. Wow. But I think huh. a lot of times other interests kind of tell you a lot about a person. And Dwight, I'll ask you the same thing, so you better get something ready. I, I'm ready. Joe, same. All right. All right. What's, give me your main, another main entrance, interest outside of pinball. All right. I'll answer it this way. Uh, Pat Lawler did his Pat Lawler show years ago at Expo. And I think we were like Hollywood Squares or whatever, where you had to answer a question. Okay. And it was like, uh, <coughs> what's, what's Roger's favorite thing to do? Play pinball? play golf, and I forget whatever the other thing was, and everybody guessed pinball, and so it's like, no, golf. golf. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, I like playing golf. I, I I'm, not, I'm not really good at it. Do you have I a have handicap? You don't have to tell me. I, I do have a handicap. My handicap is playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my handicap is just my, my, my physical ailments. Yes, it's aging. I understand. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that, uh, my grandchildren now, <laughs> uh, love being around Colin and Charlotte and Evan and Benson. Um, I bet you are a really good putter, aren't you? Actually, I am. I, I just, I've played golf my entire life, and I know a good putter just by personality. Okay. I, I, and I really do. <laughs> and I, you, you strike me to that. Probably a little wild off the tee, a little better with your irons. Actually not. Uh, no? I, I gave up using a driver. I used a three wood. Uh, but so with I, the driver, were you a little wild off the tee? Could never get the elevation. I, I never yeah. liked the fact that uh, I was at an angle. A three wood at least gives you a little bit more if it's a 14 and a half degree or whatever. So I, at least I can get some air. I yeah. tend to unfortunately hood my clubs, so I'm not getting a lot of air on almost anything. Yeah. But uh, I was willing to go down the middle of a fairway with a three wood mm -hmm. and give up the 20 or 30 yards versus either you know hooking it or slicing it. But you probably make you make up a lot around the greens, don't you? I try to. It's, yeah. it's interesting. When I first got the boys started playing golf, and we went out, and uh, it was kind of like, this is not like miniature golf. 
and, and the big yeah. thing for them with putting was, you know, because they'd go off the green or whatever, they just hammer it. I said, think of it as being like a you know two foot, three foot area. Just be close. Yeah. So you can tap it in. Flag. Yep. And and both of them got yeah. better with that. Uh, great. Zachary has great length off the tee. Josh is consistent even if he only plays once a year, which is astounding. Yeah. But no, I mean, I have two ruptured discs, so I shouldn't play golf. I have a tennis elbow now that's totally blown out. Um, where I was down in Florida about a month or so ago and had to stop playing because it hurt and got a cortisone injection. So I head back down uh, the middle of January. I'm going to try to take it back up, and, and we'll see. But my handicap has uh, increased significantly from uh, the last couple of years. But, no, yeah. I enjoy it. My joke is I'm practicing to be a decent 85-year-old golfer, but my game's not there yet. <laughs> if I can do 150 down it. the middle. Then that's fine. I love it. All right. Well, first of all, Chris, thanks for the, thanks for the bits. Appreciate that. All right. Next, Dwight, what's your, what's one of your interests? Um, I know a couple of them. Board board games is probably my number yep. one love. I, yep. Yep. Yeah. I I I I like design designing board games. I haven't done that much lately. You actually made a board game. I did. Yeah. Dennis was asking about it a few minutes ago. Um. Um. I used to hang out with guys here in Chicago and make and we used to play each other's board games all the time and yeah. two or three of them have been published over the years and fascinating. And, um, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you yeah. still play all the time. We, every Friday, a group of guys meets at my house and we don't play pinball in my basement. We play we play board games. Do you have a favorite cool. right now? Well, there's. I know it changes, but it, what is no, it right I, now? No, so it's like what's your favorite pin? There's no. Okay, what's so, so what's the, board the last game, one you played? Board game. Yeah. I, um, well, lately I've been playing some of the newer games like um, Brass, Terraforming Mars, and Gaia Project. I have no idea what any of that is. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that, is that English? Somebody out there muggle. probably does. You're a muggle. And at, right. I, I know what muggle means now. I've been reading the books. Uh, all right. There yeah, easy, right. easy. So Dwight's a huge fan of the Hobbit series. And Well, I'm Hog not the no. Hobbit series. I'm sorry. Harry Potter. I'm sorry. It's Harry Potter. I sometimes say that because it's an H. I just get brain and they're both fantasy and yeah, yeah yeah exactly so he gave me trouble about it i ordered a book on his recommendation and i've been making my way through it and, and my 11 year old son yeah. so i promise you we we're not going to bore you with non-pinball stuff very long but you guys got to realize we've been oh, here scythe. for 24 yeah. hours i love scythe and and we're uh we're dipping into some some stuff sometimes that's not joe yeah what's uh what's another hobby well, of yours besides collecting ceramic unicorns um, <laughs> that I find hard to believe. Just kidding. No, no, okay. that, was, that was a comment. In the that was a comment oh, okay. in the chat. Oh, I missed that. Um, I don't know. I I still try to keep up with video games as much as I can. Um, I don't get a chance to play them as much as I'd like to anymore. Yeah. Um, I'm I don't know. I'm a diehard Cubs fan. I'm a diehard Bears fan. I've sort of grown up being obsessed Stop with those bears. two teams. Yeah. Um, you know, blame my gr exactly. Blame my grandpa, grand grandma and my dad for those two problems. Yep. Um, but pinball, you know, pinball's number one. Pinball's something, yeah. 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 yeah that's cool. That's cool. A little insight on uh, these guys up here and what they love besides pinball. So what else? You got any questions? Um, Who, stuff. So wait, so Ben's, Ben Zink's pinball. Did you play with the um, airships? Because the, the 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 airships are are make it make it really fun. It, it, at least visually, yeah. Scythe. He's talking about scythe. Scythe is a board game. I've actually heard of that. Okay, and, I haven't played and, it, but I've heard yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. Like I have I have the I have the metal mechs. I, like that's how crazy I am. We play like Ticket to Ride, my son and I, and stuff it's like good, that. It's a good game, Ticket to Ride. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm somewhat familiar with it. Yeah, so so Jobber's asking me a Cubs question, and I'm going to tell you the answer to that question is poor spending has put them into a tough a tough spot. Um, you, you you pay for bad players, and you get stuck uh, in the situation they're in right now. Isn't uh, isn't that kind of Theo's thing? But it turned out to be bad, right? So I yeah. just as an I, I'm a baseball lover, it doesn't matter what right. what team I love. Uh, but you know Theo kind of had this thing that he did up in Boston yeah. that turned out really well. Yeah. And then he did this thing in Chicago that turned out really well. Right. But both have kind of followed the same thing. Now, yeah, the yeah. upside is Boston several years later, once they recovered their farm system, right. they became a powerhouse again. Right. 
And I think you guys are just, you're experiencing the, um, the hangover, if yeah. you will, of a World Series run and the, and the money that's required to get it done. Well, the, the trade of Nomar opened up that door for Boston. Yes. And unfortunately, the trade potentially of Chris Bryant or right. uh, Wilson Contreras right. is going to hopefully populate a uh, farm system, but it's going to take them two or three years to see any net benefit from it. Right, right, right. When you and and when you have a new... For food, I can order some, uh, some Hello there. Lunch. I didn't know what uh, I'm good. I don't need any. I don't know what time... Thank you. I'm taking I'm off soon, so... Off. Yeah. I have to as well, but... Do you want to sit in, or are you kind of still resting? I'm just going to... No, I'm good. I'm just going to do a quick food order. Okay. Are you hungry? I'm not. I'm good. Really? Yeah. Joe, I don't know. I might not be sticking around much longer, but... Everybody's bailing. There's a leftover piece so from um, last Dennis, night. Dennis, yeah, I agree. Pan- pandemic. You and I are must be the only two people that don't like Pandemic because it's very, very popular, but I'm not a fan of Pandemic either. We need Jason's secondary <laughs> secondary loves. Uh, you know, I've dipped into a lot of things. Uh, I love photography. Um, I love uh, aviation. I was actually a student pilot solo. Oh, that's cool. Uh, oh, wow. I, uh, I don't know. I sports. I love okay. professional sports that I'm not good enough to play. But what I stopped love you following. from being a pilot? Being a uh, uh, like a type one diabetes. Oh, so I had to jump through a ton of hoops to be certified as a student. Like you have to demonstrate a very good control. And one of the caveats is you cannot fly commercially. So it was only I just wanted to solo, and once I did, I stopped. Okay, it's very expensive, and I'm not made of money. And so, huh. but uh, my father uh, tried when he was younger, and uh, he actually uh, scared himself on his first uh, uh, landing attempt and dropped out. And he he like wanted me to he wanted to live vicariously through me and have me do it. And, and you tried. I soloed yeah. twice, and right. I did it, and I was done. And but you I really landed well. So I did. Yeah, so it went fun. smooth. Hi, Dad. Yeah. Here. I Guess did. What? Yeah. It's funny. I still remember my call sign for my plane. This was 15 years ago. It's funny. It, it's. Just how it sticks with you. Right. So, yeah, it was just a little tiny C-152 Cessna. It's like two seats. I look like a monkey riding a football. And it, <laughs> I really did. So, yeah, I, I love I love to read. Um, yeah. I don't have anything really exciting, though. It's all kind of silly. They've stuff. been asking about auctions for, uh, once in a while. Do we have auctions coming up? Do we know? Um, we, when Ken comes back, let's ask him. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, we do have some. We need to get through those. Actually, yeah. got the two, three play fields here. I think did the monster bash go? Do Nothing's you know? happened since I got here. Okay, yeah, we do have some auctions coming up, guys. We're gonna get through those. Um, <laughs> Dennis says his parent, his grandparents crashed, and as pilots, that's not good. So. Uh, yeah, we're going to get some more things bid on. We're going to raise some more money for Project Pinball. Well, if they crash more than once, that's a good thing. <laughs> and they're all in. <laughs> Blue, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I, I'm, I'm trying. Jason crushes everything he touches. He, Do I? He, yeah, he, he does great. Ah, okay. I love the Slap Safe Pinball Podcast. Well, thank you. I, and, and you're a decent guy. And, well, I, and, I try. Yeah. Yeah. And and you look like you're made of money from here. I mean, this is a nice show. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. This is a Black Friday sale, in fact. Uh, what else would you guys like me to ask these three up here? I mean, how many opportunities do you I'm, get? Yeah, I'm out in about 10 minutes or so. Okay, so, so you got 10 minutes left, Dwight. I know about Roger's not going to stay here forever. you got Joe Katz. How often do you get the opportunity to ask these guys live a question and have it answered? Live is the key point with me. It's the <laughs> <laughs> Ask me now before I'm not around anymore. Uh, Roger, you're going to be voice. around till you're about a buck twenty, at me. least. Your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, it goes faster when when you're young. It seems like it takes forever yeah. in terms of the passage of time. I'm sitting here now, and it's like, what happened to summer? <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, what happened, uh, to, what happened to summer 2018? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. What Forget about right. 2019. Right, right. It's like, seriously, it's the end of a new year that's coming up? Yeah. What the hell happened in 2019? Right. Roger, there's no greater paternal figure in pinball, and, and I think part of that is you are a father. Obviously, yeah. many people know your sons. They're famous. You guys are royalty in pinball family. So do you, do you notice that 
life moves faster after you have kids. Do you think that's because of your priorities changing, or do you think that's just a, a byproduct of being older and just happening to have kids at that same time in your life? I think I think that the. I guess the question is better answered by saying that uh, sometimes your priorities change and you wind up becoming, if you want to, more involved and invested in your children. Look, when I started at Williams, I was hanging out until like 7.30, <laughs> 8 o'clock at night with the designers playing White Woods and whatever else. Right. And I remember coming home one night and the boys were very young back then. And I'm, I'm a good dad still, right? And he said, yeah, I mean, you, you come home in time to say goodnight to us and we've already eaten and it just crushed me and it was like all right screw that i'm out of here now at like 6 6 30 yeah. so i can get home and at least be there more more often and more frequent and, yeah. and coached all the sports with them and whatever else but i think that uh, the time goes quicker when you are kind of not necessarily living through your children but seeing them grow up yeah and suddenly it's fourth grade and it's fifth and it's sixth and it's like, well and i see people and it's like so how is little Mikey doing? Well, little Mikey is graduating from college. No, he's not. Yeah. Because you, you wind up missing people over periods of time, and suddenly their life journey is there. And now my world has sped up that much more because I have grandchildren. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Colin just turned eight. It's like, seriously? Yeah. How can that be? I still have toys I haven't given him from when I, he was going to be four. You know, yeah. Charlotte's going to be six. You know, Benson is uh, almost a year and a half old, and Evan is coming up to be a year old, and it's in a blink of an eye. It really is. It moves faster and faster, sure. for sure. Dennis, Not pinball related, but yeah, go Dennis, ahead. Dennis, there's okay. lots of games that I would love to work on. Um, theme, themes and... Repeat the question, will so you? The, the, I'm sorry, yeah. Good, good. Thank you. No problem. Um, so Dennis asked, um, and, and I, I'm going to paraphrase, because the question's now off our screen. Um... He asked, you know, are there, are there games we would like to work on that, that, there it is. What game would you most like, to, most like to do that you didn't work on and get to apply your rules to? Um, oh, and that, the last part of that question is what's got me sort of hung up because, because I always, you know, because I like to do rules. I love to do rules. Um, yep. I like to make complex games. Um, um, so, but so, but first, I start with a theme, and I like like I would love to do Aliens. I would love to do Back to the Future. I would love to do Jaws. You know, these are these are I think games that I and I would do each one of them differently. Jaws would be a much simpler game than say Aliens. Um, Jaws, you know, Jaws. All I don't need, you know, I don't need Richard Dreyfuss. I don't need all I need is that music, and and the 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 the, 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 the logo, yeah. right? And then and and then a play field. That has like three shark toys that you can't see when you walk up to the game, mm. right? Uh -huh. And it would be all kind of sunny day at the beach, and I'm fishing, and I'm swimming, and I'm happy. And then dun dun dun, and the lights would change. You know, man, the, the you're painting quite the picture here. Right, yeah. right. You need to sell this idea to somebody if you ever I, meet anyone. I, I, maybe he already has. Yeah. I, I sell it to everybody that listens. <laughs> and you know, aliens, aliens. I, so as I've gotten older as a designer, I like I want to be more atmospheric. Right, I want to like. Right. So, like, one of my favorite modes that I've ever done is the uh, the lightsaber duel in Star Wars. I, yeah, it's I played in my basement with the light with all the basement it's lights incredible. off, you know, and, and headphones on, and and you know, it's very atmospheric. I want to do more things like that that are, you know, like that pull you in and are you know like scare you or yeah, you know, thrill you in some way. And uh, yeah. you, it's definitely pinball when it's at its best. It wows you with the lights and and the story and the antagonists that are in it yeah right. i can't think of a better way to do that right and then yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, just and one of the three toys you're not sure which one you know will just hop out and grab the ball and take it away under the play field <laughs> like in a, in a heartbeat you know <laughs> yeah uh, ah! <laughs> that would be cool i, I like it you guys doing okay yeah doing well yeah. you ready to I, rotate I in for a bit yeah they, i just needed a breather so yeah I appreciate it. You look like you feel a little better. I do feel a lot better. <laughs> yeah. I was having a hard time concentrating for a little bit. I was trying to focus. Not that I was going to take a little five-minute break, and then back we were moving pinball machines. I was like, oh, Ah, that's fine. Talk about your all-time backfires. Ladies and gentlemen, Ken Cromwell, yeah, hey. the man of the hour, yeah. the man of the last 24 hours. Hey. Thank you, guys. Thanks for letting me sit in. Thanks I for coming in. Thank you, um, Ravage Ravage Thank you. Ravage Four. And there's, so so Zach's here. So who's doing the flipping out? How'd you get thing? involved? He, oh wait, 
How oh, did yeah. I get okay. involved right. with Mattel for the rare? All right, so Las Vegas Pinball, I do remember that. I was kind of on the outskirts with Mattel at the time. And for that home pinball, which never really made it into the marketplace, Brunswick had four different games that Harry Williams had designed for them. And obviously, Bally had their home game, a um, couple of different models. Um, the layouts being very reminiscent of Hocus Pocus for people who remember that game. But uh, yeah, I think that Mattel saw an opportunity because at that point in time, home entertainment with pinball machines didn't really exist in terms of coin-operated commercial games so much as it was. Here, can we price something appropriately? And for those who remember more recently, Zizzle with uh, Tiger Electronics doing uh, their game. So there you go. Lower price point, larger volume, but still basically a toy. I got a question for Roger. Oh. I don't know if there's an answer to this question, but Ed Boone claims that you guys were working on a Mortal Kombat license at some point in the 90s to make a pinball machine out of it, and it fell through. Do you have any recollection of that and why it happened? Yes. Oh, you do know why it happened. Or why it didn't, why happen. di why it didn't happen, I mean. Roger knows everything. I know. Well, I know. <laughs> Again, there's... Yeah, I know. Uh, I think the reason is that... Uh, Twofold. One, the assumption, and I think it was correct at the time, it probably is different now. Video game players don't play pinball. Right. Pinball players don't play video. Right. Uh, so to pay homage to a video game didn't make a lot of sense. The fact that it was attempted not once but twice with Defender Pinball not doing really well, right. taking nothing away from what was at that point a Joe Kamenkow design. Joust Pinball. Despite right. the fact that it was a head-to-head, -head, did not do really well. Mm -hmm. So the feeling was that to take a video property and uh, make it a pinball, no. I think the only time that we actually crossed that line, even though we called it fast break, was doing the NBA license. Right, right. NBA Jam. Right, right. NBA Jam, tournament right. edition or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. Hmm. So Interesting. Whether or not today that would still hold true if somebody were to do something yeah. uh, based on a video game. I don't know if somebody, I mean, maybe you guys want to do Fortnite. Right. And the feeling will be, all right, do we, do we have an audience broad enough who also happens to be pinball players right. who are also Fortnite players? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean. Questions we ask every day. Yeah, I mean, a Fortnite audience at the moment, of course, is, you know, 12 to 15-year-olds. So they're not exactly buying games. Right. But, you know, if they go see a game somewhere, I'm sure they would try it. I mean, Fortnite's, yeah, that's, that's a... That's a tough thing for a pinball game because I mean, uh, obviously the point thank, of Fortnite. Thank you, Jogger, Jobber, but uh, I don't know about being Obi Wan. <laughs> yeah. So Obi -Wan. there's a good question about um, co-op mode. Um, I I love co-op mode, and I'm betting we're going to see more and more of it. I mean, I don't know about you guys over at JJP, but I'm, you know, I'm always looking for new ways to <clears> add <throat> things to games, and I bet I'm betting you you will too. I'm betting um, Brook and Morty has co-op. Right. You know, um, right. why wouldn't it? Me. So co-op mode is everybody plays against the game together. There's not in separate turns. So right. a four-player so game you, becomes you like play a and clan. You make progress right. toward the right. game, and then, and then, but then you drain, and then I play, and I make progress toward the game, and I'm helping you, and you're helping me, and so on. That's co-op. Interesting. And we have this. We have, there's only one score. There's not. We don't have different scores. Right. Okay. Yeah, TNA does that, I'm pretty sure. Right, TNA yeah. has made it, I mean, it's not a new thing, but TNA has kind of made it popular in, in well, modern times. kind of what Steve Epstein and I used to do back in the day of the Broadway arcade, where it's like, all right, I'll play the first ball, you play the second. I mean, yeah, no, no, the same yeah. Game. that's yeah. what it is, but yeah. That's what it is, but instead of, so if it's a four-player game, there's 12 balls working their way toward one right. game. Trying to trying to get to the That's end of the game, right? Yeah, well, especially it's when a game as difficult as like Reactor Nine, it's, right. it's you know it's a good thing to have all, everyone trying to do it together because doing it alone, right. you know, there's about, about five people in the world that's from done it different, alone from different skill sets right. to be able to all work right. towards a common right. goal too. Yep. So right. it, help, it helps rules. that segregation. Right. Jesus, depth of rules. Yeah, would yeah. have to be really significant. Well, or yeah. or average players on co-op, that's the point that the guy made. It's kind of scrolled off now, but the, but the oh. average players, like I never make it to the end of even the games I work on, right? So I never make it to like Jedi multi-ball, right. right? But gotcha. but four players, you know, but that's because I don't have three could, balls. Could you get there? But, but maybe with 12 balls, we could do it. Or <laughs> do the buy-in. Right. Well, this, it's... <laughs> <laughs> buy-in. Right. That's go. right. Right. I'm just going back in time. <laughs> but no, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. So that's, that's co-op, and I think we're going to see more and more of it. That's right. interesting. Yeah. Co-op. 
So we're getting on the it, one o'clock hour. Um, I think I'm going to sign out. Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. I gotten you guys for longer than I had anticipated. I, I was. I promised you ten thirty to eleven thirty. I know. And, yeah. I thought Joe was going to kind of moonlight in, and, and Roger, I thought, was going to kind of come in and make an appearance. You guys are generous with your time. Uh, Daniel Spoler from Project Pinball Charity. On behalf of him and myself and everybody here, we completely appreciate the time that you came in. It's a weekend, and it's close to the holidays, and it's not the ideal time, but it's for a good cause, and I know that you guys feel that this is important charity to fundraise for, uh, so we wanted to tell you how much we really appreciated uh, you know, just being here. Celebrating pinball, celebrating the charity, and, and, and driving funds towards yeah. the efforts. So it, it, it really, do, really right. means a lot. Yeah, right. yeah. It was, yeah. Time flew by. Yeah, it did. It's, it's a great yeah. charity. It's, it's it well really is. It. And talking about pinball is, you know, not exactly uh, hard work. It's it's not hard it's work, right. but uh, it's I know what you guys work pinball, and, right. and sometimes in your free time it might not be the most ideal subject right. matter to sit down and, and bang out on a pinball stream, but it's much appreciated. So yeah, no thank problem. you guys. No thank problem. you. Thank you for doing thank what you do. Yeah. Hey, you're my guys. Thanks for having me come down. Oh, are you kidding me? Anytime. Joe, I'll come Good. around and shake your hand. Too. Right. Oh. Goodbye, pinball. Pinball world. Take care, guys. <laughs> Hopefully I was okay. <laughs> Joe, thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, Before you fun. guys get up, I'll take a quick picture. Yeah. Oh, wait. Is that? Oh. Oh. Here, let me block myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Sure. Yeah. Oh, one more. One more. Yeah. Okay. If you guys don't mind, I'm gonna, I'm gonna illustrate my phone. <laughs> okay. Please do. Please. He's a sketch guy. My uh, chalk right there. <laughs> you ready? Sure. Great pick, guys. All right. Hey, thanks, guys. Woo! Yeah. Thanks. No, the thanks. The thanks goes to you guys. Yeah, yeah. That was fine. Like, whatever. Find, find young as or infrequent or as I yeah, ever yeah, am so on a cast, so hopefully that's okay. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. When did these end? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. We need to talk about this. So. Five o'clock. Erickson's already spoken for because that ended last night at uh, how much? Was there a What's for five fifty? Cool. So with the match at eleven o'clock. Just going straight home from here then? Yeah. 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 All right. Figured we'd get off the game and get in front of the camera over here. Yeah, so now that all the famous people are gone. <laughs> the, C, the C team. Yeah, but the, the plebes come in and take over. <laughs> no, but that was amazing. Yeah, like, it really is. It's so great that they came in and gave their time to talk. And uh, one thing I really love is listening to the guys veterans talk about the old days the stories yeah yeah and dwight and roger especially have some of the best stories um Mar is that mark silk that is hello thanks for joining us buddy um yeah we were just talking about the fact that you know roger, hey chris how's it going roger was here and uh uh roger sharp dwight sullivan and joe katz and they just walked out uh, and the stories that those guys have and, and just the, the legacy that they have in pinball is amazing. And then last night we had Steve Ritchie here, and that's another guy that even though Steve has some trouble communicating with his, with his hearing loss, it is an incredible, 
opportunity to be able to talk to him about yeah. pinball, and he still has such a fire mm-hmm. about pinball. It's amazing. It is. So oh, we yeah. were just talking about that on the way down here, of how many games that he's touched over the years. I mean, and the influence that he's had on, um, you're talking about new designers, like it's tying into some of the things like they get influence from kind of like, like bands that mm-hmm. are coming up and you have different influences of different designers and like, how do you reinvent the wheel and, you know, do anything different with, there's only a finite amount of space exactly, and the innovations and that kind of thing. And then, um, you know, just to just to hear um, some of their yeah, just oh. scoot in just a little bit because it's just to hear the the. How cool was that? Oh, <laughs> that's so amazing. Amazing. we were just we're, talking we're, about that. I yeah. love that you guys had a reunion of sorts from Expo. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was like perfect that you guys. Yeah, did that. that's kind of what it yeah. seemed. I was like, oh, it's little, and then even with Dwight, like I'm like, this is Expo all over again. This yeah. is great. <laughs> right. It was yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna run out and pick up the food, so I'll be back in like ten minutes. We Can got I it. You anything? Well, no, I'm good. Thanks. Appreciate it. At this point. I appreciate everything. Stay as long as you'd like. Leave whenever you like. I got St. Charles uh, Pinball Club coming in at 2. Okay. Take the stream for a couple hours, so don't feel obligated. I mean, obviously, stick around at, at your leisure. Once they get but here, I'll probably be I'm headed south. So but I'll be back in 10. All okay. right. Sounds, Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks Sounds good. So um, for those of you that don't know, I know people come in and out of the stream all day, obviously. And uh, I'm Jason Fowler with the Slap Save Pinball Podcast. I'm a podcaster. Primarily, I've dabbled in streaming, but I couldn't keep up. At the end, we have one of the best streamers in pinball and his partner. That is Ryan Kuyper and Dave Brenna. So, uh, Wisconsin natives. Well, actually, it's Brennan. Brennan. Yeah, it's, I well, go by yeah. Brenna, Brenna 98. Yeah, yeah. I, that's it's, why it's I messed okay. it up. I'm sorry, That's okay. Dave. No, no I'm worries. Sorry. It's, uh, uh, Dave will answer to either one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I answered a lot worse. So it can always be, <laughs> Isn't that it can always be worse. No worries. But I'd like to take an opportunity really quickly. Uh, to, and this is something I talked about on the last podcast I had. I was kind of poking fun a little bit of everybody like being desperate for Twippy votes. Um, the, the Twippy vote, the organized by Jeff Patterson at This Week in Pinball, uh, is something that I, come January 1st, you guys are going to have to make a decision on some of the things you love about pinball. And I'd like to take an opportunity because I don't benefit from this at all, but there is certain people that I'd like to advocate for. And this whole thing, this whole thing that has went on was done from the brain of Ken Cromwell and Special One Lit. And this is the sort of thing that, in my opinion, takes a podcast or a streamer to another level. And I already respect what Ken does, and I feel like I can talk about it now because he's gone and he told us he was leaving the building. And I know him, and he wouldn't want me sitting here doing this, but I'm going to take the opportunity to ask you guys to consider Special One Lit as the podcast of choice uh, for uh, this is one of the many reasons they really do a good job with content interviews, um, constructive criticism in the hobby. And I think they're worthy of a vote as much as anyone, if not the most. So whoever you vote for, do it for the right reasons. And uh, I'd like to ask that you consider them. So I like to echo the same sentiment. Uh, Ken and Jason, you as well have been such awesome, I would just say friends. Just great people that Beatty, Steve Beatty as well. What's going on? Steve we saved Beatty you, in the house. We, we saved, saved the seat for you. Right here. How you feeling, bro? Man, reinforcements have arrived. How you feeling? Um, hey, Steve. How are you? Going, man? It's been an honor and a privilege to get to know you guys a lot better. Dave, sorry. Thank you, Brian. I, I feel the same way. I, I'm... You guys have helped me out a couple times. and you a rest? I really appreciate <laughs> really. it. So Blue Continental has a question. It's yeah, a good one. And it's a good a, one. It's aimed at all of us. And Steve, you can get in here because you are definitely in this What's grouping. What's up? <laughs> uh, you got a headphone right there, buddy. Um, since right starting on, your right podcasting on. and streaming, how have your attitudes and ideas changed towards the industry and or pinball, and how has it changed? Anybody want to start? I'll, I'll kick it off, I guess. Okay. Uh, I guess I've 
instead of being a whiny consumer about I didn't get what I wanted and it's not the way I thought it should have be should have been and all this other stuff. Chris the Pintern, thank you for one thousand. Chris, that is amazing. Huge. <laughs> um, Chris is a great guy. I guess one of the, the things that really changed uh, my opinion of everything overall is being able to take the tours of the factories and seeing just from a construction standpoint, not even the programming and the design, but the games being put together, how many people it takes to make these games. And if you if you see that aspect, you can't even fathom because it's behind closed doors. Um the design process and the programming process and the amount of hours it takes to make these. This isn't some trivial whip it out in a weekend thing. A yeah. lot of time and effort goes into making these. A lot and of it, hard work, a lot of passion, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears go into all these games that we sometimes celebrate and sometimes take a big dump on, mm -hmm. whether it's it's justified or not. And it it changes, I guess, your willingness to maybe do that a little bit because um, I hate to say your objectivity is compromised because you become friends with some of these people, but it builds your passion because you start assigning. I had always seen Dwight Sullivan's name on, on aprons and he was just a, a name. But then when I met Dwight and realized his personality is really easy to start rooting for and you, you realize like that criticism hits home and, and he's a human being just like everyone else. And, and it's fair to criticize. Don't, don't get me wrong. And I do on my show, but I sure, try yeah. to keep it civil. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. And we are all here because we love pinball. And if we tear it down too much or we don't inject enough common sense in the criticisms that we put into it, we're not doing pinball a favor. We are I like not that. We're common not, sense and the cri criticisms. Yeah, I like that. It, it just it, and I think everybody that does this, for the most part, and I think even the ones that maybe get labeled as ones that are kind of out of bounds, ninety percent of the time, they're doing it for the right reasons, and and their opinion matters. It's just that ten percent of time that some people kind of get off in the weeds, where it, it makes you question a little bit of maybe their motives or or, or the way they do things. But overall, everybody that you see here and everybody that showed up loves the hobby, and this is our way of contributing it. I'm, I'm not talented enough to design pinball games, but this is something I can do. I own a microphone, and I'm willing to put in the time and effort to do it, and I'm glad to. So, Dave, what's your take on it? Well, um, so I'm, a, I'm very new to the whole streaming thing. I, it's, if it wasn't for Ryan, I wouldn't be sitting here today. So that's really cool. Or even um, getting a chance to meet some people. I mean, like really the, the huge, really huge highlight was Expo when I got to play with Roger. And here we are again chatting with him. And um, so really cool. I mean, so the way that it changed my outlook on pinball uh, hobby is I guess I you you look at games with a different light of you know how that thing was put together uh, like you said uh, the, the amount of time and effort it took to to get that thing um, market ready right. and I mean I'm I'm really come from a, more of a background of um, restoring games so I know a lot of the inner workings and how to make them look pretty and play really well. And that's how I kind of got hooked up with Ryan is he knows the, the streaming end of it. And, you know, it, it's I think it's fun. I, I didn't realize this, that the, the whole streaming um, aspect, it's it's less so about the game itself. I mean, that's fun. But I know exactly it's, where you're going. With right. This. Yeah. It's, it's fun. But <laughs> well, we were just we were just doing here. one. And the so people were asking me about, well, how do you do touch-ups on a play field? And how do you do this? And, like, we went off on this huge tangent. <laughs> and that's why people watch. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like, so, ultimately, they don't care about where the ball is going no. on the play field. They, when they come to know you, it's your personality. Oh, exactly. It's your interaction that they're after. I don't know. That Steve, I was getting ready to ask you, and you were Dude, you're bussing the. I can't handle this mess. You're been here for like twelve hours. Don't ladies come and to my gentlemen, house. I got a two-year-old. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Beatty, the resident busser of pinball. 
what I learned about getting into this, and I, I don't have a podcast or anything, and you know, just streaming. It's the people. Like I it is. Know, I didn't it realize is. It is. How many friends I would make, and how many cool people I would meet, yeah. and yeah. how many opportunities that kind of open up for me. You know, to meet even more cool people and yep. do it, things it that I wouldn't have been able to do. That's why I met you. You know, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. Well, I was just talking with Ryan about um, we we want to do uh, some streaming segments of of restoring and, and repairing games and things like that. It's like, well, how exciting is that going to be to like rebuild a flipper Mac or show them how to touch up a play field or something? And it's like, no, people want to know this. Kerry Hardy yep. has exactly. built an entire channel doing just that. And, and yes, it may not apply to everything that you were looking to do in pinball, but I still watch because he's entertaining and it, and it's fun to see him do what he does. Well, how cool would it be to see like you know Chris Hutchins has that that uh, thread, and he goes through with pictures and talks about like his restorations. Yeah. Uh, how there. cool would that be to have some kind of reality show, um, where you know you you kind of went through his process like, uh, sort of demystifying it. Um, I I think it would. I mean it's 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 very entertaining to go through and read that thread yeah just yeah. amazing work so some very nice things set up there uh about me and, and i don't know if i'm worthy of them but thank you i sincerely it really uh that sort of thing like keeps me going and, and uh yes i believe all of us are going to texas are Husky you guys oh, my my kids come in in february so understood i'm understood are you my Steve? life's about to change dude you, i booked a uh Unbeknownst to me, I, or I didn't even think about next year when I was doing this. I booked the trip to Thailand, which lands on the oh, weekend of TPF. You told me that. I yeah, whoops. So I'm missing that and MGC, which I was going to go to for the oh. first time. Uh, so two of the two of the ones that I would like to hit yeah, next year. Back to back what about weekends? you, Dave? Yeah. Are you going? Uh, so I have to miss part or Saturday of MGC. At the, my wife's brother's getting married. What so about I, Texas? I would love to go to Texas. I'd love to do because I can't do MGC. I think I can finagle a Texas trip Ooh. and a VFW trip would be nice. You should. Dude, I've never been to VFW. You should go to VFW. I I keep hearing that, especially with the love of Zacharias. I hear that's yeah. like a, a, oh, nice. a place to I go. I mean, that's the you need to make a list before you go because I did the math to play. It would take you if you played nonstop and you only played uh, a game for. I think it was two minutes. It would take you three and a half days to play every single game there. Oh my oh. god! <laughs> wow. That's wild. That's and that's, that's without the line. That's just yeah. going yeah. and yeah. playing. Yep, and every single one. Well, I so, am going to Texas, cool. <laughs> and I have made a pact with my wife that she understands as long as I have a pulse and as long as I still love pinball, I will be going to Texas every year. So I think. Uh, in the past year, I went to MGC for the first time, and I will say that is one of the big ones that needs to be hit. Uh, it is, it's in a great facility. It's yeah, got, you guys, I think you guys stopped at my house on your on the we, way. We did, we did, yeah. yeah. And MGC is great. Uh, that, for those of you that don't know, that's in Milwaukee. Uh, it is a top tier show, multi, it really is multifaceted gaming. It's got everything, show. yeah, right. it's got everything, Board right. games, and most video importantly, video games. it's got breathing room yes. right Ooh, so like for those that. of you like me that aren't huge into crowds and and me i don't mind the crowds i love people but i don't want to be uh what's the t like nice way to say this because i always use this term that i should <laughs> use together yeah. and yeah, yeah. yeah like right. I, I don't want to be packed in with yeah. other people right. well, and, and uh, the there's thing, plenty of breathing room the thing is about mgc is hmm. up until two years ago it was at a hotel and it was exactly that oh so they moved yeah. recently yeah. Yeah. yes gotcha yeah. yes yeah. um we uh I'm planning. I haven't reached out to him in a while, and but I initially contacted Dan Lucen, who's one of the organizers, and he is willing to come on the stream and kind of talk about MGC. Yeah. Um, so he has a lot of great stories talking about the growth of the show, and it's really interesting to hear the perspective of what it runs, what it takes to run a gigantic convention because. Even though the show's only a weekend, it's a whole year-round thing. Of oh yeah. Planning and yeah. It's, I know. it's insane. I know. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, I think he's going. Texas is uh, always on his stop, and we always hang. If you can make it, you should. It, it would Dennis be is going to hit uh, Rick and Morty during the Twippies. Yeah, I saw that. That's Might when the line's going to be uh, nice and short. <laughs> Why wouldn't you want to go to the Twippies? I can't imagine. <laughs> Dennis, <laughs> he cracks me up. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I've, I've only heard great things about it. Uh, I, I have some friends that go every year. They bring uh, a friend, biggest collector in, so I, I came from Minnesota to Wisconsin. So the biggest collector in uh, Minnesota goes every year, and I think he sells like neon signs and things. Yeah. And uh, the people just bring some of the craziest stuff there too. Wasn't there the the opposite Star Trek there? Uh, uh, mirror universe or something like I don't that. Recall. And, hmm. I don't recall. Um, so uh, there's a lot of a uh, lot of passionate collectors in Texas for sure. I like this this question here. We'll move on to something else. Um, Bowling shirt Bob says, if you had to live in a small apartment for one year and could only take two of your machines, which two would you take oh of, now of first of all current... i must say this must be a special apartment because uh most apartments and pinball machines don't mix because of the the sound it's like a brewery in here man normally i wouldn't mind dude i just i just did some housekeeping i couldn't deal with it <laughs> i just did some housekeeping i couldn't this this whole bar was just <laughs> packed yeah um the maniacs right right <laughs> so what two machines would it be guys out of your current, out of your collection. current collection, it sounds like. Yeah, it sounds like uh, yeah, two of your machines. So it's got to be something that you already have. Any ideas? I would do. It's really tough, isn't it? <laughs> that is tough. Off the cuff, super I would, tough. I would probably do Cyclops and Stargate. Cyclops and Stargate. Yep. Okay. Shoot the pyramid. Yep. Shoot the pyramid. <laughs> One whole year. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you hold the flipper button while you hit the start button, it'll decrease those call outs. Oh, really? I did yes. not know that. Cool. Yes. Um, but as far as like, well, I was just thinking off the cuff, but uh, best early solid state, I would put Cyclops up there. And as far as like you want something that's got a lot of depth to it, um, I mean, that... That's probably uh, one of the better ones, I would say. Um, sure. A lot of yeah. people rag on it, but it it's it's if, definitely underrated. If you take some time to learn it, I mean, there's really uh, a book to read yeah. of how many rules are. So maybe have have something that doesn't have or that it's more of a quick game, but then you have one that has uh, a lot of depth to it. Right. Yeah. So right. That's good to have in a. Yep. What about you, Ryan? Two pin collection. Oh. And I think I would do Simpsons Pinball Party because I love the the rules in that game. Um, you got depth. You got a yeah, long depth, game yep. playing time. Yep. yep. I'm trying to think what what complements each other. You don't want something that's gonna take a, a 45 minute game with another game that's gonna do yeah. that. So you, yeah, you got Simpsons. What else? I. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I I picked up quite a few solid states lately. Um, I guess I'd go stars. All right. Yeah. Um, just because it's got that quick, brutal, one more game thing going on. So you have both opposite ends of the spectrum with a long, deep playing game and then a short, fun, quick game. Right. So I guess that's what I'd say. I mean, uh, it's tough. I mean, there's magic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Just going through the you're like, oh, what would I have to it's leave like behind, Sophie's basically? Right. Right. It's, that's fortunate, what sucks. The fortunate thing is, uh, guy, these three have, like, really good collections so you oh you this do is, too this is a you really tough awesome collection yeah. this yeah. is a tough answer so bd what it, what would you do <laughs> so something that would be long it's and, like and entertaining two favorite I, mean, kids. I'd, I'd probably go lord of the rings just because i would yeah. never get to valinor good answer yep. but yep. yeah a long playing game um yeah. and then maybe something newer um like i have medieval madness royal on nice on order so maybe i'd throw that in there um, or Wonka. Something that's newer, that's still fresh to me, that I can kind of grind away on. And yeah, like you almost want something that's going to um, that, that's gonna hold your attention for a while and maybe wow your buddies. Because yeah. you only got two games and now. Still so like, you'll see new things that you haven't seen before. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, um, man, it's a tough one. Um, I would say that mine would be uh, Meteor on one end because that is probably Bang for the Buck is I love it. my favorite game that I have. Oh, Congo. Mm -hmm. It's probably the least. Yeah, uh, Congo solid. The one that's worth the least. And then this is going to ruffle some feathers. Uh, but Gilligan? On the, 
on the other end of things, I would probably actually do Hobbit because. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Dude, bowling, yes. Bo- yes. Uh, bowling shirt Bob said Hobbit TNA. That's, that's t- right you know what? And if compliment. I didn't have Meteor, yeah. it would be TNA. So yeah. bowling, yeah. I'm right with you. Yep. Um, I think that that is like the. You couldn't get more opposite ends of the spectrum as far as like you got one that's got laser quick ball times, tests your reflexes like no other. It's got one of the best spinner rips in pinball, in my opinion. It has some of the worst sound. But then on the other end of things on Hobbit, like I know a lot of people hate the way it shoots. Love it. But you have theme implementation like no other. And and it's a story and it, it can play some forty five minute games. Right, you yes. better pack a bologna sandwich <laughs> and and be ready to to sit there a while. So right. um Ken, I guess your your collection is constantly rotating. So I can't I ask that. you what you yeah, would keep. Thank you for the following. Yeah. Eric's, Eric's Gmoo. Eric's Gmoo. You got some, re- got some really good games getting, being thrown out, though. Chris says Congo. Congo is. I yeah, I, c- I could do Congo for a year. Yep, yep. That's a fun one. But the, I think the, the main thing is variety. You know, yeah. people always ask me, Dave, why do you need over 50 games? No, nobody does. Nobody, no one in their right mind needs to have a lot of games. No. Uh, but. It, I think the um, you know like all oh, even people that aren't into it like they're up, it's pinball the ball flips around and they they're all the same right yeah no, no. for sure <laughs> but well, well, it's just like having that that variety um, and I just I appreciate the different innovations and some have depth some don't some have more of that one game feel right. mm-hmm. so well yeah. that brings up well, let's transition into uh, hoarding. Uh, we're all uh, yeah we're all guilty of hoarding to a certain degree some more than others um what would you say is the magic number so i think i have this number in my head that i think is the perfect amount of pinball to have to where you are using all of them enough to justify their existence Hmm. without just having them sit and be pretty furniture which I'm guilty of. I have some that I have not played in a sickening amount of time, but I can't bring myself to un- get rid of them. So I am <laughs> like that that lady that likes t- cats too much that has the house that you you have to shovel to get to her closets. Oh, yeah. but uh, it, to a certain a certain degree. But the thing <laughs> is, that you might not play those couple games often, but when you do, right. you're like, I'm glad I have this. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like the girl you dated in college where you didn't really like her, but you didn't want anybody else to have her. <laughs> so you, you, you could. I'm just gonna put you in the corner. I don't know if this mic is hot. It's not. It is. Uh, it? No. It's sound. Okay. I can. Isn't it sometimes this? You want to have games that other people will appreciate when they come to see. Yeah, it is. That plays yeah. a factor too. So yep. that that plays a role for me. Well, a lot of times I'll buy a pin that I may not want to be personally all in on, but I think when I entertain, it'll appeal to those. That Here, are coming that's a great point. A, a perfect example of this. I have a, a shuffle puck bowler. Yeah. And I'll tell you that that thing, when especially non pinball people come over for a party or whatever. That thing gets the most play of That's anything. Awesome. And I just picked up a, an Orbiter 1. Most pinball people hate it because it's so weird. <laughs> yeah, it's Jason? weird. Jason? Jason? But, <laughs> but It's a pinball machine. Yeah. But, it's got pinballs. <laughs> but, but I tell you, that thing is probably going to get the most play of because it's so weird and different and yeah. people like, you know, that. But that's to your point. It's, it's, it's more having it around for that novelty kind of thing. So what's so. the number? Jason, what's your number that you had in mind? I, I think it's six. Oh, Ooh, less than lower, I was thinking. Yeah, that's lower than I thought. I was that six. Same. I, I think because um, I find myself playing the same kind of six uh, that I have until I grow so bored with something that I move on to something else or I get rid of something and then that one replaces one of those yeah. other five. It or, You know, it's just the way it works but that's my thoughts on it what about you guys i was gonna say like probably 25 <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go like 60 <laughs> spoken like a true hard seems level. like i haven't gotten there yet yeah. well <laughs> he's at a different uh d- different level of acceptance in the disease so that's okay well then i could have room for a couch or two in the base <laughs> some furniture in my house yeah yeah a refrigerator <laughs> so i'm actually i'm trimming the fat right now 25 <laughs> Ken just can't. Take I had it. twenty. I I just I'm just coming off a of twenty, and it was too much to maintain. To maintain, yeah. Mm. And you're right. I wasn't playing them all, 
So my my magic number, just because of my layout, is going to be thirteen. Okay, that's yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I could fit ten on one wall, three on the other wall. All right. And I'm fighting on what am I going to let go mm-hmm. because I, I don't want to let go of anything at this I point. Know, right. I, I know I've gotten is. to the point where I love what I have, and I'm not ready to move them all. Right. Brian, what about you? Uh, so where I'm at currently has evolved because when I first got in, I got my first game, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have a pinball machine. If I had two, that would be pretty sweet, too. And yeah. then I'm like, you know what, probably five. Yeah. So I'm past ten. <laughs> and... <laughs> I have to say that I think 10 probably would be my, ma- if I had to say for myself, 10 is reasonable because it has enough variety and if a game goes down, you got other stuff to play, yep. but you can still maintain exactly. it. Yeah. And to Ken's point, people coming over, I got a lot more early solid states and I just got my first EM, uh, all courtesy of Dave mostly. <laughs> um because oh, wait, is, I've, Sue, is Sue I've, watching this? Uh, probably. Oh, well, it's not, it's, <laughs> oh. I might get oh. I might so, getting some more. <laughs> um, so I started getting some older games because I've had older people like my parents' age or older come over and be like, oh, I remember games from this era. So I said, you know what, I'll get some of those. But the caveat is I have to like the game. Yeah. I'm not just yep. going to get games I don't like for other people to play in my house. Oh, yeah. Right. So yeah. Um, I feel like... 10, even though I'm over 10, is probably a, a good number. Um, but that's just kind of for me personally. It's a solid number. Yeah. Chris, uh, Chris's next question, my wife's question, actually. How many people in your family or friends group have you made into even moderate pinball enthusiasts due to your enjoyment of pinball? And I think this is an important thing to do is spread the mm-hmm. passion of pinball because that is a great way to grow the Rolling hobby. <laughs> that being said, I've not been real successful with it. I have one. Yeah, I, I, one of my buddies bought a Metallica Pro because he loved coming over and playing pinball. And he lives in a condo in Chicago, wow. right? So they have you know a smaller area, two small you know two bedrooms, yeah, overlooking the city. And there's just a sweet Metallica, and then the skyline behind it. Oh, it's yeah. freaking That's cool. cool. That's awesome. Dave, what about you? Uh, have I converted anyone? Um, hmm. Hmm. No, but I probably made them more so. Um, I'm like the enabler, so. Ryan would probably never have gotten an EM or a solid state uh, had I not moved in down the road. Well, that's very true. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> but the, pro- the problem is... Well, you it, had to harness those, uh, pin, uh, those replay effects skills. skills. Yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely. I think, I think that the, it's, it's scary to some... I mean, I was, I was scared opening up an EM for the first time. I mean, it's a rat nest of wires in there. You it don't sucks. It's the most disappointing thing you ever do. Right. I've had them. I, I get into an EM like I'm not gonna. So yeah. overwhelming. Right, but it, as soon as um, you know someone, uh, Nick Shell or Nick Volta, yeah. he, he showed me how to f- uh, fix EMs, and then from there it's just repetition, and you demystify it, mm-hmm. and it's no longer scary anymore. Yeah. And so, um, but I think I don't think I've really converted anybody like Hart. Well, maybe my friend Nick. Uh, Gerhardt uh, back in Minnesota I think uh, he ended up he ended up buying uh, his first first game from me and then uh, from there he ended up buying three or four <laughs> so uh, you guys that have larger collections I think all of us kind of qualify there we, do you find that I know with the guys that I know that they all love pinball I know like five or six that come over on a regular basis that play but they've actually said to me why would I go out and buy a machine I can come to your house. when I can come yeah. to your house yeah. and That's play? That's a good point. W- you know, a ridiculous amount of for pinball free. whenever yeah. I want. Yeah, yeah. for free. A- yeah. And it's a great point. It's like a lot of us have those like catalysts that we know in, in, in our little pinball family that have more than others, and they're the guys you go to, you know, that. When you want to have a pinball shindig, that's where you go. Steve, yeah. you know, I knew you were yeah. one of them. So it, yeah, it, I can't say that I've influenced anyone directly in, as much yeah. as far as like buying a game. Actually, cool, I have so. two more people I forgot about. Oh, so yeah. my buddy would come over, you know, we'd have, we'd have some, some friends that would come over, and he actually bought one for his dad. And then his dad's brother, his uncle, bought a machine. They both bought a machine for me. Yeah. So now his family's. You know, now they're grandkids, and everybody can play pinball at their house, and they're loving it, man. Yep. Well, in, in leagues, too. I mean, there's several people in league that 
they don't own a, a single machine. Yeah. Uh, Max Senesek, he doesn't own a single machine, but he's one of the best players in Wisconsin. Yeah, he's yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he came on the stream a couple times and kicks her butt regularly. But um, it, you, there's wow. plenty of opportunities to get in front of games with barcades, leagues. I mean, it, you could play every week mm -hmm. if you want to. Rodcom spread, spreading the pinball. He's helped five coworkers get new machines. Yeah. Or he, old machines. Just get have, machines in general. We should That's have, cool, man. We should have some sort of like uh, thing that like if you introduce someone to pinball and they stay for more than six months, you get some sort of like patch and oh. we can we can all get like those like motorcycle <laughs> pin scouts. Yeah. No, yeah. no, we should get NASCAR jumpsuits. <laughs> and then so <laughs> how many people do you do you come across though that are interested in it they ask you about it and they're kind of like i want one rod Com, thank you for that and they're kind of you know on the fence and, and they're you, you and take you, the glass you kind of know now they're never going to pull the trigger but they're still like or they yeah. Tell them how much they cost. Exactly. yeah or they're like oh yeah well yeah. I get a virtual, uh, let me talk to the wife <laughs> and <laughs> shut down yeah. right yeah. rod, rod Com, i've had so many co-workers come up to me and and uh want, want me to help them find a game and it, it's it's really well First off, I will say, hey man, like, can you find me a good deal? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. well, there's there's that, but uh, I would say the majority of them, they're like, oh, there's this game I remember, you know, back when I was a kid. It like, had this. Yeah, it had this or whatever, and you're like, hmm. nine times out of ten, yeah, which I'm like, Gottlieb was in. No, no, nine times out of ten is like, was it Eight Ball Deluxe? Yes, that's sure, it. Sure, oh right. God. Whoa, <laughs> yep. the sun so, is up. <laughs> um, Dennis, Dennis asked. Thoughts on project scoopers, and in parentheses says, those who buy multiple projects which end up sitting without restoration for at least 12 months. What, uh, I mean, really, that's hoarding. Yeah. It, it is, I and, and I think we're all guilty of it to a certain degree, maybe some more than others. Um, I have a Trident that has been sitting in my possession forever. I know Chris has actually talked about buying it, that uh, I just can't bring myself to fix, and that's the only project that I have that's kind of down but it's been Just a that. long time now. The yeah. one? It is. Oh it is. God. Yeah. A slacker. Yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> you know, I like so. Dave, I like when you said repetition when you're when you're repairing these things. Yeah. Because I used to, I was getting good into the board work. Yep. And and just repairs in general, and then you wait a year. Yep. You to get into a deeper project, and you're like, crap. Yep. What are what are the? Well, so I would recommend anybody that that's you're getting into it. Um, I I'm really. I got really Ooh, good wow, at Rod. Oh, Rod Thank Tom. you for the bits. That's awesome. And he actually yeah, gave up one bit right before that. And then Chris, right above him, says, we haven't gotten any bits in a minute. I'll match up to 1,000 over the next 10 minutes. Look at that. There you Ooh, go, Chris. Nice. Bang. Chris. Bang. Thank you so much. Rodcom's been rocking it out. He, uh, he won an auction already tonight. Uh, he already made a sizable donation to Project Kimmel. Did Rodcom get the, uh, the Rick and Morty? Rod. That was a long time ago. I don't remember my wife's name right now. It's been a long, <laughs> long night. And Kyle there. Bassa. Wow. Kyle Bassa. Woo! That's such a great name. Thank you for the bits. That's awesome. Kyle Bassa. And Chris the Chris, Pinter. Chris coming through. Oh, man. On the bitties. Man. Bits are raining down. Thanks, buddy. It Woo! Is. Keep it going. Raining bits. Thanks for well, the spark, guys. That set things up right there. All right. There. I'm so. awake. <laughs> what just happened? Kyle Bassa. How did I get here? Kyle Bassa in third place with 12,500 total bits donated. That's yeah, incredible. That's wow. Absolutely incredible. I literally, I had my wife drive me here because I was still so tired. I was like, I, I, I don't want to drive right now. Yeah. Guys, thanks yeah. for the 20 bits. It's awesome. Yep, Kyle's with 20. Thank you Woo. so much. By the way, guys, there is some pizza here. Is, is, anybody, oh, is anybody yeah. hungry? Do you want to jump in the yeah. pilot seat here? Well, I, I just wanted to say the, so the, the repetition thing with repairing games. Um, so I do a lot of early Bally and Stern games. Okay. And they, they use the similar board set. So solid, know, early solid state. Yeah, but then if you're into System 11s or whatever, it's all similar. It's all, it is, it is. So you, if you read any of Clay's guides or anything like that, rep, repair. Or pin repair. It's, dot, it's, yeah. They all need the same thing over and over again. So you get good at those, um, but then it's, it's um, you know, you can really have a nice, respectable lineup of, so a friend of mine, he, he just loves System 11. So that's, he collects almost exclusively that. But when he goes to repair this stuff, it's, it's the same thing. It's all the same repeat. thing. 
Yeah. So what's nice there, you could kind of swap parts around, swap boards. Right. Exactly. You know, swap data boards and kind of narrow it down even more. Yep. Exactly. But yeah, when you don't do it for a while, you forget even where to like. All right, I've had this issue before. What what are the steps to go through to figure out you know if that's what it is? Oh, look at this! Look at this! Yancey says if we play a four player game of Elvira, I'll donate a dollar for every million of the highest score. Ken. Yeah. High score. Who, yeah. Who's got, who's got the highest score here? Jason had a 78 mil. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, last night. Yancey, that's that's generous. I, that's absolutely. cool, man. Um, let's let's let you, these guys eat their uh, their yeah. long awaited we'll lunch. Be right back. You're going to cruise too? All right, all right. Hold on. So we're clearing rooms here. But every time I sit down, give, us a, give us a minute break here. Yeah, no, let's, Sarah. let's do a quick little. Uh, Is there a toodly loose? Fowler out. Too. Freaking, I can't even begin to tell you how uh, grateful I am that you came out oh, and, and did this, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is the one. Oh, I love you. <laughs> no, you hung out later than, yeah. than I didn't even know you were talking about last night. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, we had a good time. I had a blast. I had a blast. So. I don't know what happened in that garage, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> how are you feeling with it? I'm doing good. All right, good. Good. Yeah, I didn't you guys get your control. pedals in last night? Yeah, yeah. It was just me. It was just me and the maid. So. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Hey, Jason Fowler of Slap Save Pinball Podcast. Um, Thank you. I want to just real quick. Yeah, please. Please keep doing exactly what you guys are doing. And that is an incredible amount of support for a great cause. And uh, hats off to Ken. Uh, he has absolutely yeah. nailed it. I know this is a lot Thanks. of stress Thank you. and hard Thank you. work. And he has not complained. He has just put his head down and got it done. So thank you so much. Guys, keep it up. I'll be I'll be not watching in my car, but listening and uh, looking forward to it. I know I know Daniel Spoiler's Sweet. here in chat, and and he's got he holds you in very high regards. So I'm I'm sure he would like to thank you thank you for uh, for coming out. There you go. Thank you, Jason. Love you, man. He says that's so, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. You, you killed it, man. Couldn't right. have asked for anybody better to come in and assist. Safe in this, travels, so. man. All right, guys. Thank yeah, you very much, out. Jason. Let us know when you're home safe. There is a Woo! one-year-old tuxedo cat for you to take with you as our our nah, I'll take our token of our appreciation. Geek is coming home. With <laughs> It'll be by the door <laughs> trying to get out. So. <laughs> I'm going to be like, what did you do? Oh. By the way, I was playing fetch with Kiki last night. <laughs> oh, the cat plays fetch? <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, I was like, you have a little dog. It all comes full body. circle right now. Look at this. Here we Four are. Four hours, 22 minutes to go. That's not you. That's nothing. It's 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 something. It's still but something, it's but it's nothing. Um, so did you get a nap? Did you get a shower in? At, I could at any no. Point? I didn't get a nap. I did. I did. I took a shower, man, and uh, that helps. I just sat like in a chair and I just stared off for like twenty five minutes, and it, and it helps. So yeah. I'm back. Um, <laughs> just stared off, and I'm ready to go. I want everybody that's here. Uh, thank you so day. much for for being on the ride. Right, the twenty four hour stream has been fun. We've had a lot of guests that have come through. I mean. We think back to last night and all the way through this afternoon. We still have more people coming in, but uh, I want to thank you for that. But I want to remember all of us kind of keep the eye on the objective here, and that is, uh, you know, donating and getting money uh, going for Project Pinball. Project Pinball helps rehabilitation. For a kid that's in a hospital, you're playing a pinball machine, and for the time being, you don't have to really think about where you are or what you're doing. You're focused solely on playing pinball. You know, pinball <laughs> pinball can be fun, but it can also be therapeutic because slamming that ball around when you're angry mm. sure does make you feel a little bit better. You know what, one thing I like about it, it makes a move. Laps around the wards is replaced to a lap down to the pinball machine and standing for an hour. They have to use both hands. You kind of find yourself when you're playing pinball moving into it to play. And uh, so the kids can come in here, number one, stand, the ones are having that issue, but they can still hold on, so they get that strengthening. And then they, they're using both hands and eye and watching. So, uh, so it's gonna be a great non-therapy therapy. Exactly. And having a good time. Pinball's great because it's lights, it's sounds, and you're so focused on getting that ball and hitting that target and getting those points that you're really not thinking about why you're in the hospital. You're able to distract your time away a little bit. Pinball is a way to get your mind for the moment off of whatever is happening in your personal life. Even if it is a bad situation, having to be in a hospital, seeing a pinball machine can make it all better. I just want to give back any way that I can. And my passion for pinball 
I think was a great partner for, you know, this giving. And there it is, Project Pinball. Right. So a lot of good work being done there. Um, I don't really know what to say at this point, except at 2 o'clock we have uh, paying homage to our, our homeboys here in St. Charles, our, our humble St. Charles pinball crew. Oh, nice 20 minutes. Yeah, in we 20 minutes. We see the dudes, the St. Charles Club. They're going to come in and, uh, and just stream Elvira for uh, a couple of hours while we keep chat rolling. Uh, donations are obviously still being accepted. Dollar for dollar donations are going on right now. Uh, so anything that you donate, whether it be in the form of a bit, in the form of uh, a sub. Oh, that would, I, I thought I was having some type of feedback issue with my brain there. That messed me up. Oh, was that my phone? I think so. <laughs> so I was like, what's like, going what, on? I was like, what did you like, do? What's happening? Uh, or if you do the direct donation link, it's right there. It's uh, paypal.me forward slash Project Pinball. I've had that ingrained in my head since the start of the stream, and now I'm like trying to recall what it is because I'm just not thinking straight, man. It's, it's getting just crazy. Just not wild. thinking straight. Daniel Spoiler, you rock, says Moose uh, person, and I, I couldn't agree any more than that. Oh, snail pin. One, two, three, Woo. four, five hundred bits. Five hundred bits. Which gets pin. matched for a thousand bits. A thousand Nicely bits. done. Nicely done, snail pin. Um, I was looking at the numbers, and it'll be in it. I'll tell you what, like just in bits, I think we're somewhere in the five or six thousand dollar range with the dollar math. Ooh. So I mean, just in bits, yep, we still amazing. have an opportunity to knock out a pinball machine. Now remember, every te- every eight thousand dollars that's being raised does result in a pinball machine. Um, Project Pinball Charity saying Amoto Harney produced that intro wow, uh, props for our to charity. Her. That's awesome. It is pretty awesome. See Bobby's in the house. What's That's up, See Bobby? One, two, three, four, five hundred bits. That's a moving. Um, Thank you, buddy. Intro. It, it is. You know what I like about the intro? And uh, I don't want this to come off wrong, but it's like it gets to the point. It's effective. It doesn't try to tie on like a guilt String, yeah, 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 but it lets you know the power of what your donation can do. So where it's like you watch it, it's it's Very heartfelt, well but it's like it's like positive and reinforcing instead of making you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't even want to watch that again. You know what yeah. I mean? Because you're no, just my like wife, so depressed. When, when we started last night, my wife texted. She's like, that that intro was so awesome. Yeah, it's she's really, like, really I didn't good. know that. Like that's like she knew what what we were doing and what Project Pinball was. Yeah. but to see the intro really kind of put it in perspective. Yeah, it's, it's really really awesome. So we're still here. Can I offer a buy it now on the Wonka play field? I, you know what? I yeah, wish that you could, but you know what? it wouldn't be fair. Five grand, buy it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess we could do that. Right? Come on. Come on, Kabasa. Blue Continental has cheered 500 Blue bits. Blue Continental. 500 bits go to 1,000 bits. So these, these $5 donations go to $10, man. I'm telling you, they're all adding the, up. The, the match is insanely huge, you guys. Uh, it's, it's just... The match. I think with bits, subs... <laughs> got 5k and everything uh you know. <laughs> that, that's Kyle kind Baza. of that was kind of my way of in our way of saying that uh i think we need to I, let it run its course if anybody deserves to buy it now on that play field it's you uh Calbasa. <laughs> honestly put a number um, on it ken you would rock it i just i just i just can't it's, I know. it's a it's an auction i wish i wish that i could do something yeah. um we would have had to disclose that before starting i would Oh, but Kyle Bassa is bidding a thousand dollars. Oh wow, man, dude. on the Wonka Playfield. So, Wonka Playfield up to a grand. Kyle Bassa, do you have access to Facebook, or do you want me to place that bid on uh, your behalf, there, bud? That is huge, man. Seriously, much appreciated. That is insane. I so, and this is the thing: we have. Uh, I'm going to do an update on the total at two thirty. Because I know with St. Charles Pinball Club coming in, uh, we're making a, a financial uh, donation to the uh, Project Pinball Charity. We have a friend of ours, Ryan, whose company is making a financial contribution to the charity. I want to total those up because that'll be the last yeah. total that we do before this, the uh, 5 o'clock numbers are run where we kind of cash out all those play fields. We're going to make it rain at 2.30. Yeah. We're going to make it rain. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Um. Kyle. I I think I'm blown away, this man. Is gonna, yeah, I'm I'm blown away too. It's uh, still okay. So, Calgary, you'll in. do it. Awesome, buddy. I just didn't want to uh, 
They don't want to cross the streams. Well, that makes no or sense. Or forget about it in yeah, right. 20 and minutes. <laughs> and I'm not thinking straight. So it's <laughs> like, like I, I, I want to make sure I'm not like adding things incorrectly either. Um, if, if anybody... Very and cool. this is what I would like to do. Like, and I would, I would propose this as like a, a challenge, maybe an opportunity. If somebody kind of appreciates what we've done here today, and this is just kind of like it's our first go at it. So there have been some bumps along the road. But all in all, like I'm, I'm very pleased with how we've all kind of come together. The pinball communities come together and we've done some good things uh, for a great charity, a great organization. I challenge you to, to try maybe figure out how you can do this even better. You know what I mean? And, and, and go against or, or, or try to one up what we've done. I mean, I, it's absolutely possible. This is a first Kind like it. somebody take the reins. <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's next year. Somebody, you know, goes for the 24 hour stream. That would be awesome. That'd be See awesome. Bobby. One, two, three, See four, five hundred bits. Five hundred. Five hundred unicorn. Becomes a melty. thousand bits. Wait, all nice those are done. But it's fun. Guys, guys, I'll tell you what. If you could sit down and just stream pinball and raise money for pinball, it's uh, it's rewarding. It's fun. There are a lot of uh, worse things that could be going on in life than being tired because you're streaming pinball for 24 hours. Um, exactly. Well put. Yeah. Well so, put. absolutely. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Being Project tired. Pinball. What? Well, this will last a day. Not a big deal. 50 50 at Pinburg. Four hours, 14 minutes, and uh, five seconds. So, Yancey, if you're still here, uh, we would like to take you up on that. Uh, am I seeing stuff or is stuff floating now? Uh, on that offer for the high score of a four player game matching each million with one dollar. I think that'd be fun. If, you know. Maybe that's where we uh, put up 240 million points and a $240 donation. You could cap that. 500 bucks. We don't want to you know, put you out. What if somebody put up like a billion points? That would be crazy. <laughs> the game of our life. Like we've all been throwing it all night long so that we can capitalize on the, uh, the dollar match per million. All right. So the bid is posted. And if he doesn't win, I can say at least I drove the price way up on it. Absolutely. Dude, seriously. And that was the Wonka play field, Thanks right? Thanks again, buddy. That is the Wonka. Wonka. I, th- I think you are the front runner. Obviously, I think you've got a, a very good chance of uh, taking that play field home. That is that is pretty pretty huge. It was interesting because the uh, some people were having some links getting into that auction originally, and, and then I changed the link out and it worked. So, um, tradition never dies. Is Elvira a keeper? I know Code has some ways to go, but the shot's interesting enough to keep. One hundred percent, yes. One hundred percent. I had. I'm I'm not a, I'm not an Elvira theme guy per se. Yeah, I know you love Scared Stiff. Mm-hmm. I had a uh, a Party Monsters back a few years ago. I didn't think I was gonna like this game. Yeah, just based on theme, and then and then I kind of saw the you know the re- the reveal, and I was like, all right, yeah, it's it's whatever. But the more we play it, the more I fall in love with it. It's 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 well, such a fun game. I thought I was going to be biased going into the theme because I am such a big Scared Stiff fan. But when I, when I first played the game, it was at Expo, and I remember I wasn't very thrilled with it, and I was kind of disappointed. Uh, but then getting it in a, in a home atmosphere, properly set up, and being able to hear the audio. Yeah, way different. The pinball experience on this game is killer. It is really, really good. And um, it's only going to get better. Uh, this has been an Seeing awesome... Yeah, seen before. Right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Do we know if uh, all the Project Pinball Charity raffle tickets sold out? Uh, will they be drawn on the next stream? I know that Rick and Morty uh, Project Pinball Charity uh, raffle did sell out, as far as I know. Uh, Lord Helmet says, this has been an amazing, awesome effort from the host, guests, and fans. I didn't know about Project Pinball until Lord Helmet told me yesterday. That's awesome. Um, but now I'm very interested in seeing what I can do uh, to rally uh, for a pin at both our local children's hospital, which is affiliated with MD Anderson Cancer Center, as well as Children's Hospital and our Ronald McDonald oh, House uh, that helped our family out when our niece was diagnosed with brain cancer. That's it's unbelievable. I know that Project Pinball has a very good relationship with Ronald McDonald House. Yeah. In fact, um, I don't know what the specifics will be uh, on the machine that we place in Chicago, but Ronald McDonald House was uh, was a place that we had asked uh, Daniel Spoler if, if he thinks would uh, would be a good fit for a game uh, from this stream. Yeah. Wow. And I know he's working some things behind the scene. We're going to, we're going to, she goes and says, love you guys from Lady Helmet. That's, that's Lady I Helmet. I know. It's, it's, it's oh, Lady cool. Lord Helmet. I Lady love Lord that. Helmet. And that hits, that hits close to home for those guys, you know? I mean, hey, Daniel, uh, can I give you a call real quick? Do you have time to take a call? We'll get you on the stream, or is now not a good time? Because if you don't mind, I would love to uh, just have you jump on for, uh, even if you have five minutes. I think it'd be fun, but I don't want to put you on the spot either. 
He's probably driving right now. He's like, why is yeah. why is Ken doing this? And to if me not, right we now? could do it. We could do it in a, in a couple hours. Yeah, that's true. All right, cool. We'll get Mr. Daniel Spoiler on the uh, special one lit hotline here. Is this the first call in? And uh, I took call ins oh, earlier. Yes. Oh, did you? Yeah, Weissnow called and he had an echo issue. And then uh, Dennis Creasel called. So I was talking to Dennis for a little bit. Sweet. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Where was I? You were gone. You were on break. You were on break. My three hour smoke break. <laughs> Why do I not have? Hold on a second. Sure. All right, let's go. That was a long ring. That was long. <laughs> it was extended. It was. I liked it. Hey, good uh, afternoon, all. Hey, there he is. Dan Spoiler of Project Pinball. What's going on, the Dan? Man. As Kaz is cheering 8 bits to uh, celebrate your, uh, your answering the phone. What's going on, buddy? How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys doing? Doing Been great. Up all night. <laughs> yeah. Hey. I've yeah. Ken's Ken's trooping now. I, I took a little a yeah, little power this nap. Good. This is good. It's uh. It's awesome. It's though, fun. Man. Um. You guys, you guys are amazing. You've been killing it. Oh. I've been trying to hang in there with you, but I had to <laughs> walk out this <laughs> yeah. morning. Also had to power nap. You guys outlasted me for sure. Daniel, it's you are amazing. Your your charity is amazing. Uh, a lot of people know about Project Pinball, but those that don't know about Project Pinball, it's nice to see some additional awareness. And uh, would you mind telling everybody that's here in chat just what gave you the idea to start a pinball fundraising uh, for placing pinballs in children's ball. hospitals? How does that come to, the, uh, to fruition? I, or an idea? I would love to do that. But before I do, yeah. I want to say how humbled I am by the conversations that I had individually with the people that you had on the stream. And remarkable people. I love these guys. And Great. they gave me the time to talk about the charity. And I could see the passion that they have for pinball and how it came together with our charity. Right. And by you guys having them on side by side was overwhelmingly um, just emotional for me. Because you know, we go out there, we work so hard, and we're isolated, but then all of a sudden we things that we have and ideas that you guys are giving to charity uh, to make things happen. Daniel, and, and, I, and I'll I applaud you guys. Thank you. Um, yeah, and we applaud you. you. I was going to say real quick before you get into your story, I know that you're very well connected within pinball. You know a lot of people. And just from us kind of being around uh, the industry and having some friends, we also know a lot of people. And there are very few people I could probably count on a hand where if you ask everybody that you know about one person, you're never going to get a universal answer of great guy. And I can say without a doubt, like I've everybody that I've ever encountered where your name has come up or I've asked, it's been nothing but accolades and, and support and backing you up saying what a great guy you are. So, so true. For, for what it's worth, it's you're knocking it out of the park. It's nice. Nicely done. Nicely done. Very nice. Well, thank you. Thank you. Those are very kind words. And, you know, I appreciate everybody's support for, you know, the passion that I put into it. Absolutely. And, and Joel Reeves is, just is like celebrating guys, with 1,500 bits. Joel Reeves throwing Joel some, Reeves. Joel, throwing some bits. bits down. Oh. Thanks, buddy. We love Joel and Dana. They're just fantastic people. Absolutely. Uh, but my origin story is like you guys. I was. I still am a pinball enthusiast, but that's how it started. I was restoring games just for, you know, serious hobby, something I would do to relieve some stress from, you know, the daily pressures, what have you, right. life in general. Right. And all of a sudden, a, a person um, was taking a tour of the Christie Brown Oncology down in Fort Myers, Florida, 
it's a children's hospital down there, and they've seen the Spider-Man, uh, which was the stern Spider-Man 2007 that was dark and, you know, turned off in the corner. So they were very concerned. They uh, texted me right at that point and said, hey, there's a broken pinball machine uh, in the children's hospital. So my reaction was, uh, give them my name and number. Then I found out there was a plaque on the side of the machine that was dedicated to a small boy that lost his life oh, okay. uh, from his battle with cancer. So I was all in at that point. So if you go back into like our Facebook origins, you'll see that our page was called uh, Save the Spider-Man for the Children. That's because awesome. that was our goal. That was our that was where, you know, everything came together and it allowed us to focus on this one machine. Right. When we took the machine out, People were saying, no, 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 don't take our machine. We need this machine. And, you know, it really didn't make sense at that time until we returned it. We um, put all this time and effort into it. We uh, got all these donations, 112 hours of ripping down this machine, uh, redoing the whole play field and getting it back up and running. We had such tremendous support. Right. When we were rolling it in, we had people that I didn't even know. There was kids running up to the machine, uh, just waiting to play. It. Oh, they were clapping that's and applauding, awesome. that. yep. and they could not wait for this one machine to get back to its home. Right, in so, working, you know, condition. Yeah, without yeah. that, you know, that was like it, we didn't know uh, what we were walking into. Basically, the charity. Uh, found us. We started doing the maintenance every single month, so the the machine would fall back into disrepair. Yeah. And from there, we received testimony from the small patients, from their parents, from child life specialists, doctors, nurses, administrators would come in and just say how much it was needed, how wow. therapeutic this one machine was, and that's where the origin came for us. Uh, to get the brother pitcher to do this across the United States. Oh, it's amazing. So that is that's amazing, the man. origin of Project Pinball. Now, so it was a help from a lot of people in the community. I know a, a great man that runs a great uh, charity can't always do it by himself, and I know that uh, you're very fond of, of a couple people that are working close with you over there. Would you want to take just a couple minutes and kind of let everybody know who your partners in crime in are over there at uh, Project Pinball? Well, we have several people that helped us get to this point, uh, people in the past. Like Amber uh, helped me out uh, tremendously in the early years. Um, she just had so much energy, and she moved on. Uh, she was going to college at that time, so sure. uh, she finished her studies, and now – uh, she's doing what she loves to do, working with kids uh, in schools and everything like that. So we wish her well. Absolutely. But uh, Sierra came in. Um, we do a lot of volunteering, uh, work with the local communities, uh, high schools, colleges, where they come in and they could get their what they call service learning hours for yeah. volunteering to maybe a charity or just into the community. Sierra came in as one of those students and she was just so dynamic. I mean, she just really took to uh, this parody and made it her own. So when she was looking for a job, I heard this. I'm like, why are we not hiring her? And she's been here ever since. So Amazing. she is truly remarkable. Nice, nice job. And yeah. we have Kelsey. Give a round, a round of applause. Yeah, for that's right. The- Let's do it again. Uh, all these, all these guys, awesome. all these guys in Project Pinball. All right. And then we added Chelsea. Chelsea. Uh, she's okay. on a leave of absence right now um, because uh, she's expecting at any moment. We just talked to her again yesterday. We had a small Christmas party. Right. And she's doing very well, but uh, she's very, very expecting. <laughs> that is, is, <laughs> is close, right? The gift so, that will keep on giving is on the way. She is amazing also. She helped us out with uh, the Pinball Expo yeah. uh, auctions, and um, she is just super dynamic. So 
but we have uh, like over 80 volunteers that wow. um, do not get Crazy. a salary or anything like that. They should because they work so hard uh, with the charity. We have Brad, um, that's a local boy to you. Uh, he's yeah, just Brad. amazing. He's super helped nice guy. The, uh, oh my God. Uh, we are so blessed to have people like him and others uh, help us out. Uh, Brad gives me so much energy, and it's just truly amazing how uh, people take their passion for pinball and they recognize what we're trying to do. So we're very, very blessed with the pinball community. We love you guys. Yeah, you are greatly loved in the pinball community as well, uh, Daniel. So as we kind of take a look here, as we're getting into the final uh Stretch. We've got four hours left in the stream. Our, our last count we had raised with uh, Adam Schwartz's uh, his dollar for dollar match. We were at twenty eight thousand one hundred and sixty four dollars. Our original goal was twenty four thousand, which was eight thousand machine, which equivalented to three pinball machines and three children's hospitals. Now I know when we kind of talked about it, uh, you said Chicago would be a great a great place to put a machine, and but you've got two other kind of locations that uh, you're working. Can can you talk anything about that with the uh, other two machines at all, or no? Um, without a doubt, we just can't go into the nitty gritty details sure. Um, sure. because the worst thing is that we raise everybody's, you know, hopes yeah. and desires and, um, it puts a lot of pressure on, you know, what we're trying to accomplish because right. the, the hospitals, they have their own agenda at times and we're still outsiders to them. You know, uh, there are hospitals that come to us that make our lives easier where they hear about the great things that we're doing. But any time that we seek out a hospital, we have to knock on the door, uh, wait for them to answer, give them all the information, then they come back with questions. It's a long, yeah. long process. Uh, You're not just showing through. up at a hospital and dropping a new inbox off at the door and saying, yeah. you know, thanks, good luck. <laughs> quite a bit of red tape you need to <laughs> right. go around. Uh... Right, it's, it's, it's complicated. It's incredible trying to introduce a pinball machine, and it's definitely not just showing up on the doorstep. I wish it would be like that. Um, yeah. It would make our jobs a lot easier. Um, it's a lot of stress uh, trying to, you know, uh, convince, you know, all these administrators to open their doors to, you know, something maybe as uh, fringe as pinball, you know, uh, Sure. They still have the idea of what pinball was, I believe, back in the 70s, 80s, and maybe the 90s. Yeah. And we always have to stress family-friendly. Yeah. And, you know, that's why we, you know, use, uh, like, you know, uh, people might not like that machine. Uh, we use it as a stepping block and say, uh, you know, these machines are based on popular themes that are out. Have you ever heard of the Avengers or the yeah, movie? Family Maybe friendly. And they're like, oh, yeah. we, we Night, Nightmare on Elm Street. So comes well, they, <laughs> is it becoming more easier? In, right. Is it becoming easier when you have more case studies, you know, and you can kind of show here's what we've done in, in these hospitals, in these locations, and, and this is what we'd like to do with you? Is it, is it kind of um, eased yeah. up over the years? We have hospitals approaching us um, probably once, twice a week. Wow, that's so major. So not only that, we, I seen the question from Cause. I want to kind of wrap this into it as well. Okay. Um, yes, we put them in Ronald McDonald Homes as well. Nice. So we have both hospitals, Ronald McDonald Homes. We have adult care facilities. We have uh, assisting living care facilities called us now. So... You know, that was in another story unto itself. The EM, we love EMs. I have a collection of EMs, but we couldn't put them into the children's hospital because of their engineering protocol is what they like to call it, which means that they have to know everything about the nuts and bolts of the machine, and they love to have it UL approved. Well, sure. you know, if you look at the existence of UL uh, you know, laboratories, they weren't around for the EMs they have on them. So that shoots down the EMs get-go. But with assistant living care, it's a little bit different. 
of a engineering protocol that we have to work with. And a lot of these older games that we could place, uh, we just place a, a Surfer Champ, which is a great gut leaf uh, EDM, uh, into assistant living care. And a lot of the people, uh, well, it was truly amazing. When I was rolling in the machine, uh, people were coming out of their rooms, and I was like the Pied Piper of pinball walking down the hallway of their that's so great their facility and people were following me to the dedication and they could not wait to play this machine they heard that we were bringing in the machine and so many of them said um how much they miss pinball how much they played pinball when they were uh younger in their youth and you know they just take to it so right. there's so many avenues that i could think of the work in and you know with your help we're uh, definitely getting there i mean just amazing twenty eight thousand dollars as we speak right now that's truly amazing thank you it, absolutely thank you it's a it's a nice segue because we have a, a friend of ours here that uh he's in our saint charles pinball uh club could you introduce yourself uh my name is ryan perman so ryan is here and uh can you explain a little bit about the company that you work with uh, we're an ambulance transport company. We do critical care transports for uh, hospitals, hospital, uh, and a lot of the stuff we do is uh, pediatric uh, transports for Loyola Hospital, going into the uh, Ronald McDonald uh, Pediatric Center on the fourth floor there. And this is a nice tie-in. Uh, and on the line right now, we have uh, Daniel Spoler, founder of Project Pinball Charities. Uh, and the tie-in here is, I think it's perfect timing because... Yeah, right. You know what I mean? When we we're, we're look, we're fundraising. When Ryan heard that we were doing this, uh, he had reached out to me personally, and he said that uh, you know it's absolutely something that that he could stand behind, and it was something that his company could stand behind, and he wanted to come in and he wanted to make uh, a donation, and we just we. We thought it was fitting to have you here on the phone at the same time, uh, Daniel, because you're doing a lot of hard work uh, with, with the kids, and, and they're doing a lot of hard work with the kids. And, and Ryan, you had a, a donation that you wanted to present to Project Pinball Charities? Yeah. On behalf of uh, Advanced Critical Transport and its employees, we have a check here to Project Pinball in the amount of $4,000. $4,000 for Project guys. Pinball Charities. Now, when we, when we think, when we, when we put the $4,000 up against the awesome. dollar dollar match with Adam Schwartz, uh, Ryan. That four thousand dollars becomes eight thousand dollars, and the combined efforts has the ability. It, it'll place a pinball machine in a in a children's hospital. That is so. eight thousand dollars, guys. That is that is a pinball machine. That's a pinball machine. So I think that's awesome. Um, I know Daniel, you're working so hard. Uh, everybody's working so hard, and, and it's nice to to be able to kind of celebrate everybody's efforts tonight. And uh, you know, thank you so much for trusting us with with doing this fundraiser, and you know we're we're gonna work as hard as we can, and I I want to I want to get this to forty thousand dollars before we uh, we end the stream tonight, uh, Daniel, and we've got about a little under four hours to do it. Let's get to forty k. I love what you guys are doing. It's truly amazing. Thank you, Ryan, for that generous offer. That just warms my heart, and like. Uh, Ken was saying that's one machine. That's what we look at uh, placing anything. Everything we do is one more machine, and you know that definitely helps us out tremendously. Yeah, and it, I put this out there to everybody on the stream. If you know of a need in your backyard, please reach out to us. Please email us. We need people like um, you guys helping us out, um, like Ken, Bill, Steve. Everybody that's in the booth helping us out, you know, uh, you're concentrating on your backyards. I'm concentrating on my backyard for the needs uh, placing machines because I know it so well. But we need people in the communities where they see the need and they reach out to us and say, hey, you know what? There's a Ronald McDonald house that, you know, I've been to or I drive past and I would love to help you. And that's how we do it. All the money that we raise in the community, we dedicate back to those communities. That way they feel the power of caring and giving and helping, you know, people around them to help those families. And that's how our charity has grown to 46 machines across the United States because of individual people reaching out to us and making our charity from Florida a local charity. 
So I need everybody's help Absolutely. to keep on doing this so we can, you know, uh, help. And, Ryan, you helped us out tremendously. Thank right. you so much. Yeah. Nice yeah. job, guys. Nice job. So, Daniel, nice. if you don't mind, what, what I'll do is um, – I'll, I'll just catch a total on your end off air. I'll update totals on our end. I'll get that up here in the next 15 minutes, and then we'll do one more total update at the end of the stream when we factor in uh, our auction items and any other donations that might be coming in at this point. And uh, we'll see if we can't wrap this up and go out with a bang. Does that sound good? Hello there. That sounds fantastic. I've just seen a couple uh, couple different ones come in. I've seen some urls come in, I think. <laughs> that's that's perfect. He just posted uh, devils. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Devil's avocado. devil's avocado. I love it. So we we still and we're gonna be we're gonna be pushing hard to the end of the night here, or to at least the end of the next three hours and forty nine minutes and forty four seconds. <laughs> that, that, then we'll wrap it up. But uh, Daniel, go. thanks for coming on the uh, the show, and uh, thanks for everything that you're doing. And it's it's Thank fun to be able to work with you on this. Yeah. Hey guys, standing ovation for Daniel and yeah, Project Yeah, Daniel. Zoom out to the. Woo! At standing ovation for everybody that's contributed here. Yeah, we got uh, almost ten people in the house right now. This yes, is, this is awesome. All right, Daniel, um, I'll I'll chat with you real quick uh, via message off the uh, air here, and then uh, we'll check in at the end of the stream. Does that sound okay? Hello. There. That sounds fantastic. Thank you, guys. I can't say how much I. You know, really appreciated everybody here at uh, Project Pinball. And I want everybody to know that 2020 is going to be a huge year. And you guys definitely helped us uh, to do that. So we're going to be announcing some stuff uh, after the first of the year that should, you know, make everybody's uh, horn, um, hearts warm with, uh, you know, their giving. So that I appreciate sounds amazing. everything. You guys have a great night. Daniel, take it easy, buddy. I, again, I really Daniel. appreciate it. We'll talk to you here in a little bit, okay? All right, well, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Spoiler and, uh, of Project Pinball and uh, Ryan, outstanding. Wait, it was perfect timing to come in <laughs> and you guys, drop you guys a $4,000 donation. Um, what we're going to do right now at the 2 o'clock hour... Our boys, St. Charles Pinball Crew, come in. They take over the stream. We start streaming some Elvira. We got a little bit of a party. We're going to be accepting donations for the next uh, three hours and 47 minutes. So let's just have some fun. Let's loosen it up a little bit. Now, up that dead yeah. total, we'll be good to go. Sound good? The let's, party begins. Let's go. Let's do it. Mailman's here. He's got a Ken's got mail. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, feel free to start up some Elvira. That was awesome, man. That was awesome. Um, all right, yeah, St. Charles Pinball in the house. What's up, guys? Chris, long time. It's been hours. I know, right? Did you sleep at all? Uh, yeah, I got a couple hours. I went home, slept, took a shower. Don't feel like I slept, but it's all good. Uh, hey, give us a, give us one minute, guys. I gotta go say. I gotta go make my rounds and I think uh, Ryan and, and Dave are heading out here. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Dude. This is, this is great. Yeah, this yeah. is oh, this such yeah. a good time. Yeah, man. That was awesome. Yeah. 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 You guys are Milwaukee? Uh, uh, it's not like uh, uh, an hour. Yeah. 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 I'll send you a card. Yeah. 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 That's not a bad idea. It's so cheap. So this is my wife and some of your friends. I'm going to tell them this thing. 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 I'm going to tell them this thing.
Yeah. Yeah. Some shit. Which is why he gave it away. Yeah. It worked for like. Yeah. But I'd leave it on like almost twenty four seven. Yeah. Because I was like. Right. I'm sitting there and what do I do? Yeah, missing. Cool, man. Let's go back. Seriously, guys, safe travels home. Luckily, no snow going on today. It's all good. No, we're going to show you. Oh, you guys are going on. Maybe down to Maybe down to Yeah. And then, like, wrenches. You guys are crushing us. I'll just scream out the middle of the night. Yeah, it's amazing. Seriously, guys, appreciate it. It's amazing right now. I wanted to come when. With uh, Dwight and his yeah. and, uh, Roger and Dan. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I got <laughs> here. I was like, oh, they all, they all just left. Uh, Jeff, did you put cash nice. here? Somebody put cash here. Um, that is from Jeff. Yeah. Jeff? Okay. If anybody is, because uh, we're going to do our contribution, if uh, let me get these guys uh, walking to the door so they yeah. get on their way. And then uh, if whoever is going to chip in on our St. Charles crew will uh, just meet me in the kitchen. We'll get that figured out. Oh, we have a, we still have a four, the high score, the match. I'm going to use the Oh, that's right, that's right. Like. Okay. Let me, uh, what did anybody do last night? Was the easier? Was that just going to the PayPal site? Okay, so then, then we, we counted it. Because I was getting paid. Okay, cool. Perfect. Right. Thank you very much. That's yeah, I was ready to go get cash. I'm like, anyway, that I can just walk in here and do anything. Yeah, yeah. You can absolutely can do that. Yeah, yeah. For coming up in the next hour is like the worst pinball player ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sight to see, isn't it, Jeff? Number four, we move for fourth. All right, jump in. Are we going inside there? Uh, Let's get a look. That puck bowler is every foot, every bit of eight feet long. Is it? It is a monster. It's only two feet wide, though. How do the kids like it? My son likes it. Nobody else really played it, but the first time I played it, everything was working. The second time I played it, yeah. A lot of nothing. So, but it wouldn't stop after, you know, second frame, third frame, on the tenth frame, yeah. the second and third round, depending on what you get. It would just keep going as long as you were hitting strikes. Um, now, one shot, and it goes to the next player. So I got to figure out why. It's crazy inside. So now the trans light goes with the other one. 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 The
Purple Fire. Uh, like that? You guys have played out there before? Yeah. Didn't the actual goes in? Yeah. Yeah, same here. We've played before. Got about nine games in last night, so it's getting a little better. Let's go. You guys got a real quick second? We want to make uh, another update uh, here on behalf of our uh, St. Charles Pinball Club. This is a, a humble club that we started out of St. Charles, obviously, hence the name. It started with uh, a few guys that were loving pinball. It quickly expanded uh, outside of our neighborhood blocks and into different neighborhoods. Um, but it's still St. Charles at its core. We've got about 10 guys in here that are all have been playing pinball for years or collecting. We've got some guys with newer experience and some guys that have uh, some old crusty experience, but all in all, we all get along great. And uh, so collectively, we wanted to go ahead and pitch in and make a contribution to Project Pinball uh, in the amount of $1,200. Uh, so that's $1,200. Did, did you have something you want to throw in? I didn't give it to you. I was playing a game. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> Hold on. The, the total is getting larger. Make that $1,300 from uh, St. Charles or Pinball Club, right? So with the dollar-for-dollar dollar match, that's $2,600 that will be going to Project Pinball Charities. Um, so nicely done, fellas. Thank you very yeah. much. It's, it's been like an honor and privilege to be your, your friends and uh, to have us all kind of here for the holidays doing something for uh, the charity. 
is an honor for me, and I, I sincerely appreciate uh, the support. I really do. Thank you, guys. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo! More bits coming in. 5,000 bits, 5, bits from Lord, Lord, Lord Helmet. Helmet. It comes 10,000 bits. So at this point, guys, I'm going to step away. Thank you, Lord Helmet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the totals uh, up and running. We'll update this Sweet. total. And then uh, we're on the... Uh, the final two or three holes here uh, as we go for that push for uh, for 40K. So we'll see how it goes. Well, I'll be back, but let's keep playing some pinball, huh? Woo. Nice job, guys. Woo! Yeah. Woo! And a fruit cake. <laughs> oh, those look Can you good. watch uh, oh. for, for biddies or? Yeah, yeah, no, I'll hang yeah. out. Yeah, I'll put you on the table. Chris and I, I'll, uh, over. anybody else want to hop on a mic? That's, yeah, that's totally that's cool, guys. What's up, Chris? <laughs> when were you? You you came here at uh, about maybe midnight last night. Midnight till about was, uh, two. Eleven to two. Eleven to two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for uh, coming and hanging out last yeah, night, man. That was, that was fun. Got a lot of time in Elvira, which is nice. It's a fun game, is it not? Yeah. It's a lot better now that I'm learning some of the rules. Yeah, that 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 always helps. But the more you play it, I think the more you f like. I fell in love with it the more that I played it. Yeah. I don't know that's one that I would be purchasing for myself, but it's definitely a lot of fun. And I could see this in my in my collection. So that works out well. Big time. Have have one. <laughs> uh, yeah, then we'll have then we'll have one, right? Yeah, then I'll have one. You said. Yeah, there'll be one in the group. So <laughs> exactly, one in the group's really? huge. Really? Yeah, because we take we take oh, turns uh, hosting in the St. Charles Pinball Club. It's it's pretty it's pretty cool what we have going on here. Yeah. Jeff's gonna join. Dwight. I just missed you, man. I'm sorry. I tried to get here in time, and I was just dragging. I went home and slept for two hours, and it took me an hour to get over here. And I just missed you and, and Roger and and uh, and Joe and and ah, man, I was I was hoping to say hi. But feel free to swing out. Feel free to swing out again, man. At St. Charles Pinball Club, we all love you too. We miss you. Yeah, come back, Dwight. <laughs> Dwight, come back. <laughs> Uh, Jeff. So we got Jeff, and we got Chris here. These these are uh, the the founding fathers, I'd I'd say, because this is we're in Ken's neighborhood. These guys both live right down the road here, um, and you guys, I I'd, I'd consider you guys the founding fathers of the St. Charles Pinball Club. Never really thought about it. But yeah, I'm probably more well known as the worst pinball player in the group. Hey so. man, I love playing with Jeff. It, it means I may or may not. <laughs> Be in last place, but I'll be pretty darn close. <laughs> Thank you, Red Keg. So if there's Red Keg with a thousand bits. So if there's a St. Charles pinball tournament for uh, bits, I think if I win, that it should be quadruple. You, you, you got to find somebody to quadruple that for you. <laughs> Talk to the wife. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like you know. Yeah, we did we did this little uh, a bar crawl, right? So we had this whole tournament kind of bracket set up. And uh, I think our buddy Sean, who was here earlier, nope. took that, um, took the grand champ of that. Yeah, even his kid. That, uh, yeah. yeah, so even at my house, I think at my house, I came in last place. <laughs> you know, because I'm busy hosting. I'm, I'm making food. I'm, I'm mixing sure. drinks. I'm smoking the drinks. Not the paying attention too. to pinball. And the cookies. And the cookies. Oh, yeah. It was, oh, the cookies. So, Steve, you holding up there? Or? I got a second one with you guys second joining one. in. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I actually took a two-hour nap. So uh, no, I was stuck. Was I was a... not good at 7.30 this morning. I was like, I'm, I'm out. I'm going home. I'm going to take a quick nap. I'm going to shower. So you're out at, like, fifth Red Bull then? Next to the, uh, no. The lanes? Screw Red Bull. Nope. I had some <laughs> coffee at home, which actually helped. It was a uh, rough when I left it, too. You and Ken were, uh, Ken was in the middle of a conversation with us and then realized he didn't know what we were talking about. And had <laughs> yeah, Ken's, a, Ken's on the roller coaster of uh, coherent and not so much coherent. Yeah. But no, he's a trooper, man. I, he, hasn't, he hasn't slept a, a minute. So he stared at a wall for 20 minutes and said that was all I need. <laughs> Red keg. 1,000 bits. Uh, turns into two thousand bits, thanks to the, the the generous match. So thanks, guys. Thanks everybody for sticking around. Thanks everybody for just tuning in. 
So Ken is in, in inside. He's updating our, our total amount raised right now. So um, looking forward to seeing where that's going to be. I mean, we just had some huge contributions. Um, Ten grand. Yeah, Ryan. Ryan's company uh, donated four thousand dollars, which is which becomes eight thousand dollars, which is oh, an entire pinball, which was the initial, the very initial goal that Ken and Bill had was to just get one pinball in a hospital. And now we're looking at now we're now we're looking at four, potentially five. How crazy is that? It's it's it's, it's, it's such a good cause. What a credit to uh, Ken and Bill yeah. for Seriously. us setting this up and the relationships yeah. with everybody. And, yeah. you know, I always, Ken mentioned to me that he was voted the number two nicest guy. In the, the number two community. nicest guy. After the stream, he <laughs> might, he might, he might make its way up. I don't know. Which Pinball me. Medic, 400 bits. Thank you so much. Which shocks me because I'd like to know who number one is because Ken truly is the nicest guy. Who is number one? I don't know. Hang on. I don't know. Hang on. I know everybody this. I saw last night. I think Ken's probably at the top. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Ken's going to live through this stream, so somebody else is going to jump to number two. Who's that going to be? <laughs> it might be Ken's you, inside it might be seizuring you. <laughs> or stroking out right now. Yeah, somebody better check on him. In the somebody, room. I know, right? <laughs> this is Ken just staring at the fridge for 30 minutes and is like, oh, that was a good nap. <laughs> Yeah, guys, thanks for the bit bits. We're still going. We still have uh, three hours and 28 minutes left. We are in the home stretch, and that feels good because when you saw the, the 24, 23, 22, even the 17, 18 up there, it was, it was looking pretty grim at a, for, a, for a little bit there. When the initial goal was reached and there were still 17 hours left, it was... Uh, it was fantastic, but it also took some of the pressure off, and I think Ken was starting to deflate a little. Yeah, you know what? No, everybody coming in has has helped take the pressure off of Ken because he's usually, you know, the driving yeah. force. Um, you know, he's driving the wheel here. But uh, no, we appreciate everybody who's come in and, and helped take part in this. You know, chat included. I mean, it would be kind of boring without chat, to be honest. Just right. sitting here talking to nothing. <laughs> So that helps. You guys are awesome. So the new goal is uh, forty thousand. Is that right? Let's see. Let's see where we are at. That didn't work out well. I think we're gonna be shooting for forty grand. That's incredible. We'll see. Uh, yeah, because I think. I mean, we're gonna be pushed up. Yeah, we're gonna be. We're gonna be, we're gonna be pushed to up to about thirty-six. I would imagine with the update. Or I don't know if that's that was already. I don't included. Know what included yeah, I don't know yeah. what was included or not between. Uh, we'll find out soon, assuming Ken's away. <laughs> so cool, though. So cool. So auctions, uh, Dwight, are still on, on the Facebook page. There are still some uh, some play fields, um, some other miscellaneous items, I believe. Dwight, That'll be on the Special Winlet Pinball Podcast Facebook page. The auction values will be tallied at the end of the of the uh, event, I think. So I don't think those are included. In the, uh, so the auctions end at 5 p.m. Central, okay. just so we have time to total those toward the end um, contribution um, from the from the whole stream, you know. So 5 p.m. Central, guys. Get your oxen, oxygen... Uh, uh, get your oxygen. Hang in and there. And also Jim, get your auctions in. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. I need it. I need a little, a little jostle there. Kaz, cheers and eight bits. I drink a little coffee to that. I can't wait for Ken to come back. I've heard all about this Ken Cromwell clap. <laughs> that didn't sound right. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you, Kaz. Thank you. I need some context for that statement there, Jeff. Wow, Dwight, that? anything uh, you're you're so looking at? Uh, maybe uh, throwing a little bid in on there, buddy? No, I needed something bigger, and I talked to Where the bids at? The bids? Yeah. So the bids, yeah. so the bids are on Facebook. Oh, um, you'd uh, you'd have to go on Facebook, uh, Special Winlet Pinball Podcast, to, to look at each item and see 
um, oh, where we're at. I don't. I, we don't have a list in front of us. It's kind of organic how that's going. So, Kalbasa is asking, will, will raffles be drawn on the stream? Um, are we doing raffles? I, don't, I, don't, I haven't heard of any raffles. I don't know of any raffles going on. I, I know of the uh, the auctions. Dwight doesn't know how to do things. All right. Dwight, come on by. We'll, uh, we'll auction in your in your presence for whatever whatever you're interested in. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff on auction too. So of, uh, nice yeah, there's items. a lot of good, a lot of cool, right one-off you. items. No, um, on just, just cool stuff. Just and there's things around here that I don't, I don't. Like this translate. What's this doing here? Is that, is that an auction item? I'm not sure. This, this already went last night. That, that's been sold. Yeah, that, that sold when uh, Eric Minier was here. Right. He wanted to. You know, kind of that. present that to, to the buyer and, and, and sign it if, if wanted. And Scott Denise was here with the uh, prototype Rick and Morty. Yeah, Translite. Scott's Rick and Morty original backlash, or backlash. like a prototype. Unapproved. Unapproved backlash with some factory damage. Character. <laughs> Fair, some, ca character. some factory character. Uh, that sold for 750 bucks. Yeah, that's incredible. So, which which in turn is fifteen hundred dollars to Project Pinball. You guys could probably you guys can turn that game up a little bit if if you'd like. It's a little. The tilt is really tight on there, so open it up very slowly. We've we've yes. tilted quite a quite a bit in the last twenty one hours. <laughs> Although Eric was throwing it around and you not tilting it, I I've wow. never seen Ken tilt or like actually tilt out or just get in a warning so much. But after he watched Eric play, he's like, "All right, game on." <laughs> it's been a fun time. So what's new with your uh, your game room, Steve? You got rid of fishtails. Something else coming in? Fishtails is still in my possession. Where's Tom? Somebody should text Tom. Tom should be here. Tom Tom is actually interested in the fishtails. So. Right. But are you getting something else to replace that? Is that um, I've sold a few to um, afford Medieval Madness Royal Edition. When's that going to show up? It sounds like maybe mid to, to late January. Oh, nice. They're, they, they, they're a couple weeks behind. They had some parts issues. and Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That'll be awesome. You know, it's hard to get rid of game. I, I, was, I was very content and happy with my collection, but it was becoming too much to maintain at the same time. Yeah. So I figured let's, let's dial it down a little bit, get something new that I don't have to, you know, constantly be tweaking and working on. So it'll be good. With your bonsai run, was that a lot of work at MacGowan, or was it... Oh, no. Bonsai run worked when I got it. I, I just swapped some bulbs out. I actually just got a new CPR back glass that I installed yesterday, or two days ago. I don't even know. Maybe three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been a month ago. Could have been a month ago at, at this point. Yeah, still digging that. Yeah, check this out. I don't have a pinball in front of my garage door anymore. I've trimmed the fat. Oh, yeah. Are you planning to use the garage door? I mean, I still use it either way, but oh. yeah. Like Now I, I, I need to do some brakes on my car. I can actually pull it in in the heated garage. Have my buddy come over, do my brakes. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I can fix a pinball machine. I don't know about car stuff. I, I don't. Maybe a little bit about car stuff. All right, what do we got? Um, what do we do? The Rick and Morty sold out in an incredibly quick time of two hours and 33 minutes. It's the best raffle to date. Yeah, everyone hopping in on that Rick and Morty that sold out. I could see that like a last you know, opportunity to maybe get one and, and support a good cause at the same time. That's good stuff. I missed out on that. I also missed out on that. 
Uh, Dwight, I am getting, uh, I will be acquiring sh shortly a uh, Medieval Madness remake, Royal Edition. And I'm really digging Elvira, so might see if I can swing one of those in the house somehow. <clears throat> somehow, some way. Something else needs to go, though. Anybody else getting anything? You guys looking for anything new? I know Jeff was maybe considering selling. I sold one of mine, and I'm uh, still looking to sell my revenge. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, so you got to come on over and help me. Uh... I had to come over and take some pictures for you. Oh, I get it. Some people don't enjoy the whole selling process. I love it. It's a little easier. Take some good pictures. Too, though. It is, yeah. So let's plug Jeff's pinball machine. <laughs> Anybody looking for a nice revenge for Marks? Yeah, I always look forward to getting together with you guys and uh, just playing some pinball and hanging out. So it's been a long yeah, time. Yeah, we love. Since I've I love hanging garage. out. You know, you know what's funny? Sometimes we get together on pinball nights, and I've not even flipped a, a one pin, yeah. and we'll just sit around and talk all night. Might not even be about pinball, but we just hang out, and you know. I don't know what it is. We all just get along. It's it's a good time. It is a good time. It's a great time. The alcohol and the food helps, too. Yeah, speaking of both of those. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the last thing you need is some alcohol. I actually, we're in the home stretch. I'm, I'm clear. Yeah, it's white. If you're free, man, stop by. Love to say hi. Like I said, I I was planning on coming and, uh, and hanging out for a little bit earlier, but got caught up catching up. If that makes sense. You're gonna be got caught up catching here. up. You gonna hop in, Joe? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't rush, guys. Elvira going down. All good, buddy. We'll uh, we'll catch up uh, hopefully after after the new year. I know everybody's busy this time of year. It's tough. It is tough. Cameron McCaslin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what were we saying last night? Cameron McIsland, Cameron Mc, uh, McSalad says, I'm in on that raffle. Hope to win. Wubba lubba dub dub. Hey, good luck, man. Good luck to anybody in the raffle. And e even if you don't win, you know your money's going to a great cause. So, so it's a win win regardless. Oh, you could go for a mixed salad right now. I could go for like a McMuffin. Oh, gosh. I thought it was morning. It's three, almost 3 in the afternoon here. What up, buddy? What's up? Seems like it gets smaller in here. <laughs> it is like, whoa, whoa. I was like, who's, who's the tall guy next to me? Yeah, we had that conversation last night. Yeah. Hey, this is how we initially started. That was last game, right? Yeah, is this how the stream started? We've got updated yeah. total. No, well, I think I might have been. No, you were. Oh, can we here. go through some news really quick while we're. Let's cover the news. <laughs> People with extreme. Oh. Uh, all right. Bill, how's your day been, man? A little. Interesting, oh, but well, that's, that's fine. It's, it's that's just home stuff. Did you get any Z's? It help if I move. I got four hours. Four hours. Four hours? All right. That's four hours is magical. It's better than I did. Yeah. I got. But I'll be back. I got to make a change there. I'll be back up cool. to cool, about cool, cool, one. Cool. What's going on, everybody? I see Dwight's in chat. What's going on, Dwight? Dwight's hanging out. Sorry. Dwight, I'm gonna call you in a little while. So. Dwight's like, oh god. Snail pin. Very nice. What's going on in chat? Anything good? Oh, it's all good. It's okay. Been, it's been right. a uh, been an eventful uh, morning Quite slash time. afternoon. Yeah. Uh, what did I miss? 
So Ryan presented his check. Nice. That was four thousand dollars. Huge from, from work. And Ryan just company. got a Wizard of Oz, and I might have known who influenced something like that. So, yeah. So I'm sorry about that, but hey, she's happy though, right? Yeah. Okay. And what's maybe next? Maybe a, maybe a Wonka. They're pretty games. They're they nice. are pretty games. They are nice They're games. Awesome. Tell me you're not loving uh, Wizard of Oz, though. Okay. All right. All right. So you didn't get st- steered wrong, at least. All right. Thank you, JJP Live, for following. JJP. Woo! So Ryan presented an awesome check, which literally puts one pinball machine in a hospital. Yep. So everyone, if we can uh, give another by clap for Ryan. I'm sure you guys did hey. that already. But still, that's huge. You know what is perfect? Because we had Dan on. Dan called in, or we called Dan from Project Pinball. Okay. And Ryan walked in, right when we, were, you know, we were on the phone with him, and and Ryan sat down and presented the check while we had Dan on the line. It it, it went perfectly. That's awesome. Perfect timing. Timing is everything. Such a. Uh, I mean, this. Ryan's is- been listening all morning, all night. Oh, they got. Knock knock. No. <laughs> No, it just worked out. It was it was awesome. Hey, great thing. It was a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, dude, Ken is still alive. We I gotta, don't dude, know how. We, we got to leave I needed him alone a couple tomorrow. hours. It was it was rough. Yeah. Oh, dude, I thought I was gonna fall asleep driving home last night. I know. That's when I, I knew it was sketchy. I got dropped off. My, my wife dropped me off. I was like, I don't, I can't drive. I'm still so tired. Oh, I, hey. Oh, sorry. All right, Ken, what's the good word? All right, I got Welcome the... Welcome uh, back. Updated totals. Here we go. Wow. So I'm going to add this graphic to the stream. Yeah, we don't have the drum roll, so don't don't uh, judge on that deal. That's true. That would be a nice little uh, addition right there. Right? Here we can keep a beat, bro. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I love some it. Judgmental I people, joke. man. I joke. I had a feeling, and now it's hurt. <laughs> I had it's a all, feeling. They're all gone now. now. It's hurt and gone. They are all gone now. There it is, I guys. Guess. Hey, Chrono Six One, thanks for the sub. Chrono, thank you. New updated total, guys. 40, Are you seeing this? Forty-one thousand two hundred and ninety-four dollars. Forty-one thousand two hundred and ninety-four dollars. Raised for Project Pinball Charity. With all of your donations and Adam Schwartz dollar for dollar match, we've completely annihilated um, what we what we thought was going to happen on the stream. <laughs> um, well, we had a bet. Five pins. Ken and I had a bet. Nice. Guys, th- yes, why don't you t- talk about that bet, Bill? I like so that. when Ken and I were talking about this, he was like, you know, if we place one machine, that'd be awesome. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I got a feeling we could do two. I, you know, I could see it. 24 hours, you know, good odds. And uh, so where are we at right now, Ken? How many machines? Well, at 8,000 a machine, right now we have five machines that uh, can be placed through Project Pinball Charities. Um, at eight thousand a piece, that's forty thousand dollars with change. Now, this is what I'm thinking. We don't have to stop, and we've got the, we've got some <laughs> items, in auction that are getting ready to close at five o'clock. Oh my gosh! Oh yeah, that's gonna get nutty. You guys, guys, are that's we going gonna, for six? We well, we might be we might be <laughs> headed towards uh, in north fifty k. Is what we uh, forty eight thousand would get us to to uh, six machines. We'll have to go wow. over that soon. So if you guys are thinking Thanks, about are about uh, bidding on anything, you know, I'd do it now because it's getting kind of close to that hour. I think five o'clock stops bidding, right? And that's when we're gonna five o'clock stops the bidding. Yeah. All right. So you got a little over uh, two hours to uh, place your bids on that stuff. Um, I think Ken just said he wants to go another twelve hours just to see. Dude, I'm so fatigued. I, I'm You're ready just, to call I'm it. lost right I'm now so trying to put this graphic up. Like I don't I've been doing this all night and now it's like I just can't figure it out. There we go. All right, so whoever's uh, closest, can someone grab the monster bash playfield and, and put that up to the camera? 
so people can see one more time. And anyone, you know, that hasn't can see it. Bill's fave. This is a fave. That's why I chose this one first. Fall grand. What's Check up? this hey, out, guys. Hey, Chrono. Chrono. Thousand bits. Chrono. Thousand bits. Thank you, Chrono. Thousand bits. Dave, good morning. Good afternoon. Yeah, good morning. Right. Or good evening. Dave just woke up. So Ryan from CGC Pinball has donated this to the Graciously. auction. Yes. Look at this thing. This is a one of one. There is not another one like it. This was their test print to, to see how the blacks lined up against the white. And I can tell you, I mean, we're looking at it on camera here, but I mean, it, it, I don't think that does any justice. So it looks good on the camera. It looks good on the camera, yeah, but I think it looks better in person. Um, Bill had the, oh, the inspection face going. I you did. Tell I did. Bill's gears were. I was were, thinking. Were turning. Hey, you know, maybe someone on stream wants to buy this play field and put it in an LE and have just a display piece. So Ryan said, I think that th that would work to do. Um, it is an identical play field, so it does have the inserts. You can light it from behind. Absolutely gorgeous. So uh, what else do we got there? Guys, what? This the pinball community just raised $41,294. <laughs> It's for Project Freaking Pinball. Insane. It's just sinking in. It's like it's blow. It's blowing my mind right now. It, it's like I'm having a hard time contemplating what's happening. Uh, MTZ Arcade. Uh, you'd have to go to a Special Lit Facebook page, and all the items. If you scroll down, you will see them. And then just look for the uh, silent think, auction. Highest bid at five o'clock takes the item. Yeah, and then look for the highest uh, number that's on there. I think Monster Bash was around seven hundred or seven fifty last time I looked. I'm uh, going. I'm going in to check. I'm sorry. Right what you, yeah, oh, seven fifty. What you'll do? Oh, I, I know how that's going, Courtney. At five o'clock, when we announce the winner, uh, you'll then be expected to uh, to make the payment through the uh, PayPal.me forward slash Project Pinball, uh, or you can write a check directly to Project Pinball, and it's fully tax deductible. So that's always good times. Yeah, your accountant is uh, going to uh, smile on that. So that's a good thing. Um, yeah. So hopefully that explains that MTZ Arcade. Um, what else do we have here? You guys pulled out the Elvira translate too, huh? Well, I replaced it. Uh, Dwight brought in uh, replacement back glass cause, or translate glass because I broke the other one. Ah, <laughs> it's shattered all over the place. That was not good. So no, Elvira. That's just scratched up Elvira. Uh, House of Horse translate actually. It's still a cool piece, man. That'll look good on the wall here. Hello, pinball land. Says live catch pinball. Devil's Hello. avocado. Uh, are the current auction bids included in the total? No. No. We have not. And this is the thing, guys. I think last time I, I checked the auction items, they were at like 3700 bucks. So you're that you're looking at another uh, $7,400 that's going to be on top of that total. We've already surpassed $48,000. With Twitch bits alone, we've almost raised, with the match, $8,000. We're like $400 short. If we can generate another $200 in Twitch bits here today... Um, we can go ahead and actually say that Twitch bits with Adam Schwartz's match paid for a pinball machine to be placed in a hospital. Because what we've batted in so far are the total uh, accumulation of Twitch revenue that we received today. Um, all of the donations that we receive uh, via the PayPal link, all of the checks that have been that have come through. Um, it, but we have not included the, the uh, auction items yet. And pardon my stumbling at this point. I, I'm babbling and not making much sense. So Joe Fox takes the lead on the uh, the Wonka playfield. What? Yes. At eleven hundred bucks. You're kidding me. <laughs> Holy cow, man! Joe Fox. Joe Fox. I thought for sure Calbasa had that locked uh -oh. at a thousand. Unless that was a typo. Said just now. Joe, can you please confirm? <laughs> Joe Fox is a maniac. Hold on, we'll take care of that right now. Literally, yeah. I was I was showing Bill the the recent uh, yeah because it was up to a thousand. Yeah, well, I mean, and let's look at the bit leaders. Just the top three on the board: Mod Couple Pinball with one hundred and thirty thousand bits. That comes out to thirteen hundred dollars. That was donated by Twitch by Mod Couple Pinball. Replica X, one hundred and twenty-eight thousand bits, which was twelve hundred and eighty yeah, dollars. That comes out to project. Now remind yourselves. Those are all matched dollar for dollar by Adam Schwartz in New York. Uh, and then Calbasa, look at Calbasa there, 12,500 uh, so bits slush. right there. It's, no, it's, it's incredible. Like Calbasa's the, I've, been in like I've not the seen, entire time. We've taken in, uh, I want to say, thirty six or $3,700 in bits in subs uh, tonight for 
within 24 hours. Joe Fox leading on Monster Bash. Well, yeah, and I ju- I did confirm with him. He did bid that on Wonka. Yeah. So wow. Joe, Joe Joe might be getting a big package and in the mail. Joe Fox seven seventy five on Monster Bash too. Holy Huge. cow! I think that's. Hey, might as well save on shipping. Yeah. Wait, I got something I got to ship out to Joe Fox also. You guys could turn on Lord of the Rings too. Just turn the volume down and if you want to play a different game. Joe Fox needs some wall space. Yeah, he does. He has an, an awesome collection. Uh, yeah, when we first thought about doing the show, our original goal was $8,000, and I was very hesitant to put that number out there because if we didn't hit it, I didn't want it to look like we drastically failed. Bill was the one that was reassuring and, and said that he thought that we could get enough money for two pinball machines at $16,000, and at that point, uh, I, lost, I thought he lost a lot of credibility with me. <laughs> yeah, you're like, no, no. Because it just didn't make any sense. I'm like, Bill, I, I'm sweating this, maybe us getting I one. specifically remember you saying, oh, I don't know, that eight grand. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know what color the sky is in Bill's world, but that's really. <laughs> Snail pin with 500 Snail bits. Pin. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> that's awesome. So 500 bits become uh, 1,000 bits, so that $5 donation becomes a $10 donation. Um, dude, we, we might actually surpass this 50k mark I and I, I put the 50k mark up there just just as like a pipe dream thinking that i wouldn't have to redo the graphic but let's remember what everything's about here today ladies and gentlemen it's not about us playing pinball necessarily it's about offering the gift of pinball project pinball helps rehabilitation for a kid that's in a hospital, you're playing a pinball machine, and for the time being, you don't have to really think about where you are or what you're doing. You're focused solely on playing pinball. You know, pinball <laughs> pinball can be fun, but it can also be therapeutic because slamming that ball around when you're angry mm. sure does make you feel a little bit better. You know what, one thing I like about it, it makes them move. Laps around the wards is replaced to a lap down to the pinball machine and standing for an hour. They have to use both hands. You kind of find yourself when you're playing pinball moving into it to play. And uh, so the kids can come in here, number one, stand, the ones are having that issue, but they can still hold on, so they get that strengthening. And then they, they're using both hands and eye and watching. So, uh, so it's going to be a great non-therapy therapy. Yes. And having a good time. Pinball's great because it's lights, it's sounds, and you're so focused on getting that ball and hitting that target and getting those points that you're really not thinking about why you're in the hospital. You're able to distract your time away a little bit. Pinball is a way to get your mind for the moment off of whatever is happening in your personal life. Even if it is a bad situation, having to be in a hospital, seeing a pinball machine can make it all better. I just want to give back any way that I can. And my passion for pinball I think was a great partner for, you know, this giving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. All right. Pinball. Hey, we're back. Welcome hey. back. Forty-one thousand two hundred ninety-four. It's unbelievable. I had. Why do I feel like I'm short? You know, you're because you can twenty so there's hours. That's the camera's like the camera skews. Yeah. So when I'm on the right side, I get wider. This spot, you like, you're like turning like a little pencil. But seriously, I noticed that because like, whoever sits right here I might be wider, the lighting too. behind you. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Sure. Hey, Flippin' Fargo is rocking it out here with fifteen hundred bits. Fargo, fifteen hundred hey, bits. Thank you much. It comes three thousand bits. With the Adam Schwartz match. Flip and Fargo, thank you so much. Now, Flip and Fargo, he goes ahead and he retains the third place lead at 13,050 bits. Woo! <clears throat> $130.50 on the board, which becomes, uh, what is that, $261? Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. Um, we're real close, guys. Yeah, maybe around 4 o'clock, too. We'll. Without without adding all, well, yeah, at 5 o'clock, the auctions are, are yeah. over. So maybe about 4, we go into that one more time. Yeah, and uh, show the items and, sure. you know. If you are trying to figure out what we're talking about, there's a silent auction set up. It's on our Facebook page. You can go to Special Win Lit Pinball Podcast. 
There's a post that's sticky to the top, and it just explains the fundraiser. But within that post, you have links to all the auction items that are there. There are a lot of collectible, one-of-a-kind items that you will never have an opportunity to get um, in the normal uh, situation. So check those out. Shipping is included in your winning bid if you're within the continental 48 states. If you're out of the country or Hawaii or Alaska, um, contact us first because you're going to want to get a little shipping quote. Joe wow, Fox! Joe, Joe Fox! Fox. 5,000 bits, 5, bits from Joe Fox 22. Our man with the master plan, Joe Fox, takes over the third place position at 14,700 oh, bits. Oh, this is like a NASCAR race return over here, man. of the Jedi has chaired 200 bits. Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. Who's that? Return of the Beatty. Who's, who's Return of the Jedi? I like Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Oh, what was the other guy that I liked? The uh, Coctologist. I liked that name. <laughs> that was the screwiest Wait, name. They were, they were like, "Wait, <laughs> like what happened? What are you guys here? talking about back there?" <laughs> Man, this is awesome, guys. We're rocking it out here as we we've finally gotten under that three hour mark. So I'm starting to get that second wind, and uh, it's unbelievable. Daniel Spoiler's still here. Project Pinball Charity. Um, I know he's he's excited. He's having fun. We're excited. We're having fun, and it's it's been an honor to kind of work with with this charity and in this. Uh, initiative and uh listen this is the thing too like it, it sounds cliche but there's no do donation that has been too small it's it's been the collective effort of all these donations which has allowed us to hit this uh i mean crush the goal and now getting to territory that i would have bet my uh, home on that we wouldn't have raised over yeah. 24 hours and bill saying listen That's if you wild. really break it down the stream wise it's like we've generated about almost two thousand dollars in donations per hour that we've been on the air so far yeah it's amazing. Bill knew best. I'm not. I'm thinking. Uh, no, build, I guess best. Like a build of the boat. He's very optimistic. Though. I guess I was, best. Bill, you like going <laughs> you to guess, the casino? I, or? I do. I do. That's why I don't hey, go. Throw a bunch of toothpicks on the floor, real quick. Uh, no, see, the problem that I have with this though is uh, when I like something, dude, I don't stop. Dana Reeves, thanks for following. So always good having you and Joel in here. It's awesome. It's awesome. Streamlabs, thank you for following. Streamlabs has no choice. It's under. Hey, our listen. Like, what? 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 All right, that was the dumbest thing said last night. That was I awesome. credit for that. I love awesome. that. No, that was the dumbest thing. No, it wasn't dumb at all. You, but you hadn't also, seen it. Before. How would it's you have good. known? Hey, listen, I got the funniest thing last night as well, though, too, didn't I? Ken is the new Jerry Lewis. Uh oh. Oh. And what so you're was your five thousand? What was uh -oh. the funniest thing last night? What was the funniest thing last night? It's. I still feel like I'm in last I night. I don't even know. The TNA being sold in a Fairfield Inn parking lot? Oh, yes. Yeah, that is... <laughs> that was actually pretty funny. All right. <laughs> that was actually pretty funny. Uh, Wookie Jeep, man, welcome man. back. We Wookie did it, Jeep, buddy. We did it. Jeep. Seeing what's going down. That's what we did it. He's always in uh, chat, man. Just love that name. I know. I, I do, too. I just I pictured, like, Chewbacca busting ass on a, on a Jeep Wrangler, like, through the Sahara <laughs> Desert or something. It's, I love it. That or a bunch of hippies like with dreads hanging out. <laughs> that that kinda. could work too. Oh man, crazy. So the goal here is just uh, just to, just, just to knock it out at fifty, and we're right on the cusp. When we get those auction items ending, um, I think we're I think we're there. I really really do. Hey, if we do fifty, I'll pretty do darn a, close. If, I'll do a shot before I leave. Uh, you're not sleeping over, right? No. All right. <laughs> I got plans. All right. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. That sounds good. Ken, what are what are your plans after the stream? I have to meet my parents for dinner at six thirty. No way! Can you believe it? Are you kidding? No. Oh. So my kids have been. I I, I didn't send them. I gave them the that's opportunity. Hilarious. My lord at fifty k. Uh, I gave them the opportunity to spend the night at the grandparents' house. Um. So I haven't seen the kids since yesterday, and and my. Right. My my parents, which are their grandparents, uh, just asked if when uh, when we collected the kids, if we could all go out to dinner. At the time, it sounded outstanding. Thought to myself, I could use a nice little dinner uh, at the end of a charity stream. But you want that booth seat? I'll tell you what. Yeah, no all kidding, all right? to yourself. Flipping Fargo, Flipping Fargo, back. five hey, thousand bits. Man. The bits are flying wow. tonight here in the chat. Woo. I don't see how you're not going to be asleep on the plate, man. I hope that you're not. Dana Reeves with 5,000 bits. Dana. Dana Thank you so much. Wow. 
See, now this is it. This is what. This is how we get the into where we push, need to be, guys. guys. The this final is how push. it's gonna be. It just keeps going and going and going. Um, the breakdown is amazing when you really look at it as itemized because there's not a weak link as far as where the money's being generated from. It's it's just all very solid. It is so insane. <laughs> it is insane. That bar has moved so much. I, I don't even. I don't know, man. It, it moved, it moved uh, like twenty thousand dollars since uh, this morning. Unbelievable. I'm wondering. Yeah. If, I don't know. If, I don't know if you have the right graphic up there. I, I double checked and I triple checked and then I asked Bill to look it over. So. No, what I'm saying, like, ending at fifty k might, you might have cut yourself short there. Pride pinball. Unbelievable. Three thousand bits. Love yes. the pride flag. Graphics by the way. right. I awesome. checked Twitch. It's good. Yep, thank you, Pride Pinball. Sorry about that. No, graphics white. Right. I'm just saying. What? The, the it is. The measure, the measuring stick itself. Oh, it's close enough. Might need to go. It's over 40, right? I mean, it's close. It is. Yeah. Dude, it's fine. I'm saying if you hit 50. Oh, nothing, yeah. There's nothing after that. Hey, that's okay. You know. Then we just, you know, post a picture of something cool. Yeah, what a crazy day. It is a crazy day. Yeah, hey, you the, never the know. Graphics, the graphics, uh, it's okay. The graphs. That's that's a good the graphs. It's a way better word than I was looking. It's like a using. thermometer. Originally, like a thermometer. I designed it and it looked like a uh, like a shooter rod, like a spring. And, oh, it, and I, yeah. had it, I had it kind of looking cool, and I was like, oh, yeah. no one's going to know what that is. Gateward Games, what's up? <laughs> wow, money keeps rising. Way to go, guys. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody uh, is playing their part here, so it's it's pretty impressive. Yep. JJP, thank you for uh, thank you for being a part of it. JJP live, absolutely. Always good having JJP live here. Those are our guys out of Bensonville. JJP. Yep. It was nice having uh, Eric Minier uh, in here, Keith Johnson, Keith and Johnson. Joe Katz. Like all three of those guys were in uh, at one point or another during this twenty four hour stream. Yeah, you know, I missed Joe Cass this morning. I was kind of bummed. Yeah, I saw Joe it. stuck around for a while too. I thought it was going to be in and out. I thought I'd catch all those guys that were in here this morning. Yeah, like Joe's a good. And dude. I pulled up, and you're like, they just left. Yeah, it's like no. Two hours, fifty-two minutes, forty-nine seconds to go. Yeah. All right. I'm shrinking though. It's like I'm s smaller and smaller by the every fifteen minutes. Right, so. Is your body hurting? You need like a Jolt Cola or I'm a just I'm just sore. I feel like I kind of worked out. Hey, do you want a? Okay, that's how I was feeling. Do you want a Starbucks no, uh, vanilla? No, no, thanks. Uh, hey, they started <laughs> drinking last night, and I'm like, this isn't good. Six o'clock. Six o'clock last night. The slow, he, the IV drip of IPA. What were you drinking? Was it White Claw? <laughs> yeah, I woke up and uh, uh, yeah, I had some White Claw. I had some. Uh, some Jason brought some scotch that we <laughs> imbibed in. That's all good. This morning? Yeah, Elvira was uh, very cozy to sleep under. <laughs> Those extension cords really do provide a little buffer on the floor. <laughs> yeah, right? My nest. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I would do some... some, some a bucket of chicken right now. Uh oh, some, bucket oh, of God. Room some bone chicken. fried chicken. The warm chicken's not good. Or you could do a uh, pinball arcade. Arcade pinball. Arcade pinball. Yeah. <clears throat> Tell you what, man, this Elvira is really holding its own, huh? This Elvira's zero been on issue. for 24 hours and has been streamed pretty uh, excessively. And we've not even had a stuck ball. We've not had a, a blown coil stop, which has been something that's plagued some recent Stern releases. Uh, it's been solid all night, actually. It's been a pleasure to play. I'm about ready to hop on some pinball here soon. Yeah, go for it, man. We're going to give a, uh, a call to Steve Epstein uh, here in a couple minutes. Cool. Yeah, right. Knock on wood. Yeah, I said that and... Pretty soon you're gonna see uh, Bill replacing some coil stops here. <laughs> right, hey, whatever, man. I'll, I'll take ball. Hey, of course, that. That's all right. Well, you know, Scott Drager brought in these buzz kills. 
Do you know how these work? No. For uh, blown coils? No. Oh, Put it between the we're coils. We're going to learn. Stop. Kill the buzz. The buzz kills. Huh. Check it out. The Maniacs. Yeah. D was I, was, I was on my last ounce of energy when those guys showed up. That's why I didn't sit down, man. I, I thought I was going to pass out. But that was nice seeing them. Dave wearing the Santa jacket and yeah, everything. Yeah, they were a good time. That was sure. A, yeah. Yeah, Geekward Games, this game's uh, holding up pretty well. Um, yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this game has been doing great. Yeah. Devil's Avocado. So what are you selling, Steve, to buy Elvira? Oh, hmm. I heard you guys talking about how uh, good size collections, and I heard you say 13. I'm almost there. Really? Yeah. Where are you at right now? 15 when Medieval gets delivered. Yeah, so you're not too bad off then. No, I'm getting close. Well, remember, I've got two of your pins in this studio. I, yeah, those I do was, count. I'm counting those. You are yeah, it'll be fifty. It'll be fifteen. Yeah, you're not. Wait, doing no, too bad. sixteen. But one's leaving. Just one. Just one. All right. You guys, where's Tom Norst? Yeah, hey, where's Tom? Where's Tom? Somebody call Tom. Man down. Yeah, Tom should be here. He'd be lighting this game up. He would be lighting this game up. We are calling Tom, Steve Tom, is, Epstein. Tom is the best player in the St. Charles uh, club. He he does tournament style. He he goes to tournaments and he uh he plays as well. So he's ranked. <laughs> exactly. Once he blew up my fishtails, I was like, I gotta sell this. I've been Hello? there. Steve. Hello? Hello. Hi, is this Steve? Hello? Hello? Interesting. Uh, yeah, we're Hello? experiencing. Hi, Steve. Steve? All right, well, that didn't go well. Hmm. Make sure I'm not uh, making a mistake here. No uh, mutage going on. I, I can tell exactly how your brain's working right now. It's not working, man. It's like hmm. I'm, I'm looking at this. Where do I go to just to look? You see that microphone. Do a test. It has to be. Uh, oh, microphone. You can see it moving. Well, because it's picking up off of a webcam. Oh, gotcha. Was the refresh? Yeah, I'm gonna shut this down, Steve. If you're watching the stream, I'm gonna I'm gonna buzz you right back in a second. I don't know why that didn't save the settings. Oh, here's the back. What? Yeah. Yeah. These chairs are unforgiving after two hours. Ken's got the core, the core muscles going up, you know? Yeah. Mine are like... Yeah. I've never had anybody tell me that before. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hi, Steve. Yeah, this is he. Hey, Steve. This is Ken, Bill, and Steve from Special When Lit Podcast. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great. I'm great. I'm just very excited for what's going on over there. Oh, that's awesome. Now, I was talking to... Uh, to Dan and he's like you got to give a, a call to Steve Epstein so I wanted to give you a call and uh, for those that are in chat that might not be familiar with you and your work can you bring everybody up to speed to uh, you know what you're doing within pinball and, and generally as 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 Steve right now or, or yeah. Oh, just for, yeah for just the, in general <laughs> sure a little history lesson would be perfect well I mean I I, I, I I, I owned and operated an amusement arcade called the Broadway Arcade in New York City. Yep. Uh, that's where I met Roger Sharp. Uh, that's where we developed Papa and uh, 
so on and so on. So wow. that's the quick quick version of it. <laughs> and the rest was and, history. Uh, <laughs> the rest and, and now I'm now I'm trying to uh, you know bring whatever I can to uh, Daniel and, and and Project Pinball. Uh, I've just gotten smitten by uh, the whole the whole concept, and you know just really uh, throwing myself into trying to uh, you know fulfill his dream and, and uh, you know bring this to every kid that could, could use it use the therapy of playing pinball in the hospital it's great absolutely so what so what, what kind of things are have yeah. you what kind of things are you doing to work with uh, project pinball uh well basically I, i'm trying to uh, you know develop uh, maybe a tournament program with daniel on a little higher level uh bring whatever cachet i i have in my name uh, to you know, to bring awareness to the uh, of the charity outside the pinball community, right. uh, you know, and and you know, because that's uh, it's an incredible community. But there's you know, there's a world of other people that I love to you know to get in touch with what pinball does and how it how it operates and how it it's just this incredible thread that develops through life with it. And uh, you know, I, I, I see it as a as that's a vehicle to get to that point. Absolutely. Now, so you're you're a legend in pinball. I mean. What, can you talk a little bit about changes you've seen, you know, when you compare how it was when you got into the scene versus how it is currently? Well, you know, basically, <laughs> I don't have the best way. I, I, I look at it in, in a very different way, I think. I mean, I, I, pinball to me is just the movement of the ball around the play field right. and how that is accomplished from the day I started playing to now, yes, that's changed. Dynamics have changed as far as the visual parts of it. Uh, to me, I, I, I give me. I'm an old school guy. I like a plain play field that I can see a ball hit the flip. You know, you flip, you make your shot. You watch it go up, yeah. go, come around, hit everything. See the ball constantly. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And you know, you have your whatever the, the goals are. Yeah, you, you achieve, and but you're seeing that right in front of you. Right. So all the dynamics on the, on the play field are there is great. But if you you know whatever goes on on the back glass, whatever the motion is, I mean, for me, as a look up, you know, I'm watching the ball. Yeah. So right. I'm not seeing all that great animation and stuff. And actually, when I'm watching someone else play, I'm still watching the ball. Right. What right. Fascinates me about pinball. What, what's stuff, I, you know, it's great. Whatever order you yeah, go ahead. <laughs> what's your favorite era of pinball? As far as like, I mean, what what's the heyday of uh, pinball as uh, far as uh, machine manufacturing and uh, playability? Well, you know, uh, yeah, Gottlieb, uh, and it's it's the same story for everyone. You know, Gottlieb in the '60s and the '50s, uh, it, you know, Cadillac. You know, it just couldn't get anything better. Uh, they unfortunately somehow did not make it into a solid state ever in, in a great fashion. And it, it, the Williams Valley stuff in the 80s and the 90s, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I loved it. You know, I still watch well, any pinball is great. So, but, you know, uh, I stick more to the 60s, uh, early 70s uh, as my favorite era of playing pinball. But that's really where I developed all my connections to pinball was then. It seems like the competitive scene has grown exponentially, especially over the past, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. When you started, Papa, I mean, did, did you envision it where it is today? Is this something that was always on your radar? Uh, definitely it was on our radar. Um, we, we, we knew that, uh, that it had the potential of introducing this and, and developing it as a competitive vehicle uh, that was definitely uh, so... I mean, we, you know, Roger and I both understood it was never going to be competitive to video. Right. Uh, at least as far as the technology that exists so you can interact with it. But still, there is an audience that definitely, <laughs> and you want to call it the niche audience, uh, you know, 80, 100,000 people strong. Yeah, I mean, that's what's going on now. Tournaments every weekend. Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's phenomenal. You know, I, I, I couldn't have dreamt it to be as far as the way it evolved. Because I didn't really, at that point in my my life, it, it was operators with arcades and, and you know games on location. Now it's more people that are having, you know, their friends come into their homes to play their collections. Yeah, right. And that's the whole different dynamic that has allowed this really to develop as fast as it could. Because sure. in my day, the operator was a uh, 
the, the person that wasn't going to be helpful in developing, you know, competitive pinball. It was just too much work. But you know, you get these I love these great people that you know collect and are enthusiastic about everything about the game, and you know it, that's what actually brought it to where it is today, in my mind at least. <laughs> For those that are just joining us right now, we've got Steve Epstein on the phone right now, and, and he's just talking pinball in general. Now, you mentioned Roger Sharp. I know you guys are buddies. Roger was in here earlier today. He was streaming with us for the charity stream. Uh, do you remember how you met Ra Roger originally? Oh, it's very vivid uh, in my mind. Uh, <laughs> I bet it was. Uh, I, I, at the time, you know, I, yeah, we, uh, uh, at that time, and I guess it was 1975, I guess, uh, uh, pinball was just not illegal in, in the city, but it started some some sort of pinball machine was allowed in, but it had no plunger. It had more of a top pencil where you could press a button. So right. uh, that we had we had three of those types of machines, and at that time, a, a, a guy who would come in with a big beard uh, every night, just walking around playing, and actually how that's how we met. We met actually playing pinball because I I played. Uh, at the Broadway Arcade around 1975, 76. That's, 75, uh, wow. It was just <laughs> walking in and uh, over a pinball machine, we found, formed a friendship in a bond that uh, lasted quite that a That is pretty cool, man. Do, do you think that yeah. is, when pinball, when in your opinion, or, or let me rephrase this question. Has pinball already peaked in history, or have we yet to see the peak of pinball, in your opinion? Hmm. What was that? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just asking, do you feel that pinball has already peaked and, and at one, some point in the past? Oh. Or do you think that pinball has, the, uh, has an opportunity to actually peak as we go forward in the future? Uh, peak, that's an interesting concept. Pinball is like a roller coaster. Yeah, I mean, right. the industry has been up and down. It goes, you know, sure. favorable, non-favorable. But the, the reality is pinball is, will never reaches full potential because it hasn't reached an audience that, you know, will under, you know, can get to the point where it's going to explode. But it has done phenomenally well. And it's, you know, it, 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 as far as the way it used to be in the industry, we had manufacturers producing pinball for you know commercial use and out into the public i mean yeah the heyday of that, that is over i mean that, that i don't see happening okay, unless okay. all the collectors as they are starting to do bring their collections out and start monetizing them like all these great guys that are doing these pinball museums yeah uh, bob aventos is definitely comes to mind in new jersey in florida i mean it's phenomenal so that yes uh, you know that's that potential is there and that to me I don't think it had even begun to reach a peak. I so think you think just the, at the beginning, to be the honest, collectors yeah. getting their their games out on location per se could help with the revival mm. of, like oh, a new, of like a new that heyday. Is the revival. Of, okay, but really, that is that is the revival. There's really not that many uh, pinball operators. I mean, per se, uh, you know, Jim Pelosito comes to mind. I mean, uh, at a really you know, good and, and do this uh, at, at a level. I mean, I I met a, a wonderful man up in Morristown, New Jersey, and he a, was a, a pharmacist and now got a 110-piece location right in the town center of Morristown. Wow, 110. It's phenomenal. He's got 20 pins in there uh, from his collection, and then he's buying some new ones, you know, as he goes along. So, yeah, I mean, I see this, and I've never envision this and i like i said i, I it, it's phenomenal and i think it's going to continue what about the guys that own like maybe 15 or 20 and just putting a couple on location and, and their local you know family friendly bar yeah. or even not family friendly sure. restaurant or do you think yeah, that's uh, that's better uh, than uh, them keeping I, them I in their, in their made, homes it, and yeah i'm just, well, that's up to them, to be honest with you. I mean, it's it's some work. I mean, you're taking your babies and you're putting them out into the public that abuse the hell out of them, to be honest with you. And that's you know, yeah. you got to you know, that's a, that's a consideration for sure. And uh, you have to have the stomach for it. And but to me, the more people they get to see pinball and get to touch it, but that haven't seen it or done it, it can, they they respond very well. I mean, you have a chance to get them as repeat customers. So, you know, it, 
it's, it's, it's a hard, hard thing to do. But, yeah, I mean, that's the way it's going to progress. I don't think it's going to be uh, uh, where the uh, there's no going to be a, a group of uh, operators like I used to be and say, well, you know, now I'm going to start putting pinball in. I mean, right. I did mm-hmm. that. Yeah, I did that for a while in, in another location, and it works. But that's me. I, you know, as Roger always says, it's hard to duplicate me. You know, but uh, you know, it, it's got to be more out there, and you know, it, anything that gets pinball out into the public makes pinball better. Let yeah. me get, let me Love get your it. thoughts on uh, just pinball media, and when I say media, I, I think of you know uh, news outlets and podcasts and YouTube channels. Do you think that that's a help or a hindrance for the pinball scene moving forward? Uh, yeah, uh, and that's part of the pinball world that I, I haven't connected to on a larger level yet. So mm-hmm. it, it, if it offers an honest discussion, then it's only positive for pinball. If it becomes something where it becomes a platform for one's point of view and there's no other view, yeah, then that's sure. a problem. But an open dialogue about pinball is great. I, I, I talk to people about it all the time. And the beautiful part of pinball, and that's what makes Pinball's pinball so great, is everyone's perspective is a little different. Yeah, everyone's right. experience is a little different, but the experience about playing pinball is still the same, and that brings people together, and it's a great, incredible power. And you, you see evidence of that uh, this evening as we get ready to wrap up this 24-hour stream, uh, where a lot of people have indifferences or differences within pinball things that they like, machines that they like, uh, manufacturers that they follow. Like it seemed like over the last 24 hours, everybody worked together as a team towards a common goal. And it was nice to see the community come together and actually just, just fire on all cylinders um, with it, without any, oh, without yeah, any angst, is which is nice. Um, Steve, how can people get a hold of you if they want to reach out and just say hello? Are, are you available on, on any uh, social media networks or uh, email or home phone number? Even? Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. uh, email, email, email would be fine. It's, you know, Epstein4 at uh, AOL.com. I'm Epstein4 at AOL. Oh, AOL. The AOL. Uh, I love it. Uh, uh, That's yeah, classic. AOL. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. But And, and I do have, you know, on Facebook, I have an, an account, and there's uh, Friends of Broadway Arcade that's actually there that, uh, if anyone has any memories or pictures or anything of the old Broadway Arcade, I'd love to have them, you know, post them and send them over because, you know, everyone was nice. Well, back in my day, no one had cameras. Yeah. You yeah. didn't walk around with a phone with a camera, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it was, it was, it was, you know, a great location, and, and you know, a lot of people, you know, went through there, and so it'd be great to hear from people and what they thought and, you know, felt about it. Well, listen, Steve, I never had an opportunity to meet you face-to-face, so I hope next time uh, I'm at a pinball show or at the same pinball show, I, you don't mind that I come up and introduce myself formally and uh, just kind of uh, shake your hand and thank you for everything not. that you've done. Uh, I'm definitely going to be starting to travel around to more pinball shows in, in support of the charity. So, yeah, Very I'm cool. going to be out for quite a few more adventures in the next couple of months, and hopefully, yeah, anytime. Uh, you know, I'm always, I'm always loving to talk to anybody about pinball. That's awesome. For sure. <laughs> Steve, Steve Epstein, okay, thank you great. so much for joining the show. And again, I look forward to meeting you. Everybody reach out, say hello. Uh, Steve's going to be doing more work with Project Pinball Charities. And uh, it sounds fun. It sounds exciting. Love what you guys are doing. Keep it up. Keep up the good Very work. So. And, and, th- and really, thank everybody for their support. Incredible community. I love it. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you Steve. Thanks, Steve. Have a good All weekend, right. buddy. And Merry Christmas. Okay. All right. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Fun. I've never spoken with Steve before, and uh, that was that was a fun conversation. That was awesome. Yeah, cool, laid back guy, full of pinball history. Found a Papa Roger Sharp style working with uh, Project Pinball now, helping expand the uh, the charity and the awareness. I like that, guys. Yeah, I like if, that if too. you're if you're hoarding pinball machines, do something good. Cause with them. throw them on a location, right? Sixteen bit. Thanks, Cause. Do something good with them. Yeah, right? might as well. Or at least have you ever considered that, Bill? I do have you, thought Do you of consider it. this a location? I've considered it. Uh, this is a you're, you're throwing private stuff on collection. Oh, well, you know what? That's a good point. Kind, of, kind of a location. I am guy's, expanding the word of hasty. pinball. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> In Studio C. Via our, uh, our streaming platforms. Man, sorry. Two hours, 30 minutes to go before we good combo, though. close down the stream. Last chance, guys, if you're looking to get in on the auction items, you can go to Facebook, Special When Lit Pinball Podcast. Search for us there. Cause. Cause. Um, and then look at the auction items that are available because those we've got about uh, 90 more minutes before we shut the auction items down, before we shut the stream down an hour after that. And it uh, looks like we're well on our way with those auction items to the uh, $50,000 mark. 
which is Getting still closer. blowing my mind. I don't think anybody collectively in chat, uh, anybody that's uh, been following the stream, us here, will really kind of realize uh, what was accomplished uh, from everybody's efforts until we kind of digest it over the next day or two. It's uh, it's, it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. Everybody, uh, especially, I love that the time of the year, too, is, is real... Uh, Beneficial with it being a holiday, it is. you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's just I like perfect. that. You know what, Ken? I'm just blown away that you're still awake. You're still driving these conversations. <laughs> you're still <laughs> coherent. Barely. That blows my mind too. With nothing for sleep. Major lack of sleep right now. I woke up at six I'm o'clock yesterday. Blown morning. away. So how many? I think it's. You're going 36. Don't do math, bro. Bust up. I'll be up 36 straight hours at six o'clock. 36 um, straight. And then I get to and then you got to go to dinner. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> May I I'd ask, call where's, sl- that, what, where's dinner? What type of food are you? I would, oh do you know where gosh. you're going? I'd be calling and sleeping. No, I don't know where we're going to go, but... Um, you know, order some more pizza? I might just need... I know. I might need an IV. It's just, hey, just... <laughs> can you pour uh, Miller Lite and some uh, fish sticks into that IV for oh, me? Oh, Miller just, Lite and fish sticks. That's it. <laughs> it's a good combo. <laughs> How the F did you hit 40K, Siggy Sour said. Well, we didn't hit 40K. You guys hit 40K. You guys hit 40K. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You got Kaz donating another 20. Kaz, Kaz is just making it rain the, you, the bits. I love it. Kaz is in the like the, the race, like the turtle. I you know, just I little know. Bit here, little slow movement here, little movement here. Slow and steady wins. The he race. spreads the wealth. No, man, Kaz, we appreciate it. Kaz nailed it with the polynomials, of course. Kaz had, didn't you have to get up early and do something? I, I recall some... Uh, Conversation last night. Why you had to go to bed? Because he has a life. He had sleep. That's a good point. Rodcom. Rodcom. Rodney Kabijis. He's been, he's been the man all stream too. You know, I appreciate every single little bit that's come in here. Every all the big donations. I'm just seeing a lot of the same names keep popping up, popping up, and I think it's I think it's pretty unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> You say polynomials, and dude, it's like Beetlejuice. Dennis is out in, out in chat. Uh, Dwight's in here. I could see a Bill shirt. Life finds a way. It does, Dennis. With, 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 a, with a bunch of uh, just Bill quotes, Bill sayings. Right. I don't know. I think Dennis <laughs> has better. You do I have quite a lot of sayings. He's though. got a lot of sayings. I could see a... Uh, uh, Southwest. 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 Oh, go ahead, guys. Oh, go ahead, man. Uh, Southwest Pennsylvania Pinhead. Incredible job to everyone who has helped out and appeared on the 24-hour live stream. You are a force. No, kid. man. Seriously, thank you. But it's sincerely like this is not a one-man show at all. It's like a team of freaking people that helped out today. And, it is a team. And a but very you are the driving force. Community. You, you know, you just brought this together. I mean, it is a group effort at this point. It was an it's idea that everybody effort. worked on. And that's the it's, honest It's truth. a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's, 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 it's awesome. worked out, I think, it's beyond awesome. it. Anybody here's expectations. I yeah. mean, wow. Billums. Just to let you know, the Wonka bid went up to 1150 now. Wow, the Willy wow. Wonka Playfield, Ryan is here, is, uh, is at $1,150. With that match, it's a $2,300 Playfield donation. And who do we have for that? Kyle so, Reed. Oh, Kyle. Kyle's come in and... Uh, Taking back the number one spot. Wait, who we got a little. Uh, Kyle Bosses back in. Kyle top Reed like had a thousand, and I, and I think uh, Joe Fox came in at, at eleven fifty. See, here's the problem. Ka- so we got a little. Uh, we got a little. Oh, I, dude, little I got, auction battle I got, going on. I got okay. a feeling it's going to get real. The last twenty minutes. It's going to get ugly. Thanks, Rodcom sixty nine. It's nice. And yeah, so which, by the way, we have twenty bits. We have an hour and a half left, you, guys. Dennis. Thanks, Dennis. We're going to hit fifty thousand dollars, buddy. It's, it's going to go to. 50. We have an hour and a half left. On these auctions, guys. Yeah, so here was my thought. Around 4 o'clock, we uh, show the items one more time, let people know how they can go in and bid on them or look at them if they want. Oh, half okay. an hour. Um, get Ken about 20, 30 minutes to uh, stare, gather himself. Stare at a wall. Stare at a wall. Recoup. Stick his head in the fridge, whatever he he, he deems fit. And, I, would, uh, I would like to get some, just some cold fresh actually air. Actually, a little uh, oh, one-foot garage open. Yeah, that would not be bad either. That's a good time. Um, so, yeah, around 4 o'clock, that's, I think, a good plan, unless you think a uh, different idea. 
But no, I thought that sounds great, Bill. I, I think I, it's good I like idea. that. Yeah. You know, we got enough help here that everyone can kind of Vanna White this stuff I think right now. That kind of like last hour between yeah. four and five, we can kind of yeah maybe go through each at. one and and, and, and see and where we're at. Pull here. up the totals. Ryan's been checking that out, and he's been on point with that. So yeah, thanks, Ryan. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. All right, I'm gonna step out so we can get ready for this four o'clock thing for a minute. No, you got, you got 25 minutes, so you're good, man. Take your time. Bill, you want to grab me a uh, Lord of the Ring breath? Cheering 200 bits. Lord of the Ring breath. Thank you, Lord of the Ring breath. 200 bits become 400 bits. Two dollars becomes four dollars. And he says polynomials do not lie. Lord of the Ring breath. One of the best names in uh, Twitch handles. I, I was one of the first I remember. I remember he called in once on the Flipping Out stream, or uh, and, and I'm like, tell me, how did you come up with the name Lord <laughs> of the Ring Breath? He's that. like, well, I like Lord of the Rings, and I just added breath after it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, was like, well, I was like, well, I guess that's <laughs> that as good classic. of an excuse or a good enough of an explanation so. as any. Hey, where, where, where's Bill? You want to grab Ken? You need a drink? No, I'm just drinking water, man. Cool. If I start having drinks. It's gonna get sloppy the last uh what do we have two hours two and a half hours 20 minutes and then dinner with the parents <laughs> dinner with the parents after that bone and beef monster bash $800. bill likes to disappear bill he does like to disappear he just likes to go out and check the weather occasionally Okie dokie, where's Bill? We were, we were talking about that, right? Hey, Lord of the Ring Breath. Well, we were talking about that, too. Oh, gosh. Ken's they, on they, repeat. It's Groundhog they, Day Thank you, Streamlabs, for uh, letting us know Day. Lord of the Ring Breath had uh, cheered 200, 200 bits. Unreal. So, for those of you wondering who are these guys that are in here with us, it's our St. Charles Pinball Crew. These are the guys, the foundation of our pinball uh, extracurricular activities. Uh they're playing a little Elvira, uh, House of Horrors. They just fired up a little Lord of the Rings. St. Charles Pinball Crew, we went ahead and made a uh, financial contribution to the stream tonight uh, for Project Pinball Charities. And remember, it's not too late to make a financial contribution. All dollars are being matched. Uh, dollar for a dollar by Adam Schwartz out of New York City. Replica X with two. Replica Man, X. 2000. 2000. 2000. Hang on. We have a tie. What a classy move by Replica we X. We have a tie. 130,000 bits to 130,000 bits. Imagine. He didn't go 130,000 in one bits. One, yeah. He went 100. I thought that was a real classy Very move. cool, man. Repl Replica X, nicely done. And Mod Couple Pinball, outstanding. Woo. That is just awesome. And Dwight, thanks for thanks for hanging out this morning, man. I, I'm sorry oh, I man. wasn't here for that. but uh, It was great. Yeah, hopefully uh, we'll catch you back before the end of the uh, the stream here. I felt bad like because uh, that was when I stepped away for my uh, little shower. So Dwight was in here and uh, he was running the stream with Jason Fowler and Roger Sharp and Ryan Kuyper and uh, Dave Brennan. You know what? I caught 30 minutes of that. I loved it. Oh, yeah. I, I want to go back and rewatch that whole thing. We're going to be releasing that on, uh, on Blu-ray. <laughs> Coming up pretty Blu soon. <laughs> Blu-ray. <laughs> Blu-ray. Coming out um, in 2021. <laughs> Lord of the Ring Breath with some uh, emotes or what are those called? Are those considered emotes? Oh, they yeah, look pretty I think sophisticated. Okay. Like I don't see that stuff coming out of my phone, do I? I don't know. I think so. Dragermeister. That's still up. With with six hundred and sixty six bits, which actually uh, are doubled up. So way way to come in and uh, <laughs> make yourself known, Scott. Yeah, Scott nice had a know, very man. generous donation. Scott um, was on had a huge. Stream? Scott came in and he donated it uh, five hundred bucks. Yeah. Right off the bat, boom. huge, uh, pretty awesome. And then Falgren Thanks kept again, saying, buddy. "Plus his three hundred thirty-three dollars." He said he was going to pledge for, to come in. And I'm like, "No, Dave, that's part. It's it's, it's more. It's like <laughs> it's more." Dave was trying to upsell him. I liked it. Uh, Scott and Dave were nice this morning. It was good having them in because it was uh, that wee hour of the morning where we needed that. You if could the, go either way, just, right? If it was just you and I then. You're like, oh, I'm going like, to drag here. But, so, Ken, uh, what's going on now? Dave was certainly keeping myself on my toes, and uh, <laughs> Scott was always controlled and, and reserved. And at one point, Dave's like, Scott, go ahead. You can go. I'll stay here, and I'll run the stream. And I was like, <laughs> I was like Dave, I, how are you going to get home, Dave? <laughs> it's like, I'm not driving <laughs> home. Um, but, yeah, it was awesome having those guys in. Good times. I was fun. Yeah. 
that was my last win. Was right around then. I felt bad. I wanted to be on my on my game. Yeah, yeah. Now Ryan, so your company comes in and and, and throws a four thousand dollar donation, which boom gets matched. So it's an eight thousand donation. Your donation like is putting a pinball machine in a children's hospital. That's got to be feel pretty awesome, man. It does. It's it's it incredible. It's a great cause. It is a great cause. And and you do transportation, right? You said for uh, for kids that might need to be transported to uh, different children's hospitals, clinics, etc. Yes, we yeah. Do. Stressful work. It is. Yeah. It is. Um, you, know, you see a lot of things that you don't want to see. Yeah. See, that's yeah. tough. Um, that's tough. But you know, something like this, you put a pinball. You know, it does help them. It does. Um, yeah. You know, because they're stuck in a hospital, they don't want to be there. Um, it sort of gets a release. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a distraction from, yeah. and that the whole family can do it too. You know, yeah, the parents can. And do the it staff, I mean, yeah. nobody's necessarily having a good time. It's limitless in that environment, right? The, so to the put FedEx guy that comes in to drop off a package, hey, I'll put a couple of games on this uh, Wizard of Oz uh, Ruby Red. Well, like how Dan was saying, you know, they he'd wheel a game in, yeah. and all the staff and all the parents would be following him. He said, like the Pied oh my Piper, gosh. right? Yeah, the, the Pied Piper, you're like, oh my gosh, a pinball. That's pretty awesome. I haven't seen that in years. It's fun. But and what? everyone's like, I used to play that. Once you plunge, you don't, you don't, you don't, well, some of the kids nowadays do. They walk away, but it's like, you learn that game yeah. and you learn to appreciate it. It's, 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 Another it's better thing than I saw, a video like, game. You know, so kids that are, you know, gaining their strength back, right? Kaz, 8 bits. Thank you, and, Kaz. And, and trying to just get back up on their feet, they, they can lean on a pinball machine. I never thought of that. And kind of, have fun while gaining their entire body strength. Have that back. distraction. Like, how cool is that? Right. That is pretty cool. Yeah. Like, instead of just doing it like on some rails, you know, in a. S- well, and instead of explaining it, why don't we just go ahead and why don't we witness it here? Let's do it uh, up. Project Pinball. Project Pinball helps rehabilitation. For a kid that's in a hospital, you're playing a pinball machine and. For the time being, you don't have to really think about where you are or what you're doing. You're focused solely on playing pinball. You know, pinball <laughs> pinball can be fun, but it can also be therapeutic because slamming that ball around when you're angry mm. sure does make you feel a little bit better. You know what, one thing I like about it, it makes a move. Laps around the wards is replaced to a lap down to the pinball machine and standing for an hour. They have to use both hands. You kind of find yourself when you're playing pinball moving into it to play. And uh, so the kids can come in here, number one, stand, the ones are having that issue, but they can still hold on, so they get that strengthening. And then they, they're using both hands and eye and watching. So, uh, so it's going to be a great non-therapy therapy. Exactly. And having a good time. Pinball's great because it's lights, it sounds, and you're so focused on getting that ball and hitting that target and getting those points that you're really not thinking about why you're in the hospital. You're able to distract your time away a little bit. Pinball is a way to get your mind for the moment off of whatever is happening in your personal life. Even if it is a bad situation, having to be in a hospital, seeing a pinball machine can make it all better. I just want to give back any way that I can. And my passion for pinball I think was a great partner for, you know, this giving. www.projectpinball.org. If you haven't visited the site, go in there and see what they're all about. It's uh, it's amazing. Dan was saying uh, 46 machines nationwide in uh, children's hospitals and growing. So 46, soon to be uh, <coughs> 54, if, right? If we get eight, eight pins in there. Or eight six. Pins. Six. Ooh, oh, I'm getting wow. all right. How about six pins? Six pins. 48,000. Oh, let's, let's go for 100 grand, guys. Let's. <laughs> 48,000 would make it. We're going to run the stream for another 36 hours. Let's, let's extend it. Uh, of those in studio, yeah. if you could only own one 1980 to 1989 pin, what would be your current choice? Oh. 80 to 89. I'm going to go whirlwind. Yeah, I'm, I'm immediately thinking of the System 11s. And I think it would be, for me, like Earthshaker. I think a lot of people would, would pick Funhouse. I think that's I think that's 89. That was the... Uh, might be 90. I'm pretty sure it's... 
It was like the last it's of the, the last of the System 11s for sure. Roman's not from the 80s. Was it 90s? Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Let's get our decades right here, Ken. I think uh, Funhouse is definitely. I think Earthshaker is 89, right? Or uh, no, Whirlwind's mistaken. Whirlwind's got to be from the 80s. Hang Whirlwind on. was the sister pin. It might have been 1990. Was it? Was it the very back end of System 11? What year was uh, Whirlwind? I, I pegged Whirlwind from the 80s too, actually. I'd have to say Torpedo Alley. Yeah, oh, Torpedo, Torpedo Alley. Alley. Good game. What about everybody here in chat? If you had one pin from 1980 to 89. Hard body. What would you pick? Throbbing heart. What would you pick and what's your main reason for doing so? I like this question. Black Knight 2000. Oh. 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 You've got the power. Where one was manufactured January 90. Oh, you missed oh, it. By that much, by Come that on. And I, uh, I know that Dennis took great pleasure in correcting you on that. I know. On that, on that, like, it's all one good. Month it's all good. I love it. I love it. I'll be a month off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all oh, right. So, awesome. uh, yeah, I don't know. This and I got to reevaluate. It's, <laughs> I do need to reevaluate. Let me second guess. Over extracted Harlem, Harlem Grove, Globetrotters. Globetrotters. I love everything on that game. Does anybody have a lot of time on... Uh, oh, Taxi was good, too. You got Taxi, you got Diner. Uh, what, like Bad Cats? And uh, that was just a, like a... Well, some fun ones, out. Yeah, some, some good ones. What about Time Machine? Have you ever put a lot of time on Time Machine? Uh, not enough time on the Time Machine. On the Time We've Machine. Pl we, we played the Time Machine at, uh, at Pinball Life. That was Dave Fogg's Dave Time Fogren's Machine. Time I remember machine. that. That he had brought in. We need more time on that game. That's that's a good game. Would you mind Same if I good. just stepped out and got some fresh air? Yeah. Well, I would. I would prefer or, it. Or crack that garage for. I'll crack the garage too to get some fresh air in here. Well, we just smoked, so I was waiting a couple minutes so it burns off. Oh, okay. Burns off. What are you burning up? <laughs> Not like that. I think it'll be cyclone. Fine. Cyclone, yeah. F fourteen. Uh, F fourteen seems real hit or miss. You either love the game or you can't stand the game. I could. I could. Probably for Raven. Pass. Well, you had one, dude. You offloaded quick. Raven always yeah, seems like a machine that needs to be rethemed. You need some fresh artwork on a, on a Raven. And thanks for cheering the bit there, Kaz. Appreciate it, buddy. Because that bit, Kaz, becomes two bits. And no, and no bit is too small. No bit is too small. Oh, Wookie Jeep. Wookie Jeep with twenty bits. Thank you, Wookie, Wookie Jeep. Jeep. Yeah, I'm, run. Run. I'm really digging Bonsai, Bonsai Run. I just picked one up. So, Well, that was from the uh, 80, 89. Yeah, I'm, I'll I, be back. I could have swore Whirlwind was from 80s. No, no. Just, no, 1990. 1990. We've been corrected. Yeah, we've been corrected. It, dude, it even has the WPC style cabinet. You talk like you built gotcha. one or something, Bill. What the heck? Yeah, yeah, bro. There was a guy selling a play field today for 450 on on uh, Facebook. So, Bill... Uh, Dennis Kriesel asks, what's your favorite 80s pin? 80s? 80s. Going deep here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still going through. I'm like, mm, yeah. Eh. I know it's going to sound. What's my favorite, though? What's your favorite? <sighs> Probably either Elvira and the Party Monsters or High Speed. Oh, High Speed, good. Good choice. You know, I know those are like safe answers, but I mean, they're iconic for a reason. You know, we get the original Black Knight. Good Black game. Knight 2000. Good game. game. Wait, when was the original Black Knight, though? Because I'd 80, I think. I'd go Black Knight 2000 over original Black Knight. Yeah, I'd, I'd go there. I'd agree there. Black Knight 2000 is a darn I'm getting game. a little bummed because I just sold. Two of my almost, you know, I, I regarded them. I, I had them in high regards. Two th Black Knight 2000 and Fishtails. And Getaway. And Getaway. And I didn't want to get rid of any of them. Either of those. Either of those three. And now they're all gone. And now we're talking about it. So I'm going to go lay on the couch, curl up in them. No. 
You know what? They come, they go. What, what, you can what, get what, them back. What are you going to cry over? Exactly. It's not a big deal. And dude, here, I know where one fish tails is in this group. I know where two getaways are in this group. There we go. Three exactly. getaways. We could still, still playing. What year was so, Roller Games? I feel like Roller Games was 90, wasn't it? Very late 80s. Rock, rock, rock and roller games. I'm sure you had one at some point. I did. Actually, man, we had a conversation earlier. How many people have I turned on a pinball? I forgot that I sold my neighbors, my next door neighbors, a Roller Games. I bet they probably still have it, don't they? Oh, they do. I had to replace the batteries just a couple weeks ago. They're like, hey, uh... The game's resetting. Game's not working. Roller games, 1990. 90, damn, everything's 90. What, Janu- January 1990? I could look. Am I going to be am I gonna be 30 days off again, Bill? Maybe maybe even two days off. If it's January 2nd. No, I think it'd be early 90s. Or uh, er, early 90. Roared and back June. online. Get in that pool, buddy. Grab your... June. Grab your coffee. Grab your... Uh, <laughs> Dennis, man, he's in rare form today. Yes, you're. Yes, it was June though, Dennis. Oh, it's June. <laughs> Polynomials uh, don't lie. <laughs> oh, I love it, man. Hey, hey, number love for Dennis. Dennis is a final good dude. stretch, guys. Two minutes and I mean two, two hours minutes. and two minutes. nine minutes. As Five. you can tell, it is the final stretch. Five guys just looked up. Two minutes. Where did the time go? So she said. Well. <laughs> no, she said it a little differently. <laughs> I did. I got two hours, Rorden, and I took a, a a shower, and it felt great for the first hour. I literally, the first hour's up. I was like, "I oh, can do this. This is awesome." Yeah. And then I hit a my you know tenth brick wall. Then, then, then I asked my wife if she could drive me here because I was like, I'm not comfortable with driving, and knowing that you know, either I leave my car here or I drive home tired each later hey it's not worth it man no it's not so charity doesn't want anyone getting hurt doing this no it's not worth it. not no. at all yeah roller games was a 90 i just don't know if roller games actually was in a wpc 95 cabinet uh funhouse that's actually a good question because that was wpc funhouse i think is 89 uh 90 was it 90 i think that was one of the last but that was a uh, a wpc style cabinet and it was the first WPC um, platform. Replica X has 1990 for Funhouse. Yeah, Man, 1990, 1990 was was a year, huh? TX. We just fired off like three three great games from 1990. Yeah. Yeah. High speed was 86. F14 was 87. I want to say Elvira was 88. Right. Someone, if you that makes sense. Let me know, guys, if I'm wrong. I got no problem being wrong. Um, but yeah, I wanted to say that was like 88 or 89. Um, All right, just to get this question 89, answered okay. on my end, I'm gonna go bonsai run because I just picked one up. I'm freaking loving it. It's super unique. Yeah, it might be a little uh, repetitive, grindy. Uh, you know, I love the soundtrack. It's cool. Uh, yeah, Put baby, six baby William yeah. loves the soundtrack. <laughs> love that soundtrack. <laughs> Uh, that was a good time. That was a good time. I can't believe you I still like can't that. believe I still can't believe you showed up with a freshie in a basket, <laughs> plopped them on the table. Listen, so I showed up to BD's house on a pinball night because I was off the next day. Bill says, you know, I, obviously I can't make it. Instead of going for a, I have drive, a newborn, yeah, I have a newborn, and, and honestly, I haven't made it out for a whole lot. Um, and then uh, he wasn't sleeping, so I went for a drive, and I said, I'm driving to Steve's. If he falls asleep, I'm going in Steve's. When and he, he only told Baby William. What he, he didn't tell anybody else. No, no, I did not. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't, he didn't tell us. All night. He didn't tell us. He didn't tell Jamie. No, no. You guys looked at me like you, I was crazy bringing a <laughs> six-week-old to pinball <laughs> night, but I thought I was just fine. It was funny, man. It was a good time. Hey, he I slept have some for good an pictures. hour, 15, on a table while pinball's going on. Yeah, on the middle table. Bonsai run was cranked. Bonsai was was cranked. When, when it got quiet was when he started twitching. Correct, probably pinball. Yeah, Funhouse is still an alphanumeric. 
So I don't know if it has that traditional DMD board in that game. Bonsai, so much fun. All right, I'm reading Dennis's response here. Yeah. Yeah, WPC, but Alpha New York. Yeah. Was Brian of Pinbot also WPC? The very early stages. Yeah, and Maroon's a great dude. Uh, Lord of the Ring Breath is looking forward to playing some Bonsai Run. Verdon. All right. So we have, let's start in order. Uh, we got Steve, myself, Small Pin. Thank you very much for the 500 bits. Snail Pin. Snail Pin. 500 bits. All right. Getting the final push, guys. Party started. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can max this uh, two hours and five. thermometer looking thing out. Yeah. Stretch this mother. Stretch this mother. Um, to my right Fruit is uh, um, Ryan, another one of our pinball club members. Then we have our good friend Joe Chico, Matt, Jeff, Joe, and Chris. Sorry, it's probably not hey guys, this last is, name. This is our our, uh, our, uh, our St. Charles Pinball Club that, uh, I don't know, we've been kind of rocking a few years now. Yeah. All get together, you know, at least once a month, maybe a couple times a month. We yeah. kind of take turns hosting and and we all, you know, all have our collections and... Like I was saying earlier, we just we, we all get along. I mean, we all love pinball. Sometimes we get together and we may not even play a game of pinball. There's so many what nights where we don't play pinball. Exact, right? It's, it's, you know, it's fun. Uh, well, at your house we do because you don't have enough seats, so it works out perfect. Someone has got to play pinball. Come on, man! I got like nine seats. And sometimes you run out. Two and people the couch. Are playing pinball. Nobody ever sits on the couch then. No, the poor dude. Couch. The dog is always sitting on the couch, man. He's like, don't you guys think about it? Yeah, <laughs> he's like, all right. My turn that, the damn, that floor is cold, man. <laughs> oh, he loves the cold floor. Um, the, Neil, the, thank you for the for your PayPal donation. Thank you. Uh, all right, so hold on. Uh, over extracted. It is not. F it's for everything, um, except the only thing that's not included into that right now is the uh, auction that is on Facebook on the special one lit pinball page, which ends in an hour and three minutes, guys. If you want to go in and and put your your bids in now on these awesome items. Uh, check out Special Winlet Pinball Podcast on Facebook, and you can see the you know what we have left on auction. And and that's getting kind of crazy on that. So in a couple minutes, we're gonna start displaying some of the items that are going up, and we'll give a current tally of where they're at. Um, so if some of you guys can help display some of these items here in a minute, maybe ish. All right. Uh, uh, you're leaving? Oh, well, then leave, dude. It's fine. We got we got help, man. You ain't got to play Van if you don't want to. Chris has got to run. Brother, hey, Chris. Appreciate it, brother. Nice seeing you. Jeff, you Jeff, you're rolling too. Game night. Oh, it's game night. What game are you playing tonight, Jeff? Cool. Game nights are nice. always fun. All right, so let's do this. Awesome, guys. All right, so Woo! all right, so who's going to play Vanna for this? Let's go in the What's order that? of when the auctions are. Oh, Ryan, I love it. That's awesome. I will let you dictate which piece goes first. Uh, the oh, no. The Wonka Playfield. All right, so can someone show the Wonka Playfield on camera? Sorry, Joe, you left work to come to work. Just joke. <laughs> work from work. All right, guys. Wookie Jeep, thank you for the 25 yeah. bits. Here's the Wonka Playfield. Signed Playfield. Current bid is $1,150. $1,150 on this Playfield. Thank you, Ryan, for that update. Now, is that a regular or is that a... Uh, it's a Playfield. It is signed. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a signed Playfield. But is that... Uh, I, there's no glitter in it, so it's not a, a, like a CLE Playfield. No, it's not a CLE, but it's, uh, I think it, it's... It might be an LE. Version. They call it's it... A, I think it's a oh, seconds. Standard? standard? Okay, so standard version. Standard seconds, I, I believe, but it's... Hey, it doesn't matter. It man. looks it's beautiful, display, man. Please. I'll tell you what. Hey, listen, if you could have a second from uh, Whitewater back in the day, would you throw it in your game? And a second might be like, oh, there's... One flaw thing yeah. you're never going to Twelve hundred dollars. Sign me up. Yep. All right. So we have the Wonka Playfield at twelve hundred bucks or eleven fifty. Um, next is Houdini. Next is Houdini. Current bid is a 
steal at 350. Oh, 350? That 350 is a steal. For Houdini. It looks like what? Balser signed that one? Hey, Dennis, good luck in the tournament, man. Thanks for joining in. Always good to have you in chat. American yep. football staff. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, yeah, I'm wondering who staff is. And I don't know if this was that one T noted, Joe. There we go. I don't think Wonka was T noted. All right, so that's still a fresh play field that has not been in a game. That is a that is a steal. What is that one? What was the uh, Houdini going for? 300, 350? 350? Hey, guys, you know what? That's not a, a bad price for a play field. The next one is the Atomic Zombie. All right. And this is not a regular play field. This is literally just an art mock-up, so yeah, it's so a guys, solid back. Yeah, so realize there, there are no inserts on this one, no. which is hard to tell from the front. Um, but regardless, it's a beautiful print. Look at those colors. Look at that. That is freaking beautiful. I wish we had a black light here to see that sucker light. You don't up. want a black light out of your bill. Current bid is three seventy five. <laughs> I well, I don't know what you've been doing out here, but I know well, I've been fine. I'm just telling All right, you. So, Ryan, what is the grand total on this playfield so far? Three seventy five. Three seventy five for a Raza playfield? Oh, I'm sorry. Mod couple would like to bid seven fifty. Oh, Whoa. okay. All right, seven fifty. Mod couple, I think is not a bad price for that. No, that's you know that's a one of a kind. I mean, you probably won't see another one like it. No. All right, and then you got your monster bash. All right. Speaking of one of a kind, this Bills. is gold. Bill's eyes cannot be. I think that the, taken off this play. Field, I guys. think, yeah, you seriously, but I think I already got bit outbid on this deal. Bill's in love. Yeah, this one is at Bill's 800. in love. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Yes. Thank you, Deeper. Thank you, Jersey Jack. And CGC. thank you, American Pinball. Uh, thank you, CGC. And this one is signed I, as well. All I believe. these guys. They put all these manufacturers. Steve Ritchie came in with his uh, with his art blades, blades. or yep. not art blades. The the. Uh, is that one signed? I don't see a signature. Doesn't say signed. Okay. All right. So, so you could actually probably still get it signed by George Gomez, maybe. Oh yeah, and that would be a cool piece. I'll sign it. <laughs> <laughs> and the bid just dropped on that piece. <laughs> All right. So what do we have next? An Elvira House of Horrors signed translate. All right. So we're just gonna hold up an Elvira translate that we have a, an extra of. But this is not the signed one because we didn't want to risk its integrity. Uh, yeah, you guys can see the signed one on the uh, the Facebook, Facebook page. Yeah, and all these items are on Facebook, Special One Lit Pinball Podcast. That's at three fifty. Three fifty for the Elvira Translate. That's pretty, so cool, pretty guys. Insane. And then we got a Thank you so much for your generosity. JP signed Translate. Uh, JP a Jurassic Park signed Translate from Stern. At yep, we don't have one. Of how much? Four twenty-five. At four twenty-five. Wow, man, that is crazy. But if yeah, you guys, think about you have an hour left to uh, to place your bids on these. Fifty-seven minutes. It's getting close. Getting close. I see Joe Chico looking at the Houdini playfield, maybe thinking about putting a price in on that, huh? Mm-hmm. Can we get a? Uh, some final countdown playing soon. It's the final countdown. Um, yeah, I, well, we can't actually play the music though. Ah, uh, just us singing that probably. Just us singing. Yeah. The, st the stream's do gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. YouTube rights. We just dropped thirty uh, listeners since you started <laughs> singing. I don't. I don't get. No it. way. Look at it. Look at it. Bump it up. Oh, oh, hey! hey. Bits for Bill. <laughs> Thank you, Kaz. Yeah, Kaz. Yeah, so those are some cool items. I am going to be so sad to see this Monster Bash playfield leave. I just can't justify coming home with it tonight and then explaining how much I purchased it for and why. And then drilling it into the wall. <laughs> uh, bolting no, it. You, you would not do that. Bolt it to the wall? Yes. The wife, yeah. the wife would have this on eBay like, by like 9 o'clock, man. Yeah, like clamping. Like, oh, and we're going to cash out of this sucker. <laughs> yeah, right. It would definitely have to be. Uh, yeah, 
<laughs> no, you would double it. Hopefully, it'd be like. Uh, <laughs> if, if he bought it at twenty five hundred, okay, man, that's, that's a awesome. steal. Please don't sing no, again. He got it for twelve fifty. Uh, All right, so we will not sing again without uh, trying. <laughs> Let me go warm up in the hallway. <laughs> so is it just me or, or the evil side of evil says let's let's assemble Beatles? I was just thinking about. I mean, my truck. oh, hey, hey, look, I can see that too. It's already wrapped, ready to go. Hey. It is ready for transport. You know, so the plan was to kind of kind of shift um, the whole setup to different games tonight. But still a lot of work. I mean, it didn't work out as much. A virus, a virus still rocking. A virus you know, still rocking. And we kind of had the, ba- the backup games, which we haven't needed. No. Because it's, 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 it's ground. It's really held up well. Hey, Siggy Sauer, I'd love to do it, but here's the thing, man. Ken's taking a break, a well-deserved break. Here's what would happen. We'd go to move this rig, and someone is going to have to explain why half the video is out or something crazy. And I don't feel like putting that man through that right now. He's been up this whole time. By the time this ends, he'll, he will have been up 36 hours. He doesn't need that uh, frustration right now. And still has to go to dinner. And still has to go get his kids and then go to <laughs> dinner. That's like a double Dutch punishment right there. Uh, replica, replica X, yeah, I think that's a crazy play field, uh, that Monster Bash. And it's not me trying to pump it up. You know, I'm not trying to pump up some of the other play fields because I think they're great pieces, but that Monster Bash just looks so cool to me. And I have been accused of poor taste in the past, but... All right, so I got confirmation that I did not have bad taste. Joe, are you buying it or what? You putting a bid in? Okay. He's got a it's snipe. a seven fifty right now. Snipe auction, no, eBay 800. style. Oh, 800. 800. 800. 800 guys. Oh, Joe's gonna wait for the last five wow. seconds, and he's gonna pass a piece of paper along the table like this. Be like, my bit. You can't do that though. Mac Man Q. You have to post on Facebook. Says I can't okay. do anything for right. twenty four hours except play pinball. Good job, everybody. Santa Claus. Hey man, cheers. You know, twenty four hours of anything is taxing. I could sleep for 24 you know, hours. That's not terrible. What I thought, you know, when this was going on, I was like, oh, just be awake. 24 hours. Be awake know. for 24 hours. That's not bad. But you forget you got to wake up the morning before that, stay awake for 12 hours, and then start then your 24 start your hours. 24 hours stre- uh, stretch. Um, yeah. I, I, I knew the one to five, I could do that. I knew I'd be fine with it. I didn't. I figured I'd have at least an hour or two nap in between before I had to come back, but that just didn't pan out that way. Nor the uh, mind. <laughs> Rorden, he is our, J, our good friend Jason is halfway to St. Louis probably right about now. Yep. So he had to head home. Getting home. Zach left already. You know, right? Jason. What I heard was only going to just pop in last night, say hi, maybe drop something off, or or maybe not show up at all last night. And tonight was going to be his night. Yeah. But Jason. Sneak attack. Snuck attack. Hey, and it was here late last night. I got a dollar and, right uh, now. We had a good time with Jason. I love that guy, man. I got a dollar that says he's listening, driving back right now, and I'm going to get a phone call. I don't think he had a sneak attack. I was hoping to see him this, today. I, 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 to me, it was unexpected because I didn't, wasn't playing against St. Jason last night. I loved it, though. We didn't uh, loved it. Yeah, because he came in. Uh, yeah, because he came in while I was gone. So Zach's got to be getting home right about now too. Something. Yeah. Right. Or he he had to do a, a delivery or two or, or a pickup or two, and he's got a cruise home. Yeah. He had a... Oh, Bill. Ah. Catching up on Bill over here. No, this is every day, man. It doesn't matter what day. <laughs> You're it is. right. Where's the Fanta? There's somebody, somebody get this man a Fanta. No, it's the, it's the coffee. It's in there. I'll grab it in a second, though. All right, all right. Jo, I work with Joe. Joe knows, man. Every time I come back from coming some places, ding, 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 ding. It's a Starbucks glass going in the <laughs> garbage. Um, let me see here. Yeah, so we answered that. How far? Uh, how far is uh, Fowler's house? Four or five hours. Oh, yeah, four and four, a half. Four and a half. Yeah. Yeah, St. Louis, Louis. Yeah. Four and a half, five, maybe. But he's on like the west side of St. Louis. Like the western suburbs. Yeah. Got to cross that yeah. river. Yeah. He's not in Madison, Illinois. 
So someone's got to keep the gas flowing in St. Louis. Yes, they do. He has a petrol station down there. I'm surprised he's able to make it up, man. Actually, him and uh, um, Zach. Yeah, you know, that was awesome. And Zach stuck it out last night, man. That was a good time. Did anybody hear him talking about how great Popeye was? So you were listening to that conversation, <laughs> oh, huh? Yeah. Right. I kept seeing you in chat. I was like, what are you, what are you doing now, man? Okay. Like three, right, so four who? in the morning. <laughs> you just, every once in an hour, you'd be like, <laughs> that was awesome. You were saying Popeye sucked too, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So I've never actually played Popeye. It just looks like a toilet. You've so I have no intentions of playing. Never been dragged behind a car either. Doesn't mean you're missing it, right? That's then, a good point. And then got persecuted for liking Twister. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I like Twister. Actually, I have mine. I had it for five days, and now it's sold. Um, and Bill's always wanted a Twister. I did want a Twister. Yeah, let it go it's so multi-ball, quick. It's multi-ball heavy. And it plays I Van love the way Halen. that multi-ball and what? flings. It plays Van Halen. I like the Van Halen. Yeah. Humans being. Um, yeah, good stuff. But a good friend was like, hey, if you get rid of it, and I was like, well, you know, there, there's one other game right now that I really want to set my sights on. and It's multi-ball heavy. It's kind of like Demo Man. Um, and I, I like Demo Man a little more than Twister, though. Nah, Demo Man. Garbage! <laughs> so, this is coming from the guy that sold me the last Demo Man. That's I why I sold it. And I, you Mother. knew exactly why I sold it. I know you I, hate the game. I hate the game. You know, dude, you hate the examples you've played. Two dude, of them. You get to play the one at two my of them. House. Pretty darn nice examples, though. Yeah, Still but they're not set up right, dude. You know what? I I, I could feel that. I, Cause okay, so one of my Shh. first DMDs, I went to this guy's uh, warehouse. You know, he 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 puts pinballs on locations, and I had my choice between Judge Dredd and Demo Man. And I played Demo Man first. I blew it up. I got all these combos. I was like, oh, this game's pretty sweet, but it wasn't on my radar. Yeah. And I played Judge Dredd. Had like the worst game of my life on it. And it was what was on your radar. It was on my radar. I liked the music. I kind of liked the theme more. And it was 200 bucks cheaper. I think I got my Judge Dredd for 2200 bucks. He wanted 2400 bucks for Demo Man. But I was torn then and there, and I went for Judge Dredd. And it was the best decision of my life. Absolutely. Right? Man, you all be hating on the demo man, huh? Well, I'll be hating on the demo man. I think it's a great game. Why did I sell mine, Steve? What was the only reason for me selling mine? If you remember this correctly. It's not that I didn't like the game. Something else was coming in. Well, yeah, my son, but that wasn't it. I, <laughs> some, someone had, had contacted me because they were looking for a demo man, and I shot them what I thought was a high price. Yeah, there you go. And they took it instantly, and that I was works. like, that sucked. Um, it's not that I didn't like the game. And no, if you're going to get somebody looking to pay a premium for a game. And they did. Sell it. Because you could them. always find one for not a premium and, and you know get yeah. it back. I wouldn't mind another demo man one day, but... It'll that was a, a nice. That was a nice example. That though. was a real nice example. When I sold it to you, it was a nice example, and then you, Put Bill, webbed it out. Forty hours into it, which sixty hours made it an extremely nice game. Yeah, there wasn't a piece of red left on that playfield. Every single red post, all that stuff got That's cool, changed man. out. Man, it looked good. Didn't look like a fun one to completely go through and shop either. No, that Not game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, what's better, Demo Man or Johnny Mnemonic? Ah, uh, Johnny. I don't have enough time on Johnny to give a, a good opinion. By far, Johnny. The hand is cool on By Johnny Mnemonic. Johnny. But you have a crane and Demo Man. That crane is awesome. Demo Man sucks. <laughs> it's the end. I have no... I'm not going to back up Demo Man. All right, Matt, what do you okay, think? Okay, it's got a lot of ramps. It's got a lot of cool wire forms and ramps. That's all it's got going for it. Yeah, we okay. put that at Tom's house. That's where we get really got yeah, to experience Tom blow up Johnny Mnemonic, Mnemonic and see what it's about. Oh, so you watched a 45-minute of Johnny Mnemonic? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's house? Yeah. yeah. Tom shot. I mean, it looked great. No, this game. I didn't get to play it, but. No, we still played it. And he he told us what to do and yeah, just yeah. learning the rules there. Were, it was fun. Uh, so let me see. I, you know what? I, I think Johnny Mnemonic probably rates higher. But I haven't had enough time to say that it's better. So, 
But I'll err on Steve's side of caution here and say maybe Johnny Mnemonic and Matt's. Yeah, buddy. Joe, what's your Joe and Ryan? Do you have a, a vote, Johnny Mnemonic or Demo Man? Oh, Joe. Joe says Demo Man. What do you say, Ryan? Uh, I've never played uh, Johnny. Okay, so that's two so more for demo, man. So you still want Johnny? Yeah. <laughs> so you still want Johnny? I haven't played it. I've played. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with the, with the one I've never played. No, it's it's all right though. It still looks like a cool game. All right, Jobbers. All so right, I'm better? hallucinating because I'm pretty sure Ken was just right here. Mm. Ken just looks like a microphone now though. <laughs> He's here in spirit. That's what you're feeling. So Jobber, energy, I, dude, dumpster fire. How's that going, man? How's the? Uh, did you replace the screen? What what happened? Right, the screen. What dumpster fire? Crapped out. What dumpster fire? Please the, uh, give me some story on this. Uh, Jobber's uh, homebrew. What happened? He has a, 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 a game called Dumpster Fire. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. But uh, something crapped out on it recently, from what I recall. It's it all parts out of a dumpster, right? Yeah. It was in a fire. Okay. I like it. Yeah, literally everything out of it. Bought an axe. X bow. I made it a recycle stuff. No, have yet net Koan. Nice. That's Konami cool. X-Men. That's cool to reuse that stuff. Yeah, dude. No, it's it was awesome. Yeah, that was up at uh at uh, Chicago Expo. Good times. Yeah, uh, yeah. So well here, how many in the, you, you but made an actual expo? dumpster fire. I mean, what's in you that made it to dumpster? Expo. Come on now. Matt made it to Expo. You made it to Expo this year, right? Yes. Yeah. And Joe made it to Expo, right? Yeah. yeah, so everyone here made it to Expo. Um, I had the least amount of time there, two hours. But you made it to the expo. I did make it. In a fire, huh? There may have been Stranger Things in Pinball. Yeah. Speaking of Stranger Things. Did everyone see the reveal? I didn't see the reveal. I just seen bits and pieces and it's did they make an official announcement? No, not official. Not Unofficially official. something leaked. So I wonder if the heck got yanked down yet. No, it's all. I mean, it's it's too late now. It's it's out. Yeah, there. but I could st- everybody still see seen them it. making them yank that down. Well, I mean, it it's been copied a thousand times now, what? right? It shows the whole game. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. There's see. like gameplay video and not a great video, just enough to piss you off if you're the manufacturer. So. No, no, no. it was. It looked like an official video. It man. was, man. It was. Uh, it was like their official teaser got kind of. That's what it was. It was a tease. tease. Yeah, it was a tease. <laughs> and they didn't do the teasing, so you never know the intentional leaks. You don't know. I'll still. Right. But now you know. We don't. But know. we don't know. Now you know. Ish. Ah, oh, dude, that's. Mass Casm third shift coming up. You guys should have been here for last night, man. You keep our plane yeah, safe, Matt. <laughs> Ken doesn't even know where he is. <laughs> it's like, what? Uh, Ken thought about Matt, Merry Christmas, man. Ken thought about punching him. I, I wanted to give a, a, just a quick mini update for everybody that's in the uh, chat. We were talking about how it would be fun if uh, if from just generating funds from Twitch which would have been the uh, subs and the bits that have been donated tonight, if somehow just those funds could drive enough money to, to, to put a, place a pinball machine in a children's hospital. And we would have had to have come up with an $8,000 donation for that, right? Yep. Chuck Wirtz hosting Chuck the stream. Wirt. What's up, Chuck, Chuck. I was just checking in for the, uh, the stream revenue for tonight is $4,047. So with the dollar for dollar match, we're over $8,000. Wow, so, so Twitch nice. got a pinball Duh. machine for Project Pinball. Twitch. With the help of Adam Schwartz in the New York City area. Babies. Uh, you guys did it. You should be really <laughs> proud yeah. of yourself. I think that's so freaking cool. It's awesome. It's uh, I never would have thought that would have uh, happened. Not because you guys didn't have it in you. I just didn't know if we had it in us. And uh, collectively, we did it. So 41000 $294 is up on the board. We're going to do uh, another count here uh, after 5 o'clock. We'll close the stream out uh, at 6. We'll uh, collect our final uh, tallies around a quarter to 6 so we can announce it and uh, see if we can get that number to whew. break Ooh. 50. Yeah, well, $48,000 would would be awesome. Hey, here we Adrian go. Fox. 500 bits. Oh, oh, Thank oh, you oh, so oh. much. Yeah, Chris, we are still streaming all by our Too hard to move it right now. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Elvira's been uh, perfect for us. Uh, Chris Kalouris. Ken and I were talking yeah. briefly about no. 
completely destroying the stream while uh, maybe trying to swap games here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. It's like eh. we would have needed your blessing. You know, it's no, it's, it's finicky because when, when we get the uh, when we keep the stream running, like sometimes we'll stream for two or three hours. It'll go down once or twice. Uh, just out of nowhere. Or like a sticky flipper, right? The streams flipper. run for 22 hours, 41 minutes, and 52 seconds, and it hasn't dropped. It hasn't, not one time have, have we dropped uh, our stream. So that's pretty, that's, like, that's amazing. <laughs> um, and Chris, I want to say thanks to you, buddy, because uh, you were a big part of this, selling that big Lebowski and taking the $3,500 profit yeah, and dude, then that rolling that into the charity fundraiser. It was the first significant donation that, that we had, uh, and it was on your behalf. That $3,500 that you donated uh, was matched by Adam Schwartz. It came $7,000, and that practically bought a pinball machine just on that single donation. It so really was. It really yep. kicked thank it thank off. Chris. I really do appreciate that, buddy. Woo! It was fun to work with you on this. Um, a lot of networking went on. A lot of behind the scenes uh, fundraising happened, and uh, we are in the uh, home stretch here. The, the home stretch. stretch. Hour and thirty nine minutes and fifty two seconds. God, I've, that's nothing. I've never that's nothing been more happy to see that's a timer nothing. at an hour and thirty nine <laughs> minutes than uh, <sighs> than in my whole life. So, Wait, where, where am I? Unreal. Now everybody, drop your pants. Well, we're gonna keep it PG until. Uh, until the stream closes down. Then we go into after hours. Get this and party we'll started. On the Flippin' Out channel, right? This is sick. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll take it over to Flippin' Out. So, but I, guys, I'm just saying, I think it's remarkable that Twitch was able to fundraise uh, just in bits and subs over $4,000. And with the dollar match, $8,000 puts a, a pinball machine uh, in a children's hospital with Project Pinball. And, you know, it's always important that we remember the cause. Project Pinball helps rehabilitation. For a kid that's in a hospital, you're playing a pinball machine, and for the time being, you don't have to really think about where you are or what you're doing. You're focused solely on playing pinball. You know, pinball, <laughs> pinball can be fun, but it can also be therapeutic because slamming that ball around when you're angry mm. sure does make you feel a little bit better. You know what, one thing I like about it, it makes a move laps around the wards is replaced to a lap down to the pinball machine and standing for an hour. They have to use both hands. You kind of find yourself when you're playing pinball moving into it to play. And uh, So the kids can come in here, number one, stand, the ones are having that issue, but they can still hold on so they get that strengthening. And then they, they're using both hands and eye and watching. So, uh, so it's going to be a great non-therapy therapy. Exactly. And having a good time. Pinball's great because it's lights, it sounds, and you're so focused on getting that ball and hitting that target and getting those points that you're really not thinking about why you're in the hospital. You're able to distract your time away a little bit. Pinball is a way to get your mind for the moment off of whatever is happening in your personal life. Even if it is a bad situation, having to be in a hospital, seeing a pinball machine can make it all better. I just want to get back any way that I can. And my passion for pinball, I think, was a great partner for, you know, this giving. Yeah, so the... Uh that Monster Bash sample playfield comes with the Monster Bash production translate. Sean, Sean Wilson yeah. is 800. Okay. Okay, well, then for some reason, my Facebook isn't updating because when I just looked, Monster Bash was 675. Also, I had Wonka at 800. Didn't, wasn't that oh, higher? No. Now. Okay, so I'm going to, for my internet is broken up. My Facebook sucks loading on my Android phone. I don't understand why. Um, it's just, it's not giving me updated stuff. So I'm glad that you're here. Um, in more ways than one, uh, Ryan. Um, Joe Fox put a bit of 400 on Houdini. Wow. Okay, so Houdini's at 400 hey, now. That was huge. I think it was a 350, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to line his walls, man. You still have Raza at 750 with uh, Andrew Barney? Or, or Mod, uh, couple. Mod Couple? Uh, yes. Okay, perfect. Mod Couple uh, leading bits tonight with Replica X, each donating 130,000 bits. That's absurd. Uh, $1,300 in bits from both of them. Um, so, all right, I'm glad you guys went through this because my numbers are uh, are dated or I'm not updating on Facebook with the uh, charity stuff, the uh, auction stuff. We started doing it at 355, so, I mean, it's pretty current. Uh, yeah. Last 15 minutes, we can go over it one more time, but uh, 
Well, there's 36 minutes left. I mean, if you guys covered it, we did. Covered it. Yeah, I mean, we, I, like I said, I'm just more sad to see this play field leave here. Well, there's a way you could prevent that from happening, Bill. Yeah, there's a way I could start my divorce off, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, that would be it. Not going to lie either, though, guys. A little sad to see the stream end in an hour and a half. Sure. <laughs> it's like, eh, I don't know. What you're no, it's been it's been fun. It's been fun it's like been hanging fun. out. It's been a wild ride, that's for sure. I would have. You know, th- know, so this stream never dipped down to where there was like twenty five people, or I mean, the stream stayed strong. I'd say between forty and a uh, hundred people uh, consistently for twenty four yep. hours. Pretty awesome too. Um, it's too bad that we. Uh, it would have been nice to have been like partnered and had like front front page exposure. That would have been pretty cool. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> nobody knows what it does. No, Chris. Hey, we're still out. We're still good, man. I would have liked to have seen that uh, Magic Girl play field, man. I've thought about uh, making you a shake at that play field, but once again, it might be the start of the divorce. So until that happens, sure, I'm right. going to save my money. So are we streaming Monday night? What day is this? Saturday? I don't know. Today is Saturday. Science. Latterday. It's Sunday. Um, no, it's Saturday. It's Saturday. It'll be Monday when you wake up. <laughs> that's you that's, know what? That's a great question. I don't think we're streaming Monday. Yeah, Monday isn't that the day before Christmas Eve? It yeah. is. It's a it's that's a, a holiday. It's a long week next week, man. Maybe we'll wait for uh, Stranger Things to hit the studio before we stream next. If that's the next rumor, if that's the next game. Wookie Jeep, 7,800 <laughs> channel points. I don't know what that means. What is that, Wookie that Jeep? That fake leak, you never know. 7,800 hey. channel points. <coughs> yeah, you know what? <laughs> Lord Helen's like, point. dude, I wouldn't. He's like, listen, I've been watching you guys for like to- <laughs> to- 22 hours and 48 minutes and 30 seconds. Don't make me have to make that decision on Monday. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> it's like, I'm done. All I'm right. Done. Lord uh, Helmet's a good dude. Oh, okay. So Stern Chad is, is streaming Stranger Things for four hours on Monday night. So yeah, th- there's absolutely no reason to uh, stream. No. Unless we do a tailgate stream. Oh. Oh. Ken, this stuff won't fire up till almost the new year, if not the new year. I think you're done on streaming, dude. Even Falgren talking no Monday night pinball. I'm thinking of streaming tomorrow. Wow. We got a lot of... I'm thinking after dinner, I'm going to come back and stream Beatles tonight. So I'll be here (laughs) at 8.30. No, 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 I'm passing. (laughs) pass. So how's how's Elvira as a game? I, I really like the game. It's a fun game. I had my doubts at Expo. How are you liking it, Joe? Yeah, okay. I didn't like it in Expo. Oh, did you? Right now. I like it in a home environment. It's, it's a good game. Stern should have released uh, 11 SLE versions. Yeah, I said that too, man. It would have been... Uh, it would have sold 15, 20 grand. You could have got them all. Replica X. Uh, dude, you crushed it tonight, man. Yes, thank you, man. You know we like the clapping. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hard crash after dinner. You're going to hard crash into dinner. In <laughs> Just don't, don't get food. sued. Yeah, don't. <laughs> Right, right, right. <laughs> That's a dangerous <laughs> hazard right there. Nothing liquid. No chili either. Uh, Punny Pinball. Thoughts? I haven't seen it. I haven't seen I've pictures seen of it. It wasn't anything that, it's a one, it's that a motivated one, uh, me to cover it. One uh, level play too, right? Yeah. 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 So, I, you know, we'll see. As in the, I don't cover all this stuff all the time. I mean, if it doesn't personally interest me, and I don't think appeals to a lot of people, I usually don't put a lot of uh, effort into covering it. That's just me, though. Man. <laughs> Man found in mashed potatoes. Film it. Love it. There you go. Film it. <laughs> Put the phone down. <laughs> I was looking up Punny Pinball. But now, you know yeah. Hey, do you have it? I, I, just I was trying to pull it up. Actually, I want to see a picture of it. No, I got told no, man. Bust and Chris it. is a major Bust contributor, so I'm going to respect our Respect viewer. the major donors, Bill. Hey, come on. I was looking up the punny pinball. That's how we, like, our uh, our Stranger Things video broke on stream, and we haven't. Well, I yeah, so the Stranger Things video was hitting the internet that I've been waiting for for, like, my whole life. While we were streaming, and I think Jersey Jack Pinball was in here, and we had Eric Minier and Keith Johnson, and uh, <laughs> I mean that would fit, like, that's fitting, right? Like oh, I'm gonna step out for a second, here. please. Check this picture. <laughs> oh goodness! Ah, uh, all right, fine. I'll text. Yeah, I get yelled at by Chris, so the punnies are loose. Find them all. Yeah, I don't. Know, I, I have no idea about Sh- the uh, check this out. success or failure of that pin. I don't think Canada 23 could make. Uh, Punny pinball. Wow. 
And, and Chris say, no, I could not market it. So the best suicide, moments of the 24 huh? hours. Well, the funniest moment of the 24 hours, Bill, was... The story with uh, Zach Many dropping off a of Houdini in a parking lot. Well, no, it was it was buying a TNA in a Fairfield uh, hotel parking lot. Yeah, right. And my response to that was, that's not the first time a TNA has been sold in a... No, how did I say it? That's not the first, the time, first time TNA, TNA has, been has been sold, sold in, in a, a parking Fairfield lot of a Fairfield Inn. Yeah, right. Yeah. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, Keith Johnson told a lot of stories. And actually, oh, he, Keith has some great stories. He got into a little bit of his code and uh, his approach on the next game and stuff. That was pretty interesting. If you haven't seen that, uh, just rewind like 14 hours and then <laughs> just go back. I think what we have to do actually, is... That Carrie be, Hardy. Hey, what's up, Carrie? How are you, buddy? Carrie. Yeah, Keith Stories, Doc Brown 85. Keith was solid. There's no doubt about that. Carrie Hardy. Hey, thanks for the 200 bits, bits Carrie. Your 200 bits have become 400 bits. So that's pretty awesome. Thanks for coming in and thanks for supporting the uh, the Project Pinball Charity. Fogren saying, uh, and Eric, Steve Ritchie, and Scott D. Yeah, all, uh, all at the same table. You had Eric Minier from Jersey Jack Pinball, Steve Ritchie from Stern Pinball, Scott Denisi from Spooky Pinball, and then you had Ryan White in here from uh, Chicago Gaming Company. All four of those guys, like at a table at once, was pretty interesting. You don't see that every day. Goran 1818 with 200 bits. Thank you for the 200 bits. That's awesome. 200 bits become 400 Gorin, bits. Thank you. As the uh, stream Kinda still chugs that. along. It looks right. better than an F14. I agree with that. Do you. we have a grand like uh, finale here? Or, like when that clock hits zero, does. Yeah, we all hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Let the bodies hit the floor. One. What, Stranger Things during the stream Two. was, <laughs> was yeah, the best. They got all like awkward. Yeah, like, oh, what's going on over here? Yeah, it was interesting because, like, so there was a reveal that kind of happened while we were streaming, but we really didn't get a chance to kind of deep dive into it. Like, and whenever we kind of got into conversation about it, something else would happen that kind of steer us away. Kaz is still here with the bits. Thank oh, you, Kaz. Eight bits. Thank you much, man. Eric, Steve, buddy. and Scott together was interesting. Steve, he was sitting here next to you, Ken, and yeah. he he said some things. We're like. Oh wow, you brought that up again. Okay, we had. Oh, when he brought that up about in the podcast, and then I, I edited that out. He's told <laughs> he a story about how he used to work uh, for a radio alive. station. It was uh, KOME, and uh, there, there was "You've Got Come on Your Radio," a KOME, and I was like, "Don't wipe it off, Steve." <laughs> like, <laughs> like when we did your podcast interview, you told that story, and I totally edited that out. And he's like, "I'm sorry, was that bad?" I'm like, "No, it's hilarious." <laughs> I just. I wasn't. I didn't know you were going to tell it. We were still a little PC back then, though. Yeah, no, it was good times. Birdo drink one. Still Birdo this drink. This guy's awesome, yeah, dude. He's been Birdo in here. Loving Birdo, yeah. And he kicked it out with a big donation. He sent the uh, the pretzels care <laughs> kit for us. Birdo's our guy, man. He's been he's been taking care of us. So thank you for the support, man. Uh, personally and uh, with this uh, Project Pinball Charity fundraiser. Uh, yeah, Ken is like we could have ended this ninety minutes earlier. Uh, you know what? If there were no, if there was no more money coming in, uh, because we stopped, I could absolutely end this right now. But auction ends ninety in more minutes. Thirty minutes. Twenty seven minutes. Twenty seven minutes. Be, 27 be minutes. Uh, I get it corrected here. So. Thinking about go to, go to 17, 18 minutes, we start getting the Facebook ready and start yep, yep, going yep. through that. You know what else I'm impressed about is. That would be pretty funny, Doc Brown. None of the equipment failed for 24 hours. It's all been on. Even the Elvira House of Horrors has been flipped. It has to have hundreds of games on it tonight. Just at Oh, order. easily. Yeah. I mean, a couple easy. of cables knocked out. I, nothing. I pulled up, but the stream never dropped. Yeah. You can see it. The remote dropped. TV changed. That was kind of yeah, frightening yeah, for a yeah. second there. All, all little bruises. There was nothing that required major surgery tonight, so that's pretty cool. Kaz. Kaz with Another eight bits. Eight bits? Nice. I'm trying to figure Dude, out Kaz's, coming in light, man. Kaz's he's bit donating set. strategy. It's like he's the turtle in the hair, man. He's around. Here, show I like that. It. Can you can you can you look up where he's at for for the night? No, I I not here. No? I okay. No. This he's been like, like the top ten, eight bit I think. every like eight minutes. So let's see, for Kaz has hours. donated Forty two thousand bits tonight, Kaz. <laughs> no, I don't know. It seems like it though, doesn't it? <laughs> right. It does, man. They all add up. Uh we had Dennis Kriesel. He he gifted twenty five subs, twenty five gift subs. That was awesome. Pinquest had gift uh gifted. I didn't even realize that Neil from Pinquest, twenty gift subs. Benzix uh with four gift subs. And then you look at the uh the leaderboard, mod couple pinball with uh thirteen hundred dollars in bits. 
that's 130,000 bits. Same thing with Replica X, those two guys. It was a classy move because they were going back and back, back and forth all night long. Yeah. And then at the very end, Replica X came in and, and he each just other. matched the bid so that they kind of shared Boom. the uh, spotlight. It was like the Olympics with two athletes uh, splitting a first place medal. So that was pretty cool. Flip in Fargo, cool. Flip in Fargo with uh, 18,000. 50 bits, which is $180.50 is what it comes down to. Um, crazy, crazy times. Studio B, new QC uh, location. New QC. A QVC location, what? maybe. Like, we've got... Uh, Quality control. Oh, well. Who's, yeah, well, hey. We, we'll, we'll sale pen. Who's right, been you here come the out with a pinball machine. Chance. We'll stream it for 24 hours, and we'll let you know. If there's Quality control. That's what it is. No. We're, we're QCing. Seven bits. From J. Kelly to one thirteen. Thank you for the Jay seven Kelly. Days, J. Kelly. Good times. Hey. Giving I, away money, Olympics, everyone wins. I, I am curious to see how many uh, pin, uh, plays this, this uh, Elvira has. What's that? I'm curious to see how many plays are on this Elvira, dude. So maybe if they shut this down, I'm, I, I just want to take a peek. Yeah. Oh, Canada. Oh, 5,000 oh, bits. 5,000 bits. Thank you, brother. He's getting the energy yeah, going, buddy. man. Thank you, brother. Thank you, bud. Ah, His, uh, we needed that. Already had $3,500 in, and that's another $50 donation that gets matched to $100. So, Chris, oh, Where thanks for following there, uh, Tops. Taposlo. Taposlo. That's a brain teaser. Taposlo. Taposlo. So, Chris has uh, $3,600 uh, into the stream tonight for Project Pinball uh, Cherry. Anybody grabbing one of these or anything <laughs> like that? <laughs> Uh, Kaz says, hey, thank you so much to everybody that's donated some amazing generosity being shown. I agree. I agree with you, Kaz. So, Chris, you're matching what to, uh, what Hilton sold his Subaru for with the 50 bits. Or the 5,000 bits. <sighs> Making sure I got there. Oh, Mr. Mark Silk. What up, brother? Oh, is Mark, Mark Silk. Voice of All Silk. Right. Voice of Silk. Hey, what's up, Mark? I was wondering if you might show up tonight. Pim on Nerds Podcast. Orbit Albert says... Holy shits. Last time I looked, you guys were at 25K. Congrats on the 40K, you nerds. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're, our, our goal now is $48,000, uh, which would which would put six pinball machines in six children's hospitals. A total of six pinball machines. Yes. $8,000 per machine. And you, that's not just the price wild. of the machine. It's to get a place. It's for the insurance. It's for all the red tape that goes involved. Ooh, lurking, Mark. I like it. It's Ken going to pass out at supper. Absolutely. It might be like, you ever see that uh, that Seinfeld where Kramer's running on E and he's trying to get the car to run out of gas and then the needle just <laughs> breaks off and he's like... <laughs> it's kind of how I feel. like, why am I not go, like, like... Knock on the neighbor's house. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, dude, I can't Jay believe Kelly, you've been... 20 bits. <laughs> this is the, hey, lo- the longest of my life I've ever seen. I know. That. You're, <laughs> you're going to regret this. I'm telling you what. Whoa, I don't know what just happened there. Uh, a lot of numbers. Let's read that one out. Uh, wow. 1839. Two seconds. Thank you for the bits. Yes. Make it a 30 hour stream. I couldn't. I, I don't. I couldn't do it. Uh, so this is Joe and Joe. They would be taking over for the rest of the stream. This would not work. Maybe uh, putting our bodies in bags. I could do. Wait. Another six hours. It's a full work day right now. Right. Start right. 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 right, right. No, I don't have the call in line going right now, Chris. If you want to call in, I mean, I, I'm happy to uh, give you a call. I just, I don't, I didn't post the line to call in today. Do we need to donate for a, a paramedic for Ken uh, during his dinner? No, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We I got Ryan. Ryan is going to take care of that. All right, I'm going to sneak out for half the a minute. I'll be right back. All right, when, you, when business. you come back, we'll give uh, Chris a call, and then we're going to go into hey, uh, hey, finishing hey. up the. Yeah. The final bidding on the raffle items are not the raffle items, but the silent auction items. So if you haven't had an opportunity to get your final bid in, go to Special Wenlit's Facebook page. Special Wenlit Pinball Podcast. Like an inch for. Oh, wait. Yeah, you can. I would do it. Let me do it. Let me. Yeah. Okay. A little fresh air. I I think we forgot that last time. We did. The lines are open, Charity Stern. That's right. So it's like when I was talking to Daniel Spoiler and uh, we were kind of just discussing how the stream was going to go. It, it kind of end, ends up running more like a telethon than uh, like a, maybe a charity fundraiser. But I had fun. It, there was never like anything that was dull or boring. There was always people here keeping uh, everybody company. And I think that's what really made a big difference. If it was like three in the morning 
and there was nobody in chat and you're sitting by yourself, I can see I that said, being dude, pretty chat, tolling. Chat totally kept it alive. Chat totally carried your chat totally carried the stream. It, it, I mean, imagine without, without chat, doubt. we'd be here just kind of shooting the shit without a doubt. with ourselves. We need chat. Can you pass the sobriety test? Uh, okay. Oh yeah, I haven't had a drink in no. What? But being as tired as you are, or with the lack of sleep oh, that you've had, I don't know. Which is kind of bogus, right? I mean, you could just be exhausted and, I don't, and probably I don't think fail a sobriety test. Well, I would, I would then ask for the breathalyzer. I, you know, that's a good point. Please, so please I, I breathalyzer. Was, I was driving home at, at seven forty-five this morning, and I, you know, I didn't, I had stopped drinking at eleven. Wisdom to the wise, a thousand bits. Thank just, you, wisdom to the wise. Wisdom to the wise. Well, a sneak attack. One thousand becomes weird, two man. thousand bits. Just felt kind of like. Well, so Kuiper was here just with out of uh, it. Brennan. Just out of it. Uh, so Dave's like, I'm like, you guys want some pizza? Because they came out the stream and, and they're like, yeah, sure. So I'm like, all right, uh, Dave, what do you want? He's like, I'll have um, bacon and pineapple. I'm like, well, geez, it's like no one's going to eat bacon and pineapple. <laughs> but I'm like, OK, no problem. Well, wow, that's a combo. Usually it's, it's like chicken and pineapple, right? With like barbecue sauce. Or something. <laughs> and then uh, Kuiper's like, I'll just take pepperoni. So I ordered uh, pizza because it's just close. It's quick. Yeah. Uh, Dave Brennan said he liked Domino. So it's like it's kind of a sister thing. Uh, I get a call right back from Pizza Hut. Hey, we're not delivering until 4. This was at 12. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So I went to drive to Pizza Hut. I was just in a daze. I drove way past Pizza Hut, past Randall Road, and I'm just driving like I was taking my kid to school. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, dude, I turned around. I had to come back to Pizza Hut. Wait, Domino's? Oh, Pizza oh Hut. man. <laughs> Thank you for the bits, guys. Ah. Geek Weird Games have been checking in amidst the Christmas stuff. And he says, great stuff, guys. Thank you. Thanks again, everybody. Love the podcast and the content you provide every uh, pot of solid. Yeah, same here, man. I appreciate everything. What do you got? 349? 340. 340? 340? That's, That's actually lower than I thought. Way lower than I was thinking. 235 today. 235 today? Oh, All right, okay. J. Cali 13 with the bits. J. Cali. Give him the bits. Give him the bits. Thank you. 50 bits. Boy, pulling a cars. <laughs> I, like it. I like it. One, 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 one. <clears throat> The auctions are picking up, says uh, Snail Pin. Jalapeno Interesting. and pineapple. Got 18 and a half minutes to bid on those auction items. Pineapple and jalapeno, uh, jalapeno is terrific. I can see that as kind of like a sweet and uh, spicy combo. What do you call combo. that? The jalapeno apple? Jalapeno. Sounds like I'm from uh, New Orleans. New Orleans. Jalapeno. New Orleans. <laughs> Thank you for the bits. Is, Raza uh, is at 775. Right, right. Thank you, Snail Pin, for the, the check in here. Oh, so Raza went to 775. Now, Dude, these now are Mod Couple Pinball had that at 750 I like all how, night where long. Where are you getting these receipts from? Pizza Hut. This is the Pizza Hut receipt. I just wrote on it because I had. Oh, it was like, are you literally. Re- yeah, so right, 750. I see, I see. Uh, I just dropped it on the floor. And, and if I go down there and get it, I'm not coming back up. 17 minutes left on the auction items, guys. Go to Facebook, Special One Lit Pinball Podcast, and see what's there. Specialty items, one-of-a-kind items, collectible items. Stuff you'll never see again. Yeah, actually, good point. Some of it is you will Jake never Kelly, see it Maybe again. next year I can donate my Castlevania Backwood. Ooh, yeah. Castlevania so cool, and that Backwood does look nice. That's nice. Doc Brown 85. What's Raza up to? Uh, 775. Yeah. All right, guys. All right, so we're going to call Chris now. 17 minutes left. Yeah, you want to we'll, give Chris a quick Yeah, call? let's do that. All right. Wonka's up to 1,200. Insane. Wonka's at 1,200. Wonka's at 12. <laughs> Unreal. That's That's amazing. Right? <coughs> That's 2400 bucks. With the matter of a pinball machine. I, I just, I'm kind of blown blown away by this whole experience. Experience this whole an evening. I'm still going to call it an evening. No, by the way, it's getting dark out again, guys. So it <laughs> is. Is it really? Ken, well, have you seen the, the light I, of day I yet? Saw, I, I got some All light right. today. Today right. is the shortest that helps. day of the year, though. Oh, this is. <laughs> It is. What a perfect day to do it. it is it, it really? Yeah. Today is the uh, summer or uh, winter solstice. So the days will get longer from here on out. Here we are, guys. It's kind of fitting. 
Oh, gosh. Are you serious with this? And for our next stream, when we do this again, we'll do this on the longest day of the year, which will be June 23rd. I'm kidding. Sorry. And it's going to be a 12-hour stream. No, that'll be a 16-hour because that's the longest day. We'll yeah. go sun up to sun down. I could do that. That would actually be a cool stream, dude. Maybe my garage. Keep the garage door open. Right? Barbecue. That would be actually pretty fun. That would be fun. Well, here. Yeah, you just wake up. You you make sure you get sleep the night before. You get there early. I'll smoke a brisket the day before. Oh, yeah, baby. I I think Joe will bring the trailer out for that deal. Oh, now we're talking. Steve will have to make all the fries. Yeah. All the fries of the land. (laughs) Hey, Caputos, uh, when's the next truck load? People will be coming for miles around for fries. Better get a bigger fryer. I'm going to need like 30 turkey fryers. Yes, Joe's got two fryers. We can make oh, it work. Oh, you got two? Nice. Mod Couple just bounced back on that Raza Playfield at $850. Oh, nice, wow. guys. Sweet. Mod Couple, thank you much, man. That's you guys cool. have been so generous. Mod Couple has been blowing it up. Everybody, hey, order some mods from, from your machine. You know, there's so many great mod makers. You got... Uh, Oh, the mod couple cannot connect your call. Google try, Voice is not working. Try that again. That's Lear weird. mods, you got everybody, man. And they're uh, so mod couple. I put their uh, factory mod in my game and the uh, Augustus mod um, into my Wonka. Great stuff. I need to get the factory. The factory is a, a must. It changes it. I know I need it. Side blades are suck to put in. What That's not hell, working man? right now. We Can't can try again in a little bit. I mean, we're, we're I spoke to her. I'm like, everything's been going so smoothly we're tonight. Live on the internet. What, what was that? I it's just Google went. Chrome, right? You open up your Google Voice. Yeah. Interesting. I oh, just, now, now I you're just, gone. Uh, modded my. Uh, Thank you. Wizard of Oz. You did what? I modded the Wizard of Oz. What did you put in it? I put the uh, eyes in the trees. Okay. The eyes on the tree. I didn't do that yet. It, it makes uh, killer. Hey, point that that mic right in your face. Eat it. Eat the mic. No, I'm talking to Ryan. Oh. I know. <laughs> well, I thought <laughs> it was. Yeah. Bill. Okay. It sounds like he's coming out of the trees of Wizard of Oz. It's Chris, like, don't, the mods don't change the gameplay, dude. It just does. It looks cool. Um, You know, like I got the Red Smoke Witch mod in Waz, and I think that's a cool one to have. Um, They just came out with a... The monkey mod. The monkey mod came got, out a couple months ago. I got that coming. Uh, where did you find that at? I know people. Mother. Um, <laughs> and that same guy just came out with a, <laughs> I know people. Uh, a sign for the back that has Oz that changes colors, too. I'm gonna get I got a that on order. Yeah. Okay, so you're waiting for yours, too. Get a wad. Yeah. Um, but I got to get a wad. Wad of 10. <clears throat> he also has a, a mod that he's not advertising. I'll talk to you after. I think, yeah, I think I might have seen. Not going to lie. I'm not, he told I'm not about huge on the mods. Maybe not huge on the mods. Color one. color DMD is, is awesome, order two. obviously. I, mine's already on order. It's already done and made. Oh, right. pin sound. Huge I'll upgrade. Put you in contact with them. But something like, like liar, the liar, right? like the liar. factory in liar, Wonka. Liar. Really, I mean, it just makes it look like a higher end game, right? And it's not like you're spending a fortune yes. to get it yeah. to look like a. Like how, basically how it should have been in the factory. Yeah. But you know what? It all it's all good. To each their own. Oh yeah. Yeah. Buying a pin that's all mods. What's that snail pin? Yeah, I'm curious. Like a pack of butter. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I, no comment. But there is a mod for that. Uh, Chrono, the uh, uh, Elvira Translite. Where are we at, Ryan? Good, buddy. Thank you. We are at 375. 375. Uh, Chris, I saw the, the, the Wonka topper. I'm actually going to work on building my own. Uh, I yep. got a bu- okay. buddy that he bought a laser engraver. So, so the Wonka to... topper it uh, is it going to have that same effect as uh, like white water? Is going to have that? No. What it's I like heard, a sticker with a light on it. What I heard is you're going to have like an animated. No, I, I thought there was waterfall. an animated waterfall in there. That's what I thought the so big. So we haven't deal was. seen a video of it. We haven't seen anything of it. But I, I can imagine they're doing maybe the same effect as as as. Uh, 
If they did, man, I, I might be on board with that. Not, dude. I'm gonna get some like, I don't know. Half the topper to get. The topper to get is the uh, the slot machine topper. I saw that, but I don't think it's that crazy, man. I think it's. Dude, no, I'm you should do. You, you, should, you should get Willy Wonka on VHS and just put the box on top of it. <laughs> put your DVD up the there. Big, the like DVD the, cover and the. the I mean, VHS a topper's cover. a topper. Topper's a topper. I'm not a huge topper. Hey, guy, so Lermods, back awesome. in the house. Hey, Robin Kim, Lermods, Lermods.com. Is it too big? It's just, it's it's. They started off with a nice, generous contribution of five hundred dollars tonight yeah, for the Rods. Hey. So that was awesome. Thank you guys. Hey. Robin that was matched to a thousand dollars. Pins rules. Dr. Hey. John's here. Dr. Dr. John bits. back in. Thank you guys. Good morning. Well, good morning. <laughs> it's Sunday where you're at, right? Yeah, but I, if that thing is too tall, I know it won't fit in a lot of people's basements. Prefer well, I know mine more than likely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, be a lot of face punching going on. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of love in this Snail chat. Snailpin oh. is is clapping along with us. I think that's cool. Yeah, thank you, Snailpin. <laughs> got to get into the into the <laughs> nice, mood. Dude. <laughs> All right, so we got nine minutes left on the uh, on the auction items. Bill, you want to go up in Vanna White? Ah, I, don't I, Vanna White it anymore, guys. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's it. It is what it is. You can see the pictures on uh, on Facebook on Chrono Eight Sixty One says. Uh, That'll go eight three eighty five on the Elvira Translate, but can't access Facebook. Your page just loads endlessly. Yeah, I know. I think a lot of people are breaking our Facebook page right now. Ooh, woo. Um, can somebody post? Um, Let me grab my phone. Hang on. What do we want? We want the Elvira. Let me check. Snail here. Pin. Hey, I'm on here. Clap I'm with us here. at four hundred bits. Hey, Snail Pin. Thank you, Snail Pin. The Elvira is at three seventy five. Elvira's at 375. What did he just say? 400? No, no, no. So Elvira is at 375. Yes. Okay. So, Kratos, I don't remember your, your bid. Oh, what's up, Matt? Uh, I, don't, I don't remember what your bid was, bud. So if it's off, if, if it's more, it, 385? Okay. 385. Yeah, you can go okay. 385. Did somebody just put 385 for uh, Matt. Run dog, it's here at a hundred bits. Thank you for man, still staying with us. I love it. Woo! Run dog, hundred bits. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let me sneak in here. Oh, what do uh, we got? Hot wheels. So check out Facebook. Let's look at the auction items before we do that. Let's remember what these auction items are uh, helping as far as the uh, charity goes. Project Seven Pinball. Minutes, guys. Project Pinball .org. Project Pinball helps rehabilitation. For a kid that's in a hospital, you're playing a pinball machine, and for the time being, you don't have to really think about where you are or what you're doing. You're focused solely on playing pinball. You know, pinball <laughs> pinball can be fun, but it can also be therapeutic because slamming that ball around when you're angry mm. sure does make you feel a little bit better. You know what, one thing I like about it, it makes them move. Laps around the wards is replaced to a lap down to the pinball machine and standing for an hour. They have to use both hands. You kind of find yourself when you're playing pinball moving into it to play. And uh, so the kids can come in here, number one, stand, the ones are having that issue, but they can still hold on, so they get that strengthening. And then they, they're using both hands and I am watching. So, uh, so it's going to be a great non-therapy therapy. It's exactly. I'm having a good time. Pinball's great because it's lights, it's sounds, and you're so focused on getting that ball and hitting that target and getting those points that you're really not thinking about why you're in the hospital. You're able to distract your time away a little bit. Pinball is a way to get your mind for the moment off of whatever is happening in your personal life. Even if it is a bad situation, having to be in a hospital, seeing a pinball machine can make it all better. I just want to give back any way that I can. And my passion for pinball, I think, was a great partner for, you know, this giving.
Hey, welcome back. Matt, we want to let you know uh, Bill Webb put a bid in on your behalf for 385 on that Elvira Translate. Um, your name is on it. It's just under my name, but you will be the one responsible for paying said item. Paying for. We've, <laughs> Anyways, we've, yeah. we've, we've watched the Project Pinball promo um, throughout the course of the 24 hour stream. And uh, that was produced by Emoto Harney. Uh, and I just wanted to, uh, we all wanted to kind of give her props on that because I, I think that was very effective in helping people better understand uh, the charity, what goes into the charity, what goes into the donations, and uh, what you're putting money into as far as the charity goes. So uh, that was very nicely done. Hey, <laughs> Zachary's here, who is Dwight Sullivan of Stern Pinball. Good What's morning. up, dude? Good morning. Good morning. Dwight. Good morning, number five. <laughs> Now, Dwight's jet lag from Australia. Nobody knows what's going on. We don't know what day it is. It's like, it's. I know. I'm starting. I'm st my, I'm starting to realize like my, I don't know if my headphones aren't working or if my ears are stopping. So yes. Yance, did you see Yancey was still going to do the uh, the four player Elvira, matching a dollar per million? Is he still for doing the that? highest score? He just we might we might have just just missed that. You all right? Well, you guys go for it. I would. I will not be very effective at playing pinball right now. I don't think I would be either. Who's the freshest of fresh? Oh, Bill, you missed it. Two hundred thirty-five plays today on Elvira. Nice. Okay. But only three, like forty-nine total. Oh, uh, that's not bad. Well, two, two, so there was only a hundred games played. That's still a lot for today. today. Yeah. Well, that's a lot for. We today. had a lot for twenty-four hours. Well, not really, but yeah, no, ten an hour. And that on location, a, a buck a game, 240 bucks. I like Devil's Avocado. He's like, I love the bit in the Project Pinball video where the girl just hands her doll off dismissively to play pinball. I like that, too. Uh, Two-Hearted Mail, thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, Two-Hearted Mail's here. Yeah, you rock. Thanks for coming in, man. It's always good seeing you in chat. What's your favorite part of the stream so far? Mine is uh, KOME Radio, <laughs> yeah, right? That was classic. Steve Ritchie and KOME that Radio. That caught everybody off guard. Jeez. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was, that was by far the most shocking part of the stream. Lucas San Diego, what's up? We have... Uh, about three more minutes, and then we're going to close down the uh, auctions. We'll... Total that up. I'll get uh, one more total from uh, Dan Spoiler over at Project Pinball. We'll add up the bits, and we'll just kind of see where we are at at that uh, 5 o'clock hour. And if we hit that 48K, everything else is just going to be gravy. And it's going to be close. I, I have a feeling it's going to be close. Gravy. Uh-oh, Mod Couple lost the bid again. Whoa. Hmm. Who's coming in first? Really? Yeah. Uh, Kelly Daniel. Kelly Daniel's been rocking out the the auctions too. Yep, yep, yep. Um, at one point, I was getting notifications on my phone a couple days ago, like one after the other after the other, and it was all, all Kelly Daniel just knocking out high bids on all the auctions. It was like it's pretty impressive. He cannot be stopped. No, He'll but if you guys are be serious, I'd I'd do it now. How? Because it's four fifty eight, two minutes to the the closing bell. Yancey wants to know how the overnight early morning shift went. I couldn't uh, tough it out. It actually went really well, it, and it was because there was a there was an active yeah, chat, and then there was an active Falgren and uh, Drager in here. So <laughs> no, we well, had Bill was, from was one to five. Yeah, Bill was Bill was the overnight overnight shift. The maniacs came in at four forty five five. I was I was here too. It was good, man. Was I mean, it was there was never a point where you felt like you were by yourself. You can bid on Facebook uh, at our Facebook page, special one lit pinball podcast and there is uh, a minute and 56 seconds remaining uh to place a bid clock is ticking okay so kelly's the uh the pinball palace in brunswick Mine georgia show up. i did not know that that's awesome shout out facebook everybody get on facebook final bids taking place joe fox another one big heavy hitter yeah, it's not on this one. yep 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 pull the screen down and try and refresh the, the amount that's raised absolutely is yeah. with the match. So you figure uh, about 20650 bucks uh, raised straight up. And then Adam Schwartz from New York City is like, we're going to match that. Uh, every dollar that came into the stream or came in through this uh, Project Pinball charity fundraiser for this was matched dollar for dollar. Like, a totally impressive uh, thing that he did. What was Elvira at? 
That was at three seventy five. Pinball Palace is amazing. Hey, Matt really Force, Matt Force, did you want uh, Elvira or Jurassic Park? Did you want Elvira or Jurassic Park? Some translates going on here. 44 seconds. Donate now or PayPal me. Project Pinball. Thanks, Streamlabs. You're the best. That's That was one of the best nights. Part of the night, too. I like that. <laughs> well, that was awesome. You're welcome for the. I, I enjoyed my stupidity it. is not stupidity. provided no, a lot of humor. But it's a, how would you have known? I didn't. I know what right. I, I didn't even think to explain that. It says five fifteen o'clock. seconds. So we'll go from top to bottom, and we'll call out the winner for these. Calbasa, right. that's it. All right, so bids are up. As Whoa. we get down to 59 minutes here. Shazam. All right. Do you have, a, like, post-it notes or uh, paper? And then we can uh, snail pin sniping Houdini. That was probably typed 30 seconds ago due to the delay. So Just check it uh, out on Facebook because there's no delay on Facebook. Let me know when you're ready. Right. All right, I'm All right, so what's the, what's the first item that we're uh, looking at, Ryan? Uh, the Wonka Billy table. Wanna. Wonka Playfield? Yep. Wonka Playfield autographed by Jersey Jack staff. Kyle Reed at twelve twenty. Twelve hundred and twenty dollars. Kyle Reed. He jumped in quick, uh, maybe a couple hours ago at a, at a grand and, and fought it out. Just got contacted by Daniel Spoiler too at Project Pinball. The uh, the PayPal funds has been they've been jumping too, so. We've got a last minute push here. Can you give me that total one more time on the uh, play field? Uh, twelve twenty for Wonka. Twelve twenty for like Wonka. Okay. Kyle Reed. All right. My handwriting sucks, so hopefully you That's guys okay. can read it. I'm. No, yep, we're good. Next is the Houdini. John Cosin. John Cosin with Houdini. Four fifty. Four hundred fifty bucks. That's a good. That's a steal, actually. A, a play field's going to cost you. More than that. Snail pit, nice try, buddy. Nice it job. Was, uh, it's a good snipe attempt. Snail pin said he was 425 on Houdini. Do you see a 425? Well, 450 was yeah. the winning bid, so. Ah, look at the snail pin's got the little winky face going. See, I, I, can't, I can't understand sarcasm at this point. Pinball Nerds Podcast, <laughs> donating to the stream and donating to Project Pinball 10 bits. Your 10 become 20. Or be thanks, buddy. Thank you for the uh, the donation. You all right there? All right. See, now you're getting sick. <laughs> hey, man. Atomic you don't zombie. sleep. Look what, you, look what you're giving me. Cherry Atomic? Oh. No, Atomic Zombie. Hang on, bro. Oh, oh, Raza. I got my slinky. <laughs> Retro Atomic Zombie Adventure Land. Why is everybody sneezing in here right now? Did we all get a plague <laughs> Wait, who in else here? Sneezed? All right. So what's what, what do you got Raza at? It's at 875. Wow. By Juliana Brewer. All right. Okay. So Mod Couple did end up getting that play field. So nice. good for them. I, you know what? And I appreciate that because I know that was something that that they hey, definitely wanted to make sure they got. So round awesome. of applause for everybody. Awesome. So far. It's amazing. Juliana. Yes. Brewer. All right. Elvira. Translate. Three seventy-five. Kelly Daniel. Kelly Daniel. I saw that name a lot. Yep, 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 yep. JP. Translate. Again, Kelly Daniel. 425. 425 for Jurassic Park Translate. Nice. Nicely done, Kelly. So Kelly got both translates. Awesome. Good combo there. That is a good combo. Monster Bash. Why snow? One, two, three, four, five hundred bitties. Thank you, hey, Why snow. snow. Your five hundred bits become a, a thousand bits with the Adam Schwartz match. Very nice of you to come in and donate, Why snow. Thank you, buddy. Monster mm. Bash is a thousand dollars. The Monster Bash sample playfield went for one thousand dollars. Thousand bucks. And who who was the amazing. purchaser? 
Joe. Uh, <laughs> are you serious? Hey, our very own Congrats, Joe Fracasso. Bud. That's a one of a you, kind, dude. It's like knew. probably the rarest of the items that we had, with the exception of Eric Vineyard's Whitewood number two. Nice. Wow, that's Dude, amazing. You, you did well. You I know what it, I'm more excited about is we save well. on shipping with this. <laughs> it's like, it leaves tonight. Hey, congratulations, Joe. And Joe Fricasso knocks it out of the park. That's cool. St. Charles Pinball Club. Yeah. Cherry Atomic. 150. 150. All right. Cherry Kelly Atomic. Who, now, who won that one? Kelly Daniel. Kelly Daniel. That's signed by Brian Holderman. It's number one. Uh, signed of, of 50. So Sweet. it's the first one. That's awesome. Congratulations. I'm excited that you have that. Yep. Is, are, we, are we done? Is that yeah, it? Yeah, that's it. Congratulations, no. everybody. Fourth. Oh, okay. So are you ready for this, guys? So, so we Check this out, one, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven items on Facebook. Does that sound right? Let's just double check to make sure we didn't miss one. We had winning bids of $1,220, $450, $875, $375, $1,000, and $150 for a grand total of $4,495. When we do the dollar for dollar match, 46, 45 times two becomes 9,290. We just that went over $50,000. Freaking hey. over $50,000. Guys, Congratulations. you guys all did it. $50,000 for Project Pinball. That is unbelievable. Oh Fifty k. Can you believe that? Hey, I know the, that meter went. Man, it, I just it, got chills for a second there. Just, Holy that meter was, cow. Wasn't big enough. Do, I you, love it. You, you got you to gotta peg that meter. $50,000. Yeah. So I'm going to go in and adjust the meter, guys, and everything else is gravy. We're just going to fill that at 50000 plus. And we still have, let's just take the next hour. Holy or next, down. Crap. Yeah, next 53 minutes and let's just relax. I might make a drink. Snail pin, 1,000 thousand bits coming in. Hey! Guys, I'm so proud of everybody, hey. man. Nice, nice job. Hey. Nice job. That's awesome, yes. guys. Holy cow. Yes. Nicely Ryan. done. Yeah, Ryan. Huge. Boom. Ryan. Joe. Joe. Joe and Joe. Joe. Joe, Joe coming in the last minute. Hey. Woo! That's huge. Yeah, buddy. Hey. If there was something that awesome, I, buddy. I on the plate, yes. won it. Oh my gosh! Yeah, a pirates prototype Holy that was already crap. included. Uh, we we added that when that was uh, added because uh, that was auctioned off last night. Same with thing with the uh, Scott Denise's uh, Rick and Morty prototype back last. That's hanging at my no, house, right? Dave Malort is not a celebratory shot. Oh, because someone messaged me the that payment and that. shipping stuff on Facebook. Right, yeah, so house? this for the for the payment, you're gonna make it right there at, at PayPal dot me slash Project Pinball. And then, uh, yeah, we'll reach out and get your shipping information. Dude, I have the goosebumps. Um, so that we can get that away. stuff out to you guys. That's amazing, guys. I am blown Insane. away. Man, South 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 thousand bits. <laughs> wow, guys. Wow, guys. $50,000. Holy smokes. I, I hope Adam's wow. as excited you as we what? are with his, <laughs> his dollar for dollar match. No, he's right? going to be. I think he's going to be ecstatic about it. Actually, dude, I don't think we're Can we give him a call? Uh, yeah, I actually already reached out to him, and, and he's with family right now. So okay. he said he would try I, to make I mean, it on. But and I know our, our We're going to have him on, really on our podcast so right uh, regardless. So uh, Because I know he's excited about this. And, and it really made a difference having him doing the dollar match. He understood the, the advantage of having that dollar for dollar match to drive funds. And... Uh, you yep. should do this once a month, Pinballer said. Oh my God! Holy! I'm I'm I don't even I am like speechless. I I stunned. I'm gonna go update like the graphics. You guys, and then seriously, and then uh, I'll be right back. Ah, <sighs> well that made it worth it for sure, huh? Not oh. even in the wildest dreams. And Joe Fracasso, I think you stole that playfield for a thousand dollars. I know. What? That's true. What trains like that one that's in my car? <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> wow. Yeah, seriously, tug it in the heart strings, guys. I'm I'm uh, I'm blown away and uh, extra tired and Do you know the kids that get the experience pretty emotional about this. This is benefit. Freaking insane. What a community, right? That that's that's spot on flipping Fargo. Yes. The world definitely needs more Adams. Adam is a 
extremely kind person. No. Yeah, you know what? <sighs> Snail pin the raffles are over. Um, are you talking? Are you talking about Project Pinball's future raffles? Over two k an hour. Yeah, Dave. And honestly, we still got fifty minutes left. But yeah. So, that's crazy. Did we go to fifty-eight, Bill? <laughs> fifty-six. <laughs> we need. One, if we oh, fifty-six. It would if be. We 56. get one more. One more good push for fifty-six. Dude, no. Hey, oh we're at fifty. We're at fifty gosh. now, right? So we need to come up on three grand in fifty minutes. So there's wow. 80 people in chat. Hold on, let me do the math here. Rick and Rick and Morty raffle was over uh, Friday night. Scott Denise came in and and and, and uh, kind of signed that to the uh, the winning bidder last night. If everyone in chat donated 40 bucks right now, plus us here, we could donate one more machine. So it would be a total of. Seven machines we could donate. I'm in. Obviously, uh, obviously I'm in. I'd donate another forty. I'm forty bucks. It's like, I think that, nothing. I think uh, Rick and Morty back, back last went for seven fifty. It did, yeah, seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. I didn't think it went that high. I thought it was in the fours. Devil's Avocado, wow. Avocado, I believe that was updated very recently. But maybe not quite all of them. Yeah. Pinball 90. Pinball and we still have another 49 minutes left. So we're not at the we're not at the at the grand total yet. We have 49 minutes left, and then we'll give you the final dollar amount raised in this 24 hour stream. Pinballer 99? Uh, no, it's six as of right now. If we get up to 56,000, which I don't know if that's going to happen, but I mean, that's one heck Dude. of a push. Hey, don't even know. It could be possible. Um, yeah, then we could do seven machines in 24 hours. What the? So, um, this is all made possible by every, everybody in chat and everybody that's contributed. Ryan, you guys were a huge, huge yeah, part key. of this. Uh, Canada. Chris. Uh, Adam Schwartz, yeah. um, mod couple with their donation, uh, replica, replica X. X. Um, yeah, some we had some big donors, Sean, guys, and it, it was huge. Sean, thousand. Sean, a local guy, yes, a local pinball yeah, guy. Yeah, he has. He had. Yeah, um, that's a good point. This has just been insane. Uh, the St. Charles Pinball Club donated how much? Uh, Twelve hundred, I think. I think we're at, 12, I think we're at 13. thirteen. Yeah, with the match, twenty six. Yeah, good <laughs> stuff. You Devil's guys, avocado. I, yeah, Ken was gonna gonna adjust know. that thermometer. He's uh, I, making a graphic right now to change that. I don't even know. Um, Ken should be putting a thermometer in his mouth <laughs> to just make sure he's gonna survive. Yeah, and then update the monitor <laughs> or the the thermometer. That is insane. You know, um, I was saying like an hour ago, right? Right, guys. I was like, I don't know if I don't know if our uh, our meter is gonna be. Big enough? Yeah, yeah, you did. I don't. I don't know if we're gonna have the numbers. I think we need to. I was hoping you were right. Yep, Canada. He 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 donated uh, thirty five hundred. I think. Right. Yeah, thirty five hundred. Match. That's almost a full pin in itself. It is. Um. Yeah, crazy, 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 crazy. I'm blown away. Never in my wildest dreams. I don't. I ever figured this. Uh, <sighs> this would have happened. Even without the match, it was twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand yeah. dollars. Yep, it's still crazy to think. Yeah. Even without the match, it's still that's 20, put it's that's still put three three pins in. Yeah, just by pinballers. Yeah. Yes. Great job, guys. Hey, no, thank you, man. It's, once again, hey, you. it's a it's a community effort, but everybody least, did what they could, you know, financially yeah. and and within their means, and and it just it, I can't believe it added up to what it did. It's I'm blown away. And it's not even over here. There's still 46 minutes. Yeah. We're not even done. No. Yes, he uh, donated 3500 of the big Lebowski. Mm-hmm. At least I didn't steal, steer you wrong with Wizard of Oz. I feel good about that now. It's, Snail pin coming in with what is that, 600 too. bits? The ruby edition. Yeah. Snail yeah. pin! Yeah, that's Thanks, the ball in that edition one. You got a good deal on it, though. Yeah. Because I know the guy who you bought it from. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah. And he actually texted me and thought we were gonna use it. Great donation today. <laughs> so nice. Uh, <laughs> all right. Love man. it. I just got off the phone with uh, Dan Spoiler over Project Pinball. I could tell how excited and elated he was, and he wanted to extend just personal uh, thank yous and gratitude for everybody's efforts tonight. Everybody that's been in chat, everybody that's been, you know, donating to help the stream, everybody here that's been, you know, running the stream. Um, he's very, very excited and very, very thankful. So uh, for for Dan, yeah, and Dan, he, he asked if we could give some high fives again because because that's that's what it's all about, man. Right. Ah, nice job, guys. Yeah. Toes. Both hey, Joes. and Dan. Sorry to give you so much work next year, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. I guess it's not a horrible problem. It's have. not a horrible problem. Hey, that's a. But that's we a, know when now we know after the after the phone conversation. That it's a lot of work. Just to, even when you have the money, you have the pen. It's still a lot of work well, to get the these thing. in, right, into the locations, into the hospitals, into the Ronald McDonald's houses. Oh, I I heard bits. Hold on. Hey, Falgren, 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 ten bucks. Falgren's still alive. Bits are still coming in, guys. Well, I said if we're at fifty now, dude, we're not far off of maybe going for seven machines, Ken. <sighs> oh, okay. Hey, Bill. <laughs> stop! 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 Golling us to death. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think I'm gold out. Okay. Oh, my. And I have to change that graphic because... Uh, the, the money roll. <laughs> yeah, of course it's wrong. I'll be right back again. <laughs> I'm not thinking for straight. No, That's the I'm not thinking for straight. Oh, sorry. All right, I'm going to um, stop for half a minute. I'll be right back. Hey, 150 emotes shared. 150 emotes. Flip a Fargo. Flippin' Fargo's been on point, man. That's serious. So rad. Last hour magic. Seriously, this last hour's been insane. Nutty. All right, I'll be back in two seconds. Fogger, are you driving out? <laughs> oh, my gosh. My fifth wind. Maybe my sixth. Ordering in. Nice, man. You guys, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of speechless right now. I don't know. The Hop Slam is still chilling. It's chilling. 10 hour chat. Yeah, that's a uh, that's good amount of time, man. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for uh, hanging in there and donating and just keeping chat happen. <laughs> so Ken uh, just ran in to update the total. Um, I think we just, what did he say? It was 50,000. Over, over 50. Oh, it's over $50,000. You guys, we, we blew we blew this out of the water. We're past the meter that we had. Thank you, Pinballer99. And do you see where the goal was? Double that goal, and then some. It's amazing. Definitely broke the meter there, Dave. Yep. More than twice the goal. Isn't that... It's insane. It's insane. But it's because of you guys. It's because everybody that's been tuning in and, and cares about this cause and believes in this and, and cares about the kids and their families. It says a lot when you're going all night, 2, 3 in the morning, and you still have 50, 60 viewers. Just oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Even at yeah, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the morning, I mean, people are still donating. The, and, I mean, and the it was, chat never stopped. It just kept chat going. never stopped. <laughs> and we appreciate that immensely because chat really keeps the liveliness going. Streaming is very lonely if you don't have an active chat. It is. That's the, uh, I mean, there's no two ways about it. I mean, mean, kudos to you, Ken, for just... I appreciate that, but I mean, you guys, it's like we all really just put the effort in and it worked out. So It worked out, man, big time. It's awesome. 
it's it's great to see what uh, the community can do coming together. And we're gonna update that graphic file. I'm so happy to to do that. Update this graphic. Hey, we got more bits. Hey, Aaron. Thanks, buddy. One thousand bits. Chicken gizzard turns into two thousand bits. So, guys, right? I mean, you could, you could donate to Project Pinball any time of the year. That's a great point, Steve. Any time of the year, right? We're doing this, and you have forty minutes and forty-one seconds left for your donation to be doubled up. It's matched dollar for dollar. But if you can't afford, you know, if if if, if it's not in your you know, your budget right now, donate to these guys any time throughout the year. It's it's an amazing cause. Ken, I can talk now if you want. Get Adam ninety eight. What? What? Get Adam ninety eight. He can talk now if you want. Get Adam ninety nine. Oh, 99. <laughs> oh, Adam's here. Okay, Adam. Yeah. Had a huge night, buddy. Let me update this Dude. graphic, and, and I'm gonna give uh, Adam Schwartz a call. He's he's our guy. Our dollar for dollar match. Adam. We're gonna get him live on the line huge here buddy. in just one second. Uh, I just want to make sure that I update these screens and. Uh, update this. Sorry. Clear uh, call lines I'm, I'm still here. not functioning properly. You know exactly what you should be doing, but you I'm like delayed. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Let me read all of these and reminisce. <laughs> Epic Hoff. Whoa, whoa, In the whoa. house. 500 bits. Woo. Cliff Tucker, hundred bits, hundred bits, coming in. They're still coming in. Thirty-nine minutes left. Coming in hot with the bits. I'm sure there's probably a better way for me to be able to swap that graphic out, but for the that looks good right now. That will suffice. That looks good. All right. All right, so we're going to get Adam Schwartz on the line. Now, we've been talking about Adam for the past uh, 23 and a half hours and even before the stream started. Adam's our guy. He's the guy that said, you know what? Appreciate what Project Pinball does. I'm a fan of the initiative, and I want to get involved with this charity fundraiser, and I wanted to offer a dollar for dollar match. Did I think that it was we were going to raise $50,000 plus, including Adam's dollar for dollar match tonight? I absolutely didn't. Um... But I'm freaking so excited that we did. Hopefully Adam is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Aww. We'll find out here shortly. All right. All right. Now, Adam was on our podcast. He was on our special Winley Pinball podcast um, this past week. And he was kind of telling his background story, how he's active in the New York uh, pinball scene. And he runs that uh, VIP uh, Invitational Tournament. That's part of the New York City yeah, Championships. Uh, and he, he kind of broke some news on what he was going to be doing this year for, uh, for another type of an Invitational. So I am going to get him on the line now. I need one of those like call centers for... Uh... Oh, it's working. Whew. That's coming in hot. What up, Ken? Hey, can I speak to one of the coolest guys in pinball right now? <laughs> What's up, Adam? How are you, man? Hey, Adam. Adam. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Schwartz what joins up, the, uh, the fundraiser. What's going how on, man? All. How are you? Man. Oh, this, how great, how effing great is this? Can you believe it? No. What I, a 24 hours, it. man. I cannot, I cannot believe it. It's, it's been a, just a wild ride. You know, Adam, and, and it's like when it started, it started off hot and it never really slowed down. It just kept picking up steam and uh, insanity. We, we can't thank you enough. I know you've been talking with Dan Spoiler at Project Pinball. We've all kind of been on the same page. Um, we're all very, very excited and very, very thankful and such a nice gesture 
uh, for you to, to kind of do this with the dollar matches. And uh, it was a huge success tonight. Um, double the success it would have been without your contributions. So uh, from all of us here, well, just thank you so much. Yes, well, thank, thank you. Thank you, Ken. And honestly, I think you're like the number one hero. Uh, oh, no. I mean, th we've been watching periodically. Um, we've had some company, so haven't been able to be on oh, there. Oh, sure. As much as and like, Snow just cool. jumped in with 10,000 bits. It's another $100 going into the money. Hey. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, keep it going, guys. Yes, keep it going. No, no, no. That, that's great. But, uh, you know, Ken, I mean, the production values, the guests, the conversation. I mean, I tuned in a little bit last night and saw this conversation. I, I, I don't know if it's all going to be um, captured for YouTube, but there were some amazing clips. There was a conversation between Scott Denisi and Steve Ritchie. Yes. And I, I think we all know how much uh, Scott is inspired by Steve Ritchie. He talks about Steve being his you know, all-time favorite designer. Yes. And then meanwhile, you have Steve Ritchie uh, giving so much props to the up-and-coming rising star, specifically talking about the Denise lock, these, the, uh, the timed ball save yes. you know, with the counter, and so on and so on. Very specific details. And that was a really cool moment to see, and I'm sure um, inspire that. people to say, "Hey, you know, I'm getting all this amazing content. Uh, I got to pick up the phone, or you know, or, or I'm thinking old telethons, but you know, make, it, <laughs> right, make, right. It, make a donation here." And you know, I think the proof's in the pudding. I mean, you know, holy f, look at this yeah, over 50k it's just... already, and we still it's got another insane. 35 minutes to go. Let's see how far we can really push this. Yeah, it's 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 been incredible, and uh, it, we were talking earlier. It's just nice, like uh, that the pinball community can do something collectively and work towards a common goal. Because you know how it is. It, like we get into our disagreements here and there. It's a very strong-willed community. Uh, mm -hmm. You've got a lot of proud people, but to have everybody on the same page and to do something like this is uh, remarkable. And it, in my opinion, there's not a better charity organization uh, that you can donate to. Uh, especially with the ties with pinball. It's, it's, it's no awesome. Yeah, amazing. It's awesome. For the lack of a better term, it's just awesome. It's really great. Yeah. Well, I think the exposure that, that you brought to this particular organization over the past 24 hours has been phenomenal. The video that was produced that's been shown. A Moto Harney I know people did in my it's, family. It's great. What's that? A Moto Harney produced yeah, that video, and it's unbelievable. Oh, yep. No wonder it's so good. You know, the people in my family who have seen it, I, I talked a little bit about it, but when they saw that, you know, 60 second clip or however long it is, they're like, oh, I get it. Now. Same here. Yes. Yeah, same yeah, that's, here. It's a, it's my wife texted point. she's like, oh my gosh. Yes. That was yeah. so mm -hmm. heartfelt. And I've touching. heard that as a reoccurring comment and mm -hmm. takeaway from that for, for the last uh, 23 hours, 49 minutes, 31 <laughs> seconds to be, uh, <laughs> to be exact. Um, it, it definitely hits home and, and it's on point. Very effective. Yeah. I, I have one other point, and I'll let you guys Oh, run, yeah, absolutely. I know there's, some, there's more fundraising, 30 more minutes to try to really slam this through. But, um, you know, it was just occurring to me. I mean, look, we all know we get caught up in it. We get tunnel vision. But pinball is still a, a pretty niche hobby in the, in the scheme of hobbies. And, oh, yeah. and I, I, I was just wondering, you know, among other hobbies, I don't know, uh, board games or things like this, mm -hmm. how many other communities would really rally in 24 hours to raise $50,000? Excellent like point. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. It's like you're proud to be part of the uh, the pinball uh, collective here. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, man, I'm just... It's a, I'm, it's I'm a real, really special community, and I'm just so proud that, you know, um, we can all make a real impact in, in these kids and their families' lives. Well, you know... Um, Adam, it, it looks like right now we've raised enough money um, for six machines to be placed. And uh, wow, yeah, I know when we originally talked, we were shooting for three, and we we doubled it tonight. And uh, <laughs> again, we couldn't have done it without you, man. No. Thank you so very much. Seriously. And uh, I don't know what to say except congratulations. Um, I think we all deserve like a, a, a nice evening tonight and kind of sit back and reflect on on what's happened. And I know that uh, Dan's super excited over at uh, Project Pinball and. Chat's been excited. Twitch alone raised enough money for a pinball machine tonight just by bits and subs. Wow. That was amazing. Um, 
it's exciting. It's, it's a really good time. So I don't mean to keep you from your family, but I really appreciated that you took the time to, to do this and to come on today and just kind of help us celebrate the uh, hitting the goal. Yeah, Smashing yeah, buddy. Smashing Huge. It. Hey, how about a little uh, standing ovation? It's yeah, a high five standing here. over. Oh, boy. Hey. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Seriously, you made this happen. It's awesome. We appreciate it. Everything you've done. He's the man. He's the man. Guys, yeah, buddy. Hey. You guys, <laughs> you're too kind. I appreciate everything. Before you guys I fall over. Ah. It's, getting, it's getting wild over here. <laughs> All right. Now. Well, look. Uh, hip, hip. Um, let's keep. Uh, we got th- we got 30 more minutes here. So let's, yeah. let's yeah. keep doing it. Um, you know, if you guys have enjoyed some of what's been going on, and, uh, you know, certainly if you've seen this video, now's the time to do it. The last 30 minutes of matching right now. Let's let's get yeah, those let's links. Make it strong. Whether it's bang. bits or the URL, let's do it now. Let's do it. Let's, let's I like it. Our, our last push here: thirty minutes, dollar for dollar match. You're listening, uh, Adam Schwartz. Join us. He's the man with the plan: the dollar for dollar match. So, Adam, thank you so much. As bits continue to come in, another here we five thousand. Dana, Dana Reeves, five thousand bits, which is a fifty dollar right. donation that works out to a hundred dollars with the dollar for dollar match. So it's still coming in. I think what'll end up happening is uh, at some point over the next. 48 hours we'll have updated final totals here but uh we're we're well past fifty thousand dollars raised now it's it's incredible it's incredible thank thank you adam thank you so much Adam. all right thank you thank you you guys so much we'll talk soon enjoy your evening thanks bud you too take care get a good night's sleep (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna i'm gonna get some dinner and go to bed man i'll I'll catch up with you uh here the next day or two i appreciate it adam we'll talk then all right man thanks adam see you bye bye what a freaking cool guy, man. I know. Awesome guy. He's just, he's. He's still pushing we need for to more hang. money. Yeah. Know, we right. need to hang out. <laughs> he's not like, all right, guys, uh, now we'll, right, we'll guys. shut it down. I'm the streamer. He's early. like, still do it. He's like, keep pushing. This is the final push, guys. 29 minutes, 15 seconds. 29 minutes, 15 seconds. Thank you for the follow, Chomp This. Cliff Tucker. Woo! For, for those of you that might be just joining in to see where this thing ended up, we started with a $24,000 goal. Uh, going into this morning, we were right around twenty-one, twenty-two thousand dollars, and we pushed it hard. We had some huge donations come in uh, at the end of the night, including a four thousand dollar donation from Ryan and his. Yep. And, and what's to the company again, Ryan? Advanced for Critical Transport. Advanced Critical Transport. They they transport children to uh, care facilities. That nothing ties in better than that. Um, we've got bits that are flying all over the place in uh, in chat. I'm excited and in. in uh, Tired all at the same time, but it's it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, Kaneda from Pinball, Kaneda's Pinball Podcast, had a thirty five hundred dollar donation that came in and got matched at seven thousand dollars. That's it's almost kinda, a machine. That was the first yep. big donation we got to kind of start this thing off, and it uh, got the ball rolling. It gained steam and never stopped. It Over did. fifty thousand dollars raised. Now, now Dan Spoiler at uh, Project Pinball is extremely uh, grateful for everybody that was able to take the time and come in and and you know what even if you weren't in a situation or where you could donate just being in chat and letting us know you were there to kind of ride the train with us tonight was very much appreciated all the donations all the donations were appreciated the uh the prizes or the auction items that went out tonight one of a kind items uh huge things it's yeah. just the donations for auctions Insanity. i mean it's they, amazing. they drummed up a ton of money the, the donation items uh, were, uh, I think, $4,600. Uh, That's a machine. Over a machine. Over right. a machine. Which was matched, so which thank came you guys. to like 9200 thank oh So thanks yeah. to all the manufacturers and, yeah. and people that brought stuff in for that. Thank you. Thank you, Stern Pinball. Thank you, Jersey Jack Pinball. Thank you, Deep Root Pinball. Thank you, American Pinball. Thank you, Chicago Gaming Company. Thank you, Spooky Pinball. Uh, who am I missing? Deep um, Root. Deep Root, Jersey Jack. Root. Yeah. Every single manufacturer helped us out. By giving us something that was highly collectible and and of value for uh, those that were interested in the item, it's, it's just perfect, man. One of a kind. Hey, flip it out, man! Flip it out, ten dollars bits. Zachary, that hundred dollar donation becomes two hundred dollars from Flip It Out Pinball. As, nice, as we've surpassed the fifty thousand dollar mark tonight, guys. Flip it out takes third. Twenty six minutes and forty five no, seconds. Flipping fat. <laughs> If you get an opportunity and you want to get the dollar for dollar match, we're over fifty thousand uh, dollars. We we're, we we're in a situation now where Project Pinball, Dan and team can put uh, six pinball machines in six children's hospitals, and we still have uh, some money left to be raised. Let's not forget what it's all about. Project.
Pediatric pinball helps rehabilitation. For a kid that's in a hospital, you're playing a pinball machine, and for the time being, you don't have to really think about where you are or what you're doing. You're focused solely on playing pinball. You know, pinball, <laughs> pinball can be fun, but it can also be therapeutic because slamming that ball around when you're angry <laughs> sure does make you feel a little bit better. You know what, one thing I like about it, it makes them move. Laps around the wards is replaced to a lap down to the pinball machine and standing for an hour. They have to use both hands. You kind of find yourself when you're playing pinball moving into it to play. And uh, So the kids can come in here, number one, stand, the ones are having that issue, but they can still hold on, so they get that strengthening. And then they, they're using both hands and eye and watching. So, uh, so it's going to be a great non-therapy therapy. It's and having a good time. Pinball's great because it's lights, it's sounds, and you're so focused on getting that ball and hitting that target and getting those points that you're really not thinking about why you're in the hospital. You're able to distract your time away a little bit. Pinball is a way to get your mind for the moment off of whatever is happening in your personal life. Even if it is a bad situation, having to be in a hospital, seeing a pinball machine can make it all better. I just want to give back any way that I can. And my passion for pinball, I think, was a great partner for, you know, this giving. We did it! Over $50,000 raised for Project Pinball! Freaking unbelievable job, Pinball Land. That's what it's all about. We, uh, we're in the tail end here, 24 minutes and uh, 18 seconds. Uh, we're not going to release a final total at the, tonight because at over 50,000, uh, we'll release a final total maybe Monday, Tuesday. It's going to take a few days just to get everything figured out. I passed the 50 grand. And Entrance! 5,000 5, bits. But any donation that comes in right now is still getting the dollar for dollar match. Double it. So, for instance, that $5,000 bits. Uh, with a 5,000 bits, it's a $50 cash donation that now becomes a $100, $100. cash yeah. donation. So it 23 is what it minutes is. left on those uh, dollar for dollar donations, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not going past six. So if you guys want to do this, let's uh, 23 let's start minutes. doing it. So I do want to say, and let's get all the, our uh, chit chat out of the way here because at six o'clock, I have to shut this stream down. Yep. And uh, I have to, I have to go eat dinner with my family. And I'm uh, I I will have been up for 36 hours in in 23 minutes 36 straight hours. I've never been up this long before. I feel kind of happy, but you seem like you're still a little bit on like though, I might man. like I might like just Ken's not make just it on all the time. I love. Oh jeez. Um, this has been just amazing. Says uh, Dana Reeves. It's so awesome to be part of such a fabulous community of folks. Couldn't agree with you more. It's absolutely the the community, and uh, oh 100 percent. It's nice to be part of a community like 50 this. 50k is amazing. 50k, yeah. I and think just, everybody just should be proud of this. Everybody. It hasn't even sunk in yet, right? I mean, you're gonna look on this in a in a couple days and really take in all the events. Yeah. It's kind of like like you know like an expo. You live it, and then you go back and look look back on it. And you're like, wow. See, I've always 